show where we travel back in time to your favorite years in gaming and speedrun our way through popular or influential games released in a particular year. I am your host, Smooth Operative. Thank you very much for joining us. The year we have chosen for this episode is none other than the year 2000, and I am excited to announce that we are once again doing a two-part speedrun event, only this time with Final Fantasy IX, which I know is on the top of some favorites lists because of the narrative, among other things. But uh, we are going to take it up just a notch with any percent turbo category. I am super excited to welcome back Amart, uh, as well as some new friends. Uh, welcome, everybody. Amart, would you like to start on introductions? Hey, welcome on, welcome on in. Uh, thank you, everyone, for stopping over and uh, checking out FF9. Uh, I am Amart. I run FF9. I've run this game since uh, 20 late or middle of 2020. Um, and I run also FF8 um, and Final Fantasy X as well. So, yes. So, yeah. And I am ceaselessly joining on commentary. I run Final Fantasy IX primarily, and I started running this game in August of 2020. Hello, I'm Mythic Dawn, and I also have been running this game for a little over a year. I'm the mad scientist of this game. <laughs> hey, I'm, uh, I'm the Brutals. I've been playing this game for a couple months now. I started last year in about December or so. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Excellent game series in childhood. Well, thank you all for, for being here to join Amart on this uh, quest, Final Fantasy IX. So, Amart, whenever you are uh, ready, you can give us the countdown. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Three, two, one, let's go. Good luck, Amart. Good luck. Good luck, dude. And before we even get into the story, Gonna ask how many attempts are we gonna take at Mage Masher? <laughs> Let us know in the chat. <laughs> yeah, drop your Mage Master Masher guesses in um, in chat. Uh, Mage Masher, I guess we'll start with that. Is uh, a weapon that you steal from the very first fight in the run um, that has a 6.25 chance of being stolen, um, but it is pretty much essential to getting the run started off. It's gonna be the main weapon that our main character Zidane equips for a while. For a while. Um, and not getting it leads to a lot of time loss, so this is the biggest reset point in the run. Um, but obviously we are in a no reset environment, so who knows how long it's gonna take. <laughs> Hopefully not too long, fingers crossed. I expect to see Marcus face down on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be a clean sub four. Yeah, it's gonna be a beautiful time. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna come out and say it. I think it's gonna be a first try mage masher. Let's see wow. who's right. Wow. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna go too. with a Steph 427 attempts <laughs> at at Mage Masher. <laughs> it's a good number. <laughs> uh, but but yeah, welcome to Final Fantasy IX. As you see, we're being we're flying in to the wonderful city. Alexandria. Who wants to talk about? Who wants to talk about what's going on here with uh, our little theater troupe? Yeah. So we begin our tale on a on a cool winter's evening. I don't know if it's winter, but uh, we begin on the birthday of one of the main characters, uh, Princess Garnet. It is her 16th birthday, and a theater troupe called Tantalus has been hired to come perform a play at her basically 16th birthday celebration. And it's going to be a very normal evening at the theater with nothing weird going on whatsoever. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> People don't write stories about weird things that happen. They yeah. write stories about what they ate for breakfast three days ago. <laughs> So we're gonna do one menu here. Amart's going oh. with the blue text boxes. Oh. <laughs> Come on, what do you what do you think? A oh, controversial no. choice. <laughs> oh. And what are we naming our uh Ah <laughs> uh, yes, we're gonna go ahead and name Zidane after our current any percent world record holder, Bomb Bomb. Um <laughs> as, as sad as I am that Bomb Bomb is not here commentating, I wanted to make him the main character of the game so Pay homage there. so that he was in here with us in spirit yeah that's super kind shout out to bomb bomb 
<laughs> All right, so let's count our let's count our uh, Mage Masher Steel attempts. Luckily, in this fight, we have four thieves in the party, so we get four attempts to steal it per turn. Um, ah, one. my prediction was wrong. That's one. We're gonna do a little it. trick here. So we can right. manipulate the way that uh, turns work in this game based on speed, essentially allowing us to have additional turns in the same turn. So right now, the Dan is actually going to get an extra turn here on top of Mage yep. Mash, uh, on top of Mass Man. Still nothing. Yeah. That technique is a that's a technique called ATB waiting, which we'll uh, get a little bit more into as the run goes on because it comes up. It's probably. I would say probably the most important like little nah, trick that up. you learn Again. in the game um, when speedrunning it because it comes in handy in a lot of boss battles all the way up to the final boss battle of the game. Interestingly also, enough, yeah. Necron is the only time when it's actually completely essential for you to do it and should you not get any criticals, which uh, is quite fun for watching a gatekeeper to just run. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So I've lost track of how many um, how many steals we've done, but this would definitely be a reset, most likely, if you're going yeah, for a Yeah, this is... Oh, there, oh, it, there, is. there we go. All right, so that wasn't too bad, actually. <laughs> it does exist. It does exist. <laughs> Only took, you know... Mastman wasn't kind enough to uh, murder Sinner for us. Oh, we no. Were, we were closer to 427 than we were one, so at least they felt <laughs> like it. Oh, and the trip. <laughs> So he doesn't even kill Sinnoh for you. Boo. Uh, so, oops, Game we over. died. Oh, no, we died. We have to reset. Just no. playing. It's faster <laughs> to just uh, kill off your party members there than it is to actually end the fight properly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You get, a, you get one extra text box, but <laughs> yeah. it's still faster. And that, that, te that extra text box isn't even necessarily... Um, Oh, now, no. Amar, yeah. do you remember the plan? Do I do remember, remember the, pl the plan? Do you remember the plan? You remember There's the plan, plan, right? You remember There's the plan? There's a plan? Tell There's me you remember plan. the plan. Oh, Who no. are we going to kidnap? Uh, that's a good question. Who are we here the for again? The Oglop. <laughs> So yes, as uh, <laughs> as is revealed in that scene, this is not just going to be a regular evening at the theater. I misdirected you. Um, Tantalus <laughs> has been hired. We don't know by whom yet, but they've been hired to use the play they're performing as a ploy to get invited into the castle so that they can kidnap Princess Garnet. <laughs> Their motivations are as yet unknown, but... And now we get to meet the best boy of all. A, the greatest character in all, of all time. A, a, the, a beloved the, Final Fantasy character. And uh, greatest villain of the series. Uh, <laughs> greatest villain of the series. <laughs> he's such a good villain that what? he doesn't even know he's a villain. That's the, uh, that's the real mix-up. He's actually <laughs> the most evil character in the game. Hands down. <laughs> he's so evil that his evilness actually you know what overflows I just realized? the zero. You know what I just realized? Hmm. I didn't turn on fast disk speed. No, you oh, didn't. Oh, no. No way. <laughs> I actually didn't. Oh, no. Oh, no. Uh, okay, well, I may do a soft reset, and, or I might do a reset at my first save and yeah, that's probably a turn call. it on. So here's something yeah. that's fun about running this game on the original hardware. The PS2 has an option called fast disk speed, which um, reduces the load speeds on your uh, on the game. And obviously, when you're speedrunning um, RTA with no load remover, you want to reduce those as much as possible. So um, we will remedy that as soon as we are able to. Hey, guess oh. what? Puck skip. <laughs> <laughs> wow, we. What a god. Very nice. We did it. Uh, fast disk speed, I believe, saves about 20 minutes over the whole run. It's yeah. Like yeah. 15 minutes or Wait, more. In so fact, it's, is it you know what? That long? My yeah. Goodness. I might actually save here yeah. and then just turn it on really quick. Yeah, yeah. that might be worth doing. Yeah just so that we uh, don't lose too much time. 
Yeah, it'll yes. be about so. But while while our friend Vivi here gets rejected with his fake ticket to the play, who wants to explain how puck skip works? Uh, <laughs> sure, I'll go for it. So, uh, that's the one of the main, both most large skips in the game that we have. It saves about a second, uh, and <laughs> you can talk to you can talk to the guy on the right hand side at, on the same frame that puck runs into you. And if you do, uh, he puck. When he runs into you, he's supposed to open a text box, and it just doesn't because you already have a text box open. Uh, so if you get it, you save a second. If you don't, you lose a second and a half. Incredibly big skip. Um, if you don't get it, it's basically just a, you know, <laughs> it's clearly just an instant reset. Yeah. So this is not like Final Fantasy VII, where there's new major skips being discovered all the time. Final Fantasy IX is a notoriously like a uh, hard game to break. So there aren't any like major skips throughout the entire run um so more or less the speed run is playing the game as it is intended to be played which is kind of in my opinion something that makes it a really fascinating speed run to watch mm. but there are a few little skips here and there like uh like the puck skip or like small skips that come up later so you know we have to take what we can get <laughs> Yeah, this game is pretty ironclad in terms of coding. Um, we've tried, we've tried a lot of different things, and just any any leads we have on sequence breaks mm -hmm. or skips, they just end up uh, crashing the game pretty much. So, all right, so I'm gonna do a save here. Not not don't save. I'm going to save. <laughs> all right, let's save Kubo. These are Moogles, by the way. They they serve as uh, save points. They can also have shops, and um, later on, you can also get mail and exchange mail between Moogles. It's quite cute, actually. Yeah, they have their own fun little, like, C plot that runs throughout the entire game. <laughs> All right, there we go. All right, there's the fast disk speed. We, uh... gonna do a soft reset so that we can get back into the game <laughs> to get that safety save and not lose any more time to slow loads i promise uh, this is faster than not doing it I, yeah yeah it's much faster <laughs> honestly like it's a bit of a rite of passage for people running this game on original hardware to at some point forget to turn on fast disk speed and make it like part part of the way into the run and realize huh why am i losing so much time in the first 30 minutes yeah i, I noticed it in the like second load i'm like uh this isn't correct at all yeah, <laughs> yeah. the earliest yeah, you'll point notice it real fast time. When you when you when you so, load into the mass man battle, you can see if the camera's panning round if your squad is there or not. If you can't see yeah, them when, the, when you that, get the first that pan, also then you're is, on slow speed. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, uh, going on in the story right now, our boy VV here, the beloved VV, um, is now trying to sneak into the play alongside his new friend Puck after his ticket was found to be a fake. So uh, they're climbing across the rooftops of Alexandria, and our boy Vivi will furthermore be known as... Ah, uh, yes. Uh, no. Yeah. Oh. It's gonna be, uh... <laughs> Don't do it to me! <laughs> <laughs> ah! Mythic. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I am honored and flattered. <laughs> That was a that was a nice little fake out. Our very own uh, brutals on the couch with us always names VV my dude. Yeah, <laughs> I got roost. I got roost. I'll, I'll be recovering for that all week. <laughs> all right, so time for time for the musical section of the of the run. And Get the first the real together. gatekeeper of time. Get your, get your little claps. Yeah, so coming up, like Brutal's just alluded to, is a fight that's actually part of the play in the story with the, um, with the main antagonist of the play, I Want to Be Your Canary, named King Leo, where the whole squad um, takes on King Leo in a, in a dazzling bit of combat. Um, 
This fight, weirdly enough, you can lose, you can game over. It never happens in speedruns, but I always thought it was funny no. that, like, you can get a game over here on King Leo. Um, this is one of the first fights in the run that's, like, really hard to optimize because a lot, just based on which attacks the, um, the enemies use, uh, what ATB your characters have at the beginning of the fight, and other factors like that. Um, it's really a very dynamic fight in the run and, like, pretty hard to optimize and kind of a nice little sample platter of all the things that can happen it, throughout the other I fights may, in the run. Um, there, there's, a, there's actually a good question in chat. Not just, yeah. not like about FF9, but about running a long game. And honestly, the hardest part of running the long game is like a longer game like this is just, it's just endurance, just making sure that you stay hydrated and, um, you know, when you get a break, make sure you take your break. Um, like, I run turbo for that reason because there's some extra breaks that you get with turbo. And I think that's just a good thing in general for speedrunning, not just like long games, but short games too. So, sorry. <laughs> no, no, that's fine. I, I definitely second that. The hardest part of running a, running a long game like this is definitely pacing yourself, not getting too uh, fatigued by the end, for sure. Absolutely, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, I, I've kind of always had like hand and wrist issues, um, just from, um, like being like a former like music student. I also was like a bowler. Um, so I just have had hand and wrist issues. So turbo really helps with, uh, with being able to speed run longer games for me, but, um, also, like I said, just take your breaks. Uh, so we're going to do this fight here. Uh, instant ETB is nice. I'm going to try to get this attack in. So the, the intended goal of this fight is to knock out the, the two uh, Nero brothers there um, and then take out King Leo. Um, though to end the fight, you only have to take out King Leo. Um, here, Zidane and Blank are faster than all the, other, than, than all the enemies, which means that um, you can use the previously mentioned ATB weight trick here to um, get them extra turns in per round. Marcus is oh, also that's faster. Good. That's good damage on Senna. Yeah, that is. We should be able to... Uh, get it here, yeah. Nice. Cool. That was oh, a really good fight. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. So, so the way that, well, actually, let's um, let Amar do this next part, and then we oh, can yeah. talk a little bit more about ATB yeah. waiting. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this. Um, I'm gonna do this section. We call it nobles, but um, you may hear me kind of talk <laughs> the uh, the inputs to myself. Um, it just helps me to be able to. Um, to not like mix signals up in my brain. So, um, give me one moment. Good luck. Thank you. X, triangle, X, right, X, left, triangle, X, triangle, X, down, X, down, triangle, down, circle, X. Down. Oh, I, oh, I'm, I, nah, down, triangle, up, X, up, circle, down, nope, down, square, up, X, up, down, circle, right, circle, down, up, X, circle, left, up, X, down, X, down. Oh well, we tried. Valiant effort. A valiant but we got 69. 69, no? 60. <laughs> <laughs> you can't write it. All right, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> Incredible. Um, so I guess this is officially gonna be a gonna be a Mimi run. Uh <laughs> I'm I'm really so I so when I hit the one X, um, my thumb kind of split a little bit and hit the square, and it just, uh, that's okay. It happens to everyone. It's it does. Yep. 
So, um, so there's not really for this route that I'm running currently. This is the this is kind of the newer. Um, this is kind of a newer route that's been uh, more popularized over the past uh, year or so. Uh, we call it Petro Route, and the the per the person who ra who routed this um, her name is Petro Eshka, and so we shorted it we shortened it to Petro Route. So. Um, if you've, oh, sorry. Go ahead, eh? Sorry. So basically, you don't need nobles. It's not required that you get nobles for this route. Um, we do some extra gill pickups in a few different locations, and we will... It, it loses about 27 seconds over the course of a run. So yeah, it's not, not a huge deal. It's like one random encounter. Yeah. Not getting 100 nobles is definitely not a run killer. Obviously, if you're going for like a tip top time, you want to aim to get it because saving as much time as you can in this game is always mm -hmm. good. But yep. it's definitely workable. You just have to do a couple extra guild pickups, like A said. Um, speaking of routing, uh, like Amart said, we're going to be showcasing the uh, Petro No Knight No Tantarian route, um, which is one of the more popular routes to run this game with right now, uh, and it is the current world record route. Um, one of the cool things about FF9 is that there are a bunch of different routes that you can use to run it that are all viable for top times. Some are more optimized than others. Some, you know, have strats that have fallen in and out of favor, but it is a very dynamic speed run that can kind of go all over the place. Um, if you are familiar with the AGDQ 2019, I think it was, run of this game, the um, relay run from AGDQ 2019. Uh, they were running a route that used the knight spell that Quinna can learn. Um, this one will not be using that spell at all, and it will also not be fighting the optional boss Tantarian, which is the other main meta of routing in this game. Shout out to I'm, Strong Chonkler. Yeah, shout out to <laughs> one of my mods, Strong Chonkler. Um, the fun it, thing, it, the fun thing about different routes though, is that for most, pretty much every route, like disc one is pretty much the same with like minor menuing differences. It's really yeah. as you get deeper into the into like disc two is when it starts to split into different variations. Sorry, brutals, go go on. Um, it's just worth noting that um, the Petro routes, uh, it's built from a perspective of trying to strip as much out from the run as possible, essentially. Uh, it actually uh, invites quite a lot of danger in some ways uh, to save as much time as possible. But um, it'll be interesting to see uh, how that actually affects the route and uh, the saves that I may not be taking to uh, make sure that doesn't happen. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Part, part of the part of the really fun part of um, the Petro route is that although, like Brutal said, it does strip away some safeties uh, in, in, for the sake of uh, being faster overall, there are a lot of backups for when you might misplace a piece of equipment or forget to equip an ability or other mistakes that are common uh, throughout the course of the run. So it, it, it's always cool to see this route in action because it is very optimized and has a lot of... Um, yeah. A lot of different scenarios thought through very thoroughly by both Petro and uh, Bomb Bomb was one of the main contributors to helping her test it. Yeah, this this route was actually written by Petro for Bomb Bomb, and Bomb Bomb used it to uh, grind to world record, which was just achieved this past year. And a lot of the, a lot of the of the runners from this game actually. Um, like from not like not so much active from like this year, but like previous years who ran different routes, they actually picked up this route and found that they got um, they they saved up a lot of time from their their old PBs. A um, couple of people I can think of: Felwanger, um, Mutsky, who will be joining us for week two. Um, Mutsky picked up this route. And saved about saved about twelve minutes overall, um, and he had picked up the route for a couple of months. So it's a really really nice streamlined route. Yeah, 
and uh, but you know, some of us are still Tantarian gang for life, so yeah. <laughs> some of like you like to burn books, and you know, we won't we won't get into that. But some of us like to leave them in the library where they belong. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Um, so what what's happening here now is uh, Zidane and Blank used the sword fight as a um, distraction to sneak further into the castle, whereupon they ran into this uh, white mage hooded figure that they realize is the princess they're here to, to kidnap. And Zidane's gone on this wild goose chase, uh, cha tailing her through the castle and back into the Tantalus theater ship only to discover that she wants to be kidnapped. And so now here is uh, this very sweet scene where Zidane um, pledges that he will kidnap her. He gets down on one knee and asks the question all women want to hear. He hmm. says, will you let me kidnap you? <laughs> and what? thus our adventure begins. <laughs> what an introduction. <laughs> Um, another character that we that we met so far that we didn't talk about yet is this clanky young man named uh, Steiner, who is the captain of the Knights of Pluto, uh, a, uh, bra a branch of the. Oh, I'm sorry. This this strapping lad Strunk. named Strong, Captain Strong of the Knights of Pluto, <laughs> and he is basically a sworn protector of the princess and uh, realizes something's afoot and is tailing Zidane through the ship. Um, and uh, hilarity is ensuing, as you can see. <laughs> <laughs> the Knights of Pluto are among my favorite, like, supporting characters in this in this uh, game, just because they're so goofy. They don't get many lines, but they are among the best. Yep. The, yeah. their screen. I, I'll actually stop the turbo when or the the turbo mashing when we get to my favorite line from the Knights of Pluto, <laughs> just for a brief second. Hell yes. <laughs> Um, it's, it's just great. Aha! Uh, Steiner's got a lot of really good lines. Very, very funny character. So in terms of the speed run for this combat, there isn't really a whole lot going on, except both uh, Blank and Zidane uh, have a higher speed value, so they can both ADB weight against Steiner. Um, if you're able to get either of them, you can prevent Steiner from having a second turn, which we may be able to get here. We're gonna definitely get it here. Tackle. Additionally, I learned recently, if you get high rolls from everyone, you can actually kill in the same turn. Mm -hmm. Which is pretty wild, but uh, I've never yeah, seen I've that. Yeah, ne I've never seen that. We got that, uh, we got that ATV weight in. Yep. Very, so, very good ATVs. Every fight we have gone through so far, can make use of the ATV weight trick. Uh, you know, like Brutal said before, there's only the only fight in which it's absolutely necessary is um, is the final boss uh, because mm -hmm. you you will if you don't ATV weight correctly in the final boss, and we'll explain it more in full when we actually get there in two weeks. But if you don't ATV weight in that boss, it casts a spell that will very likely end your run. However, the importance of learning the technique for many of the other fights, if not most of the other fights in the run, is that it can save turns, meaning that because you have a character that's outspeeding the, um, the enemies that you're facing, the enemy will get one less turn, uh, and therefore, you know, especially as you get into later games where bosses are casting lengthy animation spells and things like that, or spells that can really knock your party out, um, it can really save a lot of time, like, if you do it correctly in each fight. Um, just real quick, I want to sh uh, send a shout out to Toju. Toju has a really yes. well done guide on ATB waiting when it comes to this game, and it took me a little time to get used to it, but the video that Toju puts out, it's actually in the FF9 speedrunning um, Discord, which we do have a Discord. Um, it, it's one of the best video tutorials I've ever seen, and it's very well broken down. So a uh, big thank you to Toju for um, sending it, for making that video and uh, letting us know how to execute that. Yeah, FF9 has a really supportive community that um, 
there's a lot of resources. It's it's a run that I say is very, very beginner friendly, especially if you're new to um, longer speed runs. Um, you know, this is the first game I ever speed run, uh, I ever speed ran, um, and I was able to learn a lot from just talking to people, viewing the resources that people post, video guides, written guides, etc. Yeah, it's um, it's definitely a run where um, you'll be thrown into oh, a lot of situations. We're almost there. We're almost there. Stop you. Come back, trespassers. <laughs> <laughs> I know which line it's going to be. <laughs> Fury. Fury. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ultimate B team. I love them. What champs. Uh, so great. Uh, it's worth noting in the next combat, which won't happen, but if you do decide to attack Hagen in this next combat, he, uh, he runs away, uh, screaming, my fury ends here. Yeah. <laughs> which, which I love dearly. You do see best. that if you if you run the all bosses category. <laughs> um, so now we're kind of getting all of these characters that we've met so far sort of colliding on stage. Uh, Steiner briefly thinks that Garnet is actually dead because he apparently doesn't understand what a play is. And we're into our second of two fights with Steiner. And this is going to be yet another fight where the best strat is to just wipe your entire party, except for Garnet. Um, yeah, better kill Garnet. The fight automatically ends if everyone except Garnet is down. Um, and really, this one's pretty RNG dependent. It's just a matter of what your ATVs are like versus what the yeah. guards' ATVs are like. Unfortunately, that was a pretty bad fight because all three of them got turns in before um, Amart was able to get his party down. But, you know, that's just the hand the game deals you from sometimes. Oh, here was Mama. Whoops. <laughs> um, now we yeah, come there, for the. There's the a most speedrun category skill. for beating Ozma. Um, that would be under all bosses. Yeah. Which um, there is, um, the, I believe the the two people who have put a lot of work into all bosses are Mr. Mizao and Mitako. So it's a really fun, it's a really fun category. Um, one that I would love to do at some point, but um, Mythic's got some experience with all bosses. Yeah, as I, well. Uh, I ran into a glitch that uh, made me lose two hours. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine Thanks, losing two United. hours in a speed run. Yeah, it was great. Uh, uh, we ran uh, around Alexandria and played some cards. I played jump rope. We uh, yep. went to Treno, played some cards while we were waiting. It was great. You know that, that's that's the beauty of speed running. You know, you get something like SMB one, and you lose two seconds, and that's massive. You know. Uh, all bosses FF9, you lose two hours. It's kind of, it all scales up, you know? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you can just pop in a movie and, you know, just have a good time. Make yourself some dinner. <laughs> we're gonna, so we're gonna try and execute a kind of a newer trick found by Roaming Merc in this, uh, where we are going to try and kind of reverse ETB, um, but we're not going to be able to do this with our own bars. So, yeah, something that... Oh, um, well, no, we're not, because I just left my turbo on. <laughs> nice. Classic. <laughs> um, <laughs> something that, I didn't, that we didn't quite mention earlier is that um, every enemy also has their own ATB bar, and just like the party's ATB, um, they do start randomly. And enemies have their own speed stat as well, which, you know, influences how their ATB fills up. Um, you can picture enemies as having an ATB, ATB bar just like yours. Play around yeah. it. Um, so this fight is another one where you're going to see Amar wipe the, all of the entire party except uh, Garnet. There's actually quite a number of fights in, in this run where the fastest way to get out of it is to just Whoa, kill the party. Whoa, that was cool. I didn't, I didn't even realize that was a... Um, but... Uh, that, that fight is scripted to end after a certain number of turns, so the quickest way to get through it is to kill everyone except Garnet because Steiner won't attack Garnet. Um, so if you kill uh, Marcus, Vivi, and Zidane, he won't do any attacks for the, for the remainder of the fight. Um, yep. So that was, a, that was a perfectly passable Alexandria, uh, a couple of memes in there, and now we're on our way out towards the first uh, kind of like 
mini dungeon of the game. Um, yep. Queen Braun, in her in her fury, uh, has shot down the theater ship because she realized that they were getting away with Princess Garnet, and they are about to crash land in a place called Evil Forest, which I'm sure will be a nice, safe, accommodating place for the team, right? Yeah. Um, no, it's going to be evil. Hello? <laughs> yeah, oh, it's going to be evil think of it that way. forest. <laughs> Nothing bad ever happens in Evil Forest. It's not like... No. It's never. not like the pl it's the place where you reset over and over again if you're going for a top time or anything. Nah. <laughs> And it's not like it happens 40 minutes into a run or anything. Yeah. <laughs> nah. Honestly, the fact that all the all the party members get plot armor here and survive the airship yeah. crash is pretty incredible. <laughs> yeah, even the even the members of the Tantalus mm -hmm. Orchestra all survive. Yeah. I think even that creepy painting survives in the yeah, it does. In the bottom, right? <laughs> it, it, it ends up a little torn, but it, it, uh, yeah. <laughs> um, so coming up, we're uh, going to be in Evil Forest, uh, which is the first place in the game where you can get random encounters. If you're familiar with other Final Fantasy speedruns like FF7 or FF8, uh, which have step counts, and you know many of the other Final Fantasies do as well, um, this game does not have a step count. The random encounters are generated by a danger value that steadily increases with every step you take. And the key to avoiding encounters in this game is not to count your steps or take certain walking steps or anything like that, but it's just to optimize your movement through each active enemy screen that um, in order to take as few steps as possible. Of what you mean is get lucky. Yeah, <laughs> of course, because it's FF9. Um, the danger value starts at a random amount that you have no way of tracking. Um, so you can have perfect movement through a screen and still get an encounter. Yep. But there are, you know, the, the movement has been pretty well optimized by uh, runners over the years to minimize the risk. So that's really where the, um, the skill of movement comes in in this game. And uh, here we're going to have our first ATE. The ATE system stands for Active Time Event, which is basically a way of showing you uh, what other characters are experiencing at the same time. So it's kind of like, you know, seeing multiple different perspectives on a situation or seeing different situations going on at the same time. It's actually quite a cool system. I like it a lot. Yeah, I've always been a big fan of it. All right, let's get used it a few times throughout the run, but um, primarily just to create scenarios for Look us that. to take advantage of. Yeah, absolutely. No encounter on our first screen. Nice. nice. <laughs> lucky. Lucky, lucky, lucky. Oh, hey, does everyone feel feel it? I'm feeling it. Oh. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. There's 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 something in the air right now, isn't there? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's a, surge. Feeling, it's a feeling surge. emotional. It's it's a surge of emotion. <laughs> So, so this is our introduction yeah. to trance. In Welcome to more RNG. You thought there was RNG in this room. Well, <laughs> oh. well, 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 well. Uh, the trance meter works very simply. Uh, whenever you take damage from an enemy party, you have a random chance to increase your trance meter. When it finally manages to fill up, uh, you enter a trance-like state, and uh, one of your action abilities from the menu here, we're seeing Dine instead of our skill menu, allows us access to much more powerful abilities. Um, it's random when it happens. There are situations where we can try and take advantage of it, but the vast majority I, of the time... I was going to try and make a joke here, by the way, and start saying the lyrics to Real Emotion from Final Fantasy X-2, <laughs> but I, yeah, I forgot what exactly they were. <laughs> so, uh, uh, <laughs> we'd allow I was going to throw that in, and then I was like, oh, wait, my brain just, like, forgot. <laughs> So like Brutals was saying, trance can be um, useful if you get it at the right time, but it's entirely luck-based. There's no way of controlling it. Unlike limit breaks in previous Final Fantasy um, games, you, once you get trance, you either use it or you lose it. You can't carry it over to another battle, you can't save it, nothing like that. So um, if you get lucky and get, tr especially Zidane, trancing on specific fights, 
you can uh, make use of it to make it a shorter fight. But like Brutus was saying, most of the time, because you have no control over it, it will just pop off in a random encounter or something, or it'll pop off on the last fight, of last hit of a, of a battle, so it doesn't make any difference, and you just lose time to the trance animation. Um, it's kind of, it's kind of a, it's kind of a flawed limit break system, but, you know, not every game can, no game is perfect. <laughs> what a generous yeah. description of it. Yeah. We are now ready to spin the wheel once again, yes. ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> it is time to spin the broadsword wheel on uh, turn three here. As long as nobody misses, uh, our bomb bomb is going to try and steal from prison cage here and hopefully get the broadsword. Uh, hopefully. So that, hopefully. Uh, primarily because it allows us to uh, give it to another party member later in exchange for their much better sword that we can then give to Strong, allow him to deal more damage. However, there is a chance that we could steal the leather grip. There's also a chance we can steal nothing, <laughs> which true. is always fun, especially when you don't have nobles. <laughs> All right, there it is. Ooh, we got okay, the broadsword. Okay, okay. Very nice. All right, very good. <laughs> Bro sword is very quiet. good. So both of those fights were with the prison cage enemies, which basically kidnap uh, Garnet and Vivi um, and uh, suck their HP out. Um, basically, they're pretty scripted fights as long as you um, as long as you use the specific attacks that reduce their HP the quickest. And Zidane and, or I'm sorry, Vivi and Garnet will survive the fights when you won't have to heal them or anything like that. Um, but once we take those down, those are kind of the first, like, little mini-bosses of the run. Um, and after the prison cage dies, it, uh, emits this poisonous gas that infects Vivi and Steiner. So we are back at the theater ship where they must be, uh, taken care of. It's kind meanwhile, of Garnet Vivi... has been... Oh, meanwhile, Garnet has been, uh carried away by the first prison cage deeper into the evil forest. Mm -hmm. Kind of funny how uh, Vivi is, you know, uh, definitely um, not entirely quite human, uh, but still gets the ailment in the same way that Siner mm -hmm. does, but Zidane doesn't. Or they believe he has. True. But he's actually consumed it because he is the villain. Well, it's Zidane... True. <laughs> yeah, Vivi is faking that. his sickness in order to <laughs> gain everyone's he's, trust. <laughs> Vivi is being told that he's sick, so he's <laughs> believing that he's sick. This is true. Well, I Mythic, the I think ship. the reason I think the reason that Zidane doesn't um, Zidane doesn't get infected is because he does that really cool standing backflip. What a god! I know Zidane's very athletic. He can just do a standing backflip and uh, on cue. He can run around everywhere and never lose his breath. <laughs> yep. Um, so throughout the theater ship, we're going to pick up just a couple of items. We're going to pick up three ethers. Uh, these ethers uh, sell for a thousand gil apiece, which is a lot of money in this game. Uh, basically, what we're going to do is we're going to be picking up ethers for about the first hour or so of the run, and then we're going to sell them all, and then we're going to say that we're sorry and spend the next eight hours hoarding our ethers like a dragon. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's pretty funny. <laughs> even if you have nobles, Man. you would still grab these because they're... Like you run right past them. There's one that you would skip that saves a few seconds, but um, yeah. Mythic, did did you see my D rust last week? I did not. I was probably asleep. Did you see how? You, did you hear how many ethers I had? How many ethers did you have? <laughs> Seventeen. <laughs> wow. That's all. That's basically every oh, possible geez. like drop. <laughs> Pretty much. And that that's like not selling any either later on in the run if you desperately need money. That's a thing yeah. you can also do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There are two items that we pick up a few of throughout um, the early game in order to uh, get um, in order to get our gill to where it needs to be. Obviously, we're going to be fighting as few encounters as possible. We're going to be running away using Zidane's flea ability as much as possible, which um, which drops some of our gill. Uh, so there, there are two items that we're going to be picking up several of throughout the run um, and selling for a thousand gil apiece in some of our shops. The one is the ether that we were talking about, and the other is the phoenix pinion um, that we'll be seeing more of throughout. Yeah, that, that's just a, basically a, a worse phoenix down, at least in the context of the speedrun. So yeah, a, a worse phoenix down, but it sells for a lot of gills, so... <laughs> yeah. Okay, we got the trip. That's good. 
so it's actually possible to die on this fight if a, <laughs> if a hilarious number of things go wrong. You have to be <laughs> level one, you have to miss, and Baku has to never miss. Is there anything it's else? Or is that... <gasps> oh no, a miss. Oh. <laughs> Uh-oh. Uh <laughs> oh. You should be fine as long as you don't miss again. If I miss again, I'm gonna cry. Oh, okay. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I would probably I'm just gonna cry. get that blood pumping. <laughs> uh, so it's like point, it's one of those deals where where I, I I would I would estimate that there's like a less than one percent chance of dying on that fight. So it's oh, like... very 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 much so. Given the fact that your missed chance here is a, is about two percent or, or a little bit less. Yeah. Um, cause I believe... I'm just gonna be safe here. Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely good to be safe. I believe Baku has zero <laughs> evade. Yeah. Um, so it's just like a default 2% mischance. Uh, so you'd have to get very, very unlucky. And you'd have to hit two 1 in 50s and then... Yeah. Not also, also not get the encounter um, on the first screen to go to level 2, and which I, you know, two of those things were true, almost three. <laughs> mm -hmm, yeah. yeah. Thankfully... Thankfully, today is not that one in a million chance. <laughs> yeah. Um, of course, so... it would happen on, at GDQ. <laughs> <laughs> like, well, runner dies and to a less than 1% chance. At least you'd That's be on the happen. front page of our speedruns for, for a yeah, minute. Yeah, <laughs> please, please, no. <laughs> That's not where I want to end up. Who doesn't um, want Reddit karma? <laughs> <laughs> of course. So the reason that we fought Baku just now is because Zidane is basically saying, screw you, dad, I'm going to save the princess. Um, and in order to do that, he has to leave the Tantalus Theater group, the Theater Thieves group. And I guess their custom is if someone wants to leave the troop, they have to beat Baku in a fight. Um, so we handily defeat our our surrogate father and uh, gather up Vivi and Steiner to head back into Evil Forest to go find Princess Garnet. I, I just tried to go to my my plus sign where I increased my encounter count. I'm going to track your encounters uh, for you. Oh! oh back attack. Ooh, a back attack. You nice. never see it coming. So this is probably a pretty good time to talk about back attacks and preemptives. That was a preemptive strike, which means that the enemies won't notice you. You start with full ATB and the enemies start with zero, and they take 50% more damage from the first physical hit that they take. So it's uh, very, very nice. Um, you can also get back attacked for uh, a good while into the run before we prevent it, which uh, does the opposite. I just had to will... stop it myself again. <laughs> <laughs> it's a really uh, funny muscle muscle memory thing. Like if you're running this game, you, you, most runners have an encounter counter on their splits. So like even when you're running in a marathon, you usually like will go to reach for the the key, the key that the hockey that increases the counter. <laughs> anyway, sorry, but go ahead. <laughs> oh, I was just gonna say, uh, uh, back attack is actually the opposite of what happened, where um, your yeah. party is facing away and uh, the enemies get the. You know, get the first hit on you and you take extra damage it also like reverses your rows and they're they're really slow they take forever to run from because your atb doesn't start you, for about 15 seconds 10 seconds you know why so. i think i said back attack by the way is because what? i think in ff8 that's actually what it says when you get a preemptive is back i don't attack. remember i don't exactly remember but for, that's that's what i've been running a lot of lately is ff8 um and <laughs> I, I think that's where I, yeah. Um, something we also did uh, a little moment ago, you might have noticed, um, is that we actually entered a screen and then immediately exited it. Uh, that's called splitting a screen. And what that can do is whenever you enter yeah. a new screen, your encounter threat resets. So we, uh, since there's like an exit sort of in the middle of, you know, a screen between where we arrive and where we want to go, um, we can enter and quickly duck out of that screen to reset our encounter threats so that we don't get encounters. Um, you invest a few seconds to potentially not lose 30 seconds, so. Yeah, because every encounter that you get in this game is like a minimum time loss of 30 seconds. Pretty yeah, much. Up to like two minutes. Yeah. Three minutes even. Yeah. You could even lose your whole run oh, yeah. to certain mm -hmm. encounters. Oh, uh, Desert Palace, please. Uh -huh. <laughs> we won't be seeing that today, thank goodness. Yes. So something, 
something that becomes part of the um, part of the challenge of running this game uh, is is calculating when an encounter is worth killing and when it is best to flee from it. As we get deeper into the game, the answer will almost always be flee from it. But here in the early game, we're trying to get Zidane enough experience points to be at least level 3 by the time of an upcoming boss fight. Um, and, mm -hmm. you know, if we were running an enlightened Tantarian route to try to get Steiner up to level 7 before the beginning of Disc 2, but, you know, we'll save that for another run. Um, um, <laughs> but, so... you know, we have to... Sometimes it's best to just flee from the encounter as quickly as possible because the time spent killing it wouldn't be worth the the payoff of saving time being at a certain uh, level later. Ooh, we're going for it. Ooh, we're going. Nice. Rudo, you want to explain what's going on here in this fight? I would love to. So Plant Lane um, is a really interesting fight because once again, uh, we're able to aid the way it using Blank in this fight, but the only way that we can actually bring Blank into this fight is for Zidane to either completely die or uh, go straight into critical. It's much easier it. for wow. us to just, let's go, to just uh, have Zidane um, attack himself. Um, but more often than not, um, at least one of your party members' ATB will be quite low, which means that Plant Brain will get in front of at least somebody and it can start to get messy because typically the first thing that Plant Brain will do while Zidane's still alive is cast a spell called Pollen, um, which will put um, party, uh, bl uh, blind among all of your party members which is only really a problem for Blank or Zidane, as they're the only ones actually dealing physical attack. Despite Fire Sword looking like a physical, um, it attacks like a magical attack and uh, can't be affected by Blind. So, uh, usually the strategy is you let Plant Lane have its turn, uh, wait for everyone's ATB to fill, and then you have Vivi uh, successfully kill Zidane without any worry, and then hold the ATB with uh, Steiner while all that's going on. Quickly change to Blank, have him have his turn, and then while Blank's ATV is actually refilling, you can uh, do the entire animation for Fire Sword so that Blank then very cleanly fits in and finishes the fight for you. Um, but because our ATVs were nice and full, we actually didn't let Plant Brain have a single turn, which is very fortunate. Um, but moving into this fight in particular, uh, Zidane is currently on 22, 20 experience here. He needs another. 27 experience to hit level 3. So as long as um, Vivi and uh, Zidane alone, alone no, get these encounters. My, it ate my L1. Okay. <laughs> Let's, at That's least okay. we're not targeting ourselves. Yeah. 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 <laughs> we're not targeting ourselves. That's the most important thing. Um, so that would have could that could have been a, basically a perfect Plant Spiders fight. Um, these guys yeah. can cast Thunder, which we could be seeing. No? We're not going to see it? Oh, that's pretty good. Um, Thunder is pretty slow, the technical attack itself isn't too bad, but ideally we just want to uh, spread the experience in a way to make sure that ideally that Sidan hits level 3 here, yeah. which we're going to be able to do. Because um, the, next, the next boss fight is pretty hard to do and pretty dangerous at any level lower than level 3. Yeah, level 1 you should never see in a speedrun setting. No. Level 2, if you get basically no encounters, or if all of your encounters are terrible and you have to flee from all of them, then you can see it. Level 2 is awful. Um, level three is fine. Yeah. Level, level four is kind of where you want to be at, but yeah. Um, and then um, something I also kind of want to mention really quick. Um, well, a couple of things. So I kit. So in the forest, what I was trying, what I was aiming for, was there's an ability that we're that we try to get a three AP for uh, protect, which is protect girls. Um, and so since I since I got the one encounter, which gave me one AP, um, the Dendrobium, which was the flower enemy that I fought, if you kill that with uh, all three members, you get two AP from it. So that gives you that gives you three AP, which is the number that we're typically looking for. Not to mention also gets us just more experience because with three party members up, it gives you 13 experience each, and we need to get the we need to get the 47 experience to get level three. So, what I was aiming to do there for the plant spiders was I wanted to um, have Zidane attack Steiner and then Blank attack himself, and then Vivi 
fire all the plant spiders while my L1 got eaten um, for some reason. So we just killed three plant spiders with uh, with the two of them to split the three, the 66 experience between the two of them. So, um, what something that something that um, is important with FF9 is we because the combat is. I mean, it's not it's slow, but it's like it does move faster than people I think like to give it credit for. Um, we do like to count damage on bosses, so I actually. <laughs> I actually can show off really quick my calculator. Yes, the calculator. The calculator <laughs> that the I use. Oh my god! The old, oh, the old wow. Canon MP twenty one D. Wait, wait, are you serious? You use that on every run? Oh yeah. I didn't know that. Glorious. Yeah, I, that's my that's my calculator. I thought you just had a little pocket calculator. <laughs> no, no, that's the calculator that I use. That's Has incredible. it got like a tape deck in the top? So. uh... <laughs> Me and my trusty Canon MP21D. <laughs> that is so funny. <laughs> I actually got it. So I used to be an assistant manager for a family dollar and the store that I was working at actually closed down. <laughs> so they were just gonna toss it. And I was like, hey, you think I can grab <laughs> this that? This is perfect for my <laughs> <laughs> nine speed run. Excuse me. <laughs> and it just sat in a bag for like four years. And then I was like, you know what? I was looking for a calculator one day and I just like, I just threw it on my desk. <laughs> and I was like, we're just gonna use this. So I love knowing, I love knowing that your your PS2 is not the oldest piece of hardware that you use for speedrunning. It's also not the biggest. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, so, <laughs> sorry, that's really funny. I had to, I had to show off the tech. Thank you. Yeah, show off the hardware you use. <laughs> um, so a little bit of catch up in what happened in the story here. We uh, escaped Evil Forest after killing the plant brain. Um, unfortunately, that meant that the Evil Forest started to petrify and our good friend Blank got caught in the petrification and is now stuck there. Um, now we're out on the world map where You'll see that Amart was able to run across the uh, across the field safely. He did not get any encounters there because the title card was up and you can't get encounters while that title card is active on the screen. Uh, we'll get a little bit more into how you avoid encounters on later world map screens when we get there. Uh, but for now, we are just making our way across this little world map section, doing a safety save, and then heading into the ice cavern, which is the next sort of like, the next sort of mini dungeon that kind of ramps up the difficulty a little bit uh, in the run. I'm glad. I'm glad y'all uh, enjoy the enjoy the calculator. <laughs> I wish I had printer like receipt paper so I could do that at the end of a run. I think it would have been cool like if I started running this game and I had receipt paper, like if I just like typed out each PB on a piece of receipt paper and then just like put it somewhere just to like have that somewhere. I think that would be really neat, but alas, I do not have any. <laughs> so uh, Ice Cavern is the first real dungeon where your runs go to, you know, perish. Um, you can get swamped by encounters pretty easily here. Uh, they can really get you sometimes. But while you're navigating this dungeon, you also have to be careful of these little ice mists that we're going to see just at the top of the screen here. Um, it, trying to find the right path around them without losing too much time can be... Oh! <laughs> he can feel it on his nose. So close to <laughs> walking right into that mist. <laughs> Zidane felt a little chill on that one. <laughs> All right. It's a bit cold. <laughs> um, so something right, about so ice need, cabin. Okay. Currently, we need 48 experience, um, and there's not really a great way to do that. So Get we're just gonna try and, try and flee. It for you. Yeah, but I don't want I don't want to I don't want Steiner nice. to go down. Yeah. If anything, fine. I want Steiner to get more levels. Yeah. But um, just because we didn't get any experience on plant spiders. So Steiner only is at Steiner's only at level two right now. 
if we do kill an encounter, we could get Steiner to level three, which may, which may be uh, what we we might do that later, but we'll see. It's usually preferable to take those sorts of uh, yeah those, those those fights when Vivi has really good ATB over Zidane. If Zidane usually trumps Vivi in the oh. ATB, then we usually just take the flee. Yeah. Um, Whichever one comes up first, whichever one's fastest, typically. Um, this one's worth less. Yeah, I might. Ooh. So luckily, all the random encounters in here are very, very, very vulnerable to fire. Yes, which is all that DV has uh, access to right here. So AOE with fire will successfully kill everything. One seventeen divided by four is twenty nine. Uh, Quick math. Yeah, 29, yep. Um, <clears throat> something about Ice Cavern is that the encounter rate is actually quite low here. So getting like yeah, two encounters or unlucky. even potentially more before the boss is pretty unlucky. Um, the reason why it's so low is because the mist the mist jets do exist where um, if you run into one, it okay, forces you to get an encounter. Okay. Um, and the encounters here can be kind of nasty. You know, flans can gang up on somebody and the imps can put people to sleep so if they sleep yeah. Zidane then you can't run away. You can also get back mm. attacked. Yeah, uh, it's very easy to lose a lot of time on encounters in this uh, area. Yeah. yeah. Kind of the whole theme of Ice Cavern is uh, in least it's the really the first dungeon where you just sort of lose a bunch of time for pretty much no reason. Mm -hmm. um, you know, all the encounters as well as the boss fight just lose time for that's kind of oh, the and this boss fight. <laughs> yeah, this this boss fight is why we safety saved outside. Um, I'm gonna, I'm most likely going to play it a little safe. Well, I'm yeah. gonna try to play it a little safe, but um, you can still just die if you have a miss, which is uh, uh, not ideal. Yeah, so coming up, this is a bit of a gatekeeper in casual play and speedrunning alike. Uh, this is the first of three Black Vaults boss battles we're going to be experiencing over the next few uh, areas. This first one is particularly challenging because it is Zidane, a, a Zidane solo battle against two enemies, the Black Vaults one and the creature you're about to see him summon, the, the Sea Lion. Um, and Paying attention to Zidane's HP during this fight is extremely important because knowing when to heal versus when to attack um, is the key to surviving this fight. Sea Lion can also counter attack. If you hit it every two hits you land on Sea Lion, it will counter with a powerful spell. So it's also important to know, to count the number of turns you had in order to know um, when you need to heal to take that into account. Um, this fight started off really nice with Zidane having instant ATB. Sea Lion will always go first, um, but with Zidane having instant ATB, he's able to outspeed Black Waltz 1, okay. meaning that Black Waltz 1 will have fewer uh, turns. And Black Waltz only has spells here, so uh, one, they can be time consuming, but also they can uh, really stack up in damage if Black Waltz is able to preempt Sedane. Thankfully, Sea Lion just uses three wings, that's pretty lucky. And Black Waltz 1 goes down with three hits. So that's kind of the first phase of the fight. Now that's just Zidane versus Sea Lion. This is where counting the number of turns and paying attention to Zidane's HP nice. becomes really important. So right here, Zidane has 44 HP. That means he can survive any attack that Sea Lion throws uh, out next, whether it's a wing or a blizzard, any damage roll. Lots of wings on this fight. I don't think yeah, we've seen a single really blizzard nice. yet. Yeah, this is super nice. So Amart's going to heal here, not only because he was low enough that he would have uh, died to any blizzard, but also because the next attack will trigger the um, one of the counters that we were talking about. So he's going to attack. And the gem is going to change colors, something that not everyone notices, apparently. <laughs> and here's Blizzara, which is the first of the two counter spells. I'm going to wait here. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that's a really important part of running this game. This is kind of the first fight where it's really important to not just get your inputs in as quickly as possible, but to wait to see what the boss does, followed, and then react accordingly. 
it, it feels Sadly counterintuitive. With 80, Sadly, with the 84, we lost the chance at a five hit sea lion, but yeah, that's okay. Um, okay, so we're gonna get this counter. Mm -hmm. So here comes the second counter. This is Tsunami. Yep. Wing miss, please. A wing miss would be nice because that would mean that he wouldn't have to heal again. Fortunately, we don't get it. That's okay. At least we shouldn't trance. Yeah, the trance bar is moving pretty slowly. It's actually something that's uh, this is a fun fight to point that out on. Zidane just has taken like three hits since the last time his trance bar went up at all. <laughs> yeah, trans so, gain is basically a uh, like a range. You yeah. get hit 20 times and not gain any. You get hit once and gain a bunch. Right, there we go. So that was a pretty solid uh, sea lion fight. Not the best luck, but also far from the worst. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well played, anymore. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, one of the defining factors in depending how quickly that fight goes is whether or not you get in front of Black Bolt's one at the start. Um, sea lion always goes first. Um, mm -hmm. But then you yourself and uh, Black Bolt's one both start with a random amount of ATB, and sometimes even though your ATB can be completely empty, it's you, because your speed is a little bit higher than his, um, yep. you can still just about squeak in front of him, luckily. Um, yeah. So now with Black Waltz 1 uh, down, we've noticed that the mist has stopped, and our party has regained consciousness once again. It's no longer quite so chilly or something, I guess. It's like uh, not, it's, it's ice cavern, but not as ice cavern. It's, it's just a cool cavern. It's like slush, nice yeah, cavern. cool cavern, slush cavern. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Part of here is questioning Zidane if he's seen anything. He's like, no, no, it's all good. No, yeah, we're all good. We're good yeah, right? For some reason, Zidane decides not to tell them that he just fought. Wow, um, that's early. A maniacal wizard and his giant sea snake friend. <laughs> It's no big deal. It's, that it's no big deal. Stuff. Zidane handled it. Casual stuff. It's actually a fun little bit of foreshadowing for something that happens much later in the game with Zidane refusing to accept help cool. from people. But that comes, that'll be, that'll be in part two on December 21st. <laughs> so once again, um, we had an encounter here that's best just to flee from, especially after Sea Lion. We start to pay attention to Zidane's level a little less because it's like not as important. I mean, it's still important, but, like, from here forward, like, the leveling up experience growth kind of evens out whether you're at level 3 or level 4. Four encounter four. ice cavern. Wow, a four encounter ice cavern is pretty rough. Wow. That's, that's real bad. I might four take times. this, honestly. That's a lot well, of shouldn't get any Ooh. bag attacks. That's true. Okay, never mind. We got it. I can't. That's that's really unlucky, by the way. Yeah. So we're like, up to seven encounters overall already, which is pretty high for um, leaving yeah. Ice Cavern. A lot of runners who would be going for like a a sub eight fifty or a world record run would um would have reset by now. But that's I would have smashed my reset you. button. Absolutely. Yeah, mash that reset button. I don't, know, yeah. I don't know if I would reset. I would probably no. take it to at least Black Waltz, too. Yeah, that's fair. But I'm also I'm also very much a a runner that doesn't like to reset. <laughs> so I like resetting just so I can blame my problems on the game. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind Fair. the fact that I ran around in circles for a few minutes on that one hostile screen. It's still the game's fault. Absolutely. Far easier than accepting responsibility right. in this game. <laughs> Far easier. All right. Darn so, right. who's ready for my Garnet name? Oh, yeah, Ooh. please. If it's not so, the name right. that I have in my head, I'm going to be very disappointed. So, it here, Garnet needs to assume an alias so that people don't know she's the princess. She takes the dame's dagger and asks him about it. Like, what is this weapon called? and she gets a brilliant idea based on looking at this dagger. Clearly, because she has a dagger, she's gonna name herself. Haircut. 
<laughs> That's an okay name. I, I think Knife would have been a much better name, but... Knife was my second option, for what it's worth. Those are my two favorites to name her in marathons. Haircut and Knife. Another, another popular one is Hot Dog. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's us metagaming a little bit. That's a bit of a metagamed foreshadowing moment. Uh, naming her Haircut. <laughs> when she's looking at Zidane's uh, dagger. All right, Brutals, tell us about stutter stepping. Oh, I love stutter stepping. It's I really best, do. So, uh, I uh, do too. It, in stark contrast to the, in, the dungeons we've too. seen so far. <laughs> oh, yeah, this guy's cheating. Oh, stop it. <laughs> I need a new um, commentator. <laughs> so on the overworld, um, unlike in the dungeons, uh, your, your danger valor only increases when you travel um, more than a frame, I believe. So if you tap down and let go of it instantly, you can travel a tiny bit of distance without increasing your danger value. Um, this doesn't quite include the forests, though, so that is exactly why Amart decided to avoid the forest. If you go through them, you still have a, a chance to get a friendly monster battle, and uh, they are far, far, far slower because they ask you really silly questions, and if you decide to flee from them, you end up losing almost all of your money. Um, um, so you have to, you have to uh, give them a, a bit of a slap for them to let you go. Yeah, so we walk say, around it's an the forest moral usually. crisis. Yeah, because you have to, you have to hit a friendly monster, and there aren't that no. many friendly things in this game. No. They definitely <laughs> deserve it. They deserve it. Get in in the way. I'll give them a big old slap. You're heartless. So, <laughs> so um, if we have, actually, right now would be a good time. If you have any announcements or things you need to read, um, oh, yeah. now well, would be actually a good time to do that. There are always announcements. Uh, well, first of all, if you are enjoying the run here on uh, Time Capsule, make sure you follow our runner. That is twitch.tv slash amart. And thank you all for being here. Uh, also, if you missed out on any of our GDQ Hotfix shows, make sure to check out the archive of past runs and shows at youtube.com slash games done quick uh, and if you are watching on youtube feel free to join us over here on twitch.tv slash games done quick to check out the shows live uh, starting most nights at 7 p.m eastern time uh, and while you're there hotfix is funded in part thanks to subscriptions and bits so please consider subscribing to the channel to help support future broadcasts we sincerely appreciate it um, and that's all i got for now i think awesome Perfect. thank you Um, so this is a, kind of a, a bit of a plot dump, sort of. Kind of just 10 minutes of just sort of doing nothing. We're just going to run around, hit some plot triggers, talk to some people. It's really about it um, for a little while. Um, I'm going to do our first little bit of shopping here, too. Um, and then we're going to... The story is going to start, you know, taking some drastic turns in this place. So this is kind of, a, this is kind of an interesting place because it seems really sleepy at first and then... Uh, the, the the plot's going to thicken quite All quickly. Right. Are we gonna get the Chicago Bear, the '85 Bears, or are we gonna get the the soccer defense team? Eh. Oh, 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 oh! Turned into the Chicago Bears there for a moment. Wow. The '85 Bears, not today's Bears. Sorry, Bears man. Yeah. Sorry, we were talking about football there. Yeah, yeah. we were talking about American hand football. egg, according to Brutals. <laughs> um. So those kids have random movement. They can block you. So sometimes they decide to be linebackers. Um, yeah. So when I said earlier that we have to hit some plot triggers, uh, you're kind of uh, sort of required, quote unquote, to um, like explore the village a bit. So the one area you do have to enter is the pumpkin patch. So we enter and exit that area. And then you're required to enter two other buildings. So we just enter and exit the bar twice. And that sort of... Um, set some flags that allow the next plot points to be unlocked, um, such as talking to BB here, and then later talking to Dagger in the shop, or sorry, uh, Haircut in the shop. Um, yeah, put some respect on the name and, Haircut. Yeah, so that's kind of a <laughs> neat little thing. They want you to explore the village, so they sort of force you to do it like an invisible way. So I think this is the first opportunity for us to... Uh have a bunch of different dialogue options where it actually kind yes. of begins to matter just a tiny bit which one we pick. Um, mm -hmm. So in this instance, it's actually better to insult haircut. <laughs> tell, <laughs> we want to tell her her hair looks bad because it saves time. And yes, I'm all about that. what we're saying to her. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, that's basically a paraphrase of this conversation. Zidane walks into the shop and is just like, man, I don't like your hair. Maybe you should cut it, haircut. It's like, fine, I'm going back, I'm going back to the inn. <laughs> uh, with the first shot right here, uh, we have to pick up anything that we didn't get from Prison Cage. So if we stole the broadsword, we will pick up the leather wrist. And if we picked up the leather wrist, then we'll be buying the iron sword, which is the weapon that we would have gotten off of Blank if we swapped him for the broadsword and tricked him into believing it was a better weapon. Um, then we pick up a few little feather hats on the side because we'll need them for um, synthing into far, far better items later. And yep. a bunch of regular wrists as well, which we'll be using in our little, our little dubious money plans. Yeah, we have, uh, <laughs> we have some we have some money plans coming up in about uh, about a half hour or twenty minutes, twenty five minutes or so. Yeah. These wrists going to be making making big moves. Yeah, one of the few. I don't even know if it's necessarily a glitch, as far as it, as much nah. as it's an it's an oversight. It's an oversight, it's an yeah, oversight in the game that we take advantage of to get a lot a lot of gill um, in a bit. Um, and now here's here's Steiner just being a nice guy, just as kind as a as a knight of his order would be expected to be, helping this little girl run this bar because. Strangely enough, throughout the village, we're beginning to notice there are no adults around. It's all children. So, it's all, it's Final Fantasy. Bar doesn't credit. Children, children run bars in every Final Fantasy. That's true. Shout outs to Marlene. <laughs> another, <laughs> fun, <laughs> another fun thing that's coming up. Uh, as soon as we gain control of Zidane again here, and we're running back through the lobby of the inn, there's a little cat on the... Uh, on the fireplace that you can pet if you want to. I usually try to during my runs, but it, it loses Aww. time. <laughs> that's so that's so precious. I just I just like cats, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's totally fair. That is totally fair. Don't forget to turn the turbo off. We can't be having someone getting trapped in the VV vortex <laughs> now. The VV can we? vortex, yes. <laughs> the that's, VV that's vortex. A... Uh, the BB uh, Vortex. Once you finish this little bit of dialogue here, Zidane has a little thought to himself before he's supposed to proceed into the windmill on the left. Um, but if you mash X a little bit too hard, it's very easy to, to get stuck back in and keep talking to BB. Flawless Assuring escape. them that everything's going to be all right while he plots your demise. <laughs> yeah, so um, what happened there is uh, Zidane was able to hear Vivi's like cries from through the pipe in the ground and started talking to Vivi and noticed that Vivi is uh, stuck underground and is also Crocodile hearing chocobo tears. sounds. Um, so this is where the plot starts to thicken a bit. Um, the Dane and De and Haircut here are going to notice that this barrel has the Alexandrian crest on it. Uh, so some shady things are going on here and Alexandria is involved somehow. Yeah. We also have our first chocobo sighting. That's true. Team Quet all the way. Team Quet all the way. <laughs> um, this is also the, the point in the game when um, you start to learn a little bit more about why Dagger wanted to leave um, Alexandria, why she wanted Tantalus to help her escape, uh, because she has been suspicious of her mother, Queen Braun. She's been behaving strangely lately in a way that Dagger doesn't really know what's going on. And so she's trying to get into the neighboring kingdom, Lindblum, where uh, her uncle Sid is the leader that she believes can help in some way. Uh, but first, we're gonna go deeper into this um, into this underground factory here to uh, investigate what's going on and try to find Vivi. And we find him inside this shipping container, basically. Yeah, Vivi was hey, abducted um, earlier in Dali when he was looking at the windmill and he heard chocobos, uh, a couple kids ran up and abdu literally abducted him um, and took him into the underground for reasons that we will find out soon. All right. Gotta, this... gotta do a, sh a little menu here just to pop some equipment. So the equipment we're swapping around here is we're, we're putting a special hat on Dagger here to increase her wind damage for later so that she can deal a lot of damage physically with her magic racket. And we're equipping Zidane with a leather wrist to take the wrist off of him, more importantly, so that we can use it for our money plans. 
And um, we are also taking the silk shirt off of Zidane um, so that we can give it to Vivi so that he can survive an upcoming boss battle's uh, thunder attack. Um, it's actually really important that you make sure that Vivi's got that shirt on specifically yes. because yes. Uh, he will just die and you really can't afford to let that happen. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, that's actually kind of pretty much run over if it happens. There's kind of yeah. nothing you can do about mm -hmm. it. So we arrive to the end of this manufacturing line and we discover that this underground factory is creating black mages that look like Vivi. Um, and obviously Vivi, uh, being unaware of his uh, background, which we'll get into as the game unfolds, Vivi's very uh, unnerved by this because it's essentially like walking into a factory and seeing people being made for him. Um, so for some reason, Alexandria is manufacturing black mages for purposes that we don't know yet, but it really doesn't look good. And now we have comedic relief with Steiner here. Yeah, Steiner's <laughs> good for that. <laughs> Very good for that. Um, there's a little bit of tech there. We pick up a couple items there because you have to wait for Mora to walk down the tower anyway. So if you yep. enter yep. his little house too fast, then he won't be there. So, you notice yep. that Amart waited outside the door for just a few seconds just to yeah. make sure. Because if you do go in early, you waste even more time. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Steiner's He's asking so polite. for permission to use the airship. All right, are we stabbing the barrel or are we watching the barrel? Oh, I'm team stab personally. When Absolutely. It marathons. <laughs> I'm team follow your heart. <laughs> Brutal. Follow your dreams. You should like hold, close your eyes, hold down for a few seconds and then press X and fuck you know, <laughs> let, uh, let the game decide, let the man. Just turn decide. Down. No, listen, <laughs> Brutals, the game decides enough already. We don't need it to decide another thing for us. Yeah. <laughs> team stab. <laughs> and it's team stab. I love watching um, Steiner get All right, fine. We'll watch, we'll watch the stab. <laughs> Normally you would do the other option, but... All right, so Steiner's going to stab the barrel. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, <laughs> We're gonna, see a, really go funny, we're gonna <laughs> see a really funny uh, thing scene play out. Steiner's Bonk. gonna or Zidane's gonna <laughs> jump on Steiner's head. <laughs> Steiner's gonna fall like delayed <laughs> and then just keep jumping up and down. Something 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 I'd love to point out about this game is how funny it is. It is a uh, really funny game. Like there's so many moments of like physical and and like and like dialogue comedy that just like even after running it for however many hundreds of hours over the past year it still makes me laugh yeah it's um, still great obviously when you're doing like a serious pp attempt you'll go for the faster option but we'll treat y'all to the funny option yeah the what observing the barrel instead of stabbing it is about i think it's close to 10 seconds faster yeah and now we have black waltz too and uh okay well let's hope this, this doesn't fight. go with like a train wreck so this fight has a mechanic where once the boss is at half health, he's going to counter with Fyra that targets everybody except for Haircut. Um, and we're going to attempt to skip this. The way that we're going to skip this is we're going to bring the boss just before the half health threshold. And we're going to see who he targets. Um, wh whomever he targets, we are going to kill that character off and then attack the boss to push him past half health. Nice, he targeted Vivi. That's really Very good. Nice. That's what we want here. Um, so we can now just kill off Vivi and then have Zidane and Steiner attack, who are by far our biggest damage dealers here. Um, and you will never see the fire. The fire just doesn't happen because... Oh, and we got Waltz. Trance. Oh, and we got Trance. So this is an example of Trance actually being useful because it can end the fight uh, earlier with uh, free energy. So mm -hmm. we got lucky here. Also, something to note on this fight is that Zidane is faster than this boss, too. So Zidane can get in uh, two turns for Black Waltz 2's 1. That was, that was actually a very good fight. Now let's nice. pray for two Ether drop. Yeah, two Ethers, yeah, two Ethers. Yeah, that would be helpful. No, we, did get a, we did get a Zagnol card, which is okay. really nice. Okay. That's good. Oh, cards. It. Now, okay, this, is important important yeah, this is a really important section. Yeah, this is an important section to not mash here. through too quickly because you can actually soft lock the game if you do. Bless you. Okay, good. Um, so I waited right... like an extra two seconds. Yeah. Just to be sure. 
So right there, you want to pick the second option to immediately board the airship, but you want to wait until Steiner starts turning to the left. If you do it too fast, the game will soft lock. Uh, and this actually was not known for several years. They would, people were just like, why does my game randomly soft lock here? And then they figured out it's because you picked the dialogue option too fast. Um, so it's a nice little uh, cheeky way to kill runs that are really bad. Say, oops, I guess I was too fast. Oh, Darn. oops, I mashed too fast. Oops, My I never got to turn on turbo. For me, oh, one oops. time when I was, like, starting to really improve at this game, and I was, like, three minutes ahead. Yeah. <laughs> that was heartbreaking. Yeah, that could also happen. Yeah, no, that was a very uh, clean Black Waltz 2 fight. Um, Black Waltz 2 will always drop an ether, which is always a thousand kill. Sometimes can drop two ethers, um, which is a nice extra bit of deal. Now we've got some cutscenes coming up. All right, so Brutals. I explained Black Waltz 1, Mythic explained Black Waltz 2. Are you ready to take the mantle for Black Waltz 3? Always. But we have got a little bit more, but more incredible in RNG just before yes, that, though, don't we yes, not? Yes. Do we not? Yes, we do. I Even wanna, the cutscenes in this game can be RNG. RNG. <laughs> I, I want yes. Brutals only, only talking about this RNG. <laughs> I, I just I just want to hear the absolute tirade that Brutals will go on here. This is this is the bit. This is this is where you save all the time, right here. So on Vivi is having a very <laughs> interesting discussion here with this black mage who is very. Uh, well, he's, got, he's, oh, he's doing the ship. He's doing that's his thing. The, and uh, I think that's actually he's doing the a best thing. dialogue <laughs> RNG that we got. Yeah, well, actually, it can come a little closer, right? Is that not quicker? Maybe the the, the Black closer, Mage on the right there. That's still it, pretty it, good. The, the bad RNG is the Black Mage decides to walk all the way down the back to that lift there, and Vivi's like, hey, hey, hold up, where, where are you going? And he, he, he walks on all the way down, go and see what he's saying, go and have a little another go, and then when he finds out he's still not on any of it, he walks all the way back, all the way back, and you just got to stand there and watch him, and he takes his time. Oh, he does. He loves it. He, he's 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 uh, getting paid by the hour, so he's you know just gonna go nice and slow to draw that paycheck as big as he can get it. <laughs> um, so the the technical explanation for what happened there in the brig is this game uh, is known for RNG, and one of the back forms of RNG it has is what we call event RNG. Um, there is basically just random delays or. Um, variants in events in this game based upon where the um, our, the random number pointer is at in the memory. Um, so there uh, you just get various different VV and Black Mage patterns depending on where the RNG pointer is. And that happens sig a, a lot throughout the run, like way more than you'll ever notice, but that's like one of the biggest spots, so that's why I would like to kind of make fun of it. I believe that um, when we're so very, very politely insulting Dagger's haircut back in Dali as well. <laughs> the amount of times they turn their head from side to side is is based on that RNG as well. Yep, it's not quite correct. as obvious. That is correct. Uh, yep. Yeah. Uh, that one is... Uh, I believe if their heads start to the left, it's like uh, some number of frames faster, or if they start to the right, it's some number yeah. of frames faster. Um, mm -hmm. Again, that's just based on where the... Uh, the uh, the indexes or the the random number pointer in the memory yeah, yeah. um and if anybody uh, out there is super geeky about things like you know reading memory addresses and all that i encourage you to watch the tasks of this game yes it's oh, amazing it's so uh, you wild. will be able to see the memory and the art the random number pointer live <laughs> in yeah. the task and you can see in some places it advances really fast yeah yeah, the Taz for this game made by Lil Gecko is one of the coolest, like, speedrunning Tazes I've ever seen. Yeah, it's it's ridiculous. It's, it's wild. Yeah. So a little bit about what's going on here in the story. Um, Steiner uh, had the plan because he, re he knew that this cargo ship was going to Alexandria, and his goal right now is to get Garnet back to Alexandria and have Zidane imprisoned for... Uh, trying to uh, kidnap her. Uh, meanwhile, he doesn't realize that Zidane and Garnet and the others know that this is going to Alexandria, so Zidane hatches the idea to play along with it and then basically hijack the ship to steer it towards Lindblom. However, Sounds all of this gets thrown, thrown a wrench. Um, 
because Black Waltz 3, the third of the three Black Waltzes we'll be fighting, comes, and their mission is to take back the princess and kill everyone else. Just get the princess back to Alexandria as their only goal. Um, Bible thumbs for all of Vivi's fallen brethren. brethren. So once... So before... Yeah, go, go ahead, Brutals. Be be before we walk into the fight, you are given one last opportunity to customize your party if there's any, more, any changes you want to make. You're not allowed to save it, though. So if you if you do die, you have to go all the way back to Dali. Um, so before when we're going into this fight, um, ATBs are set, so everyone starts from zero. Um, Vivi begins by entering his own trance state. It's when Vivi's trance um, becomes available in the game, I believe, for the first time as well. Um, and essentially, the entire fight uh, can't really go wrong unless we didn't put that silk shirt on Vivi and he, he can't, he's not able to tank the, the attack from turn two. Because uh, Vivi, uh, Zidane is nice and fast, he's going to be able to go quick. Um, when he is struck by a physical attack, Black Waltz reacts by taking 72. off like this. 72 is a good roll from uh, Black Waltz from Zidane here. Um, so the turn order is usually always going to be Steiner first. He's going to hit Ooh, him. The okay. 270 is, is that's, that's, that's the high roll. roll. That's, oh, that's yeah. the good one. Uh, then we're going to have um, Vivi having his turn here. Vivi's trance um, doesn't actually alter his attack, but it does allow him to do two spells in one turn instead. Um, because Black Waltz 3 is now flying, Zidane can't attack him anymore. We can use Zidane to steal from him, but we don't need to do that anymore in this route. We don't need the extra kill. So by doing so, we actually just lose just a little bit of time because we may steal some other stuff that we don't want, which wouldn't need to sell and all that sort of stuff. So instead, we're just going to attack it. Um, the only RNG here really is that if we keep getting these good rolls, which we're not seeing enough of, I don't think, yeah, we can actually end it really with it. three VV attacks instead of four which means that we won't have to see Vivi's D-Trance and uh, it makes the fight roughly about 15 seconds quicker or so. Yeah, yeah, about, about 15 um, to 20. Yeah, so this is actually one of the very few fights in the run, which is the closest thing to scripted that you're going to get. Yeah. And the only difference is whether or not uh, Vivi gets good damage rolls and you don't see the, you, you skip the D-Trance animation or not. Um, However, it's funny because Scripted does not necessarily mean that it doesn't require good execution because oh, that, it, that yes. is that is a fight where if you are not right on top of your inputs, it can go south so quickly because yes. the party is not strong enough to uh, tank mm -hmm. more than one Thundara from Black yeah. Wolves 3. Yeah, um, good point, good point. We are but, equipped to deal with just the one Thundara, yeah. and that is it. If we take yeah. any more than that, people will start dropping. Yeah. And because Steiner mm -hmm. deals the majority of his damage with Fire Sword, VV is usually the first one to go, so then you yeah. start getting combination fails, and it's, yeah. it's messy. It's yes. real yes. messy. It's Steiner cannot use uh, really Magic bad. Sword without VV in the party or um, or standing. So, yeah. um, But, you know, perfect fight there, other than not getting the D-Trans skip. But again, that's mostly down to luck. Um, so now Black Waltz 3 is kind of losing his mind a little bit and uh, hijacks the uh, little airship that uh, was being flown by Zorn and Thorn, who are the creators of the Black Waltzes. And if you'll excuse the pun, they're going to be a little bit of a thorn in our sides for a lot of the rest of the run. You can boo me, I know, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> and so now, at this point, uh, Zidane... <laughs> sorry, I'm, I'm workshopping my Type 5 right now. Um, okay. <laughs> At this point, Zidane basically tells Dagger, like, it's up to her whether she wants to go to Lindblum or Alexandria. And as soon as she chooses Alexandria, Steiner begrudgingly accepts to help them pilot the ship away from Black Waltz 3 into oh. this really fun FMV where a lot of action happens. It's one of the coolest FMVs in the game. This is, uh, we like to we like to joke around that uh, Square sort of blew their FMV budget on this yeah. because there's a yeah. very stark contrast between this FMV and then the quality of the scene immediately after it, um, which we'll, we'll point out here in a minute. Um, also, one of my favorite parts is when Zorn and Thorn just jump out of their airship. Like, sure, yeah. They just, they just, just gone. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so, as I mentioned, I explained Black Waltz 1, Mythic explained Black Waltz 2, and Brutal explained Black Waltz 3. My next more important follow-up question is, do the three of you want to cosplay as the three Black Waltzes sometime? 
Uh, I mean, if you could find a way for me to levitate, I'm down. Yeah, I mean, that's, that, <laughs> should, that should be easy. <laughs> did you say levitate? Yeah. I did say levitate. So, uh... Can we I talk would have about to become birds? a bird. You, you want to talk uh, about birds? Let's talk about birds. <laughs> Let's well, hang on, hang on, hang on. Before we birds. do that, so you guys just watched that FMV. Now look at the quality immediately <laughs> yeah, after. Yeah. yeah, we don't get to watch the airship um, fly all the way to Lindblom in the FMV. They ran yeah. out of money, so now it's just a model on the world map. <laughs> it's like it's like a, that meme where uh, they draw the first half of the horse absolutely beautifully, and the second one is like a fourth grade drawing yeah, of the yeah. horse. <laughs> <laughs> Um, oh boy, cosplay. <laughs> <laughs> so does that mean that you're going to be sea lion seas? Well, yeah, uh, well, I can, Wait, I can be... sea lion no. or sea slion? I'm, oh boy. Oh, it's, oh too, boy. it's too early in the run for us to be doing these many puns, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> um, so... Basically, what happened there is Black Waltz, we were able to escape Black Waltz 3 narrowly, but um, a major piece of in infrastructure connecting the kingdoms of Alexandria and Lindblom uh, is destroyed in the process, the South Gate, like, airship passage. Um, so that that's kind of foreshadowing some conflict to come. And it's also kind of makes this a point of no return. We've crossed the border out of Alexandria and are heading towards the relatively safe haven of Lindblom, but there's a lot of unanswered questions. Why was Alexandria making those black mages? What is Steiner going to do about uh, Dagger? You know, Steiner's having this conflict of Dagger, like, he's sworn to protect her, but she's doing something that goes directly against uh, all of his other duties as a member of the Alexandrian knights. And um, it's just, uh, at this point, we kind of enter into the fabulous city of Lindblom, which is one of my personal favorite fantasy cities. Um, yeah, super cool. But which we also affectionately refer to as Plot City, because oh, every time we glorious. come here, there's a lot of text boxes to get through. <laughs> there's uh, quite a few. Quite a few. A lot of, lot of just moving around and... And yeah. Lots of shopping to do, at least. That's cool. We like That's shopping, true. right? Yeah. yeah. It, is, it is pretty high-octane shopping, to be fair. Yeah. <laughs> Extremely high-octane shopping. This is, this is actually a, um, a point in the run where you're going to start to see menus and shops begin to get steadily more complicated. A major part of the skill in this run and the routing of this run is swapping out equipment and abilities and, and, and managing your gill. Um, so that you can always buy the equipment you need by selling old equipment you're not using anymore. Um, you know, making sure that each character has the right equipment uh, attached on each boss fight so that they can learn the abilities they're going to need later. It becomes very, like, almost like a juggling act to make sure you're doing everything right in each menu. And as the yeah. game gets, as we get further into the game, the menus become more complex. And I think Lindblum's first shop is a nice example of, like, it is, it is a good deal more complex than the Dolly shop was, and it only gets a little bit more steadily um, complex from there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this game is a, a lot of micromanagement of your resources yes. and both your equipment and your abilities and your guilt. Um, but it's it, in that, it allows you to, you know, sort of decide where you want to compromise and where you, want, where you don't want to. For example, we're not going to... In some cases, we're not going to put every single optimal ability and equipment on for every single fight, because sometimes it's just not worth the time to put certain things on. Um, and this game kind of allows you the freedom of deciding whether or not you want to do that or not, and for which fights you want to do that, where you really want to you know, make sure the fight is as good as possible versus um, having a really fast setup for it. Um, and so... Uh, yeah, that's just kind of uh, uh, one of the ways that menuing in this game is really cool. So you have a lot a of large part with the, cool. with the starting on your gear as well as the who, way the abilities are learned, isn't it? Also, who, who would win? One Knight of Pluto captain or one Gwaki boy? <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's the Iron Fist of Justice, my guy. <laughs> there are 
a good number of moments in this game where a character punches another character and I always laugh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I still... an insect just got decked by a dude with a gauntlet. Yeah. In the face. Yeah, it's all good. <laughs> all good. So here we're going to meet our fifth party member. Um... Zidane is in the castle, and he says uh, he, he can't eat that snobby castle food. And Zidane is originally from Lindblom. Well, he has lived in Lindblom for most of his life. Do I... Just two acceptable names name here. Freya. There's two acceptable names. I'm judging you very intently. Okay, fine. <laughs> fine. Also, I, uh, I, know which, I know a safe one for you, so... <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, also, something you can't unsee is... Uh, that guy's mustache is actually his nose hair. Yep. Oh You're my gosh, are you kidding me? Why'd you have to point that out? To me? I also Welcome really like on. tracking um, tracking the old man in the corner passing out on the uh, on the bar. <laughs> Ratchel. <laughs> Ratchel. <laughs> is that's a safe one for you, right, Mythic? Yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, the other okay, one would be cool. Rat Jam. The, uh, I was the... gonna go with Rat Jam, but I also would have I, I accepted. I went with Rat uh, Jam earlier in the year for my for my marathon run. So mm -hmm. I also would have accepted Van Halen. <laughs> Van, well, it's only Lockable. it's only seven, I believe. <laughs> oh, can you not? Oh, that's that's a that's a PC but, version thing. You're right. For some so reason, the PC go, version. Like, yeah. V A N H A. I would have just cut the E. Might as for well some, jump. For some reason, the HD version of this game lets you name your characters an extra letter. <laughs> for whatever reason. <laughs> um, so Freya is our fifth party member. She will be, uh, along with Steiner and Zidane, and one character that we'll meet later um, in the second half of this uh, showcase, um, she's going to be one of the main party members in the end game. So pretty much immediately after she joins the party, we're going to start setting her up to start learning some abilities that are going to be important way down the road. Mm -hmm. um, but for now, we've got some more cutscenes to get through. Um, just a lot of plot dump. Uh, Garnet is talking to Sid about uh, how she is concerned about what's going on with Braun, and Sid reveals that he was actually the one who hired Tantalus to kidnap Queen uh, Princess Garnet to bring her here to Lindblom. And as you may notice, Sid is a bug. <laughs> he a bug. He's a big old what? bug. <laughs> He's an oglop. He's been turned into an oglop by his wife, his estranged wife Hilda, who turned him into an, a bug when she caught him cheating on her. Whoa, 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 whoa! What they say at this point though is that some thieves broke into the oh, mansion in right. the middle of the night I'm and sorry. poisoned him. You're yeah. right. Spoiler can't, alert! I'm can't sorry, believe. everyone. Just I can't believe you would out our buddy like that. <laughs> yeah. I'm just going to leave now. No, don't. Stay. I'll miss you. <laughs> this. Oh. Gosh, Perfect tutorial bro, skip. you sure know a lot. Yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, so we'll be seeing those two little Moogles. Those are, those are the tutorial Moogles. They pop in in ATEs every now and then. Um, you just say no to them. It's fine. Uh... And now we're going to go to the... Uh, Shopping. It's called the business district, I believe. I just call it the yes. mall. Yes. The mall. <laughs> yeah, we're just going to the mall. It's fine. Uh, so right. this, this is where I mentioned earlier that we're going to sell our hard-earned ethers. And then hopefully get a bunch of ethers oh. back. We're also going to sell a uh, phoenix pinion. Uh, the other item that uh, we were talking about being... Uh, valuable cell item and then buy some equipment to set up the characters and other equipment to synthesize into other items the synth shop is a cool a cool feature of ff9 that basically incentivizes you to get rid of old equipment by synthesizing it into new stuff um who wants to talk about the cotton robes that amar just bought the this money is Brutal's plan. territory. The money plant. Mm -hmm. Go on, Brutal. So, I don't actually know the numbers behind it, but um, essentially the, the cost it, the cost of buying a wrist and a feather hat and synthesizing them together is uh, lower than it, than it is to sell the. the so it costs the a thousand. Itself. It costs a thousand for the synth. The um, I believe the hat is two hundred, and I believe the. I believe the wrist is 130? Yeah, so you profit 640 gil off of each. Yeah, the labor think, is 1,000. Uh, the okay. wrist is 130, and the steepled has uh, 200 and 
200 something. Uh, so you profit 640 gil off of each cotton robe. Um, so hypothetically, you could do this infinitely because you can yeah, just you buy can, the materials. You can do this in your if you play this game casually. It's a good way to get a lot of money early. This is, yeah. The yeah. only thing is that you can't buy wrists in, so you have to stock up on them from Dali, and then bring them down here, and then you can you can send as many as you can from the money that you've earned between Dali and here, and then uh, take those cotton robes, sell them, buy more steeple hats, synth the rest, and so on and so forth. And you'll probably walk out with like. 20 to 30k or something like that, which is far more than yeah. Yeah. at this point in the game. When yeah. when I did my my randomizer playthrough, I would take every random encounter, and I would I just put everything into wrists and the hats, and just had enough money for if I if I was playing this on the randomizer, I would just be able to buy one of everything at every shop, pretty much like, yeah. for the next like few shops, and then when I was done learning the items that I or learning stuff off the items, I would just turn around and resell them. Yeah. Yeah, so. it's pretty busted once you discover the cotton robe trick um, for casual play. And it's also yep. very handy for speedrunning because it helps give us a little boost of um, of gill right before we start doing some um, what does more complicated it, shopping. What does it do? Because I know, I know the Tantarian routes sometimes do keep one, or do they normally keep one? We keep one, yes. And the reason okay. we keep one is twofold because the cotton robe provides plus one magic for vb uh, which mm -hmm. allows you to hit um, some nice magic breakpoints in disc two the other reason is that um it increases his defense which gives him a single digit chance to survive paper storm versus zero percent yeah <laughs> um yeah it's just it's just nice um you don't have to i don't think mitako ever kept it um but you gotcha it, it's just nice yeah too. i'm not so I'm not familiar. So the routes that I've run, I've run a, I've run a night route, a, a night no tant route, and I've run a no night no tant route, which Tantarian is an optional boss that uh, some routes do still choose to fight. Um, we'll get more into that a little bit later, but the route that I use does not do either of those. <coughs> Mythic here actually has done <laughs> quite a bit of routing in the game. Yeah, Loves. I love the just testing stuff out. This yeah, when he referred to himself as the mad scientist before, he wasn't kidding. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've uh, I attempted to use dagger to kill a boss seven hours into the run. Yeah. <laughs> and if it weren't for one, if it weren't for one move, the boss could do, it would actually be fast. I really <laughs> wish that that had worked out, honestly. <laughs> Me too. Um. But yeah, going back to that, that, that's another example of like some of the small differences that can take place in disc one between different routes of this game. Um, mm -hmm. You know, you might keep a piece of equipment that in any other route you would sell or uh, things like that. Um, yeah, the, the yeah. differences in disc one will be relatively minor. Um, yeah. The differences in routes are basically going to be whether you keep one cotton robe. Uh, we're going to be yeah. selling those cotton robes that we made when we leave Lindblom. Um, it would just be like the difference between keeping one or not. Um, routes diverge greatly in disc two, and then mm -hmm. um, uh, in disc three they still stay diverged. And then towards the end of the run and going into disc four they reconvene. Yeah, um, that's kind of cool. You're you know taking different paths to basically the same destination. Yeah, every like major route of this game has a very similar disc four after Nova Dragon. Um, and by major, I mean routes that, like, multiple people have run. Unless you um, take Quinta into Disc 4. Unless you take Quinta into Disc 4, which is something that other, that people have done, yeah. <laughs> you know they also used to take mm -hmm. Vivi into Disc 4? Yeah, yeah, back in the old Oh, and speaking of Vivi in Disc 4, Mutsky's here. I bet he knows all about that. <laughs> <laughs> That's, like, did they Did they used to do that in, like... So, I do remember I was kind of looking at some of the older uh, GDQ runs for... FF9, did they used to do that for, like, back in, like, 2013? Like, they would keep VV for, like, Necron and whatnot, and uh, is that what they, is, was it something that they did back then? The I know anti, it was something they did. The VV anti-protect strat, I don't know if that was ever actually a thing that people really did. It was just something that was kind of, like, theorized as, like, a thing you can do. Um, oh, okay. But VV, but VV on Nova Dragon was, like, actually a thing. Because you can just like throw the demon's vest on him and the magus hat for the ice boost, and then he has mm -hmm. octagon rob, which absorbs wind and water. Gotcha. So he's actually super gotcha. tanky on that fight. And uh, Nova's weak to ice, 
Um, gotcha. So that's actually something that, that was done. Um, but you have to keep a lot of things, and it's not really faster, so. Mm hmm Yeah. And now we just... Now we'll now we use a a newer. Some people think riskier strat, but really safe actually. But we'll get more into that in part two. I love Good saying things Luna. in this game are safe until they're not. Yeah. Everything's here, oh, everything sorry. is not safe until it is. Yeah. True. <laughs> like looning on death guys. So here is the most difficult uh, boss in the entire game. Once uh, Amart makes it through this, the rest of the run Ooh. is free. Uh, um, <laughs> the t Ooh, the telescope done. boss. <laughs> the rest of the run is basically an run, auto runs, from here. runs over. We're good. <laughs> yeah, <this laughs> telescope boss. Um, if we you fail a telescope blindfold on me, I'll do the rest of the run blindfold. And here we go. <laughs> I pay to see that. Uh, if you fail a telescope, <laughs> an input on telescope boss, it's not a big deal. But you earn the the eternal shame from every other runner of this game that has ever yeah. existed and will ever exist. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's just, uh, you know, existential dread. <laughs> yeah. There is one more shame that's far more eternal, which we'll be seeing a little bit later, though. Far, far, far more eternal than Telescope Boss will ever do. You're welcome, Sorry. Mutt. I did see that. Yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna win the festival. Oh, totally. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Coming up is a... Uh, a, a lengthy section of um, scripted battles that are uh, very important to win. Also, <laughs> Vivi just taking those kids' Warhammer models. Yeah. It's like one of my favorite parts. <laughs> and then uh, this guy at the counter talking crap to Steiner. <laughs> yeah. I love this. I love this little montage of different little character moments that everybody has with the random NPCs. <laughs> mm hmm. Same. Big same. Um, just now, we also uh, heard uh, Dagger singing the motif Melodies of Life uh, for the first... Not the first time, the second time, but uh, it was a, a recurring musical uh, motif throughout the game that also um, is the song that Dagger sings anytime she's feeling pensive or anxious. And you'll hear it crop up in multiple different places, including the world map theme. The lyrics others. to that version, though, really move me. <laughs> yeah, I like the part where she goes, la, 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 la. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it kind of surges. It's kind of a nice call. Like, it's a nice thing that X2 calls back to it. Um, <laughs> but... That, and that, people say that there's gives no X2 continuity. a little more. <laughs> okay, I won't get into that. <laughs> <laughs> so, right. so uh, if, I got to tone it down a little bit. If you folks watching at home couldn't tell, this is a section of the run where things kind of your mind starts to wander a little bit. <laughs> you start mm -hmm. to think like, hmm, what 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 else can I do to amuse myself as these text boxes scroll past? Uh, <laughs> I think I just uh, watched a cobweb develop in my ceiling. Yeah. <laughs> You know? <laughs> so coming up is the Festival of the Hunt, an annual tradition in Lindblom where people, where they let monsters free in the streets and people compete to see how many monsters they can kill in, uh, in, in the whole festival. And we are going to aim to win it to get some vital items. Very, very, very important. Very execution heavy. We were joking about Telescope Boss being um, the point at which the run is free, but, uh, but this is really the point after which the run is free, as long as Amart does everything exactly as he's supposed to. I'm being 100% serious. All right, I'm gonna need, <laughs> I'm gonna need full, full silence for this one. Oh, good, good. Full the real silence. question is, who's on Team Moo with me? Team Moo? Oh, we're getting stoned. <laughs> it's happening, we're gonna get slapped. <laughs> is, is Zidane faster than a squirrel? Because I don't think he is. I don't think he is either. It's a good job we haven't got a trance to lose on this fight, isn't it? Nope. Oh, <laughs> nope. oh lord. <laughs> Man, Strunk's getting really into this. Yeah. He is. Strunk loves the festival. He really loves the festival. <laughs> so it's really important that we get in front of this move because it can kill us in one hit and then we'll lose yeah. the entire hunt. 
Yeah. And we can't have that. We can't have Freya gloating again. Yeah, no. yeah, yeah. Here we go. She, she doesn't, she doesn't shut All up. All right, we're, we're gonna win this time. I'm feeling it. Oh, 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 oh man. Oh, oh, man. Oh, oh, man. Oh, no. This isn't oh, good. No. Oh, this Come is on, not Spirity good. Boy. All right, all right, we got the oh, wait. wait, Amar, Amar, wait, no. Yes. Oh, no. No. Oh, no. No. <gasps> <gasps> Uh, well, well right. thankfully, we tried. Thankfully, there are backup strats. Valiantly. Thankfully, there are backup strats. <laughs> like we said, the Petra route thinks of everything. <laughs> we 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 fought valiantly. All right. So prevailed. to be real, um, the festival of the hunt is uh, something that you can um, skip entirely if you just kill Zidane um, in the first fight there. Um, and it's actually advantageous for us to do so, not only because it's faster, but also because um, because it defaults to Freya winning the hunt. And when Freya wins the hunt, we get an item called the Coral Ring, which is very important for a number of reasons. Um, and if we didn't get it from winning the hunt, it would be pretty long before we get it. Um, the Coral Ring absorbs thunder damage as well as teaches an ability that I remember, man <laughs> uh, It teaches man. It teaches three man very useful That's abilities right. that we'll be using all of. It teaches man yes. It teaches insomniac, and it teaches lancer, which we'll That's use right. in one fight. Thank you. <laughs> it also yes. absorbs thunder. It also absorbs thunder. Yeah, it's which very, will be important. Very item. Super important. Yeah, yeah, the coral ring is one of the more important items in the whole run, especially in the early game. Yes. Ah. <clears throat> uh. Um, oh, and when we when we mentioned earlier that we don't have a trance to lose, um, <laughs> very often if your trance is like right on the edge and that move hits you first, you'll trance on that fight, and the whole point of that fight is to attack yourself. So it's really funny yeah. if you uh, if you trance. Very and by really funny, I mean it's super frustrating losing 15 seconds for no reason. I do like to think <laughs> of it in terms of um, of in universe though, where Zidane just has gets so angry and so pepped up on trance that he accidentally attacks himself and has to disqualify himself from <laughs> the hunt. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so uh, we make our way back to the castle, and a soldier from the neighboring kingdom of Bermesia, which is where Freya is originally from, or I'm sorry, uh, Rachel is originally from, and. Um, basically says Alexandria is attacking the uh, Bermesia and th they come to Lindblum to ask for request re um, reinforcements. Um, so this is the, the moment in the game when all of Dagger and Sid's fears about Queen Braun acting strangely come true. And Zidane and Freya and Vivi decide to go out to uh, Bermesia to um, see what's going on and try to help. And Dagger wants to go there too. But basically, Zidane's like, no, you shouldn't. It's too dangerous. So naturally, what Dagger does is she drugs everyone so that she and Steiner can slip out while they're um, while they're passed out. Now here we're selling those cotton robes. Going to stock up on potions in Phoenix Downs. We'll be needing both. We're also going to grab a tent here. Um, we're going to have we're going to have a couple tents uh, for the next boss, which uh, is actually one of the hardest bosses in the run. We'll talk about it more when we get there. Um, now, for one of the longest stutter steps in the run, um, I still have yet to attempt this one backwards. Yeah, um, I, I do not. This is the one I, I will probably never do this backwards. It's not that bad. I, I can do it. I mean, <laughs> I'm sure it can be done, well, but... Well, Brutals is the stutter step king, so... Yeah, <laughs> you know. This is probably... I think this is the only stutter step that I do not do backwards. Yeah, because you have to hit um, this tiny little narrow bridge. Um, so interestingly, even with um, the turbo on a controller here, I believe that you have to not not set it to the highest setting, right? No, you do. It, oh it's no, just, you set it to the do? highest setting. Yeah. Oh, you. I, I thought that if you did that, sometimes you could actually get the uh, random encounter. Oh, you could even if you had perfect stutter stepping. Well, if yeah, if okay. you had absolutely frame perfect stutter stepping, like task stutter stepping, you won't. But yeah, uh, because the the controller actually mashes a little bit faster than the game can read inputs. Um, you can still sometimes get them. You do get them a little bit more frequently than if you manually stutter really well, but yeah. No, yeah. I, no, actually, I, did, yeah. I actually got Sorry. one on my PB just the other Oof. day. Nice. <laughs> hey, me too. Yeah. <laughs> here we are in Chocobo's Forest. Um, we need to come here because we're actually going to be needing to use Chocobo's a number of times in the run. Uh, the old routes used to run back into the forest and buy Gishal Cranes to uh, call Chocobo's later. Nowadays, we don't... Uh, we don't do that. It saves us skill and it saves us time, and we're just gonna pick up greens throughout the run instead. 
Um, this is sort of our first, like, actual sort of quote-unquote big equipment setup where we're putting on a lot of the things that we bought in Lindblom. Um, onto Zidane and Freya, putting on killer abilities, putting on uh, level up on Freya. Level up on Freya is extremely important. Um, she she has level up on for most of the rest of the entire run um, because it helps her uh, grow experience at a faster rate and thus uh, makes up for the relative lack of encounters and uh, fights that give experience we'll be fighting. Um, mm -hmm, exactly. Amart's going to do a safety save here because we can, in this next, in the first room of this next dungeon, run into a really, really dangerous encounter that will completely ruin your day. If, if yeah, this is pretty wrong. much the only dungeon where we're actually going to save twice in it. Yeah, uh, this dungeon, <laughs> yeah. Uh, if you played this game casually, this is a huge difficulty spike. There's just everything in this dungeon is extremely unfair, and I'm not being sarcastic. Like, the, yeah, there's it's, so it's, many enemies in this dungeon that are just not fair. Yep. Like, they inflict they Confuse they come... on you, they yeah. buff themselves, they counter, they inflict Berserk. Like, yeah, there's mm -hmm. one enemy ridiculous. in this dungeon that has the same speed as some Disc 4 bosses. Yeah, yeah the Lamias have 50 speed, which is the max in the game. Uh, they're literally faster than some Disc 4 bosses in some cases. It's, so, in it's this ridiculous. first screen, you'll notice that Amart's talking to the the, the, the Lamesian here from as far away as possible which is uh, really, really special because if you do that, you can skip uh, an additional check before you go through this door. So Amart should not be able to get an encounter there, which he didn't, Good. But, uh, Good. fortunately. Um, that's the most uh, dangerous screen because Amart did his menu after he came out of Chocobo Forest. He doesn't currently have any way to cast play, so if he gets an encounter there, he'll actually have to battle out of it. Or, um, or get a get natural a, get a good, free. Yeah, to get a quick yeah. natural check in. Free? Natural flea. I, I, my words are not working. I'm just gonna let you three talk. <laughs> <laughs> the particularly dangerous encounter is four hornets, and especially if you get a back attack, uh, yeah, you are very likely to die. Oof. So it's yeah, I think we didn't get the encounter there. They can cast berserk, um, which just completely can derail the anything we can do to try to get away because you lose control of your character completely. Mm -hmm. Uh, here we're going to see another example of the ATB waiting that can help uh, optimize fights. Um, uh, really? That's unlucky. So, a a a Amart is going to hold in this menu, um, in this sub menu, and cancel out real quick to have Zidane do his attack. And because he was holding in the menu, the ATBs were not flowing. And because Zidane is faster than the Black Mage, he will get his next attack. I really stay to be too much. Gotcha. Yeah, so yeah, sometimes that can happen. Uh, it, 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 it can be a pretty tight window, so if you buffer out of the sub-menu a few too many times, you can lose the ATB weight trick, but it's always worth it to go for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So in <clears throat> ideal case, uh, the mage that he targeted wouldn't have gotten a turn, but he just got unlucky with the ATBs. Uh, yeah. Welcome to FF9. Yeah. ATB RNG. Fun. Uh, and then we have to run up to this mage. You could optionally skip this fight and run back and talk to the Burmesian soldier again, and you can actually get another bell from him yeah. instead of fighting this fight, which gives you yeah. a bell. It's more in counter checks, though, and you also lose the experience and the AP from this fight. So it's generally not worth it, um, but that is something you could hypothetically do. It's more in counter checks in the room with the murder hornets, so... <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So at this point in the game, uh, Rachel isn't quite strong enough to be able to kill these things in one hit. Um, unless she gets an incredibly lucky crit, I believe her crit rating is also around 2% or something unfairly small at this point in the game. Um, yeah. So if if you're given the opportunity where uh, you're waiting for AT, uh, Zidane's ATB to refill and there's nothing else you can really do, you can send her in and have a little go and see if you can get it. But for the vast majority of the time, you don't really wor worry about sending Good her night, in and wasting that time. You just go for it. Yeah. You might have noticed uh, he, Amart, immediately uh, menued after that fight and put the dagger on Zidane. Uh, that's to have access to flee. Yeah. Um, we're gonna yeah. we're gonna give Zidane his real weapon right before the boss. Um, but there, now that we're in this room, we can get an encounter with an enemy called Lamia, um, which are absolutely horrible enemies to encounter. Yeah. And uh, even with flee, they're horrible. So without flee, uh, you're. Uh, you're, you're praying to some god somewhere. Yep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's uh. Also, we just casually nice gave this enemy. Google. 
We just casually gave this Moogle like a protein shake in the form of a Koopo nut. And he just lifted that bell by himself. Koopo he lifted Koopo that bell nut. just by the scent of that Koopo nut. Oh, you're going for it. Oh, the mad lad. You can skip an encounter check in this room. Uh, it's basically pixel perfect. And then here in this room is where many a casual player shed tears. Uh, you notice that vine on the back wall? If you attempt to climb up that vine, the Moogles will tell you, don't go up there, it's dangerous. But of course, all of us as seven and eight year old kids said, I'm really tough, my party's level 10, I grinded. And then we go up there, we encounter a grand dragon, and we get deleted. Mad lad. And we hadn't saved in 10 hours, and we cry. Um, so yeah. Uh, yeah. Or you you're just didn't go have a memory first. card. Uh. So here we are about to enter into one of the, the well, the toughest boss we've faced so far, and honestly, one of the tougher bosses in the whole speed run. He's in the yeah, game. one, yeah, probably the, definitely in the top five. Yeah. Um, going to do a quick setup to get Zidane's strongest weapon on here. I'm Make sure focus everyone's healed on, up. I'm going to focus on uh, doing calculator stuff. Yeah. So. Yeah, this is fine. this is a really important fight to count damage on as well. This is probably the first like, this is the first fight in the whole run where you like must count this damage is, in order to optimize it. This is I think the it. most difficult fight in the run, personally. Yeah. But yeah, and especially yeah, casually, this also is just a super yeah. unfair fight. So um, the first thing you're gonna see a mark do is hopefully try to throw a tent at Giza, which will uh, has a uh, is it I forget the percentage, but it has a, a percentage chance of blinding and silencing, which 50%. makes the fight a lot safer. How much is it? 50%. 50%. 50%. Okay. It's a little less than 50. It's like 47 or something. Ooh, oh, that's, nice. that Oof. was a max roll. That's that, is really, it, that is a rough opener. Hopefully we get a first try tent here. <sighs> Very nice. Very good. Very, Very nice. All right, first try tent, that's really good. So the, um, one of the reasons why it's so important that we get this off is because by silencing Gizamaluk, he can actually still attempt to cast spells on you, which if he does so, it actually just completely eats his turn and he won't get a turn at all. Yeah. Yes, that's correct. Um, another thing, a couple of other things to note here. First off, Zidane is exactly one point of speed faster than Giza, so you can almost frame perfectly. If you have almost frame perfect inputs, you can A to B weight Giza here yeah. with Zidane. The other thing is that when you physically attack Giza, he has a 50% chance of countering with Crash, and uh, it takes a quite an experienced runner to understand which attacks of his are real attacks and which attacks are counters. Yeah. Um, one thing that you try to do when you're getting, you know, to a high level in this game is you try to mentally, like, visualize Giza Maluk's ATB bar uh, wherever you can to try and keep track of what's a counter and what's not. Um, this fight needs... <clears throat> Five hits with Zidane and two hits with Freya to finish off. Zidane has to survive, and Freya also kind of really wants to survive as well. Um, backups if Freya dies, but it can, it can be get carried pretty fast. <clears throat> yeah, uh, so kind of a nice time to explain. Yeah, if a character is dead at the end of a fight, they don't receive there we experience go. or AP. Nice. Very nice. Fight. Fight. That was a, that was a really that was a really good recovery from a super sketchy opener. Yeah, Just deleting Freya well, off the bat. So. I thought I wouldn't heal Freya to full. Um, I knew there was like a little risk, there was risk of Freya dying. Even if I healed Freya to full though, um, Freya would have died. Yeah, yeah no, no. you, you yeah. played it correctly, I think. Um, something to note there is that if the tents had failed, um, we would use uh, an ability called Soul Blade with Zidane, which um, adds the status of your currently equipped Thief Sword to the enemy and the ogre has darkness. So we could inflict darkness, which can give Giza a 50% chance to miss physicals, but it would not silence him, uh, which is really scary because at below 130 HP, Giza can start casting water all on the party. And yeah. if you get two water alls in a row, you're dead. End of story. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, it's... Uh... So Giza can be, a, can be a really tough run for, or a really tough fight for new runners to get the hang of. And honestly, like even really experienced runners can still struggle with Giza sometimes I, if, the, I, if the luck doesn't yeah. pan out in their favor. Like it can, it, I, I've seen out of all of the bosses in the run, Giza is probably, Giza is easily one of the three that I've seen kill runs the most often. Yeah, G yeah. But like I said, I think it's, per personally, I think it's just the toughest fight in the run. And I don't eat like, 
I don't play it optimally. I would say 90% of the time. And yeah, uh, yeah, it's a scary fight. I mean, Petra and Bomb Bomb and I, you know, <clears throat> one of the things we talked about is like, like literally everybody, like even Bomb Bomb, even I, even Petra when she was doing runs, like nobody really does Giza without making a mistake somewhere. Yeah. yeah. Right. Like yep. it just, there's just so many different lines of thinking you have to play. You have to mm -hmm. take into account and also like tracking counters, tracking turns, fitting in ATB weights, sequencing your turns properly. It's just, Some, it's a, something... it's a Gordian knot of like, Decision something I has. Something I do want to mention is um, you may like there is the option um, to get Quina uh, Quina before uh, Giza Malucrado. Um, we so we don't do this only because um, for like a it, it siphons more experience for later fights, especially Clara. Um, and be uh so it's actually more used and segmented with the limit glove strat um but we don't we don't do it in rta it's just it's just way too risky to like for the the risk reward is just it's not worth it to you have to get a go two for for revive first try pretty much yeah yeah um, so. also what's happening here is that uh <laughs> haircut is stuffed into a bag of pickles and also, if you look at that poster on the left-hand wall, it says Lind Bulm. Lind Bulm. Fun fact, that's the name, of, the, that's the name of Lind Bulm in the Japanese version. Uh, they just didn't bother to change the asset. Uh, so, there's also Steiner a fun game smuggled I like. haircut oh. into here <laughs> in a bag of pickles. Which is just absolutely wonderful. It there's is. also the a little game I like pickles. to play with tracking whether or not the one woman you talk to, Mary, um, and her uh, potential lover are facing each other when she runs over to talk to him after Steiner gives her a pep talk. I missed whether or not they were facing each other on this I, road. Did, I didn't catch it either. And yeah. honestly, I didn't even know you did that until like this past weekend, <laughs> which is which yeah. is still uh, just so funny. There are so many little things like that when you run this oh, game Trinity over and over again that you just become attuned to. And once you see it for the first time, you can't unsee it. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. That was that was a nice train seat, boss. Uh, these train seats, you can get stuck on the corners of them like super easily, oh, and you can lose so a second or two it for no reason. It's super frustrating. I practice that more than anything else in the run. <laughs> I really <laughs> don't. Yeah, train seat boss is uh, train seat boss is like the you know like first first maybe second cousin of telescope boss. Um, I would say it's yeah. closer to elevator boss, but. Okay, I can see that. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I can compromise. I can agree with that. But I think they're all pretty close to each other. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm going to save before I go into Hermesia. And this it's not because of anything other than... So... Oh, gonna, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll explain this. Um, so earlier in the year, some of you may know about the Final Fantasy Relay. And I actually ran this in the Final Fantasy Relay against Mythic and Bomb Bomb. Oh, yeah. And uh, so there's a section here where we get to it, and you can drop the bridge. And uh, yeah, it's just not... It's just yeah. not a good experience if you drop the bridge. Let's yeah, just you say can, that. You can lock yourself out of getting a chest, which we really need. And yeah, the backup really for need. it is slow, and it costs a lot of money. It's okay if you have nobles in terms of money, but if you don't have nobles, you really don't want to be doing the backup. Oh, I didn't put um, the dagger on. I should do probably here. do that. We have a superstition, at least some people do, where if you menu on a screen, it increases your chances of getting an encounter. So a lot of us <laughs> like to menu and put the and put the dagger on Zidane for flea before we actually enter Bermesia. Also, this is probably one of my favorite songs in the entire game. Yeah, it's super cool. Oh, it's so good. This is Freya's home, by the way. Uh, yeah, so... Completely destroyed by uh, people we'll find soon enough. Yeah, this was the kingdom of Hermesia that we talked about before, where the wounded soldier was uh, talking about um, how Alexandria was attacking. Um, and we'll, we're going to meet some of the key players in there in just a minute. Um, 
Yeah. But here's Warren and Thorn. They yep. jumped out of an airship and now they're they're just they're just here. They're cool. just chilling. Sure. We also uh, ran into not? them in Giza Maluk's grotto. They're kind of from this point forward, they're they're kinda of guy kinda of gonna be like the hench like the the henchmen sort of like uh second hand men to whoever has the most power, basically. They're pretty much, yeah. They're pretty nice sleazy. Oh. Is this hitting Freya? Oh. If that were hitting Freya, that would actually be kinda nice, but the reason why we would want Freya to take a little bit of damage here is because in the upcoming boss battle, um, Mr. Dan is going to hopefully be using an ability that we just equipped called Protect mm -hmm. Girls, which um, does exactly that. It protects female party members in the in the cast um, when they are specifically below 50% HP. Um, Freya is hopefully going to allow us to perform a little skip during the uh, boss battle itself and skip a few extra turns. Um, but to make that a bit more reliable, we want Freya to be a little bit more wounded before we get there. Oh, so he's still level six there. Interesting. He's level six? No, he's still level five. Oh. Maybe it's like two experience off. Sorry, keep continue. I didn't drop it. All right. All here. right. Nice. Nice. Let's go. <laughs> we got the booties. Uh, the boots. So here. they're really, they're really, really powerful boots because not only do they, do they help us learn flee, which means that we can wield the real weapon and still escape from battles. They also teach an ability called Alert, which completely stops us from being back attacked. Um, which doesn't That's sound wonderful. very good, but it means that they can't sneak up or something us anymore. It's yeah. really um, important later. Alert is a really yeah. valuable ability to have because even when you get in random encounters, it cuts out the chance of being back attacked and getting back attacked can just be a nightmare. Yeah, uh, there are many parts on the run, especially the later you go, where if you get back attacked, you just die. Yeah. Just, just straight up, you're just dead. Uh, we also set Zidane in the back row um, uh, when we did the menu after the Black Mages because Zidane is going to be um, attempting to cover for Freya on the upcoming boss fight. Uh, and so characters in the back row, they deal less physical damage, but they also take less physical damage. Yeah. Um, we're so, planning, not planning on dealing damage to the boss, fortunately, in this situation. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. By covering yeah. and reducing the physical damage taken, um, yep. we actually cover the ones in the front row with back row physical reduction, which is a weird concept, really. It is. Yeah. Um, additionally, we actually equip the, um, it, the the coral ring coming in clutch once again. Not only is it teaching us man eater, which is allowing us to deal um, lethal damage to those black mages. But it's actually going to allow us to absorb some of the lightning damage that the boss is going to probably attempt to deal to it. Yeah, the the upcoming boss has a very powerful mm. attack called Thunder Slash that um, would uh, would delete any of the uh, <laughs> party members that aren't wearing Coral Ring. But because we wear Coral Ring, it actually heals them. She has another move that can just delete people anyway. But yeah, yeah, we, yeah. we're not going <laughs> to see that, right? No, no, of course not. No. We're going to have a perfect Beatrix one fight. No issues yeah. whatsoever. Mm. Yeah. Also, this is a really sad, <laughs> like a really kind of sad part. Uh, those Burmesians that run past, uh, they look at Vivi and they want to kill him. Yeah. And then Freya's like, wait, 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 no, 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 he's cool, he's cool. <laughs> he's a baby boy, leave him be. And we'll find, and we'll find out soon <laughs> why, uh, or I guess you can tell by the fact that Zorn and Thorn summon Black Mages, um, that Black Mages are behind the destruction, or at least in part of yeah. the destruction of uh, Burmesia. So the Burmesians want to kill Black Mages. Yeah. And Vivi doesn't really understand, like, why Black Mages are being used for this, or, like, really what's going on. Do and in that cutscene, uh, Zidane saves a Burmesian and his pregnant wife from getting crushed by this, like, uh, monument thing. Um, mm -hmm. And tells them to escape to Lindblom. And we'll actually meet them again. Um, yeah. Spoiler alert. There's, there's a good ending with these with this couple. Yeah, uh, but that'll be in the second half of the run. That was a zero in kind of a That was, was a zero in kind of a yeah. yeah. That's, that's we, wow. Literally we on a good pace. We're literally not on a really strong pace. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> we were just talking about how seven encounters is a lot to have uh, leaving Ice Cavern. It's not a lot to have at the end of Le Disc One. <laughs> yeah, that's that's actually pretty. It's pretty decent. Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, your luck really can swing one way or the other in this game sometimes. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. The, 
the RNG in this game is sort of like this is like sort of the you know quintessential RNG game because of the fact that yeah encounters are almost completely out of your out of your control. So you can just lose thirty seconds over and over again for literally yeah. no reason. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you know we lost a ton of time in Evil Forest and Ice Cavern due to bad encounter there luck, but been, then we got there have been PBs that I have had where I was five minutes behind at one point. Oh, like, yeah. and I'm not the only like runner that's experienced yeah. this. Yeah, you can. This this <laughs> game can turn around real fast just by uh, yeah. yeah having things like run. a zero encounter grotto or a zero encounter Bermesia happening, which both of those are quite rare, especially zero encounter Bermesia. That's very very rare. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it's not uncommon to lose runs to single splits as well sometimes. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you it's can just, just one lose. split. It's just no, nah, it's just you're out. Mythic yeah, knows all about that with the Holy Lance route. Oh, 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 oh. There, was a, <laughs> there was a route that I ran where um, I had to steal a 6.25% chance drop off a boss, and yeah. the route couldn't proceed without it. So uh, I literally spent five minutes in the boss fight trying to steal it. It was fun, though, when you got it first try. It was really great. You deleted everything <laughs> oh, yeah. afterwards. Uh, and yeah. then you never wanted to run against it. Mythic, you're neglecting, <laughs> oh, yeah. you're neglecting to mention that that boss is like six hours into the run. Oh, yeah. yeah. And can also kill you. Yeah. By doing area effect damage. Yeah. No big deal. Small, uh, small details. Small details. All right. So here I'm we gonna... meet Beatrix, the general of the Alexandrian uh, army, who has led the attack into Permesia. Uh, this is a fight that A probably needs to focus on a little bit. Um, just so, need to count. Yeah, we're going to keep the commentary a little sparse for this. Just but need to count. We basically need to survive 10 turns of this fight. And there's a little piece of tech that we can talk about uh, if we get it after. There's Thunder One. Slash. That's actually fine. Yeah, yeah that's actually really good. That puts Freya into uh, crit HP, so Zidane, as you can see, will use Protect Girls to so take damage for her. Three. standing in the way. That's two. two. safe yeah if I, was gonna, if I was on like a pb attempt i would probably go for it but for sure yeah nah not here no reason now uh, if you get an opportunity to you can uh you can also nah, have some now i can't i think we're no, good I, I, no i mean in general um, yeah some Something you can do in this fight is you can have Zidane steal. There's a couple of good things you can steal here. Yeah, I was like, if Zidane would have survived there, I would have probably gone for a steal attempt, but yeah. yeah. You can steal a chain plate, which is uh, 910 gills saved, because we need to buy that later for Zidane. And there's a 1 in 256 steal you can get. That's the Mithril Sword, which uh, saves us yeah. 1,500 gill later, so we won't need to buy that. Yep. Uh, which I have gotten that steal once, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so that's this so, one, everyone. That's so this the one. Flex, I hear you. That's like the a trick. that's a 221 disc one in a marathon. That's really good. It's a very solid yeah, disc one with, time. Uh, yeah, that's with safeties. So that's pretty. Yeah. I'm yeah. definitely happy with that. Absolutely. So the trick we were gonna attempt to go for there is called jump skip. Um, there are certain bosses that you can kind of confuse their AI using Freya's jump ability. One of which is very important later on, the final boss. Um, on Beatrix. If after on the eighth turn, if it's safe for you to do so, you can kill both Zidane and Vivi and have Freya jump. And that skips two turns from Beatrix, which saves what, like about eight to ten seconds or so? It's yeah. about eight seconds, yeah. Yeah, it's it's not it's not a huge optimization, but it is a nice time save if you're able to land it. 
In that case, it, um, Vivi w did not deal enough damage to KO himself, so we did not go for the jump skip, which is the safer option when you uh, don't get it on turn 8. Um, mm -hmm. The other thing A did in that fight was uh, defended with Zidane and Vivi, which cuts the um, accuracy of Beatrix Beatrix's attacks, or at least the physical ones, and also reduces the damage of the physical attacks. Um, and that strapping young gentleman that we just met who flew away on a dragon. Pay attention, he's gonna come back later. <laughs> Welcome to disc two. Welcome to disc two. That Welcome was a very to disc two GDQ. That was a very solid disc one. A two. We had a lot of sort of intense things that we did, like Giza's Grotto is a very intense part of the game and Vermees is a pretty that was intense a part of the game. A low 222, yeah. Okay. Wow, that's still that, was with, that was with a reset, too. Yeah. And also, like, uh, low disk speed. So. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> For the first, like, a little bit. Mm. And now we get a little bit of a breather, sort of, from yeah. the intense stuff. Yeah. Um, get cozy. Stand up. If you need to stretch your legs. And Sorry, I just want to fit that in. Make sure, like, <laughs> make sure you're all also staying hydrated and... Oh, yeah. Stretch and, you know. Hmm. Yeah, here we're just going to do some, just going to talk some plot, buy a couple of important items. Um, and yeah, that's what yep. we do a menu, and that's about it. Steiner and Dagger are basically at the way station between, on this, like, cable car system that runs between Alexandria and Lindblom. Show me the moonwalk. <laughs> I'm going to try it. Wait. There it is. Oh yeah, the moonwalk. <laughs> For some reason, so my uh, so my uh, my turbo wasn't auto firing there. <laughs> it was stuck on like the like get a hold and do it. And so here we run into Marcus and Cinna, two of the members of Tantalus, um, and Steiner is uh, still furious with them for what they did in Alexandria. Um, a is gonna swap some equipment and equip Maneater, which will be a important ability for Steiner to have in the next boss fight. Um, but basically we find out here, or we find out in a moment, that Marcus is heading to a town called Trino to find an item called the Super Soft, which he will use to go to Evil Forest to try to save Plank, who was petrified with Evil Forest back in the beginning of Disc 1. Yep. And um, because Dagger and Steiner are both heading towards that direction anyway, uh, Dagger decides that it would be the right thing to do for them to help Marcus get the Super Soft and save Blank because Blank saved their lives, essentially. So Marcus is about to become a temporary party member. Uh, for the next uh, few beats of this Dagger and Steiner storyline. Mm -hmm. And uh, <clears throat> something also that we did in the menu, um, Rudels mentioned it earlier when we equipped the Feather Hat on Dagger, uh, that was to boost her wind damage. Um, that is because uh, when we finished Gizemaluk's Grotto, we picked up an item called the Multina Racket, which is a racket weapon that she can wield. Uh, and rackets always deal wind elemental damage, so she is going to have, she's going to be dealing boosted damage elemental damage here um so in the next cup in the next two boss fights she's actually she actually deals quite respectable damage um and uh, uh, she also has extra speed so uh, once again she can be she yes. is the one that's waiting black waltz three yeah she uh, can be to be so, black so, the, here. so there's a question here black waltz are they birds this one oh. this, this one uh, is is not a bird it does not fly. Yeah, so when when we fought this black waltz on the airship, he was a bird, and then now he's not. Um, birds in FF9, you'll come to understand. <laughs> um, so black waltz here, he can do some annoying things. He can freeze people, uh, which is really annoying. Uh, if he freezes somebody, he'll then attack them with a physical, which will instantly shatter and kill them. Um, and the strat here is if 
Dagger is the only person alive. Black Waltz 3 will not attack her. He will instead attack himself. So basically, if Steiner gets killed for any reason here, um, it's faster to just have Marcus attack himself uh, so that Dagger's the only person alive and then just have the boss attack himself while Dagger's hitting him. Um, because Steiner's dealing the bulk of the damage here. Um, so Steiner's dead. There's no point in reviving him. Uh, just kill off Marcus and have the boss hit himself Ooh. with Dagger. Wait, I saved, like, I saved a turn there. That yeah, was that, nice. was, that, was that was a really good fight. Yeah, that was. Um, the only risk involved with uh, having Steiner and Marcus dead at the end of the fight is we're going to be traversing the world map here in a little bit, <laughs> and you can get yep. world map encounters, and they can kill Solo Dagger. Solo Dagger can actually one-shot the enemies on the world map, or at least some of them, um, but they can also kind of one-shot her, so... Mm -hmm. uh, it's, uh, thankfully, it's we don't have to heal. That, that Black Waltz is, uh, is worth a good chunk of AP, actually, at this point in the game when we do defeat him, we do actually earn AP for this one. Yes. We didn't for the one on the airship that we fought earlier. Um, mm -hmm. But once again, Petro is out as uh, some backups integrated into it in case Stanley yeah. does actually manage to die here. There are some uh, some some opportunities for us later to make up the AP. But mm -hmm. again, uh, if Stanley does go down in those combats, then it does become a bit of an issue. Right. AP um, is uh, I don't think we've actually explained what AP is yet. Um, basically, the abilities that each character can equip, like man like man eater, bird killer, um, you know, other other abilities like that. Uh, all come from pieces of equipment, like we mentioned before, uh, managing which equipment your characters have heading into specific battles is an important part of the run. Um, and each fight that you complete offers a certain amount of ability points towards your character permanently learning that ability. So, so um, sorry, I wanted to just point something out really quick. Yeah. That chest that I got with the gill, the 1610 gill, so if you have if you got 100 nobles earlier in the in the run, you don't have to pick that up. Um, that's yeah. one of the that's one of the pickups that we do to um, to compensate for the gill that we lose from not getting 100 nobles. Um, there's also another pickup that we will do in Trino for uh, to <sighs> sorry so that we'll be able to make up that gill loss from earlier but continue go ahead <laughs> no, just to point just, that out just well, to point out do not forget the AT. yeah <laughs> I'm, i ma i mash select when i come and in this here. is a really this is a really important ate to watch because yeah. um dagger getting mugged here sets up that man who mugged her to go buy an item called the power belt which steiner can then go and talk to him and receive um and the power belt is an extremely important item yeah, to have. It's, um, it's broken if, at this point in the game. If you forget to get this power belt, which I think every speedrunner has done at least once, and maybe I some speedrunners, not necessarily one on this commentary team, <laughs> have done a lot. <laughs> Jesus Lee's done it a lot. Hey, listen, there I said I, it. I said I it. I, I, have, I still haven't have done it in a really long yet. time. That's I, fair. I know I, I someone, someone that forgot it today. You're the you're the power belt meme and Brutals is the Malorus meme. And then Mythic hey, is the hey, sea hey. lion meme. And then there's me, just a meme. <laughs> so there's some foreshadowing here that I really wish the game went uh, like more into detail about, but the relationship between Kyuja and the auctioneer. Yeah. I don't like it's a it's a relationship that is foreshadowed, but like they don't really explain it a lot, which is kind of a shame, but it is what mm -hmm. it is. Um, you can actually come in this auction and buy some really high ticket items and some side quest items at various points in the game. This is quite a useful um, thing as a casual player, yeah. if you have a lot of money, that is. Now now that we're on disc two, we have access to a lot more stuff. Uh, so we're gonna buy some nice equipment here in Treno. New weapon for Steiner, Ice Staff for VV. Sugar. Uh. It's fine. I saw the money. Yeah, you're so fine. Everything's fine. Yep. Um, yeah, we bought some new equipment there. We're going to be using pretty much all of that equipment immediately. Um, and uh, you can also fight enemies uh, under the armor shop in Treno. Uh, Ooh, no shaggy skip. 
I always get that too. It's sad. That guy, uh, that guy is always there <laughs> in the doorway. Um, if you have like really perfect movement, you can get around him, but not always true. Um, is we're coming up on the out? the sole reason the Japanese version of this game is better than the English version. <laughs> oh when yeah. When you run down these stairs <laughs> as Dagger and Steiner They're... follows you, on the Japanese version, his model is stuck in midair, and so he just slides in midair. Oh, down that's the stairs. so great. And it's, it's really so good. Funny, and that's it one of my on favorite clips version. I've ever seen. And it makes just... me really sad. It's my favorite part of uh, the JP version of this game. Yeah. <laughs> More foreshadowing with the auctioneering Kuja. Um, so the power belt, uh, going back to abilities for a minute, part of the reason, the reason it's so, um, important is it teaches MP attack, which is an essential, an essential ability for all four of our main party members in endgame to have by the endgame. Yeah, it also increases strength, um, and gives the ability to learn an ability, the ability to learn HP plus ten percent, which helps make a few boss fights safer. Power belt um, teaches mm -hmm. counter as well, not HP ten. Oh, oh, you're right, you're right. My bad, yeah. my bad. It also teaches um, fire, but we don't use that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah the power um, belt having strength. It also has, it has three strength. It has two defense, MP attack, which makes you do fifty percent more damage at the cost of one eighth of your MP. Like it's it's just such a good item. We'll be yeah. we'll actually be making another one later, um, and yeah. MP attack is, I think, in my opinion, it's one of those abilities that when we played this game casually, we always overlooked because, like, we didn't yes. want to waste MP on attacks. But in the speedrun, you you realize just how broken it is when you stack it on top of killer abilities and then you further stack it on top of, like, boosted elemental damage. Yeah. Potentially stacking that on top of elemental weaknesses. Yeah. These multipliers, they add up and they allow you to deal ridiculous amounts of damage by endgame. By the oh, end yeah. of the run, you have relatively low-level characters just dealing massive amounts of damage to endgame bosses. It really kind of just breaks them wide yeah. open. The levels in this game really don't influence your damage nearly as much as having the proper abilities equipped. Um, we do some stat optimizations, like with character strength and all that, to eke out a little bit more damage, but the, the bulk of your damage in this game, when you play this game, comes from stacking damage multipliers and exploiting weaknesses and boosting elemental damage and all that. I always mess this up. It's an awkward menu, don't worry, you're fine. <laughs> it's, it's, it's frustrating because the inputs are almost things identical based on what level you are. It's, it's, mm -hmm. it's, Really yeah. easy to brain fight. I don't know why, but that's like one of my favorite menus to do. <laughs> um, another another extra pickup we have to do if you don't get nobles is we have to pick up that mithril dagger. It's very important that we have one. Um, for and we'll actually buy more of those later for uh, synthesizing into better items. Uh, we can actually get the mithril dagger early. Uh, from Sea Lion, um, and usually we don't, usually uh, I won't go for steals on Sea Lion unless I'm going for like a trance build strat, mm -hmm. but you can theoretically get the Mithril Dagger from, from Sea Lion in disc one. Yeah, it saves you a good amount of gil. It, also, it can also save you a hit or two on Black Waltz too, which is nice, and it can... It, it guarantees that you skip Vivi's D trance animation on Black Waltz 3, which is also really cool. Yeah. Um, so it's a nice steal to have. It's not worth going out of your way to do a trance strat for uh, if your trance is bad, but if your trance is good and you're going for trance anyway, you might as well steal. Mm -hmm. So. So also, this character here we've met um, just now is Dr. Tot, who is revealed to be... Um, uh, Dagger's teacher from when she was a little girl, basically her private tutor back in Alexandria. Revealed to be um, best and boy. they reconnect when the team breaks into the synthesis shop to try to steal the super soft. And Dr. Tot finds them and basically helps them get the item and is now introducing them to an underground like route into Alexandria that is basically unregulated. So uh, they can sneak into Alexandria without being detected via uh, what is known as Gargan Rue. Um, and we'll we'll get to meet the form of transit uh, here in a minute. It's uh, it's pretty cute. 
Um, casually, this is actually a really good place to grind for levels uh -huh. because the game uh, recognizes that. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, that encounter. Uh, the game. The game is. The game is paced in such a way that this is really the first time you have Steiner and Dagger with the ability to like run around and level them up since Ice Good Cavern, me, basically. Um, so killing an encounter here can actually be kind of handy if, if, if you get stuck in one, because it does give Steiner a nice boost to his levels, which makes the upcoming boss fight a little safer. And Steiner can one-shot those enemies, the crawlers, because of the power belt and MP attack. Uh, we are going to do a safety save here because the next boss can be a little sketchy. Uh, because Steiner is leveled up past level one, it's a little safer, but never hurts to drop a safety save here in a marathon setting. Yeah, I I will always save here in a marathon yeah. setting. Yeah, I've I've had very bad luck with this boss. Um, yeah. In the past, so better to be safe than sorry. Yeah, there's really no such thing as a boss fight, like a completely safe boss fight in this game. Like, the, pretty much every boss fight has some way that it can go wrong. Obviously, there are mm -hmm. some that are, there are some that can go wrong way more often than others. But you know, I've seen I've seen people lose runs to almost every boss wow. fight you can think of. That's a that's very rare to get that encounter there. Mm -hmm. There's like one check, like. My mo so, if your movement's perfect, you you shouldn't get any checks. But but once again, sometimes you can move completely perfectly yep. or close to perfectly and still get the encounter. Well, <laughs> we're gonna have basically Tantarian level Steiner. <laughs> I was gonna say, are you are you switching, calling an audible and switching to a Tant route now? No, I'm good, thanks. <laughs> I can send you the notes. I, yeah, I, I, Mythic and I are here to coach you through it. <laughs> oh, I'm sure you are. So one last heal here before we hit this button. Uh, from here, we will be carried directly to the boss. So this boss coming up, um, we can't actually beat it, I don't believe. Oh, I, 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 it probably does have a health pool that is a little bit too extravagant to be able to actually finish off, but um, after a certain damage to our shoulder, we'll actually attempt to run away. Mm -hmm. um, Steiner is going to be our primary damage dealer here. He, has had, he does have the opportunity to critical, which will deal just under half of its total power HP. Um, Dagger, followed by, will be able to deal decent damage, and Marcus is usually used here to keep people topped up or to Phoenix down uh, anyone else that goes down. Um, because we've killed two single crawlers at this point, I we gained quite a bit of experience. Yeah. We've got a few levels. Um, the most important thing about leveling up really is, while you do get some stack growth based on the equipment you're wearing, the most impactful thing that you'll notice in the run is your HP goes up. Yes. Simply. The one yep. thing to pay, um, to pay attention to in this encounter, though, is now that our HP has been increased, um, if this boss uses Devil's Kiss, I think the ability is called, it is a physical attack which, which puts poison on you if it strikes. Um, if he does that to two of your party members, he will then proceed to use an ability called Night, which is an AoE sleep spell, Can you give me a counter, please? a very high hit rate. Nope. So if, some, if somebody else is hit with Devil's Kiss here, um, Aimar is probably going to have to have them kill themselves in order to uh, have not have two uh, poison party members. Here it is, in fact. And there's the second poison. Yeah, um, night here is night here is really scary. Uh, it's one of the easiest ways to. I'm die. not afraid. Uh -huh. Just lethal. I was actually really yeah. afraid. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I, uh, I, was, I was, was just very clenching. Like, <laughs> I was very, I mean, I, I did the safety save there. Yeah, I mean. yeah. <laughs> so another important thing that you uh, can look back on A doing on that fight is holding ATB, not necessarily to ATB weight, but just so that Dagger and Mark, or Dagger and Steiner can complete their attacks without Rabu Rava's uh, ATB filling up. That way he guarantees that uh, their two attacks land. 
while also um, guaranteeing that Marcus is going to be prioritized in the order before uh, Rava Rava gets its next turn. One funny um, thing that can happen at the end of that fight is uh, if somebody dies from poison on the same tick that Rava Rava flees, uh, the character won't actually pr proceed with their death animation until Rava Rava's completely gone, and then you have to watch yeah. that character's death animation before the fight ends. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, so... Like one of those little annoying <laughs> things. So, um... Just want, I know it's been been a little while since uh, the beginning of the run, and um, pe more people have kind of filtered in. So I just wanted to take this opportunity to kind of re re reintroduce ourselves. So um, I'm Amart. Uh, I am running Final Fantasy IX, any percent with Turbo. There is a Turbo and a non-Turbo leaderboard. I focus primarily on the Turbo leaderboard. Um, I also run Final Fantasy VIII. Uh, and Final Fantasy X from time to time. Uh, X2, I've run a little bit in Kingdom Hearts 1. Um, so, done a little bit of speed running in many in different games. So, that's who I am. Commentators, you should introduce yourselves to. Yeah, I am Ceaselessly. I hope you're all enjoying the run and having a good night. I am also a speedrunner who primarily runs Final Fantasy IX and is in a near perpetual state of half learning other games and never actually doing runs of them. <laughs> <laughs> um, hi, I'm Mythic Dawn. I uh, also run Final Fantasy IX. Uh, I lately am focusing on Final Fantasy XIII. I do uh, run the entire trilogy, learning Final Fantasy XII as well. Um, and I've run the Japanese version of Final Fantasy VIII in the past. And uh, I'm the Brutals. I uh, pretty much exclusively run Final Fantasy IX. I have recently picked up the HD version of this game as well to try and see how much I can tolerate it. It is a really bad port. It you is also a really run Majora's bad port. Mask, though, which is, and, which and is my first when, game. And when this game really beats me up and I can't take no more, then I boot up Majora's Mask, which is actually a really, really, really fun run. I yeah. run glitchless on that one because you actually get to see the game. It's yeah. good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. something, fun, something fun about the FF9 community, you know, between um, between you know the four of us, like, and everyone else in the community, you know, you, you've probably heard us name drop a bunch of people by now, you know, and and the reason for it is is just because like the community is so vibrant and active, and like even when people aren't necessarily like actively running this game, they're still a part of the community. Like Mythic hasn't done an FF9 run in a little while, and he's mostly been focusing on other games, but you know he's still definitely like an active part of the community, and like you know we all kind of. Uh, we all kind of like support each other in a lot of the different things that we do. So, um, you know, and we're always happy to have new people joining us. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so a little bit of plot catch up. Uh, plot plot catch up that you put on your French fries. Ketchup. Oh boy, it's it's almost 1 a.m. here, put folks. On your story I'm so sorry. Uh, <laughs> Time to get some disco fries. Oh, uh, I could kill for disco fries right now. Um, so. Uh, Marcus, oh, <laughs> oh, we got the rare encounter here. <laughs> Amazing. We are blessed on this day, did you, did you we're, getting, feel? we're getting all the trolley <laughs> encounters. I yeah, love we it. we really are. Hey, Mark, did you grab the ether? I didn't see. No, so, I didn't. Oh. Do you regret not grabbing it? <laughs> uh, at this point, I kind of do, actually. <laughs> Fortunately, but, Vivi can one-shot any encounter here with Blizzara. Um, yeah, so, Vivi, Vivi is now is going to be our... Arguably our strongest party member for a little while. Um, Got the troll echo yeah. screen drop too. Yeah. He, with the ice staff, he now has access to Blizzara. And we also picked up the magician shoes from a chest, which uh, boosts his magic stat a bit. And now he also has the Magus hat, which boosts his ice damage. You also combine that with the fact that everything here is weak to ice. Yeah. So that's, you know, talking about stacking those damage multipliers. Claire is also I'm one gonna, of these areas where you can just. The I'm gonna huh? pause the FF9 discussion to talk about disco fries. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> what do you wanna know about disco fries, the food of my homeland? <laughs> so, so Canada has poutine. Um, South, South New Jersey has uh, disco fries. Which are essentially the same thing. Is, is this what you want, Amar? You want me to explain what disco right, fries that, are? That, that's that's good. 
I just I just felt we so, needed a meme section really thank quick. You. I appreciate it. <laughs> My whole life is a meme, as we know. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so back to the story. <laughs> the catch up yeah. on catch up on the plot. Um, Steiner, Marcus, and uh, Dagger took the rode the giant bug carriage into Alexandria and got caught by Zorn and Thorn, um, and are now presumably being taken prisoner. Meanwhile, uh, Zidane and company are, after the destruction of Bermesia, they head to the neighboring kingdom of Clara. Um, and I promise that's the last time I'm going to use the phrase neighboring kingdom during this run. Um, <laughs> and Clara is kind of an isolationist nation. Um, they're a big city in a tree surrounded by a magical sandstorm. Um, that... Did you say sandstorm? Or, or y- they're, yeah. They're surrounded by a Darude. <laughs> um, the, the Clarins basically oh. are Bermesians, but they seceded from Bermesia because of yeah. Bermesia's um, warmongering tendencies. Yeah, um, and they basically wanted to isolate themselves from the other three major nations of the continent um, who yeah. were all prone to warfare. Um, so they erected this magical sandstorm that they strengthen with a ritual every year to... Yeah. Um, you know, keep baddies out, which we'll see uh, works incredibly well, clearly. Um, also, one thing to note here is that Clara is sort of the fir- one of the first spots in the run. I guess we Are did we a little bit of by the way. The oh. tour? Absolutely not. <laughs> you want to lose two minutes? <laughs> I took mean? the tour on my run earlier today. <laughs> no, dude. <laughs> it's very important to pay attention to your mashing I or your turbo didn't here. mean to. I was playing <laughs> HD. <laughs> <laughs> if you select yes, please there, the Clarion Priest will give you a tour throughout the entire settlement, which takes about two minutes. And yeah, if you do that, that in a run, it's basically like, well, I'm going to go play something else now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we call that Clara Tour Person. Yeah. <laughs> it's, an un- it's an unofficial leaderboard, and your run doesn't actually count. So. <laughs> On the flip side, Clara is lovely at this time of the year. Oh, yeah. It is. It is. Uh, so, Amar picked up a Geishal Greens there. I mentioned earlier that we're going to be picking up them up throughout the run. We're going to pick up three total. Two of them are here in Clara. The first one's there. The next one is actually that chest behind the ladder that we climbed up to get into Clara, which we'll grab back on the way down because the Wait, you think I'm grabbing it? You absolutely are, are you not? You think I'm grabbing that? Yeah, of course. (laughs) I don't know, chat, should I grab it? Do you, wait, are you one of the ones who goes for the disc three greens? Maybe. I feel like I don't know you anymore. It's, oh. it's been a while, Mythic. You've changed. <laughs> I almost forgot to pick up the pinion, too. You were so flabbergasted with me, I know. You have to wait for that guy to run <laughs> down the stairs anyway, so you might as well yeah. grab the pinion there. Okay, I'll pick, I'll pick up the greens just for you, Mythic. Oh, if you get the encounter, I'm going to feel so bad. I'm going to be truly heartbroken. 15%. <laughs> <laughs> I'm feeling it. Yeah, oh, it's, it's, feel like, it. it's like an 18% chance on the way down or something. It's really low. But it saves, like, so- eight seconds. Over the this three green? Huge. Yeah. Are you are you blink one eighty two feeling it? Oh my gosh. <laughs> are you feeling this? Let's talk about this boss fight. <laughs> okay. So, so this is another example of like stacking damage multipliers. Like BB <laughs> Antlion is going to counter physical attacks pretty heavily, so we're not gonna be attacking the Zidane. Zidane's on healing duty here. Oh uh, Oh don't set good. the baby boy on fire. Okay, oh. good. So this Antlion can be roll you by just nuking BB with Fyra. Yeah, this fight can be uh, really trolly. So we need to do three Blazaras and usually one Lancer, sometimes two. That's a really bad Blazara roll. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is. Vivi does a lot of damage here. Oh, it's perfect. Ooh. Oh, oh nice. we can explain Never mind, fight's now. over. So this is going to look scary, but it's actually yeah, not. This is 100% safe. So when Antlion uses Lancer, for whatever reason, his ATB refills at half speed afterwards, which allows Vivi to ATB weight him. Uh, um, interestingly enough, it doesn't actually change his ATB speed at all. It just makes him miss a turn. Oh, but it does his it? ATB okay. fills at normal speed, but then it gets to the, gets full, and then it just it just clears, starts again. Yeah, okay, that was I never a, actually looked into the AI script. That's interesting. Yeah, it's interesting. It gave it basically just gives him a blank turn to like give you a chance to heal. I think. Probably. Probably. Yeah, yeah, that that makes sense. Yeah. I think that was something Rome discovered fairly recently. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that was actually a pretty good antlion fight. Yeah, um, that was good. 
like Mythic yeah. was starting to say, the um, th that's a fight where you really see VV's um, or the the damage stacking start to build up because VV is wearing the Magician shoes and the Magus hat, two items that really uh, amp up the um, the power of his spells. Yeah, um, I guess um, earlier, the Magus hat boosts ice damage, Magician shoes during boost magic. During this scene, by the way, um, I'm gonna get up and stretch and get some water. So, um, if that's okay with all of you. Of feel course, please feel free. Like, but Although, okay, cool. you are le legally obligated to do the Clara dance off stream. And if you don't, I'm going to be yeah. eternally disappointed. Do we'll you know if you did it. on yeah. or do you want it off? Uh, yes. Okay. Be right back. <laughs> so, coming up is a very human-like dance that you can definitely do with any sort of, uh, any amount of dance experience in your life. <laughs> the song is an absolute banger. And, yeah. uh... A yeah. rat jam, if you will. If you're not running turbo, this is like one of the first like bathroom breaks on the run, so to speak, kind of. It's a very good bathroom break. Yeah. And the song's just a bop. Um, so basically, this is the ritual that Mythic was talking about that they use to strengthen the power of their sandstorm. Um, and certainly it's going to go well, and nothing is going to go wrong. The annoying thing about this is that this is a bathroom break, and then there's two text boxes you have to mash, and then two there's a text box afterwards. Yeah. Yeah. It would actually be a really nice big long bathroom break. And, uh, unfortunately, there are just, just those pesky little text boxes on yeah. the line. On Turbo, is like, this is like a four-minute break, actually. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, this is a good break. It's almost as long as the one after the final... Uh, or I think it's longer than the final, the one after the final Black Mage fight. Yeah. In, uh, the Clear Siege. Well, while we are waiting for Amart to get back, I just want to let everyone know that GDQ has lost, uh, sorry, launched a new highlight channel on YouTube, and that is the GDQ Sum of Best Segments channel with small highlight reels from all of our main events, including Hotfix. You can type exclamation mark highlights in Twitch chat to learn more about that. Also, don't forget that AGDQ 2022 will be coming up January 9th through the 16th, and you can visit gamesdonequick.com for more information on that and detailed dates on the event. Thanks so much, Smooth. Appreciate it. Of course, yeah. Thank you all for being here, helping out Amar on uh, commentary. This has been a lot of fun, and I <laughs> yeah, think uh, everyone is it. having a good time. I know I am. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah thanks this. for having us. I'm very glad to hear that. <laughs> um, so you might have noticed that the strings of the harp snapped. And, uh, I actually don't, in oh, okay, I, uh, I don't entirely know why they, like, specifically why they snapped, but, uh, it caused the Magic. ritual to fail and the sandstorm is now gone. Yeah. Uh, which is, uh, bad, but, like, with a capital B. And perhaps just entirely capital bad, uh, for reasons we'll see soon enough. Um, lots more just plot ma mashing through text, a uh, bit of a story update here. Uh, as Ceaselessly said earlier, um, Dagger, Marcus, and Steiner were captured when they arrived in Alexandria by Zorn and Thorn. Um, Dagger is here in her bedroom, and Marcus and Steiner are put into that cage that we saw. Um, and this is where the plot starts getting kind of heavy here. Um, you notice here that Zorn and Thorn are being, I mean, if you can read the text boxes fast enough, uh, <laughs> they're being very... Uh, not servant-like to the princess of Alexandria. They're basically telling her, you're coming with us right now. Um, That's rude. Very rude. Uh, rude. And yeah, the this, this is kind of where you see things are uh, really not what they seem to be. Yeah, this is where we start to learn that the plot, uh, that, that the reason... Um, the reason Queen Braun wanted uh, Dagger back in Alexandria um, may n is not necessarily because she cares about her daughter and wants her to return and is furious at the people who stole her away. I can't second. believe you wouldn't believe her. I know. I can't believe <laughs> you. How could you, you not believe option? her? Who am I so. believing? So... This is where we start to learn that the reason Braun actually wanted uh, Dagger back in 
Alexandria is to extract her Eidolons from her. Um, Eidolons are the name for the summons in this game, uh, and Dagger has the ability to summon. She's one of two characters with summoning magic in this, in this game. Um, and basically, Bronze plan in conjunction with our uh, white-haired beautiful man here, Kuja, uh, is to use the Eidolons to conquer the other kingdoms, basically using them as weapons of war. And Zorn and Thorn are going to extract the Eidolons from Garnet now that she is 16 years old. And um, this is where this is where things like Mythic said like start to take a really kind of dark turn in the story. Yeah. It's also worth uh, remembering that this ritual only works if the summoner is 16 years old, because yeah. we may or may not be seeing this mm -hmm. again. Um, <clears throat> yeah, things are things are pretty bad right now. Clara lost her sandstorm. Dagger got her idolins, you know, taken out of her, and uh, Steiner and Marcus are in prison. Things aren't really going right right now, and they're going to go even less right <laughs> here in a little bit. So yeah. in terms of in terms of the plot, no, they're not going very well. However, this part of the run is when it actually starts to really involve the runner. You get a sequence of battles coming up soon. Yes. And uh, they can be somewhat difficult to optimize. Uh, you have to make quite a lot of decisions quite quickly um, in order to save as much time as possible, followed by um, another boss battle, which forces you once again to potentially make some rather, rather difficult decisions. Um, yeah. I really like this part of the game. I know a lot yeah. of people don't. It, yeah, it this can is, be really this frustrating. Really, this mm -hmm. is a really neat, um, like, my, it's, it's, it's a neat test of how well you can micromanage your battle decisions. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we're, we're about to have a series of scripted battles um, against soldiers and black mages that just, the RNG is all over the place. It's like one of the heaviest RNG points in the run. No encounter, never well, punished. Nice. Easy. Um, Let's get it. You're welcome. It's, it's, it's one of the most, like, dynamic sections of the run because it really does require you to do a lot of reacting in real time um, to different things and, like, knowing the right way to react to different things happening um, in terms of how quickly your ATVs swell up, which spells your uh, enemies are casting, et cetera, et cetera. So some of the decision-making Amart's going to have to make here is uh, Zidane isn't quite high enough level, I don't believe, in order to guarantee one-shotting mm -hmm these guards um the, usually yeah. the way that you mitigate that is by having vv run in there and give them a quick donk first to uh, bring up the damage um, <laughs> simply because if you don't kill them in one hit and you leave them with i think roughly around 10 percent or health or so they will actually just flee um you'll yep. still get the ability points from them but you won't get the experience which is yeah. only really yeah. an issue um if we didn't take two fights on the way up player yeah we fought enough stuff in player that we're 20 percent chance to hit the damage roll that will make them flee on Zidane. Yeah. yeah. Um, some of the other decision making that we're going to be making here with against these soldiers and later some black mages is um, the soldiers and the black mages can cast spells and spells in this game are slow. Um, and also Vivi has the option of casting spells to kill things. So it's a balancing act between trying to mitigate as much as possible the turns that the enemies get to try and, and not have them cast spells, but also deciding when it's worth it for Vivi to kill something with a spell. Yeah. Because magic is slow, but it's yeah. better for Vivi and to kill something with a spell than for something else to cast a spell on you, and then you have to hit it, because that's a spell. And we also hit. just hit level 9 on Zidane, so that chance of a low damage roll is not there anymore. Yeah. The fear is yes. gone. Uh, and <laughs> also, Freya loose. cannot under damage when she hits level 7. <laughs> yeah, it's actually very rare for Freya to not be level 7 here. Wow, so those, you, were, so those you, are good fights. Yeah, these have been good fights so far. Yeah. Have, have they had any turns? I think uh, one of them's had a swing. I think, I think they've had slash. slashes. One, yeah, one, one slash. No, um, no spells. Yeah. And yes. we haven't had the cast yet, which is I'm gonna, really. I'm good. gonna heal the full, um, just good in call. case. But um, I think the ideal point for healing is there's one more fight after this against the single black mage. Um, which I think is kind of like a bit of a breaking point for when... Yeah, I like to heal. Ideal yeah, scenario for healing. <laughs> yeah. But because we were already leveled up, um, killing that black mage won't actually increase our health pool. And it's he hasn't got a very good chance of hitting us because we've got three bars and he's only got one. Yeah, mm -hmm. if you get hit there, it's kind of unlucky. Yeah. 
Additionally, I think Zidane still has the Coral Ring on, so if he does manage to cast Thunder, he can also cast an ability called Osmos, which purely attacks their magic points, um, which, again, it's not dealing uh, health um, damage to our, our forwards. I think Zidane has the Gear Minus boots on Yeah, here. he has the Bandana for Maneater now. Ah, uh, okay. Is it Freya with the Coral Sword thing? Coral, coral Ring? No, she has Yellow Scarf, but she gets Maneater from the Mithril Gloves. Okay. Oh, maybe um, I... Oh, I zoomed it. I zoomed. Never mind. Whoopsie. <laughs> um, so here, uh, mm. we're going to be presented with four... Uh, between now and the end of this siege, we're going to be presented with four different um, options and various screens for saving uh, various groups of Clarins. Ideally, we want to save all of them by picking the correct dialogue options. And the reason for this is... Um, at the end of the siege, and for every Claren that we save, we can talk to them to get some very useful items. Um, we'll get you know, like uh, an ether, and I think an elixir as well, uh, some cards which we'll actually need. Um, Trading, I love Pokemon cards. And some <laughs> other items which are very useful. <laughs> Somebody um, say cards. Oh, yeah. Cards. If you're we'll interested in hearing more about cards, tune in oh, on God. December 21st. Yes. <laughs> That'll be like almost the beginning of it, too. Yeah. Um, so we also want to pick the correct dialogue options when we were prompted to to mitigate how many fights we have to do. Because um, fighting is slower than not fighting. Um, and yeah, so... Pretty much that. Uh, nice fight. Nice fights here. Not getting any turns. Yeah, damage, those were good. good ATBs. Yeah, this is very solid so far. Uh, yeah. But like, the 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 thing that's the thing that can be frustrating about this sequence is that it can really go from being great to terrible pretty quickly because of mm -hmm. each fight is kind of its own little microcosm of all of the concepts we just discussed. Yeah. But you know, obviously, like when you have a strong start like this one, like like it's it's definitely a good thing to have riding into it. Yeah. Um, Absolutely. And thankfully, you know, now that Zidane and Freya are both wow. uh, high levels. Wait, wow. Um, okay. Yeah, wow. wow. We. That now that a... Zidane and Freya are both high enough level, they will oh. one shot everything. Um, and you can also use Zidane to ATB okay, wait cool. here um, if necessary. ATB waiting on these fights can be really handy because sometimes, um, sometimes, like, you know, your characters have a chance of missing their attacks. So if, you, if for example, Freya had missed her attack there, Zidane still would have been able to outspeed the Black Mage in order to, yep. um, in, and still end the fight before the Black Mage got another turn. That's yeah, that's what I was, that's what I was waiting on there yeah. um, for a lot of those fights. Also, in the, in the second fight, it may have looked obvious that I could have cast Blizzara there on that soldier, um, but I wanted to check to see if the soldier would go before um, before Vivi, because if the soldier would have cast Blizzara, it actually would have been quicker for me to just wait for Zidane or Freya's uh, ATB to fill and just attack with them instead. Yeah. And now we've seen our first couple dialogue options with saving clearance. What is this? ATPs? Oh my oh word. <laughs> You're, you're ne zooming. Never, never in a oh. PB attempt. No. Of course not. <laughs> never in a PB attempt. Never. <laughs> I don't think has has anything gotten a turn. You, we, we've seen we've uh, one black mage cast a spell and one. That's right. That's one right. soldier got a slash in. Ray is level thirteen. Is she actually? Yeah, yeah. She did. Yeah, she hit thirteen oh, quite early. Beefy. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> it's because I took a it's because I took a second clear encounter. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. One of them was a sand golem too, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah one was a sand golem, the other was two dragonflies. I what I wanted to just be safe. Uh, I couldn't remember if two dragonflies was enough. For, uh, uh, I don't think it. it I, it's I don't think it is if you um, if you miss a soldier kill. Yeah, uh, of course. Um, so in this encounter, it would be advantageous for. Aimer and uh, to have Diddy kill himself here. Yeah, it allows I'm just him waiting to put here. Critical. Yeah, you're gonna see if he targets VV for him. Yeah, because if VV gets knocked into yellow HP, then you don't need to have VV hit himself. Yep. Yeah, yellow yeah. HP is fine, but um, 
We want Vivi ideally dead for two reasons in this fight. The first is uh, so we can revive him back into critical HP for cover. He's already level 12. My lord. Uh, the other Don't tell me that... we're not lucky seven in this. Don't tell <laughs> me we're not lucky. <laughs> I don't know who we are. <laughs> Sorry. Um, but yeah, having Vivi in crit means that... Um, so now instead of using Protect Girls to deal with Beatrix, the next boss battle, we're going to be using Cover, but Cover only works from, twen from below 20%. Um, which is usually, I think, just above critical. Um, for Vivi, it's somewhere around 60 HP at this point in the game. Um, mm -hmm. The easiest way to achieve that is to have him hit himself. Um, that will definitely put him into critical or, or, or lethal. Um, so by picking him back up, we'll put him into critical, because Vivi is going to be the primary way that we're going to manage this fight, because it's quite complicated if someone would like to do a better job than me on this. I can explain <laughs> this, yeah. Go for so it. I could also attempt to talk through it through the fight if you would like. Um, it's up to you. I don't mind. I can also explain. Okay, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, you can go ahead. So, the way the ATB works in this game is such that if a character has full ATB, they, like, an, if an enemy has full ATB, they queue up an action, and that action can't actually proceed until it's actually their turn. So, you know, depending on which order things were queued in. So, what we're going to be doing on this next fight is we're going to be queuing attacks and Blizzara's in a way where Beatrix's ATB is going to get to going to fill up and then get blocked by the Blizzard animation, so that we can use that Blizzard animation to let Zidane and Freya regain their ATB while Beatrix cannot gain ATB. So that uh, ha has two ramifications. The first is that you know we gain free ATB on the other characters because of it. The other thing is that um, it it forces Beatrix to pick her action before the damage for Blizzara actually goes through. And this is important because once Beatrix hits a, her, a health threshold, she will attempt to heal herself. But if she is right by that health threshold and then we force her to queue up an attack because Blizzara is blocking her, uh, and then the Blizzara damage hits her below half health, we can actually end the fight before she gets another turn to cure herself. Um, so we, we're gonna be using this Blizzara animation to block her ATB and, and uh, also allow Zidane and Frey to regain theirs while she can't gain ATB. Um, very important because Beatrix is very fast. Yeah. Um, if she does a regular attack, if Zidane and Beatrix, if Zidane has zero ATB and Beatrix does a regular attack, Zidane cannot get in another turn before Beatrix's next turn. And Zidane's our fastest character here. So that's how fast she is. Um, so it's very important that we order things in the right way with Blizzara's to um, keep our ATB, gain the most ATB that we can while giving her the least, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So we're really quickly going to steal all the, these people's final belongings. They yeah. managed to take, the things they, they managed them. to salvage from their houses before they get blown up. We're going to have, you know, take that with us. We're going to get and an elixir, an ether, some cards, and a phoenix pinion. Hand over the Pokemon cards, kids. Yeah, give me They're your cards, cards children. <laughs> um, it's also... really important to make sure that Vivi's got at yes. least 48 mana going into this. Uh, it costs 12 MP to cast Bizarra. Um Worst case scenario, it, this, this fight will go on for four turns. Best case scenario is usually only three. Yeah. Um, um, just, just a real quick uh, answer for chat. Any percent turbo just means that I am using a turbo controller to auto-fire through dialogue. There is one turbo trick that I do use, but you'll you'll see that in part two. Yeah. And it's not like super it's not like super game breaking. Oh, is that the, no. the Mystodon? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So it's 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 once again it's advantageous here to to see what she does first. Yes. If you start queuing abilities and then uh, you find out that she's shocked one of your party members, yeah. um, you can be in a really bad situation because she can start picking you off with all the uh, basic attack really quickly yeah that was actually a really good opener because it was a thunder shock that um i'm gonna knock a cure skip here Freya yeah absorbed. i was gonna say we yeah. around the wrong way Ooh, so, with the mist, uh, too. That's, our, that's not good as i think was be saying okay. before we can use phoebe's really long uh, attack animation to allow beatrix to cue next ability while leaving her HP above the threshold to cast Cure. Yeah. Um, but by having our, our, our melee DPS attack first, um, she's she's going to be able to uh, realize that she's going to be casting Cure. Um, yeah, she will. Instead. Enemies, um, they sort of pick an action before their HP is full. 
but they can change that action until their yeah. ATB actually hits full. Um, once their ATB is full, they're locked into their anime. They're locked into whatever they picked, and they can't change it. Yeah. Um, and cure skip here is not entirely um, a consistent strategy. It's just something you go for if if you get an opening for it. But sometimes yeah. you just don't get a pattern that can allow for it. Yep. It's also and another fight that's important to count damage on because yes. if you um, Beatrix has uh, on that fight 47, 36 HP before the fight ends. Um, contrary to the way we handle Beatrix 1, which is just to try to survive the 10 turns, it's faster to deplete her HP at this point instead of waiting the 10 turns. Um, but if you queue up commands um, after she passes that damage threshold, the commands will still go through before the fight actually ends. So you want to count damage on that fight to make sure that you don't queue up any more commands than you actually need to because you would just end up wasting a lot of time that way, yeah. especially if one of the extra commands is a Blizzara. Yeah, you could wait 10 turns on this fight, but since we've uh, we've kind of gotten stronger since Beatrix won, we, we just opt to um, deplete the health and make it quicker that way. And yeah, another another thing I'm kind of I uh, am seeing is the turbo leaderboard discussion. The there are there is a separate leaderboard for PSX, um, and I believe also on uh, emulator that you that there is a turbo like uh, split for the leaderboards. There's a non-turbo and a turbo, and I use I'm. I'm primarily more of a turbo runner, um, but I have run non-turbo in the past. Um, I just have some like hand and wrist issues, and mashing's not exactly uh, not not exactly a good thing for me. So, um. I would also like to add, as someone that does run uh, actually exclusively non-turbo, purely because I don't have a Kiwami. <laughs> Like actually getting access to a controller that, that has turbo on it can actually be like uh, like pretty hard, especially yeah. depending mm -hmm. on where you live and things especially like that. Especially a decent so turbo like, controller, yeah. It's, it is really yeah. important the categories uh, are divided for that reason, I think. Um, but both categories, I mean, I've I have run on a on a turbo uh, controller before in the past, and it has its own uh, like difficulties. Like, yeah. It's, it sounds really stupid, but remembering to turn turbo off. And things like that is is something that you will have to play around with because yeah. I've made sort of... a couple of mistakes with my turbo already. Yeah, yeah. It you can literally is, yeah. kill your run with turbo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. very easily. It's so, not just yes. I'll put a turbo controller in and the game gets easier. It definitely is yeah. not the case at all. I always, in any I always, way, shape or form. <laughs> I always describe Final Fantasy IX in this way, and I think you could describe most JRPG speedruns in this way. The things that are the skills in the run are in order of importance. Your how you do the fights, if you do the fights efficiently and understand the strats and manage your ability or manage your um, commands in the fights. Um, how well and quickly you can menu, followed by how well you can back things up, like what your game knowledge is of backing things up if you make a mistake or if something goes wrong and your movement. You know, different games have different, like, orders of importance, but those are, like, the four main skills of running most JRPGs. Mm -hmm. the di and having a turbo controller versus not having a turbo controller doesn't really factor into those four skills in any significant way. Um, so, you know, and it, it makes sense to have them on separate leaderboards in some games, FF9 included, because there are certain things you can do with a turbo controller that a human being can't do when it comes to movement. But, um, you know, at the end of the day, we have this discussion in the FF9 community a lot with the difference between, like, the PlayStation version versus the uh, HD version on PC. Like, there are things about the HD version that make it a little bit easier in some ways. Um, at the end of the day, it's still the same core game, whether you're running on whichever platform you're running on, whichever controller you, you're using. And at the end of the day, that same core game is really difficult to master as a speedrun. Yeah, <clears throat> this is definitely a game because the there's such a high level of variance in this game. It's uh, it's one of those games where you have to just get put in you know hundreds of different scenarios over and over yeah. again in all throughout the run just for various things um, before you really start to make the connections about like 
you know, before like decisions just kind of come second nature to you. Um, yeah. And honestly, like we're talking about it in the context of that making it like a really difficult run. It's also what makes the run so fun because yeah, absolutely. you're never going to have the same run of this game twice. And yeah. the adaptation challenge and like expecting unexpected things or knowing how to manage your like bad luck is part of the skill and fun of the of the speed run for me. I agree. Yeah. Um, catching up a little bit on plot here. Uh, so um, we saw. Yes, I am actually playing on an actual PS2, by the way. Yeah. This is on hardware. I know that's been asked. All right. Uh, fair I, I need to interrupt, but this is it. This is this is my this is my stuff. This oh, is yeah. it. So no. Cage let's swing get, here. Let's get Brutal's <laughs> talk about cage swing and guard skip, mm. and then we can do a plot catch up. Shout out to Rev. Uh, there is a, I, a, a I tax cage it. swing you can do. It's, yeah, it, it, to be honest, I'm sure there's some level of RNG involved in it because sometimes it feels like you do the exact same thing and you don't get the response. But you can do this in four sets of four. So it's 12 individual cycles of swinging. Um, it doesn't really save much time, but it feels good to get. But as soon as we've landed on the right hand side of the screen, guard skip commences. And this is, this is, <laughs> everyone in the community, I'm sure, is aware is my favorite part of the run because it's one of the only parts where it's purely motor skill of you navigating the room. So Amart's going to try and get to the other side of this bridge without touching any guards. So That's good. let's get it. Nah. Oh, that was a close one. I you went, almost I got it. I went a little it. too late on the yeah on it. If it's you okay. ran Final Fantasy 13, you wouldn't have got caught. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, while so, we're in this encounter, real quick, the there's also um, a question in chat about um, yes, Final Fantasy 9 is a PlayStation One game, but we generally do run it on PS2 because the load times are faster, a lot faster. <laughs> yeah. Um. um Oh, nice. Because we took a lot of uh, encounters in Garg and Ru, our HP is ex exponentially higher than it usually is, so these guards aren't a problem really to worry about. Um, so it, we're not really too worried about hitting them, but they do just they, they take a little bit of time off you. Um, but the, 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 where they spawn and the rate at which they discover that you're there, um, their speed is always the same and the way they behave is always the same. Um, they can mm. take longer to, to discover that you're there and they can spawn in different places, which can completely change the pattern yeah. of how they come at you. Yeah. So there is, it's, yeah, no, I, nobody ever gets put by 100% of the time. Yeah. Ever. No. You, people, I've seen everyone get caught on there so many times. Yeah, something yeah. I want to point out about those guard fights too, uh, that Brutal's kind of, that Brutal's did touch on, is that uh, <laughs> it's a good thing that we fought stuff in Gargan Rue earlier, so it's Steiner, Marcus, or BB. If you didn't fight anything in Gargan Rue and Steiner and Marcus are really low level, you can straight game over to those fights. Like, no joke. Yeah. You can I just get deleted by game over to those fights more than I once. I have game over to those fights many times, too. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. It's especially if both guards get stacked on top of each other and then you get hit because you, you're not going to have time between yeah. the two fights to heal. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You can just die. Yeah. So plot catch up on our story fries. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay. Uh, it's making me hungry. <laughs> so previously uh, we saw Bron destroy Clara with Odin. Uh, real quick, we're gonna, we're gonna duck into this library and then back out just to- Say hi to Tantarian. <laughs> um, so Bron destroyed Clara with Odin, which she extracted from Dagger. Um, Beatrix raided Clara to get the, uh, what is it, the sand jewel or something? The the Desert Falcon. The jewel from Clara to give to Bronze so that she could uh, use it for magical purposes. Um, and then Beatrix uh, saw that Bronn obliterated Clara and was yeah. like, huh, that doesn't seem very necessary. I don't know if I really like working for you. So Beatrix at that point is kind of revealed to be sort of a gray, like a gray character uh, when you're uh, spying on them on the Red Rose. Um, and then we took the Black Mage teleporters down to Alexandria, where we have now reunited with Steiner and crew. And uh, here we're going to pick up um, an Ice Brand, which is a very powerful weapon for Steiner at this point. We're also going to grab a tent because there's no reason not to. Um, and soon you're going to see just how broken the Power Belt is. 
Yes. The Steiner. Uh, Steiner, oh, Steiner is going to hit like a freight train. Oh, Steiner. <laughs> uh, and especially if Steiner crits on the next fight, uh, <laughs> you literally can just one-shot the next fight. Or yeah. the fight after that. <laughs> my oh, yeah. my PB too, yeah. had a Steiner crit on the next fight, and I was very excited about it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Ooh. yeah. Um, Big crits and gold splits. Let's go. So when Braun extracted the Eidolons from Dagger, uh, they just kind of left her body in here. She's not dead, but she's like kind of in a coma, and Thorn yeah. is still there. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, she just got ditched. Um, so now we have to fight Zorn and Thorn. And this Finally. fight, uh, <laughs> you only have to deplete one of their health bars to end the fight, and Thorn has less HP. Thorn is the red one. So we're just gonna uh, target Thorn. Um, the ooh, nice HP. Can we get a crit? Crit. Get a crit. 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 crit, crit. Uh, oh, no crit. Oh, oh, you saw he did him. 1800 no, I'm gonna, damage. I'm gonna get a one turn at least. Yeah. Yeah. You absolutely. Yeah. As long as it so doesn't miss. Zorn and Thorn uh, have a really interesting uh, mechanic going on where uh, they both have, I think, 50 speed, which is the max speed stat you can have in this game. Um, in order, when they when they have their turn, they enter into like a bouncing state, which is why when Amart queued um, Steiner's swing, he didn't go in straight away. They were actually having a turn. Um, once both of them have entered their bouncing state, they then um, imbue the other with an ability to cast a spell. And then, once their ATB fills once more, they actually cast that spell. Yeah. And what they'll be trying to do is imbue Zorn, is the blue one? Yes. With uh, Meteor, who then hits your party with an AoE spell. It does decent damage. Yeah, it's it pretty random damage. It can kill you. Yeah. Um, but you can mitigate that by dealing any level of physical damage, I believe. I don't know if magical works. Yeah. But we usually use VV to go in there and just give him a little bit of a bonk. Um, yeah. Just to, you know, sit him down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just ground him a bit. He's like, hey, yeah. hey, quit that. And then uh, carry on wailing on them. Um, Usually, at this point in the game, Steiner isn't quite call. so beefy. Um, so one attack, an attack from Steiner and then one from each of your other party members won't quite do enough damage to finish off um, Thorn. So what we usually do is have Steiner attack and then wait for him to come back around and have him attack the second time yeah. just to finish the fight off that way. So I'm doing a safety save here, um, and it's not so much for this upcoming fight, but it's for what's to come afterwards. Um, yeah. There is a chance that you can just uh, get yeah. uh, kind of... There's a chance that you can just kind of get killed and there's legitimately like nothing that you do wrong um mm -hmm. it involves basically two of your party members getting put to sleep and it's just it can be a nightmare it's happened to me before I'd rather be safe than sorry <laughs> yeah no good call uh, so okay. once again um when beatrix 3 hits um underneath 30 uh, 50 percent her health value the next time that she cues an ability, so the next time her ATV fills up and she decides to do a new attack, um, she will use Cura this time, which heals for about 1100, I think. I think it's like 800 something. 800, 800 maybe? I'm not sure. Um, so, once again, you can use Vivi to buffer all of your other characters, so you could basically have Vivi um, cue Blizzara and then put some physical attacks behind it so that she'll definitely cue her next attack. You'll get a lot of damage, and then you'll ideally finish her before she has her next turn. Um, yeah. That's the... something of a strategy. But because she's so fast, and she usually goes first, um, what usually happens is she opens and she just kills somebody. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it, it, it feels like they, they've programmed Beatrix 3 to kill Steiner it more really often than not. It really does feel that way. It really does. <laughs> it would make sense because she's probably pretty mad at him for being a traitor. Who knows? Um, maybe, 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 but it, it, maybe it's also because we don't want it to happen more than anything else. Because, like you said, Steiner is the huge damage dealer in this. He yeah, deals absolutely. more than twice the damage of Zidane and Freya, and at least twice the damage of uh, Vivi. And that's going to kind of be the theme for a lot of the run. Yeah. yeah. Um, Freya does still have the cover ability enabled from disc one, uh, or disc two. So, well, the start of disc two. So, if Steiner does go down. We'll be able to PD him, and um, uh, he'll be in critical. So then Freya will then be able to tank at least one hit for him. Wow! Here's yeah. the shock. Okay. 
having VV go down is a is a pro is a pain, but it's not the end of the world. I'm gonna wait to here. Leading. Yeah, leading him about fifty percent oh, here. So I hope they just target Spider. Oh, oh wow. that's unlucky. This is a trolley fight. Because now he's in critical. Yeah. Prey will be covering for him and tanking any damage that he should receive. Yep, right there. There we go. And because of the long animation of the PD, she will have queued her next turn, so she decided to basic attack that turn. Obviously. No, not quite. So the cure means that we're not taking. No one's going to go down, so Stunner yeah. should be able to deal enough damage just to finish this. Fight. So we yeah, can that's end. That's what I was going to say. Is that yeah. um, in this fight, it's not always best to skip Kira because that means that she's not just going to delete somebody. Um, whereas yeah. in the yeah. previous fight, it's almost always good to skip here. But here, um, if she Kira's, that means that Steiner isn't going to die, and Steiner hits her for more damage than she heals with Kira. So, yeah, you still gain. But now, once Beatrix vanquishes us once again, she starts to see reason as soon as she sees what the queen has done to Dagger. Because like we talked about earlier, where Steiner's main prerogative is that he needs to protect the princess, even when she's doing things that, um, that contradict his other moral duties. Uh, Beatrix is sworn to the same oath. And as soon as she sees, like, both of them kind of have that parallel as characters, where they are um, dealing with the conflict of their loyalty to the kingdom of Alexandria versus their sworn duty to protect the princess. And so this is kind of the turning point where Steiner finally realizes how horrible Queen Braun has been and how she is, she's basically become the enemy and that he needs to protect the princess at all costs. He begins to trust Zidane more. It's a, honestly a wonderful character moment for him. And Beatrix kind of reaches the same conclusion not long after. She's like, Queen Braun is out of her mind. We have to turn on her to protect the princess and get the princess out of Alexandria. So that's what's going to happen here. Beatrix is basically going to stand up to the queen. Freya is going to join her and they are going to uh, basically hold the line against these beasts that Zorin and Thorn are about to summon as Zidane, Steiner, and Vivi help Dagger escape from Alexandria. It's a really cool moment in the, in the, in the story. One of my personal favorite story beats. Now, Amar, um, you promised and... me before the stream that you wouldn't hurt the, the, the good boys. <laughs> you <laughs> promised you me. You're, you leave the good boys you, alone. You were lying to me. You were lying uh, to I, this. I would never you were lie lying to you. to this good community of people. <laughs> How, How dare, dare you? you? How da no. Uh, How dare you? He's hurting the, the good boys, Brutals. Oh, baby boy. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you, Brutals? <laughs> so coming up is another series of fights. <laughs> coming up is another series of scripted encounters. Um, another series of scripted encounters where you kind of have to micromanage your decisions. It's not quite as intense as the Clara invasion, but um, it, it's just another example of like how important it is to like act and react in fights in this game. Uh, we're mm -hmm. gonna get Zidane set up with that power belt so that he can start learning MP attack and use it on these upcoming fights, along with the ability Beast Killer, which will allow him to one-shot these bander snatches. Um, and he still has Maneater on, so he can still one-shot these Black Mages. Um, Steiner will be able to one-shot the Black Mages with a physical attack, and Vivi will also be able to one-shot them with a Blizzara. Yeah, Brutals, that wasn't a good boy. <laughs> How dare you. He's a very good boy, he just wants to lick and play and have fun. <laughs> <laughs> and you're out here hitting him with Thunder Slashes and such. My haircut. So this fight was this fight was okay. We were able to um, get one attack in. Only two of the three mages got attacks in. Uh, a really good fight usually um, can see none of them get attacks in, but the black mages are relatively fast, so it's not like super common for that to happen. Um, mm -hmm. It's also a funny moment because like some uh, a little character touch that they do in this game is that when a character is in like is in like a, a conflicted emotional state or something, um, 
they will uh, not pose for victory after battle. And right now, Vivi hasn't been posing for victory for a while, ever since, um, Is I that think- true? I think, yeah, yeah, Vivi stops posing for victory, I think, after, um, like, all the way back in Grotto. And uh, neither do Steiner or Garnet because they are having the conflict of, like, you know, um, having to give up on their nation or whatever. But Zidane is still doing the victory poses after every battle, and it's kind of like, maybe you should read the room a little bit, Zidane. <laughs> Today we learned. Yeah. Wait, did, yeah, that not did neither of you know that? No, I was pretty sure right? there was something Package like that, one, but I, I, I wow. honestly did not wait. know that either. Oh wow, yeah, that's wow. like wait. yeah. I, throughout I this entire sequence, throughout this entire sequence, the only one who will pose for um, in victory is Zidane. Today I learned. Yeah, yeah I was I'm, pretty I've sure been running this game for I almost mean, a year and a half, and I didn't even. I, I never once noticed that. I noticed it, like, but I didn't make the connection, if you know what I mean. Like, sometimes I saw that when they won, they just stood there. Yeah. That's me. I always thought that maybe it was like a bug or something. That's me using my English major brain. <laughs> <laughs> I think it makes sense, though. Yeah, absolutely. I like well, it. That's, this, that's my head canon, too, now. <laughs> this, game, this game has, like, so many good, like, little touches like that to highlight, like, the emotional states of the characters. It's it's really just such a and it's something that I've come to appreciate even deeper like in speedrunning it, um, just picking up on all those little um, please those don't little level up. Please don't things. level up. Please don't level up. Please don't level up. Please don't level up. Please please please. Oh. <laughs> level thirteen. Level thirteen. Stay level thirteen so we can don't use level lucky up. seven. Don't, don't level, level up, Zidane. Don't level up. Oh, yeah. You didn't level, level up. up. <laughs> you have to kill like four things in clear or something to hit 14 here. <laughs> I've never heard Brutal so excited for anything in my life. <laughs> Actually, no, I take that back. When we did the charity race for FF9, when we were when we were doing cards, when everybody was getting to the card tournament, that's I when I, that's I was when Brutal was the most excited. <laughs> that and when Sayo survived and missed it on with one HP. That was oh my pretty awesome. God, Beatrix, please! <laughs> Take those running shoes off! <laughs> <laughs> I'm here for Brutal's energy right now. I'm, I'm just I'm... waking up. <laughs> also, fun fact so... Beatrix does have equipment here. Yes. She has uh, mithril gloves, chain, uh, chain mail, and desert boots, and uh, barbute or mithril helm. Mm -hmm. Even though you can't access her uh, her equipment, no. if you look in the game files, you can see she does have so equipment here. So the, the only way these fights could possibly go bad is if the dogs go quickly and they lick you. If they give you the lick, then you get put to sleep, and we can't have that. It looks like we're getting away with it. This is actually nice. a really nice castle escape. Yeah, yeah, this is pretty really good. Sweet. We still have the the final screen though. Okay. You can get encounters on that screen, like the three quarters circle screen you can it's extremely rare but you can get them and uh there's some really nasty encounters you can get like four type c's they're it, they're uh they're spooky yeah it's 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 not not a good screen to get an encounter on <laughs> uh oh also real yeah there's some um, real bad formations this is also a, a decent time to talk about uh, Flea on Zidane. So oh, yeah. If, so Zidane will learn Flea um, by this point. Or Zidane will have learned Flea by this point if you killed a certain number of encounters in Evil Forest and Ice Cavern and also uh, in Clara. And it's really nice to have because if you were to get an encounter on that screen, you could flee. Whereas if you hadn't learned it, you wouldn't be able to because Zidane has the power belt right now. Mm -hmm. um, and we can check to see if Zidane has learned flee in the upcoming boss battle. 
If he hasn't learned flee, then we're gonna have to put the dagger on him uh, after that boss battle. Uh, and it can get kind of weird if you forget to do that. Usually you can kill things okay if you can't flee in the next area, but um, mm -hmm. you it's know just something that we have to keep track of is whether we've learned flee or not. You know we how will... to guarantee that Zidane has learned flee. Yeah, we will learn it no matter <laughs> what um, by the time we get to the Aoife tree. But uh, it's just it's just good to know whether you have it or not, and it costs no time to. Learn, you can so. you can guarantee that Zidane Burn knows the flee by and this hit point. The gym. By this mm. point, he'll always know flee if you fight Tantarian. True. <laughs> <laughs> you could also just give him the dagger on antlion. That's true. So <laughs> this is another boss battle that's pretty much unlosable as long as you do the right things. Um, the only real variance here is uh, he's going to cast Ultra Sound Wave, maybe. Oh, oh, oh the oh, so speedy. Oh, it can miss him, miss him, miss Oh, nice time. miss. <laughs> uh, yeah, that was, uh, if that happens, that was a, you have to remedy them. That's that was a roller it. coaster of emotions in the last, like, yeah. 10 seconds. That was <laughs> a really low roll, that. though. <laughs> you can also... Um, the other thing that can go wrong in this fight is so you cast Blizzara twice with Vivi and then use the um, use an attack from Zidane to finish him off. Uh, if Zidane misses, okay, uh, Rabu Mago okay. Mago will curl up um, and go into a different battle state uh, during which he can cast Earth. Is Earth, it Earth power. Shake or Earthquake? I forget. Earth Power. But, earthquake, I think. Right. It's Earth yeah. Power. Earth Power. I think yeah, Earth so Power is the Japanese name. Either way, he can cast a really, um, a really strong um, AOE spell uh, that can not, not kill the party, but it just wastes time, and you have to wait for him to uncurl or cast another Blizzara, which are both time-consuming options. But thankfully, that didn't happen here, um, yep. and it was pretty clean fight otherwise. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Robu Imago is actually the only enemy in the entire game that casts Earth, specifically Earth Power. Interesting. <laughs> I don't know why. It's 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 just like a lower power version of Earth Shake and Earthquake, I guess. Um, you can also, yeah, uh, like C said, uh, you can get the curl if Zidane misses. You can also get it if like BB and Zidane both really low roll. It's pretty rare, but it can happen. Uh, there's also sometimes opportunities to steal on the fight, like uh, if Zidane starts the fight with instant ATB and like nobody else does. Yeah. Uh, you can steal some some goodies from that fight. You can steal an Adam Invest, which we're actually gonna buy later. Yeah. And you can also steal an Oak Staff, which uh, some routes could use, but mostly <laughs> it's just sold for money. Get that good drain on Hildegars. Yeah, the drain kill is swag. <laughs> um. I think right now we've got a good amount of cutscene ahead of us. Now might be a good time if there's any announcements or anything that uh, yep. we want to make. Yeah, there's always announcements. Uh, well, first of all, I want to let you all know that AGDQ 2022 is coming up. That will be taking place January 9th through the 16th. You can go to gamesdonequick.com for more information and detailed dates uh, on the event. Uh, also, if you missed out on any of our GDQ Hotfix shows, you can be sure to check out the archive of past runs and shows at youtube.com slash games done quick. If you are watching this on YouTube from the future, feel free to join us over at twitch.tv slash games done quick to check out our live shows starting most nights at 7 p.m. Eastern time. And while you're there, Hotfix is funded in part thanks to subscriptions and bits. So please consider subscribing to help support future broadcasts. We appreciate that very much. Uh, and also GDQ Some of Best Segments is the new highlight channel on YouTube. We have small highlight reels from all of our main events, including Hotfix. Uh, you can use the command exclamation mark highlights in the Twitch chat to learn more about that. And uh, if you are enjoying watching this episode of Time Capsule, I encourage all of you to follow Amart here on Twitch. That is twitch.tv slash Amart. Uh, and thank you all for being here. I uh, appreciate you taking your time to uh, show this off, Amar. And uh, I've been having a good time listening to commentary yeah, as well. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much for having us. Yeah, Honestly, it's been like, great. It's, yeah. uh, it's, been really, it's been really fun representing the community and representing the game here at BDQ. And being here also earlier in the year for FF8, 
it's just been a real fun experience both times as a both a runner and a commentator so if you're out there and um you run a game definitely try to try to apply for their hot fix shows it's a great time and just just put yourself out there yeah. um, really speaking fun. of that is there a link or how how would one go about submitting for hot fix is it, is it just like normal so, marathons or uh yeah so if you wanted to submit to hot fix you can go to gamesdonequick.com slash hot fix and so what that will do is take you to Kind of like the schedule uh, tell you what sort of shows we have uh on hot fix which is pretty much every day out of the week um right and if you want to get involved you can just email uh send us an email with some of your thoughts and ideas on something you'd like to do for a show at hotfix at gamestonequick.com but uh again if you if you want a, the full list of the information it's gamestonequick.com slash hotfix great thank, thank you, you so sure. much That's super yeah helpful. thank you this has thank been you. so nice uh I always love coming and um, commentating these things. Um, okay, so we have escaped Alexandria, and by we, I mean Zidane, Vivi, and Dagger. Steiner ran back, stayed behind to help Freya and Beatrix finish off the, the, um, the Bandersnatches. Marcus and Blank came to help uh, basically beat up Zorn and Thorn <laughs> um, while these three escaped. And they crash landed on the Gargan uh, in Pinnacle Rocks, where we meet Ramu, one of the Idolans that we just kind of brush off and don't really talk to because it's a speed run and we don't need them. Yeah, um, casually, you pretty much like always just think you have to like go get his five story pieces and put the story together, but you can actually just say no to him. Yeah, we, <laughs> it's we not, just it's say not the only uh, way to get Ramu. Yeah, hi Ramu, bye Ramu. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, I've if been told that the the story that you can you can recover is uh, basically the plot of like Final Fantasy Two or something. Final yes, uh, I believe so. Yeah, I think some of the names are changed. Yeah, but yeah. I believe that's oh, really? correct. Yeah. yeah, something we haven't really talked about yet um, is that this game is just chock full of homages to uh, previous Final Fantasy titles, especially the first five, um, mm -hmm. because this was the last. Uh, the last game in the series, obviously, for the PlayStation um, before Final Fantasy X came out on the PS2. It was also the uh, last game in the series with a lot of the original team from the from the original Final Fantasy games. Uh, so they kind of used that as an opportunity to sneak in a lot of references to the game, to the series origins. Um, you know, obviously, like the Black Mages look uh, take their appearance from the Black Mages of the original game. Uh, Garnet's white mage hood that she was wearing at the beginning of the game. Um, the fact that the Zidane, Steiner, Vivi, and Dagger are the four classes and the, uh, the, the four default classes of the original party in FF1. And we could honestly spend the entire, like, uh, the entire run just pointing out homages to. I think, I think one of my favorite games. ones is the, the band on the theater ship. This I this I was gonna mention this before, oh, yeah. but I forgot to. Actually, plays um the um like the song that for Rufus or whatever and yeah. Junon, the Junon Parade. I don't remember what it's called, but Junon Parade. They actually yeah. play it on the ship, um in an ATE. Yeah, yeah, it's super but, cool. Yeah. Um. Yeah, this game is chock full of references from FF1 through 8. Also, I want to be your canary. Is I believe it's a super obvious Shakespeare reference. Yeah, yeah, yes, it's it's basically yes. Romeo and Juliet. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The, well, there's also a lot of cultural references to things outside of Final Fantasy too, like literary references, references to movies, references to mm -hmm. other video games. It's just it's something mm -hmm. something really fun about it. Like this game just has a lot of like a lot of like uh, nostalgia to it, while still having a very firm identity of its own. On that screen, we hug the left wall a little bit because if you stay a little bit too close to the center, you'll get like a small cutscene with the the old guy yeah. talking about this like black mage is dead on the ground. Also, this is Lindblom after Atomos. Yeah. Lindblom uh, not looking too hot right now. Yeah, Alexandria has officially attacked and invaded Lindblom, and uh, Regent Sid decided to surrender, having seen the destruction that befell Bermesia and Clara. Yeah. Uh, but hey, the fountain's okay. The fountain's True. okay. <laughs> uh, so Lindblom is currently under Alexandrian occupation. This means that any of the transit that is normally available in Lindblom, we cannot use. We cannot yeah. use the cable car system. We cannot use the um, 
Uh, we can't use the boat. Yeah. Can't use an airship, even if there was one. Uh, we can't really do anything. The only thing that we can do is we can leave on foot again. Yeah. Um, the same way that we went to Giza Maluk's Grotto. And what we're going to be told here pretty soon, if we're not already told it right now, is that we have to go to a whole other continent. Yep. Now, I don't know about you guys, but when I want to go to another continent, my first thought is, man, I should really walk to another continent. Um, so that's what we're going to do. We're in luck. That's exactly what we're going to do. How yeah, that sounds, that sounds perfect. Um, Sid also gives us 3,000 gil here, which is kind of nice. Yeah, a nice little uh, injection of gil. It's like a stimulus check. Mm -hmm. Also <laughs> here in the Japanese version, this is where you would get your world map back as well. Uh, in the Japanese version, Sid actually takes it from you in Lindblom on disc one, and you don't get it back until you leave Lindblom on disc two. Uh, <laughs> uh, that so is, that's kind of a bug that they fixed in the That is so version. bizarre. That's, uh, that's messed up. Yeah. So like if you, on the Japanese version, if you try to open the map when you're going to Grotto or Bermisia, you just can't. Yeah, wow. I actually yeah. had no idea. That's really funny. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Um, and basically what's happening here now is we're getting a series of scenes where uh, Zidane and Dagger are kind of sneaking through the castle to avoid the Alexandrian soldiers because, um, you know, Dagger obviously is wanted, basically, and so is Zidane. Like, the entire squad is wanted in Alexandria, so they have to kind of sneak around, yeah. <laughs> um, and Sid is kind of hatching a plan to help them uh, escape from escape from Lindblom and get to the outer continent, um, which is uh, where we have intel that Kuja has headed. Um, and this is kind of the point in the story where we start to suspect that while Braun is doing evil things, it really seems like Kuja is kind of pull, uh, pulling, the, pulling, the, pulling strings the strings a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, and like providing her, like Kuja's the one who provided her with the technology to create black mages. Kuja's the one who provided her with the plan to uh, extract the Eidolons from uh, Garnet. So this is where we're starting to track, like maybe we need to go find out what Kuja's up to and try to stop him. Yeah. Yeah. They do that that thing that Final Fantasy games are so fond of doing, where the person you think is the villain for like half the game turns out to be a sub villain. And then that <laughs> person also turns out to be a sub sub villain. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we're gonna be doing a lot of uh trekking through uh through a lot of uh, places where we can get encounters. Uh, we will finally, soon enough, meet the second best character in the game, <laughs> which is Quinna. Um, there are three acceptable names for Quinna, and if Amar does not use any of them, I will pretend I never met him. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's only one that I'm gonna use, so. Okay, I, I trust you. I trust you, okay? Don't make me regret this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I'm probably going to disappoint Mythic, so... Oh, uh. my lord. <sighs> it's okay. I'll learn to get over it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now we're actually going to Q's Marsh. Most people, when they play this game casually, you'll go here uh, in disc one and get Quina, but it's better to get Quina now in the speedrun because Quinna will join at a higher level and also won't sap our experience between disc one and now. Yeah. Um, yeah. For anyone who missed the explanation back in disc one, the reason we don't pick up Quinna there is because uh, they aren't really useful in any way in Bur Grotto, Bermisia, or Clara as far as, like, from a speedrun perspective. Obviously, in a casual play, if you're going around hunting for blue magic, they can be a very valuable party member from the beginning. But in the speedrun, we don't really do anything with that so it's best to wait to pick quinna up until it's mandatory so that um the party's experience is not being split and there's also a couple of cutscenes that take longer if quinna's in the party um so it's you also save a little time that way too. too yeah 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 and you you know you have to stutter step two cues marsh and then leave and risk getting encounters here and then go to um and then go to choke Rosparis, so 
Uh, thank you. <laughs> you know, Amart, this is okay. I'm okay with this. Oh, you're just okay with him naming Quinn after me? It's not him, Hop. It's not Chef. It's Cease. <laughs> it's it's yeah, still a I very mean, good name. <laughs> it was either going to be Cease or Quinoa, but... <laughs> Um, so this is this is a this is a really um, notable deviation that a lot of routes take. Um, so as we mentioned before, this is a no knight route, um, which means that we are not going to be learning the blue magic spell knight for Quinna, which in other routes can be used in certain boss fights to uh, as a strat to put them to sleep and uh, deal extra amounts of damage to them while avoiding uh, letting them attack. Since this route does not do that, unfortunately, uh, Quinna here actually won't be doing much, but they are about to be in the party for a little while. And there is one fight uh, later on in part two that uh, they are a mandatory party member for, and they get the killing blow. <laughs> yes, it, it is. It's quite amazing, actually. Um, yeah, so uh, the upcoming dungeon that we're, we're going to be going into is where we would learn Knight on Quinna if we were going to run Knight. You have a pretty high chance of getting encounters in this next dungeon. Uh, I believe when we did the math, there's roughly an 80% chance of getting a knight encounter yeah. in this next dungeon, which is Fossil Rue. That's still a 20% chance to not get one, though. So, you know, it's kind of one of the, ca the the nice things about running knightless is that you don't have to worry about getting a knight encounter or not, because if you are running a knight route, there is a backup in disc three for learning knight, uh, but it's horrible. It so is, yeah. more often than not, <laughs> yeah, you'll just sit there and toss a ruin, force a knight encounter, and it's bad. It's it's awful, but it's better than learning it in disc three. Um, so, but fortunately, we're not running knights, so we don't have to worry about that. Yep. There's also some uh, previously there was some foreshadowing with uh, Vivi's relationship with uh, Quail. Uh, yes. You notice that Quail got really angry at Vivi when he asked about Quan. Um, there's a somewhat of a lengthy, uh, you know, series of side quests sort of things you can do with various Q's marshes and Quan's dwelling and all that that teaches you more about Vivi and Quinna's relationship and Vivi's relationship with the other Q's and all that, um, which yeah. is really cool. Yeah, it's fun. The TLDR of it is that uh, Vivi before arriving in Alexandria, was being raised by a Q that wanted to eat him. Yeah. <laughs> and you can actually read his diary, and it says, uh, hmm, maybe big enough to eat? Not sure. <laughs> so earlier we were talking about the ultimate shame of the telescope and reviewing the places that you'd already uh, looked at. Ah, yes. This Whereas is a bigger this, shame. Oh. This is the ultimate shame. If Amart gets caught by the armor Dullahan, he has to apologize personally to every single viewer in the chat room. <laughs> it's in the notes. Yeah, it is it is it's part not of actually the... in the notes, but it's okay. actually in the notes. No, it's not. It's, he just it's changed an, the doc. It's an unofficial <laughs> it's an unofficial tradition like uh singing melodies of life when you PB. Uh so basically this is a this is a a little chase scene where you have to outrun the armadula hand there. Um, and if you get caught, you get thrown into a back attack encounter. It's easy enough to escape from it or use Blizzara to one-shot Armadula Hand and then um, get away. <sighs> He's but, actually really weak. Um, it, it is very time-consuming, so it's it's pretty bad when you um, when you get caught. Fortunately, it's pretty easy not to. Um, Brutals, I, I have a feeling you would love to explain... Uh, I would love to. I would love to. <laughs> I adore this fight because it, it lets you spin the wheel and then go into one of the most interesting backup strategies yeah. in any in most fights that I, I, I'm aware of. Brutals um, is a gambling so, man. <laughs> I love it. So you can cast Lucky Sevens on Lani at the beginning of the fight. It, I believe you can't beat her in a preempt. I'm pretty sure she always goes first. Um, if you uh, cast Lucky Sevens, you've got a 25% chance equal parts to deal 7, 77, 777, or 7,777, whereas Lani only has about 5,000 HP, so it will kill her instantly if you get that final hit. Now, what you can do with this level of ATB, hopefully, is if you don't get the right roll, you can actually use a backup strategy. Easy. Easy. Oh, yeah, we got lucky seven. Easy. We got lucky seven. Amar, how do you do it, man? Reveal Look your at secrets. That. 
How do you do it? Look How do I at do it? that. He just built different. He's just that good. He's literally just built different. I don't know what else to say. He's just built differently. <laughs> I love how you just delete her with Lucky 7 and Selene, she's like, you're pretty good. <laughs> yeah. She's like, oh man, I better not, I better not screw with this. So Lani also has um, a 50% trigger where she will sort of take control of the fight for a moment and she'll ask you very politely, why aren't you giving up? <laughs> um, we can manipulate the ATBs in a way because when she does that, what actually is going on is the whatever she has queued at that point in time. Again, <laughs> Lani is incredibly fast. I think she has like 48 speed or something. Um, whatever she has queued is then put almost to the back of the queue. So if, 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 if she queues her ability and then you deal damage to push her over 50%, um, while having um, Zidane's next turn queued, her saying, why aren't you giving up, will then put Zidane back in front of her, and you can use that opportunity to make up the time and the difference that you've lost by going for lucky sevens. Yeah. And I love it. And, yeah, it's, it's... and it feels so good to do because the setup for getting it all to flow into place involves um, 80 waiting Zidane for a few frames, Changing Quinna, casting Bizarra, and then yeah. AT waiting to that. It's just, it, it's, oh, it's. Yeah, it's, it's a really satisfying <laughs> strat to pull off. It's really yeah. cool, and I think a really good example of the fact that no two fights in this entire speedrun use the exact same strats. There are some, no. there are some that have similar, like similarities to each other, but like when you drill down into like the complexities, like it, it, it oh, really. Hey, you can get random encounters. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. This is your <laughs> first while, random encounter in a while. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's it's really cool just like thinking about like the, the how deep the strategies in each fight go, and like it's not just like spamming one attack over and over again or one ability. Like, nice. Yeah. So I want to. We haven't really spoken much about like random fleas and all that sort of stuff yet, have we? Yeah. So no. the way that you, there's two ways that you can escape from a random battle in this game. The first one we've seen lots of is Zidane casting flea. Um, obviously, he has to do a little twirl and a little flare and all that sort of, of stuff. Of course, and then yes. You, and then you run away, you know? He wouldn't be Zidane if he wasn't having a little bit of fun on the way out, He's, right? he's a theatrical boy, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> but the other way is that whenever, during combat, it is uh -oh. not your opponent's turn. Yeah. So that could be when no, at the beginning of the fight when nobody is doing anything or while you're queuing an ability, but not while you have a window open specifically. ATB must be moving in some way, shape, or form. Um, you're able to earn flea checks, which is um, a, you're, you're basically rolling a dice against the random number based on your level, their level, and a few other random factors to see and determine whether or not you are able to successfully flee. Every single second, you'll get one of these checks. Um, what you can do to manipulate that a little bit is what we saw in the encounter previous to this, is Amart actually had Vivi go up and perform a, a basic attack on one of those feather circles, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. essentially extends your own turn for maybe like a couple seconds or so, giving you more opportunities to get quick flees off. Um, the upside to this is that you obviously have more opportunities to get out of a battle really quickly, but the downside is if you don't get that quick flee, what you are potentially doing is delaying the turns that you would have otherwise, you know, been sat through while VV was having this turn. Yeah. So it's kind of a bit of a gamble. Um, it works a bit better during these earlier sets and um, parts of the game where your levels are a bit more on par with your opponents. But when you get to like disc four and much, much later on, they become really, really, really high risk, low reward. Well, I suppose they are still high reward, but you really, really, really like low success rate of actually getting them off because your level disparity is such a big factor. In yeah. yeah, quick fleas in disc four are like pretty rare. Yeah. yeah. Like are rarer was... than quick fleas anywhere else because if you compare quick fleas really in this quick. game to seven and eight, in FF7 and FF8, it's actually oh, really yeah. easy to run away from enemies because yeah. there's no flea Shout skill. Out to Abomination 1, 2, 1, 2. <laughs> I miss um, that fella. I miss that fella too. So in this screen here, as we saw before, Amart's actually using this um, this lonely miner here to split the screen by playing cards with him not for a brief moment. Oh, he's not doing it. Of course, he no, did he it on the way encounter. in. He did, yeah. Um, if yeah, you get the random encounter, it doesn't make a difference. That is true. Yeah. 
Um, giving that boy a brief hope of someone's going to come and play some cards with him. He's not seen anyone in a few months, but uh, <laughs> we're on our way now, unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> we haven't got a Quistus card to give him. I figured we'd set up the play mats and then get the deck boxes bounce. out, and then I'd just sign the match slip 2-0, and we move on. <laughs> of course. Oh, my gosh. Get out your dual disc and then ghost him. I... <laughs> Wish I could find my dual disc. I think it's still at my parents' house. <laughs> um, yeah, so, so Gargan, just, oh, no, go on, go on. Fossil Rue here is actually kind of a notorious dungeon casually for being really easy to get lost in. But once you speed run this game and like learn the path through it, you can get through it. Like, like y y you'll never get lost again. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, pretty because much. we really don't bother. We don't bother with any of the side stuff. We just go through the main route. We don't go to find like the hidden treasures. We don't do like the mining mini game. None of that. We just hit the main switches that get us out of here as fast as possible. We have the water jet knock us down here just for a little bit of extra speed. Mm -hmm. Hard. This is the hardest screen in Fossil Rue right here. It's so hard to skip the encounter check here. It's hard to I'm just do, do the screen. It's hard to yeah, just period. Okay, nice. Nice. The camera angle is so weird, and the, the path is, like, deceptively narrow. Yeah. Like, it's mm -hmm. really easy to just sit there and run into a wall for no reason. Yeah. Okay, all right. Do we get blessed here? Nice. Oh, that was nice. a really good fossil. No encounter on the last screen. How does he do yeah. it? 12 encounters, nice. by the way. Oh, really? Yeah, 12 encounters throughout the That's whole run. That's how many I had in my D-Rust. Do, I think at this point. Yeah, that's pretty good. But I had, I had more. I had no encounter fossil rue. Yeah. And hey, uh, are we are we on twelve total so far? Twelve total. Yeah. Yep. Wow. Wait, I he had, had seven in disc seven one. After disc one. Two in Gargan two rune, rune. Four in Clara. Two in Clara. Oh, two in Clara. Wait. 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 Was it four in Clara? I thought it was three. No, was it sand golem and some dragonflies? Right. That was it. Was that it? Oh, yeah. oh, 13 then. 13 then, because we had two in Fossil, in fossil Room. Still, 13 encounters for this point is, is pretty... It's, it's pretty, not bad. It's, it's not pretty bad solid. Uh, coming out of Fossil Room, once again, we saw... Um, we saw Amart I, being I able to run. Screen. Uh, Amart was able to run for a bit on the world map without getting any encounters because we had that title card up. Um, that is the last time we'll be able to take advantage of that trick because the next two continents will be riding vehicles into and the title cards will fade before we're actually walking. But, um, you know, we take it when we can. We All stutter right. step over to the, uh, stutter step over rally to ho. the... Rally-ho. Uh, yes. Know. Get your rally hose in chat, please. Um, we stutter step over to the Chocobo tracks to summon our good friend Choco and ride over to this very lovely little village of dwarves called or, Kandipati. Or if you're an FF14 player, Lolly Ho. <laughs> I'm an FF4 player. Yeah, and? <laughs> I, I say Lolly Ho. Oh, I see. No. <laughs> <laughs> also, here's a little fun fact about this area that people might not know. You can actually clip through these two dwarves here, and there's you can get onto the ship that has a diamond. It's a very important item to pick up. Yeah, and you, it also, you need that diamond. And it also tells a funny story, because that is the spot where the people of this village get married, and it's like, oh, we found a diamond on the, like, wedding, like, boat. Like, what happened here? Who lost their wedding ring? And we just, we just steal it. <laughs> So we come in here and we see a black mage buying groceries here. Huh, that's really weird. Last time we saw black mages, they were uh, basically weapons of mass destruction. Why are they yeah. buying, why do they have need for groceries? Yeah. So Vivi's really curious. So they tell us of the black yeah. mage village in the yeah. forest nearby. And uh, we're gonna go check that out. Vivi is very, very interested because up until this point, he is the only black mage like himself he has ever met. Every other black mage um, either doesn't talk or can only say the words kill and is single-minded in their, like, um, in, like, their desire to destroy, basically. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, are we doing the Quinn and Vivi wedding? 
I'll check the time. <laughs> if we if okay. we do the the Quinn of Evie wedding, it will be uh, a mythic cease wedding. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, you're right. I'll, I'll check the time when we get closer. Sounds good. <laughs> I I don't want to be like. I don't want to like go super overestimate and yeah, I understand. <laughs> or really overestimate if I can avoid it. Yeah. But Welcome to Zemzelets. Uh these guys <laughs> can kind of just delete people. Usually Zidane with the Adam invest here doesn't take that much damage, so it's fine. Uh but if you try to smack them, like with Vivi or something, to buffer a flea check, uh, they can counter with uh, Psychokinesis, which is yeah. like a really high level spell <laughs> yeah. that deals like intense physical damage to somebody. It's, it, it, I don't know why they have that spell, but sure, Square Enix. The fact Enix, that okay. have uh, Psychokinesis is so funny to me. It is. There's yeah. so many enemies that just have like the weirdest abilities, like Soul Cage having Shockwave. Yeah. Like, uh, uh, so this is Black Mage Forest. There's like a 0.02% chance of getting zero encounters here. Uh, you usually get two, sometimes you get three. These encounters kind of, they kind of suck. Um, but basically you go right, right, left, left, right here and, uh, and you get through. Who's ready to jam? Oh, yeah. Ready to jam. This upcoming Quinn track fall. is one of the best. Okay, that wasn't a four encounter forest, thank the lord. Yeah. <laughs> I was due for kind of a rough forest. My my D rust was a one encounter forest. No so yeah. encounters fossil roost, so. That was three I, encounters I, there. I golded that segment, by the way, by a solid like 25 seconds. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, welcome to Black Mage Village. Just enjoy the tunes for a second. The tunes. Ah, I love it. So Vivi's little like panting here right, right now is so cute. He's like, there are others like me. <laughs> I love it. Um, we're gonna do a pretty pretty big shop here. Pick up this uh, ether right outside the shop. Or ether? Elixir. Elixir, thank you. <laughs> I always forget which pickups are ethers and which are elixirs. Uh, we're gonna get rid of some of these items that we don't need anymore. Pick up some gill. Buy a couple of important items for synthing. Nice menu. And that menu so satisfying. It's, it's very satisfying. It's really satisfying. <laughs> um, so we're running past the synthesis shop right now. We're actually going to run past it again. Um, but then afterwards, we're going to go into the synthesis shop. Once we're put in, like, at the exit of the village, like, when we're ready to leave. And it might seem like it makes more sense to go to the synthesis shop now while we're running right past it instead of waiting until we get put at the exit and then running back. But if we were to run into the synthesis shop now, or uh, like right before now, uh, we would get a cutscene with Dagger. Uh, just kind of, just like chilling in there, looking at stuff, I guess, I don't know. Uh, but that actually, that cutscene is longer than the amount of time it takes to walk from the entrance of the village to the synth shop. Um, yeah, yep. that's just something we do. Um, we have played around a lot with trying to come up with a route that skips the synth shop and uh, it's bad. <laughs> yeah, it just <laughs> it's bad. It just doesn't it does not function well it, at all. It functions. You just really have to like gambling. <laughs> yeah. Like, well, you, that's what I mean. Yeah. Oh, like so you, brutals would love it. Yeah. You gamble <laughs> on Hilgagars. You gamble on Mystodons. You gamble on Ark. Yeah. <laughs> like it's. <laughs> uh, but it's kind of swag. On Ark. Yeah, because you're because if you skip the synth here, obviously you're gonna skip the synth in disc three. Because like, why would you why would you do a synth in disc three if you're not gonna do one here? The angel bless. Yeah, but like, why would you skip the synth? I don't know. Like my my thought is like, why would you skip the synth here if 
you're not going to skip the one in this three as well because you're trying to like, this one, mitigate because this one's slow. Ah, yes, of <laughs> course. Uh, that one in, eight, in Alexandria, that one's all right. That one's fine. That one gets a pass. But in my testing, I was doing arc with like the Gladius. <laughs> it's, oh, it's hard. Oh, uh, yeah. no. It's okay awful. if you have Steiner and Amaranth. Like if you have Steiner and Amaranth, it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, if, if you have them. <laughs> and then and then at that point, you're just going for Holy Lance, so. <laughs> and thus, Holy Lance Root was born. <laughs> I see. <laughs> uh, you know, I still have, I still have. The, the mad scientist myth. I still have the unfinished notes for this. <laughs> just saying. <laughs> So here we're learning a little bit about um, <coughs> Vivi finds out. Vivi finds out that um, while these black mages are more developed with like language and like building a little village than the other black mages we've met so far, they are also uh, the their kind of like village leader is burdened with the knowledge that. Uh, black mages have a finite lifespan that is fairly short, and some of the black mages that have been manufactured in the past year or so are already starting to, um, are already starting to die. Um, so, Vivi, from this point forward, his existential crisis just kind of amps up to 11, and, uh, doesn't really settle down, um... But, yeah. uh, you know, Vivi, Vivi briefly flirts with the idea of staying with the other black mages and then decides to continue traveling with Zidane and company um, to really figure out uh, what's going on. Um, it's, a, it's a really, it's a really uh, kind of touching. Um, yeah, it, it is kind of sad because, you know, Vivi, is, I believe he's the maturity of an eight-year-old. Yeah. And mm -hmm. uh, he's dealing with the fact that he has, like, maybe another year to live. Yeah, at most. Yeah, so really sad. <laughs> yeah, uh, there's a reason why Vivi is such a beloved character. He is like the emotional like core of this of this entire game. Mm. Uh, so we're gonna return to Conde Petit because we learned that there is a passage towards uh, the Ifa tree, uh, which is a source of. Uh, the mist. Basically, yeah, it's a source of mist that Kuja is harvesting to create black mages. Um, so we're gonna head into Conde Petit and try to find our way through their mountain path uh, to get to the Eva tree. And the only way we can do that is by participating in one of their marriage ceremonies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and much to Zidane's shock you know here, Garn is actually up for it. You know what? Hmm? Oh, yeah. You know what? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Are we doing oh, it? Yeah? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yes. Chat, you're in for a treat. We're going to give you the... Mythic We're going to give you the cease and mythic wedding. As a thank you for being here, we're still a little bit underestimate, so... <laughs> we can, uh... So basically, there's one mandatory marriage cutscene, and then you have the option to select for Quinna and Vivi to get married in a uh, in an ATE here, and they're just kind of very uncomfortably just standing there <laughs> silently <laughs> during the vows. I'm I so, so happy. happy. <laughs> Me too. Me too. Uh, I love how Quinna just like nudges Vivi. There, there is a there is a benefit though to it. You actually you actually get put right into this uh, into this section of the of Condipedi, so you actually skip a little bit of a. Uh, it's it's actually kind of functionally nice. So what you're telling me is it saves time and everyone no, should start does, doing it. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. <laughs> nope. And what else it, it does is it forces you to skip the pinion, which means that your ICO menu is one input quicker because the desert boots are slightly higher. Mm. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Can't equip the I'll pinion if up, you ain't got it. I'll just pick up the extra pinion and uh, Medain, sorry. Oh, yeah. We are going to name... Uh, we're going to name this character and um there's only one, one thing you can there's only one <laughs> there's only there's 1.5 correct answers for this character if you're running this game in a marathon setting 
blessed crab. Crab. Sixteen. Let's go. Let's go, crab. <laughs> uh, here's, oh, uh, something we haven't actually talked about yet. Uh, that's kind of a minor thing in this game is uh, names. You might notice in other FF games, shortening names to one character actually saves time. In this game, it doesn't save enough time to be worth it. Yeah. Uh, you can save... If you can rename Zidane and Dagger at task speeds to one character, you can save about a second on each of them. If you rename Ico to a single character, you can also save about one and a half seconds. Um, Ico is really the only one that's viable to do RTA, to rename to a single character. Uh, and the only reason those save time is because those three characters have cutscenes in which the text has actually rendered one uh, character at a time. Yeah. So their names being shorter. Um, we'll, uh, we'll make those cutscenes a little bit faster. But for the most part, text in this game uh, renders like instantly. So it's not uh, dynamically drawn. And here we're going to buy Stiltskin's package and then save. Stiltskin's package here is very important. We get, uh, what, an ether, a tent, and a magic tag, right? For yeah. 666 guild? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so ether obviously has a 1,000 guild value, so that's good. And the magic tag is very important because that's our only way of curing this, this zombie status effect. There is a chance, though it is very low, that Zidane gets hit by uh, an attack that in induces zombie in the next dungeon. Nice. And if that happens, he has to get cured of it because he needs AP um, yeah. from fights. And zombie prevents you from getting experience in AP. Um, yeah, if so. Zidane gets zombied before the next boss, well, not the next boss fight, but the boss fight following this one, and you don't have a magic tag to cure him, that can, that can be the end of the run. That, that, by all intents and purposes, is the end of the run because he misses out on some very crucial AP for a bunch yeah. of abilities. You can play super YOLO and um, you can skip buying that and just YOLO Aoife Tree without it. And then if yeah. you get zombied, you can steal a magic tag Wait. from uh, a zombie or a Draco zombie and use yeah. that. Um, but it it it's you get an ether out of buying the package. And exactly, ethers yeah. Are really useful. So having the extra ether, in my opinion, makes it worth it. But because um, going into disc four with like five ethers is is unbelievably sketchy. painful. Sketchy. All right, so All right. Uh, Brudu, want to explain Hilga yes, guards? You're up. I'd love to. Do we get preempt? No. Uh, okay, no. so there's a little bit of variation with this fight. If Zidane gets his turn first then uh, we can save uh, some VV cast, which is a good time save. Basically, uh, once again, this boss has a, a mechanic where when he goes relief 50%, he is going to heal himself, this time with Curaga, and it heals for a really, really good deal amount this time. Yeah. Um, the way that we can mitigate that is by, we've just dealt, I think, about 3,000 uh, 3, damage-ish just then, I think. Yeah. Um, next, we're going to then queue VV next, so that when he um, uh, Hilgagus has his turn, um, Hilgagus is actually a really quick enemy as well. VV's going to attack first, um, followed by Zidane, so by the time that VV's damage has been dealt, Hilgagus was already queued his next turn, so he's already decided to use whatever he's going to do, but he has been pushed well beneath the 50% um, HP threshold, where now he's going to have some sort of attacking turn and we're going to finish him off ideally as long as Zidane doesn't just miss. Yeah. So once again, manipulating that 50% threshold um, as effectively as we can. Um, whenever our uh, main characters are taking damage, we want to try and keep them up. Unfortunately, wow. Dagger didn't survive that um, earthquake. Usually if she dies in a, 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 one of the castle escape fights, then she'll lose just enough EXP to not gain the HP she needs to survive these guarantees. Yeah. It's not the end of the world, but all it means is that we don't learn Protect, I believe, yeah. for Shell Dragon, um, which makes that fight a little bit more reliable, but it's not required at all. Yeah. Um, Dagger, uh, Ico having the Cure ability hey, allows us to... Card. Hey, no, I I That's card. really potent. Um, Cure allows us to revive everyone to full HP every turn nice and easy as well, so we can pretty much reliably stay alive. Sometimes it can get a bit hairy when Hilgus decides to just sit on Zidane, kill him in one hit, um, but it's not the end of the world. You want to put the butterfly sword on. Are you good? Uh, right there, yeah. small menu to uh, cure everyone in case there's an encounter. Get the Germinus boots back on Zidane so that you can re-equip alert in case you get an encounter. Um, 
and uh, we are proceeding now to uh, Iko's um, hometown of Madain Sari. Uh, basically, we meet Iko on the mountain path after she gets chased out of Conde Petit, and we learn that she is a summoner, uh, like Dagger. And prior to this point, similar to Vivi meeting the Black Mages a few a few minutes ago, uh, Dagger has never met another summoner before. So of course, now that we've met uh, Iko, she is very interested in um, she is very interested in learning more about where this girl comes from and what's going on. And we are brought to this ruined village uh, populated solely by Moogles and Iko. Madame Sari is a little bit of a plot city, Junior. There's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of, uh, plot dump here. Um, we come here almost one, exclusively to have one, a bit of a chat, don't one we? One question. Yeah. Uh, it, just give me a moment to think about this. Yeah, gonna, think about how, how you want to word it. This. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. <sighs> Let's be here. Um, <laughs> I can think about this. Um, okay, Cease. Yeah. First thing for you. Yeah. What type of food do you like? Hey, hey, Mythic, what type <laughs> of Moogles do you like? Hey, Brutals. Or... What type of Eidolans do you like? What type of <laughs> Eidolans do you like? The big well, ones. Well, we know that my answer is Disco Fries, so... <laughs> disco Fries. In fact, you can answer Disco Fries to all three I... for me. <laughs> I don't know if I asked the right people the right questions. <laughs> my my brain was like trying to remember how the the whole like dialogue box went. Yeah. And uh I definitely got lost in it. I, I think it, I think it goes food, idolins, moogles, girls. Yeah. yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. <laughs> Just one of those things that I have stored in my memory for some reason. <laughs> because this game has infiltrated the deepest recesses of my brain. <laughs> it's, you can't help but ask chat every single time you get to this part in the run. It's like, yeah. oh, by the way. So what kind of what kind of food do we like today, guys? <laughs> uh, so basically what's happening here. Iko, uh immediately upon meeting Zidane, uh, has a big crush on him and wants to impress him. So she's going to work with her Moogle family soup. to make a nice soup for everybody um, and some fish. Some fish? Uh, we are just going to mash through these options. It's not the ideal like a result for her impressive meal, but it has no effect on time or um, like any items or anything. So we just we just mash through the options because it's the quickest way. Amar, did uh, you catch the Aglop? What? Did you catch the Oglop? I tried to. I couldn't. I couldn't oh catch it. Oh my goodness! Dang. I tried. Okay. Oh. <laughs> oh. We Stop can't bullying. put an Oglop in the soup. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to, and I just couldn't. You can catch an Oglop on the mountain path on the screen before Stiltskin, and you can add it to the stew here. Uh, it negatively impacts it, but it's kind of funny. Yeah. <laughs> Um, <laughs> so the uh, Iko wants to show Zidane uh, something the called magic. the Idolin Wall, uh, which is basically a something of a holy site for the Summoner tribe. And um, when Dagger comes here and sees all of the paintings of the Idolins that she recognizes, in addition to ones that she doesn't recognize, um, she starts to feel like this strange like connection to this place that she's not doesn't really understand because. You know, she's never been here before, but there's something about it that feels familiar to her. I'm sure that's nothing, though. Nah, couldn't be. <laughs> uh, we've got a good number of other cutscenes left if we have any announcements we want to sneak in. Yeah, well, I guess I should ask all of you if you have any, like, shout-outs or anything that you want to give since we're... Um kind of just talking yeah. about the game and people in the community. I thought maybe if you had anyone that you wanted to mention. Um, I person, I mean, I, I've mentioned Bomb Bomb a couple of times tonight, but I honestly cannot drill home enough how much, um, 
having bomb bomb um kind of like finding bomb bomb's community and um the people around it uh finding like mythic and um cease like brutals um there's a there's a ton of people in the ff9 community not just um not just the like the runners but like the people who also just like kind of frequent around there's like um roaming merc um he's an, another person who has a lot of knowledge on the game who has only run a couple of times but super been super helpful in um in regards to a lot of our runs and um just to other people in the community doing some like finding of like tip like little tricks to like save time on like on some just random parts of the game and then mm -hmm. um yeah. um but ser uh seriously like have like just if it wasn't for finding uh bomb bomb in his stream um i would never have like jumped into this game so yeah. Um, that's like my biggest shout out is, and I'm sad that he's not able to be here and commentate because he's definitely also one of my like good friends. But um, mm -hmm. um, yeah, he, um, Bomb Bomb, uh, I appreciate you. I'm glad that you, you help me as much as you do. So. Aw, would you say that uh, that's uh, the friend that got you into speedrunning the most or like what um, actually got so you started not necessarily i was a 10 runner before i got into ff9 okay, and like... <laughs> um i actually had no intention of ever jumping to ff9 until i randomly raided into a uh, bomb bomb stream one time and then i just kept watching and it just looked like it was a ton of fun and i just uh I just eventually started running the game. It was, yeah. uh, I was gonna, honestly, I was gonna start running FF8 after FF10, and then it just, just, FF9 just started looking like a lot of fun. Then I picked up the run and found this wonderful community. Um, <laughs> so, um, but yeah, I would, I would just say, yeah, that's where I really got my start, so. Uh, what about what about the D three? <laughs> I would love to give a shout out to um, two of our speedrun.com uh, leaderboard moderators, Mutsky and Feltwanger. Um, those two do a lot to keep the leaderboards up to date. You know, like verifying these like eight nine hour runs is a lot of work. Um, and you know, it's a really speedrun.com is a really good resource for learning about speed games, and FF nine is no exception. Uh, we have a lot of material on speedrun.com slash ff9, so if you are interested in running this game with us, we'd love to have you. Please visit it. Gosh. You'll find a link to our Discord as well as just so many resources. So big shout outs to Muskie and Fellwinger for doing so much to keep that stuff up to date. Yeah. Um, sorry, I had one more shout out too, because... Um... I wanted to also thank the FFA community. Um, there's a lot of FFA runners that are going to be, I think, learning FF9 soon. I can't wait. Kind of vice versa. <laughs> um, but um, I also want to shout out that community as well. Heck yeah. Um, sorry, go ahead, Mythic and Brutals. Y'all should shout some <laughs> people out as well. Yeah, I'll just be really quick. Um, I actually want to give a uh, shout out to uh, a Japanese runner by the name of MPU. Yes. Uh, MPU mm -hmm. holds the world record in the Japanese category. And when I was learning this game, I actually was talking to MPU um, through DMs and also when he was streaming other games quite a lot about FF9. And he always was like a, a big cheerleader for me for running the Japanese version. You know, I would try to talk to him in Japanese. He'd try to talk to me in English. His English is better than my Japanese. Um, but it was really nice being able to like interact with him. Um, even after he like stopped running the game, he was still like there to help me with stuff and uh, you know just cheer me on for it. And he was like <clears throat> sort of one of the first people that I really went to with questions because you know didn't really know anybody else who ran the Japanese version at that time. So yeah, thanks for you. Um, for me, uh, honestly, like Amar and Cease, I'm pretty sure you were the guys that kind of got me into this. <laughs> community in the first place so I really am grateful for you meeting you guys in the first place um I obviously want to give a shout out to my homie Sal he's the guy that's helped yes. me level up most like mm -hmm. I, I we've grinded so much for this game 
and yeah. I feel like we've come a really long way. Um, you guys I want to give a shout yeah, out to Chef for all the court runs that we've done. That guy is an endless source of joy. And finally, man, I'm uh, going to put a bit, a bit of a downer on it, but I want no, to like, give a shout out to my boy. Just about to to my, boy. My, my late buddy Rezo that um, we lost earlier in the year, who yeah. I got into this game with, you know, I, I wish he was here with us, but like, yeah. what mm -hmm. it is, man. Yeah. Yeah, we all miss Rezo. Yeah. We miss him a ton. He, Rezo, Rezo, um, as, um, Brutals has mentioned, unfortunately, earlier this year we lost him, and um, he was uh, he was very much an up and coming speedrunner. Um, started started kind of showing up in my stream um, like late like last uh, last December, like or last January ish. Um, yeah. But um, started getting into speedrunning, and um, I'm really glad that uh, we got to spend the time that we could with him. Um, this is definitely a big, uh, it's definitely, it was a, it was a really hard moment, um, losing Rezo. So, um, honestly, like, um, yeah, it, it still is, it still is, it's just, yeah, it's just, there's not really great words to say about yeah. it other than, um, we kind of bond around this ever since that we've really like come together and um we've tried to make the community um like we're we're always talking to each other um not just about speed running um you know some like mythic decent um brutals we're we're all like just great friends now like um so like there's also something to be said about that so um yeah. Um, it's, a, it's a tight it's a tight knit community and we would love for anyone out there who's even remotely interested in running the game to come be a part of it. Yeah. And even absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, e even if you don't, you know, have any interest in like speed running the game, come like come hang out in an FF9 runners chat like Yeah, we we might meme a lot and like <laughs> <laughs> some of us might uh might <laughs> I don't know. We, we might, might we meme might lose our minds lot. here and there, but like <laughs> at the end of the day, we're like there's so many there's so many good people around. Um, another thing is that we do that we haven't done recently because we've just been busy being ceased, but we also organize charity races of this game, and um, that's also been a a nice thing to do. Is um, we we like to. We like to promote those for like, um, for like newer runners. Um, it's a great experience. So, um, if you're ever interested in the FF9 speedrun and speedrunning community, um, definitely check out speedrun.com slash FF9 and come check the Discord out. Um, we'd love to have you. We'd love to chat with you. Yeah share our knowledge about FF9 and share our passion with you. Because as you can tell, not like all the all the commentators, I also am just like, we're, we're very passionate about this game and we just want, we just want people to also enjoy it like we do. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that was almost like a no encounter final screen I wasn't even thinking <laughs> I was just like rambling on like yeah, yeah you know talking <laughs> a lot so of love we... in the community yeah so, should we real quick it's... talk about uh, Aoife Tree while, while um, we're still yeah, here we, we while should. we're still I just kind of brain dumped on everyone I'm I'm no, sorry no no <laughs> please don't be sorry no, I wanted to I just wanted to really say all that like yeah because Brutal's Brutal's definitely bringing it up. Like, I knew exactly where it was going, and yeah. like, yeah. Now I, I should, I should have said something. So, no, no uh, it's cool, man. It's good. How was? How many encounters is that, Aoife? I, I honestly wasn't keeping track. You're at I wasn't twenty-three either. total now. Really? Really? That's pretty good. Yeah, that was a pretty <laughs> yeah, good Aoife. That was still pretty. That was like what six, maybe. I uh, I, so to kind of give a yeah. quick overview of Aoife Tree. This is considered one of the highest RNG sections in the run. 
You can go through the entire Epa tree segment and get like three encounters, or you can get 12, and they can all be <laughs> varying lengths and fights. Yeah. Um, so I'm just gonna uh, I'm just gonna say this in chat too, really quick, because Richard wants to do an eight, nine, ten run. I know Richard <laughs> is gonna sing at the end of each song, like absolutely, or at the end of each run. Sorry, <laughs> my my words are not translating now. That's okay. We read your <laughs> but, mind. Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead uh, with your. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. uh you can get tons of encounters here. The movement's really tricky because the screens are really shaped really weirdly. Um, the stropers, which are the rock trees, are stone enemies. They are one of three stone enemies in the game, so we can just throw softs at them to kill them. We do want to kill at least one stroper here for AP. Um, additionally, the zombies that we're going to now have to fight in the elevator, this can either be a two or three zombie fight. This can also be a preemptive. Uh, you can kill these by casting Fyra and Kyura on them. Um, Zidane can also one-shot them. Uh, and then after this, we're going to fight a Draco zombie on the elevator. Um, most runners typically will pretty aggressively uh, start to throw elixirs at that point at undead enemies from here until about the end of disc two. Because we usually have a couple of spare elixirs, and elixirs will instantly kill an undead enemy. Whereas a Phoenix down in this game will only set their uh, health to a single digit. That can be zero. So there is a 10% chance that a Phoenix Down will instantly kill an undead enemy, but it's not 100% at all. So, yeah. Um, depending on what the turn order is like on the Draco zombie fight, Amart might cast Life with Ico, which will kill unless it misses, or throw an Elixir or a Phoenix Down and then an attack with somebody. So, coming up, we are coming up on our last boss battle for the evening um, before we pop save uh, after this Draco zombie fight and a couple of cutscenes. Uh, we're going to pop a save and be done until December 21st. Um, this next fight is pretty simple, uh, which we're going to see, hopefully, with no shenanigans. Um, oh, okay. Ooh, that was that that hit. It wasn't zombie breath. We live it. Yeah. Good thing it wasn't. Yeah. Um, but basically, we're making our way to the bottom of the Aoife tree because we have reason to believe that Kuja is going to be here soon, and we want to investigate why, like, kind of investigate to see why he is coming here, like, what he's going to get out of coming here, and why this is, like, a source for his, like, mist that he's using to make the Black Mages and everything. And as we get deeper and deeper into the tree, the enemies become more uh, grotesque and undead, and uh, we're about to meet kind of the... Um, kind of the like big boss of the dungeon. Yeah. Um, there's gonna be an elixir pickup at the bottom of these stairs, uh, which is kind of a hint at a strategy that you can use for the fight. It's a spoiler warning. Um, this is the mandatory Final Fantasy undead boss that you can just throw an elixir at. Uh, um, I'm gonna, I'm actually gonna opt for a different strategy. Oh yeah? You're doing Carbuncle yeah. Bio? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that real was quick way before, too many words for me to understand. Real quick before we keep memeing, I want to point out that um, Zidane just got the Brigandine, which has the extremely important ability, Ability Up, on it. Yeah, that um, doubles AP gains from everything. Yeah, so that makes AP routing from here to the end of the game a lot like more possible with just boss fights. Sorry, yeah. please continue yeah. with your memes. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna use the... The rev strat of using Fyra on this boss. <laughs> oh, that's a really great call. Yeah, yeah, it's it's a tree, so it's weak to fire, right? Clearly. Yeah. Clearly. All right. Seriously, though, I am not going to do that. I'm going to just simply throw an elixir and <laughs> call it a day, and you know. You can also use Ico to. Ca uh, you can also cast life with Ico if. She has good ATB and you want to um, save the elixir. The only problem with that is that life does have a chance of missing. Um, yeah. Soul Cage does have one attack, level five death, which usually is not an issue because usually at this point, if everything everyone's leveled up correctly, the only one whose level ends with a, uh, with a multiple five is Aiko and she does not need to survive this fight. Um, but we have seen in the past a, a soul cage fight where everyone was a multiple of five, right, Amart? 
Oh yeah, <laughs> A Martin has died to uh, it. I have died to it. Don't remind me. <laughs> That's one of my favorite A Mart clips ever. <laughs> don't remind me. But it looks like we're getting a perfect fight. Near instant ATB for Dagger, and she gets the elixir off before Soul Cage can do anything. <laughs> yeah, and there it is. That was incredible. How does he do it? How does he do it? How does he do it? <laughs> Simple and clean. And we got the elixir drop back too, which is nice. nice. We are at net neutral elixirs. Yeah, super good. <laughs> so now we're going to see a cutscene with the mist dissipating. Uh, one thing we didn't explain is the effect of mist on humans. Uh, mist causes humans to sort of uh, start to go berserk if they're exposed to it long enough, uh, which uh, was explained earlier in the story. Um, and that's kind of sort of hinted at with why Braun is so warmongering. Um, the Mist Continent, which is the primary continent that, you know, all, all of Disc 1 takes place on, um, obviously is named the Mist Continent because there's a lot of mist. Um, and so uh, she's become warmongering through the effects of the mist. And then Huja has been, you know, perpetrating that and um, using the mist not only to make her into his puppet, basically, but also to supply her with the Black Mages that then she uses to wage war while Huge is the one actually pulling the strings. So it's, like, it's an onion of layers in terms yeah. of politicking here and you know yeah. what's really going on. Um, we do have time coming up. I will call time after I make the save on the world map and that will actually conclude part one of our run. So very nice. Just want to thank everyone for coming out and uh showing your love for FF9. Um, I'm definitely looking forward to being back on the 21st. It's gonna be, it's gonna be a great time. I was, I was nervous coming in today, to today, but y'all made it real easy for me. So thank you so much. Appreciate it. Oh, thank you for joining us, Amar. Thank you, uh, everyone here, Ceaselessly, Mythic, Dawn, The Brutals for commentary. It's been a blast so far, and uh, I think everyone will have something to look forward to on the 21st as well. Yeah. Yeah, thank you so much for having me and having all of us. I really do appreciate yeah. it. Yeah, it's been a blast. All right. And well played, Amar, man. And... You've done good. Time. Woo! Ooh. Clap, 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 clap. GG's. GG, GGs. GG Amar. All right, everybody. How, how well, did we do in part one? Let's take a look. Uh, we've got 4, 43, 43. Okay, nice. that's actually not that bad. With that's pretty good. How many How many safety saves was that? Uh, was like seven? seven or eight, I think. Yeah. Yeah, seven or eight safety saves, 21 yeah, encounters, so. the Quinna VP wedding. <laughs> yeah, slow, so, yeah. slow yeah, disc wedding. speed. <laughs> and a reset. So, mm -hmm. uh, so. Even with those little setbacks, uh, or I don't know if you could consider the wedding a setback, but <laughs> no, that, uh, I think it all worked out but. in the end. But um, again, everybody, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, if you enjoyed part one of Final Fantasy IX, please make sure you follow Amar on Twitch. That's twitch.tv slash Amar, as well as all of our wonderful commentators that is ceaselessly the brutals and mythic dawn uh, you can check the layout for all the spellings on those wonderful usernames um, but that is going to wrap it up for tonight's episode of time capsule i have been your host smooth operative uh, always a pleasure appreciate y'all coming out to the show uh, make sure you come back on tuesday december 21st at 10 p.m eastern time for part two of final fantasy 9 but tomorrow Again. you can yeah, it's going to be a good time. But tomorrow, you can join us for the Bargain Bin, followed by Speed Runs from the Crypt, and that starts at 7 p.m. Uh, Eastern. And that's it. I'm out. Great. Peace. Thank you so much, everybody. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye, Bye everyone. Take care. Welcome to Time Capsule here on the Game Zone Quick Hot Fix, the show where we travel back in time to your favorite years in gaming and speedrun our way through popular or influential games released in a particular year. As usual, I am your host, Smooth Operative. Thank you very much for joining us for part two of Final Fantasy IX. If you can recall, two weeks ago, we had part one of the Any% percent Turbo speedrun category with Amart and the crew, and I am delighted to see the continuation of that speedrun here tonight. Please welcome back 
Kmart, Ceaselessly, The Brutals, and our newest edition, Mutsky. Hi, everybody. Hello. <laughs> Hi. Hey. So, Amart, if you want to start off, uh, I guess, reintroductions for uh, those that may be new here. Yeah. So, I'm Amart. Uh, I run Final Fantasy IX. It is primarily my, it's going to become my primary game again in the new year. But I've also run Final Fantasy VIII, uh, Final Fantasy X, Ten Two, Kingdom Hearts One. Uh, I do some KH2 rando stuff here and there. Um, yeah, I just really enjoy these long runs. So, yes. Uh, hi, I am Ceaselessly. I am also a Final Fantasy IX speedrunner. It is my primary game. I've also been known to speedrun Roller Coaster Tycoon here and nice. there, but there's something about <laughs> something about FF9 that keeps bringing me back. <laughs> Muskie, you want to um, introduce yourself for yeah. everyone since you're new? Yeah, sure. I thought I thought that Brutals was gonna go because I was just told to be yeah, the one. Me I was too. told I wasn't allowed to talk. So what? Yeah. I never said anything like that. <laughs> All right, I'm. We're uh, still testing this guy. <laughs> uh, hi, I'm, I'm Muskie. Uh, I also run Final Fantasy IX with all these goofballs. Uh, I actually ran Final <laughs> Fantasy IX uh, at a Games Done Quick event in 2019. I've been running this game. Uh, it's the longest speedrun I've done um, since 2013 is when I started. Um, and it's nice to see like a whole bunch of people have been picking up in the last few years. So I'm here with some of my friends to uh, chit chat about the awesomeness that is this game. Right on. Hey, and uh, I'm the Brutals. Uh, I primarily speedrun Final Fantasy 9 as well in the 80% category on PS2. Um, I recently got a PB that I'm very proud of. Isn't that right, Mitsuki? Yeah, <laughs> and, uh, I'm, I'm almost proud of you. <laughs> <laughs> almost, almost. <laughs> We're getting there. And uh, in the meantime, I'm calling off with a bit of Majora's Mask, which I've been running in my lifetime. I'm probably going back to FF9 in the new year, because like the rest of these guys, I just, I just can't get enough. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. awesome. Thanks for being on the show, everybody. Um, Amart, if you want to take it away on uh, what we got up to last time and where we're going to continue this time. Yeah, sure. So we're actually just going to go ahead and start loading in. So I'm going to count down. Three, two, one, go. And we're off. So as we left off at the end, as we left off last week, or not last week, two weeks ago, uh, we were just finishing off the Ifit tree. And so we just finished off Soul Cage, which um, kind of cleared the cleared the world of mist. So now we're kind of in a in a state of, well, what's going on? And uh now, now we have to go back to um, Medane Sari, which is the, um, it's the, it's like the, it's like the like city of the summoners or something like yeah. that. But, what, what, what yeah, was the city at one time, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Once now upon now a time. it's more. Now yeah. it's more a collection of rocks. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so we're going back there. Uh, we fa we found out that. We found out that um, something was stolen from the village, so we're kind of rushing back, and uh, we're gonna find out what's going on. Yeah, and I guess just as a little bit of a recap of, uh, for anybody who may have missed part one, uh, Final Fantasy IX, the st you know, it's it's a pretty complex story as Final Fantasy games are uh, known to be, but, um, so far, we have joined our uh, team of kind of ragtag people who are all uh, after, <clears throat> excuse me, after this nefarious person named Kuja, who we haven't really, uh, we haven't really uh, found out what his full plans are yet, but we know that he's up to no good. It's a really interesting, like, group of individuals that they kind of throw together and you kind of how you described as a ragtag team because well, the characters are yeah. you know vastly different in you know their traits and qualities that they bring to the group but ultimately like a lot of them are kind of searching for and discovering you know a sense of identity in like an authentic way and so there's kind yeah. of like this intermingling of i guess like like i said like finding one's identity and purpose that kind of goes with you know all these really really different characters some that are awesome and two that are not so awesome you know 
<laughs> Everyone's got their opinions. <laughs> Man, I'm you, glad you agree on my uh, views of Vivi that he's just definitely the biggest villain in this game. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just a tool of destruction, right? Yeah, yep. that's right. Nothing, nothing but a liability to the party. Just falls all the time. Poor, <laughs> poor, poor champ. So, found out aiko has been kidnapped, and, oh, kind of fat fingered my, uh, my turbo there for a moment. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, I don't Iko, think I need to heal, but I'm just going to be safe. Aiko, the, um, the young child that we met, uh, near the end of last installment, what is, um, She's the last uh, living member of the Summoner tribe who used to populate this village. Um, and we have these uh, this bounty hunter that we previously fought, Lani, who uh, is after Iko on the orders of the Queen of Alexandria. Um, and basically, we're coming back here to put a stop to it, to save Iko from uh, being... Uh, she has a pendant that the Queen of Alexandria wants because... Uh, they have been using Eidolons, which are the summons in this game, to basically attack their um, enemies throughout the world. They've basically been using them as weapons of war, and um, the team is kind of uh, coming here to put a stop to that. And we get to meet this very tall, very blue gentleman. <laughs> Hashtag Scarlet Hair. The real, the real villain. <laughs> Big blue? Uh, his skin is blue. Looks green to me. Yeah, I guess it's a little bit it's of a somewhere turquoise. Somewhere in that. Yeah, it's, it's a hue yeah. of, of that, that <laughs> spectrum of colors, we'll say. Blue or green, let us know in the chat. Yeah. Well, here's the thing is that I think his outfit is definitely green, and the contrast yes. against his skin tone makes me think it's more blue than green. Right? Yeah, that's fair. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, maybe he and Braun are from the same, same group. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, right, that's so something that's funny about FF9. Uh, so we're going to have a one-on-one -on -one fight with Amaranth here. Uh, this is a pretty straightforward fight. Um, we basically just want to uh, attack with Zidane. Um, Amaranth does do this one thing where he hops around the battle arena a bit, and you can only hit him in certain spots. He will counterattack if you do hit him. Um, but whenever Ooh. he's in the middle of the field, um, he will... Uh, you'll always be able to hit him, <laughs> no. unless you get a random miss. Um, it is important to track your damage in this fight because uh, Amaranth is pretty beefy and it is possible to die here if you, you, know, you aren't safe. Yeah, and there's a counter. Oh, and the crit. What a fight. Ooh, very nice. That was actually a that's very, a great, very that's solid a great fight. Start. Let's yeah. go. <laughs> this run is officially blessed by a a, a counter crit amaranth. <laughs> I can't wait to get three encounters in the next in the next like section. <laughs> and if you're all wondering, I wonder how awesome this awesome looking character with a massive cool factor is really gonna get. Unfortunately, his his arc has already peaked in this moment, and uh, it, it doesn't really you know hit new climactic heights beyond this one on one combat that we just got to enjoy. Yeah, Amaranth's a bit of a funny character because he's introduced so late, so there's not, like, he doesn't have, like, as big of a character arc as uh, yeah, some of the yeah, others, yeah. but... I um, forgot who I was naming Amaranth. I would like to note that, that was actually a really, really swift Amaranth fight. The one yeah, thing he was looking out for... In, yeah, in, that, was in, was, nice. that was definitely above average. Um, mm -hmm. The average fight is that you, you hit him five times and you don't have to heal sort of deal. Um, every counter or crit over that is saving roughly 10-15 seconds each. And getting although, two on a single split of that is nice and tidy. Although, Brutals, you did point out that there was a 25% chance that it could have been even faster. Oh, oh that, you, you, you know what? <laughs> oh, Lucky Seven, it's just that, it was the last fight you can go for. <laughs> could I reasonably have Lucky Seven? Lucky seven that, yeah, you, you could have, you could have, but you shouldn't have. Was it 357? He could like, have. Yeah, it would have it been like pretty risky, but you definitely could have. <laughs> you, you should not have, though. Um, no. Yeah. <laughs> no, absolutely not. 
<laughs> and, <laughs> and FF9 can do doesn't necessarily always mean should do. <laughs> yeah, like, you know, uh... <laughs> Don't, like, uh, ATB waiting Zidane and not doing it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, uh, I've just noticed that Aiko is... Crop yeah. 16. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, wait, I completely forgot what one. Aiko's name is. <laughs> <laughs> that was a little history lesson for me, by the way. I was... I was... Oh, nice yeah. It's a that true, true story. Mutsky is not the, my original little. Twitch name. <laughs> also, uh, Dagger's name is Haircut because that's right. obviously. <laughs> that's lovely. Bomb Bomb and Haircut. A, uh, a true romance has never existed. <laughs> so. I got to think of a name for Amaranth. Amaranth. Um, <laughs> Amart's rant. If only I could Amart's fit all rant. That. Oh man. <laughs> um, so now that we've rescued Iko and chased uh, Lonnie and uh, Scarlet Hair out, as he's known in the battle, out of uh, Madame Sari, uh, the party's just kind of taking this opportunity to rest, and uh, there's like kind of this really nice little tender scene between uh, Zidane and Dagger here, or I'm sorry, uh, Bob Bomb and, and Haircut. Um, where they're kind of bonding um, about, like, all of the traveling they've done together so far. But unfortunately, uh, as this boat starts to drift out to sea, um, there's going to be something interesting that happens here um, that for the astute viewers out there might recognize from the opening FMV of the game. The amount of times I've retuned into people's runs and seen this part and thought, yes. obviously... <laughs> They reset. I wonder what happened. Oh, man. They were, like, deep into disc two. Why'd they reset? <laughs> Every time. Yeah, it happens to me all the time, too. And then there's people like Bomb Bomb, and I'm like, oh, he actually did reset in the middle oh, wait, of Oh, he did <laughs> reset <laughs> four and a half hours in. That's uh, right. <laughs> get hyped. Get buckle up for the 13-hour stream, everyone. <laughs> so the entire time we've been in Medane, sorry, um, uh, Haircut here has been talking about, like, how it seems like familiar to her and prior to meeting Aiko she had never met another person with, who was able to summon before and now it's being revealed here that the reason Madame Sari feels familiar to Dagger is because she is from here and flashing back to the opening FMV was her and her mother mm -hmm. trying to escape from uh, an attack on the village many years ago when she was a little girl. And there's a big, ominous red eye in the sky. I'm sure that's nothing, though. We probably will never nah. see that again. No, nah, that's fine. <laughs> also, Just, don't... Yeah. Sorry, talking about the resets, I went back to my FF10 speedrunner days and just decided to reset in the middle of my run. <laughs> I was trying to come up with that joke, and it wasn't, like, hitting, so... <laughs> now I'm going to make it awkward and say it at this point in time. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Shout outs to any FF10 runners in the no, chat because well, I, I don't get that joke. <laughs> what you needed to do was come up with a joke that was only relevant to part one of this this series <laughs> and make it make it at the start of this part. We and just we completely right. neglect the fact that one. it was Yeah. FF9's a paradox. It's just part one all over again. This, 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 this is the one with time compression, right? You just gotta yeah. lead with like, yeah. man, my favorite bird is definitely geese in the loop. <laughs> That's my least favorite bird. I almost thought about putting up like a piece of paper behind me for this that just said like birds are my worst enemy or something like that. Did anybody else think that that was Red 13 the first time they played this game? Because I definitely didn't realize that it was supposed to be like Fenrir because I was like nine and I was like, yeah, oh, it's I, red. I it's also cool. felt the same. Oh, 100%. I mean, I imagine <laughs> that the design is supposed to kind of look like red, but obviously when you see Fender yeah. in this game, it's, you know, day and night different from... Yeah. I also remember as a kid thinking the one of Ramu was, um, like, reminded me of Zapdos. <laughs> <laughs> FF9, gotta catch them all. <laughs> <laughs>
So now that uh, we have ousted him, uh, Scarlet Hair is going to be uh, uh, kind of coming up to us. Um, the the Scarlet Hair, otherwise known as Amaranth, otherwise known as TBD from Amar, um, is going to come and want to uh, kind of talk to Zidane because really the thing is like he's so confused about how someone like Zidane could beat him in a fight and he wants to he's he, Zidane's piqued his curiosity basically and Zidane comes up with the brilliant idea of if you want to know more about why I won come with us which of course is not necessarily a popular decision with the rest of the party considering he almost he tried to kidnap uh, thanks for the Ico, names but... oh yeah <laughs> TBD you're welcome <laughs> <laughs> well played <laughs> <laughs> he couldn't. He could not help himself at all. Yeah, I, I yeah. couldn't. I Flame couldn't think TBD. of one. The Flamin' TBD. So when I, the very first time I played this game, um, I named Amaranth Kyle. So that line is some. <laughs> some call me the Flamin' Kyle. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. His, his name no is interesting. In, Jap in the Japanese version, his name is the Flaming Salamander, which is actually kind of yeah. a cool name. Uh, Amaranth is, is fine, but I think that I like Salamander a little bit more. Bomb Bomb, TBD, Mythic, and Krob 16. That is an eclectic <laughs> mix of, of heroes. What a crew. What a crew. Yeah, dude, where's Rufus at? What a crew. <laughs> He's stuck Rufus on the, guys, the it's ship in Evil Forest. <laughs> Uh, so Amaranth is going to be joining our party here uh, because he joins the game so late and because he is one of the final four that we'll be bringing through to late game. Uh, we have to get him started on learning um, his late game abilities like right away. So he's going to get um, some equipment um, to start learning uh, some of the abilities and start gaining experience in a couple of upcoming scripted battles. Um, but yeah, we officially have every party member now. So from here forward, we're going to be focusing on uh, w as we get later into the game, one of the main things that you start to focus on from a routing perspective is um, making sure that Zidane, Steiner, Freya, and Amaranth get all of the experience and ability points that they need in order to be set up properly for the end game bosses. And in case you got, forgot from part one, encounters in this game were really slow and take a lot of time to get out of. <laughs> Yeah, Amar just wanted to. Path, yeah, we, we just wanted to underscore that early into this uh, yeah. part so you didn't forget. I haven't I really mean, had a lot of issues with encounters. I didn't have a lot of issues with encounters in part one. Yeah, so. I remember you had like at the end of part one, you had like twenty three or twenty four, which I think it was bad. like twenty three. Yeah, that's that's around. That's about right. Entering yeah. entering Amaranth. Um, yeah. And, you know, if you're familiar with any other Final Fantasy speedrun like FF7 or FF8 um, with, like, step count-based movement in them in order to predict encounters and encounter formations, no such thing exists in uh, Final Fantasy IX, so the formations you get and how often you get the encounters is pretty much truly random. Game very promptly taketh after it so generously giveth that Amaranth fight and give us two yeah. very, very friendly encounters on the way out. <laughs> so it's it's kind of similar to 7 and 8 in that you do get fewer encounters almost certainly with better movement and more practice movement, yeah. but it's just because it's rewarding the fact that you're getting fewer encounter checks than someone that has bad movement than it is. So it's more yeah. of just like being rewarded for good movement more so than like having it memorized exactly as, you know, yeah. it would be of the other thing. But of course, because everything in FF9 is pretty RNG based, there can be times when you have uh, perfect or near perfect movement and get the encounter anyway. Mm -hmm. And then there could be times that you have terrible movement and you don't get an encounter. <laughs> like, um, <laughs> there's yeah, there's yeah. definitely a handful of screens like like the screen after Black Waltz 1 or Kuja's bedroom that are, that just feel so bad because they're so yeah. short and there's only one check on them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 
and then we, we all love the screens where the only movement is to just hold a single direction yeah. and you get an encounter anyway. <laughs> Again, with movement in this game, uh, getting good movement simply means that you don't get checks towards the end of the screen. So they usually are the check with the highest encounter rate on them. So they're yeah. the biggest ones to avoid if you're going to avoid any. Some of them are exceptionally difficult to actually not get. Yeah. Um, yeah. Some of them can be completely impossible if you're not running on an analog stick. And uh, sometimes they just don't matter. <laughs> More importantly, right. sometimes they just don't do anything. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. It's like even a completely okay, cool. experienced and practiced veteran runner can still have like a 67, you know, encounter run yeah. and it oh, would yeah, not yeah. shock anyone. Yeah. <laughs> it just happens. Well, that's yeah, and especially when you're going for, like, top, top times in this game, like, you know, uh, as we saw with Bomb Bomb doing the world record run um, grind for the past year and change, like, there's a lot of resetting if you get too many encounters in this game, because, like, if you're competing for a top time, the time saves become so much harder to attain that, like, getting, you know, a three or four encounter evil forest split might compel you to reset because that's going to lose you a significant amount of time that's going to be really hard to make up later. Yeah. Usually, for the most part, though, the further you go in, uh, the dungeon, shortly after the one that you've got, it almost feels like they have a, a much larger weight on the time gain and loss based on the encounter rate that you have as well. Uh, for yeah. the most part, like, for example, Aoife Tree uh, usually has the biggest impact on your time. Like, Absolutely, above all yeah. dungeons prior to that point, um, again, with Desert Palace, things like that. Yeah. Yeah, there's obviously, like, a ton of factors. Like, obviously, the Desert Palace thing is you know, uh, not even completely just because of the encounter rate or the average number of counters, but the quality of them, you know, yeah. varies so considerably compared to so many other places and whatnot, so. Yeah, like you said, like, it's kind of like you, you described. Uh, something that I enjoy in throughout this sequence is uh, because we have a fifth party member available to us for literally the first time in the game, um, where like we're not being forced to use a specific party for the first time in the whole game. There's like three dialogue options that are all like two minutes apart from each other, saying like, "Hey, by the way, you can change your party now. Do you want to?" <laughs> and we just we just you know cancel out of all of those because we're keeping Amaranth. But well, the best part is is that they they offer you this choice of who you want. And really, yeah. you don't, you're gonna lose one in, in you know, 30 seconds. So, right, like, it's right. almost as if it doesn't really matter, but the game <laughs> really the wants you part, to know yeah. that the option is there now. Because you're about yeah. to have a, a forced party of exactly four characters. <laughs> yeah. And the forced party that, that we have is um, Zidane, Amaranth, Aiko, and Vivi. So, we just pick Amaranth from the beginning and go from there. Um, but yeah, so uh, what's happening in the story here now is that um, Braun and Kuja, who have been working together this entire time, are uh, kind of turning against each other because they realize that the other is a threat. So there's about to be a pretty big battle between um, the entirety of the Alexandrian military, along with all of the black mages that Kuja helped Braun create, versus just Kuja. Kuja and a couple of his weird little mist creatures, but mostly just Kuja riding around on his dragon. And, uh, you know, things aren't looking good for Kuja, right? Because he's severely outnumbered. Yeah. And th the other yeah. thing that that has that Braun kind of has going for her is that, you know, at this point, Kuja has given her the tools and the means to yeah. extract the Eidolans from Garnet. So she thinks that she is, like, super OP at this point. Yeah. Um, but obviously, Kuja has not, you know, tipped his hand as to the, the extent to which he has helped Braun and, you know, the backup yeah. plans that he kind of has in place. These are Mystodons. The, they show up a couple times in the game. They're an undead creature, so you can kill them by casting life uh, or set their HP to one by, by throwing Phoenix downs and then attacking them uh, like a couple of the creatures that, that were fought in, in Evil Tree earlier. Um, mm -hmm. And they're just like creatures of the mist, like Cease mentioned. And they'll come up a couple more times in the, the game. Much like the rest yeah, of the game, these encounters are forced, and because they're forced, we use them to track um, experience and AP that are coming onto our characters. So it's somewhat relevant that Amaranth stays alive, specifically across these fights. Uh, yeah. You can go down for some yeah. of them, but it's, if that sort of thing happens, you have to start taking note and making sure that you post get uh, abilities and whatnot uh, later on. And they yeah. do go down to elixirs as well. If you, but usually if you're doing uh, more time-intensive runs and things like that, you can throw elixirs at these and uh, try and stop them from having turns. But um, 
the only time you ever really need your elixirs is death guys, and the more definitely the better. Um, yeah. It gives you more sustain in the fight. Um, so not using them here uh, is guaranteeing that you're going to have plenty more of them for when it actually matters. Yeah. Yeah. But sometimes it's worth it to uh, spare an elixir or two to uh, get out of a fight nice and fast. Um, you know, it, it's it's an, this is another of those series of uh, scripted battles that are kind of like testing like your ability to um, make small decisions really quickly. You know, similar to the Alexandria escape earlier and uh, the Clara invasion that we did um, back in part one of this showcase. Just like a lot of scripted battles that happen really quickly, and you're kind of trying to minimize the number of attacks that enemies get but also weighing, like, the risk-reward of doing something like casting a spell of your own or throwing an elixir, that's um, early. things like that. Yeah, so that's an early Mystodon encounter, so we might get to meet Ralph. Who wants to uh, tell the people at home about our good friend Ralph? <laughs> I think Hollow actually named Ralph. If oh, really? Honest. I think is, it was is, Hollow. Is that the Ralph floor? Because Ralph's been a name longer than I've been in the scene. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, same here. Yeah. So there's yeah. a Mystodon. Th these Mystodon encounters, although they look like forced encounters because they have a character model that appears on the branch and chases you down the branch, it, there is actually a chance that you could randomly, you know, not encounter them. So they are technically yeah. round encounters. You almost always expect to get at least one of them. Um, but getting the second one is far less common um, in the NA version. In the JP version, you almost always get two, interestingly enough. But we've named the second nice. one Ralph. Um, a, a, a FF9 runner called Hollow Brew, I think, is who named it Ralph one day. And <laughs> it just kind of stuck, and everyone just started it calling it. That's great. Get, get, getting Ralph, yeah. Yeah, like Brutal said, that that is something that predates my time in FF9. Yeah, I was going to say, so it's definitely, like, definitely it has been a thing my for time. a time. It's been a thing for a long time, yeah. That's really funny. This, this is probably like 2015, 2016 lore. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's, it's been a wow. thing. That's so, great. Ralph is very, very, very effective at breaking your spirit a lot when you're playing this game because you can be on yeah. like a pretty rough run and as you just just as you're about to finally be done with this too, they just throw Ralph yep. at you, man. Yep. Well, the thing that can be so awful about it is that you can't run from it. You ha you must defeat it. Um, <laughs> yeah. Can try. yeah. Oftentimes, <laughs> oftentimes your, your, Zid your Zidane has almost or has now completely run out of MP after you know, the previous Mystodon fight. And it can be two Mystodons, so it can just be a really time-consuming battle. Yeah, also. yeah, yeah. E even, I mean, and even a perfect uh, battle with the second set of Mystodons is like, it's still at least an extra 30 to 45 seconds uh, added to your split, which if you're running against a PB that didn't have it, is just a guaranteed lo uh, time loss. Um, disc two, in general, is a little, like, it's a little infamous for how wildly it can swing one way or the other with, like, those small time losses that add up. Oh, yeah. Um, and that's 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 a theme throughout the whole speedrun of FF9. <laughs> like, it, it can happen at any time. But I do feel like Disc 2 is probably the one, the section of the game where you, like, encounter the most time losses that you don't really have much control over. With, it you know, almost feels like and Clara invasion and all that. The, the complexity yeah. of the fights don't allow you to gain more time consistently back by you know executing better strategies and things like that I yeah feel yeah you're like more at the mercy of the rng and i also find that just like for the sake that the encounters in disc two from basically the moment you finish clara through the end of the disc like the encounters are almost not beneficial for any reason at all like yeah you know what i mean there, there were times where we we used to get you know, uh, blue magic skills on Quina, mm -hmm. or we would rely on some AP um, and XP. But like now, like the only place that we really get either of those things is Eva Tree, which you are certainly going to get yeah. encounters in. Yeah, definitely. And so, yeah. and so none of the encounters basically for most of Disc 2 after Clara are really useful. And even Clara is questionable because you can make up that AP during the invasion too. So mm -hmm. they, really, they really are like as pure of time loss per encounter as it really gets at relative to most of the run. Yeah. yeah. Disc 4 is probably the only other disc where it's equally just pure time loss for every encounter. Mm -hmm. It best. is. Right, because by the time we reach disc 4, everyone has, well, in most routes, everyone has learned the abilities or, they need yeah. to learn. Or, or the, and, uh, yeah. the AP that you need is from the boss fights yeah. that are in here. Yep. Right, right. 
Um, so I guess my prediction that Kujo was gonna get wiped out is, uh, unfortunately incorrect for the Alexandrians, because that big red eye that I said we were definitely not going to see again, um, is back. <laughs> and Kuja is somehow harnessing its power to confuse the idol in Bahamut that Queen Braun summoned, um, in order to turn its power back on the Alexandrian military there. So it's, it is a decisive victory for Kuja, and... Uh, we get this kind of like actually really interesting character moment with Braun on the beach here where as she is lying on the beach uh, about to die, um, Dagger some somewhat reconciles with her mother before she passes away. The other thing that's really important with this scene is that if you recall, like the first character you really control is, you know, extensively is, is Vivi. And a lot of the game is, is Vivi coming to terms with and dealing with the mortality that he realizes that he has despite being you know a product and yeah. this moment that all of that like i guess what would be like um you know like a, a narration there i guess is vivi kind of talking about how interesting it is that you know this woman who he saw as evil has been killed but because of his relationship her, her, her relationship with garnet her, her you know would-be daughter she, yep. you know, is is upset about it, even though she is kind of losing it in the end. And so we're kind of touching yeah. back, but we're touching base with Vivi's, you know, uh, I guess like struggling with or like trying to play with his idea of what mortality is and like the finality of yeah. that. Mm -hmm. And that's something I think this game does uh, in general really well. It adds a lot of like that. Um, it threads the needle on its themes really well. And another yeah. theme that comes up in that uh, scene is like, it's really rare for any character in this game to be, like, completely evil, because, like, even when it's, like, someone that we think is the main antagonist, like, Braun, like, she gets this little moment of, of humanization right before her character arc ends, and obviously here we are at Braun's uh, grave. Dagger has placed a, a wreath of flowers and is now going to have to uh, go on this uh, character arc for her, um, where she is going to become the Queen of Alexandria. Um, and this is going to bring us to the end of disc two. Garnet has a lot of important moments on this dock, too. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> this, is like, this is her thinking spot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she, does, she does a lot of growing up exactly here. <laughs> so, it's, so in this moment, she's being forced into this role of, of the queen of this kingdom, which she is obviously, you know, wildly unprepared for. And, you know, she's yeah. going to do some more thinking moments in this dock later, too. <laughs> like yeah. like everybody, like everyone does. Yeah. You know? Sometimes yeah. you just got to go out on the dock and think. <laughs> it, it, and it's interesting because um, something that we didn't really say yet, but because uh, Dagger was um, uh, born in Medane Sari, we, we learned that she's not actually uh, Queen Bronn's daughter. We haven't learned just yet uh, what her full origin is of, like, how she ended up in Alexandria, but... Basically, we're about to find out soon that she um, washed up in the boat with her actual mother from Medane Sari in Alexandria, um, and unfortunately, her mother had died. And Queen Braun and the former king of Alexandria took Garnet in as a baby to um, re basically replace their own daughter who had died and that she bears, like, a striking resemblance to. So simultaneous to finding out that she's not actually who she thought she was, like her whole life, she's also uh, is becoming the queen of the kingdom. So it's just a really interesting like internal conflict moment for her. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of like uh, storytelling um, and cutscenes uh, for the next uh, like 20 minutes. So uh, there's just a lot of cool little character moments like that for the whole cast. Um, obviously, now that Garnet is going to be the queen of Alexandria, uh, we are no longer wanted fugitives there. <laughs> Uh, so we could just kind of hang out. Um, Zidane is a little bit in sad boy mode at the bar. <laughs> he's a little moody because he, he was really hoping that, like, maybe this romance was going to go somewhere. And he's like, well, now yeah. she's, a, she's a queen and I'm still a scumbag. So, you know, like, maybe this <laughs> isn't actually going anywhere. There's no yeah. traction, you know. <laughs> um... So we're going to take a quick control of VV again here, just to, we're just going to be uh, doing a lot of running around, um, activating story triggers for a bit here, but we are leading to uh, 
what I feel safe in saying is Brutals' favorite part of the run. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Do you want to talk a little bit about that, Brutals? I would love to. So coming up after all of this uh, dialogue, um, we do have a little bit of a shop, which I, I also do love quite a lot. But more importantly, shortly after we head back to Treno for, um, I think it's specifically for the tournament, isn't it, actually? Yeah, it is. Try and take, take, take Zidane's mind off of things. They, uh, they, yeah, uh... Zidane's basically depressed that he can't <laughs> be with Garnet and decides to go to Trino. It's like going to Vegas. <laughs> Pretty much. So they just go and play a children's card game for a little while uh, in a tournament <laughs> format where you almost can't lose, which is uh, brilliant. I wish I could go to a tournament where I just pretty much couldn't lose. Um, <laughs> and you have to play to win at least two matches, and you have to play until you win two matches, and there is no way to get past until you win two matches. Yep. And, and, and I like the repetition in my voice is coming because you will do these fights many, many times when you run this game <laughs> because you have to win them <laughs> until you yeah. can go any further. Um, and then finally, in the finals, um, uh, if you can take the final fight, which is the only one that you're actually allowed to lose, uh, you are rewarded with the Rebirth Ring, which is a very, very, very powerful accessory, which gives you a lot of stability in the late game. Well, you're, you're, you're forgetting, required, you're forgetting the, the most important thing that, that winning the card tournament means, which is that you can do menus that people actually practice. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we we both lost do, do, on do any of yeah, Do any of you true. practice the backups? No, no and I, I never yeah, practiced the Wii Rebirth dude, we, <laughs> we are the only game community that like zero top of top level runners practice the oh, backup. That's not true. Backers. Final Fantasy X. Oh, well, that doesn't even <laughs> <laughs> If they lose that's splits, fair. they just reset their run. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but Practicing no, you, you got a good point. Strap, that's uh, <laughs> yeah. on that. Um, yeah, like, like Mutsky says, it, it alters some of your menus. Ultimately, what you do with it is you, you stash it on Garnet as quickly as possible and you leave it there um, where it can't really be disturbed until um, toward the end of the game, which yes. you promptly steal it back and um, put it elsewhere where it can actually be put to use. Um, but unfortunately, yeah, losing the final round, while it does take you out and is sometimes simply a blessing, um, it does mean that you do not have the Rebirth Ring. Um, older Roots, which uh, we aren't running tonight, uh, we'll find another way to go and craft a new one um, because some of the strategies rely on it. Um, but we don't do that anymore. We found a faster way to do it. Yeah, um, most, um, pretty much any uh, of the newer routes um, in this game, like anybody who makes a newer route or like the Petra route, which is what uh, Amart is running tonight, will circumvent like the extra steps of creating a new rebirth ring because it's expensive Hold and on. it I adds need, like I need total silence for this moment. Oh, oh yeah. sorry, sorry. Big yeah, game. I need to really focus right here. here. Everybody, everybody right, cross everybody your fingers. Get ready. Here we go. Three, two, one. Boom. Oh, Dude, okay. Okay. Flawless. You your First try. All right. Goodness. All right. Everyone, we get, can we, we get some it. tens in chat for that? <laughs> <laughs> I, I saw a brief <sighs> wall nudge, but we'll let it oh, slide. Good. It's okay. You can breathe now, Emma. It's okay. It's it's a marathon. We can't Ooh. expect you to be perfect. Okay. Right. You, you may not have been able to tell, but basically, you know, for the last three minutes, it has just been dialogue mashing, and all the movement has been automated. <laughs> but they give you yeah. one screen that you must control Ico on and walk on a like a <laughs> diagonal, like forty-five degree angle, and that is the just only to make sure screen. you're still yeah. awake. And then it immediately cuts back to just more text mashing, and so we kind of make a yeah. solid joke. Uh, there. Every time um, that every time that comes up, I I always mention that some sick gameplay is coming up. And yeah, that's what the that's what the Ico emote is for. Yeah, I get some Amart hypes in the chat. Well, well, it's even better in Turbo because you can literally just have your controller set down for like four minutes and then you just pick it up. Yeah, and... <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, going back to what I was saying about the Rebirth Ring, um. It's pretty expensive to craft a new one, and it also can lead to like a 90 second to two minute time loss because you have to go basically to a fairly out of the way town that you otherwise never visit in the entire speedrun. Um, and you also have to do extra pickups. Um, there's there's a lot of steps that go into it, so it's like really nice that like pretty much any modern route of this game will uh, will get out of getting the rebirth ring. Yeah. You do get an extra um, elixir out of it though, because you get that's a true. free elixir mm -hmm. from from Stillskin when you have to buy the the yeah. amount. 
Yeah. <laughs> oh. So we're being reunited with Steiner here. Um, after not seeing him since we escaped from Alexandria, uh, we kind of get a little mention um, of the fact that uh, he and Freya and Beatrix were all imprisoned. Uh, but now, of course, with Dagger in charge of the kingdom, they're all free. Um, and this scene kind of uh, sets up a fun little, like, uh, fun little um, nod forward to uh, the romance that is starting to develop between Steiner and Beatrix. It's a fun little, like, Shakespearean comedy of errors coming up with Iko has written a love letter for Zidane. Um, because she sees that now that Dagger's out of the picture, it's her chance to strike. Strangely and then, enough, with the help of Dr. Tot, I'm going to... Yeah, um... with uh, Dr. <laughs> Tot, Dagger's uh, former teacher. Um, and uh, so Iko has this letter for Zidane, but it's not addressed to him directly. It just says some, like, frou-frou, lovey-dovey nonsense. Um, and then she loses the letter and uh baku or she gets stuck on a balcony <laughs> and gives baku the letter and baku drops it and beatrix finds it thinking that steiner left it for her <laughs> i feel like i'm describing the plot of like the taming of the shrew or something but <laughs> <laughs> i mean the amount of shakespeare references in this game is like yeah i love it i think so as a as a lapsed theater kid, uh, I deeply appreciate the theatricality in this game. <laughs> Steiner's definitely the shrew. <laughs> oh, absolutely. <laughs> so we actually get to do some real gameplay here, and we're going to go to the yeah. uh, aforementioned shop, do a quick bit of synthing uh, to get us a, a lot of actually really powerful gear that's going to help us in the end game. I'm going to pick up this the ether game. too, just for uh, safety measures. In the lower if, of the screen there is a bonus little ether you can stash for later. I can confirm if you forget to do this menu, you can you can do it in Trino. <laughs> <laughs> Source, oh, I yeah. forgot to do this shop three <laughs> runs in a row. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> it's really not oh, that bad for no. a time loss. You just have to run through <laughs> you just have to run to the synth shop, which is where you get the power belt from Pretty Warner, much the man. next screen, isn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's really not that slow, but it is yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember the first time I, I started learning Petra, I got to this part of the run and it was like, go to the synth shop. And I was like, Where, where's the synth shop? <laughs> I don't know where I'm going anymore. It's been so long since I've done that. Where am I going? <laughs> I had to go around all the square looking at every single building, play some jump rope. It was a good run. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm personally on Team Freya here. I definitely believe that she could beat Amarin in a fight. Oh, me too. One hundred. So between Rachel and TBD, you're on Team Rachel. Okay. I'm one hundred percent on Team Rachel. I think so too. Yeah. Because Zidane can beat Amarin in a fight, and there's no way Zidane, and there's no way Zidane would lose, uh, would win a fight against Freya. So no. transitive property. I forgot Freya was in the game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's hey. another one that we don't see for a while, uh, but we're finally reunited. <laughs> we're finally, finally going to have our full party together for the first time in the whole game. <laughs> so on this screen coming, there's a couple extra pickups in the corners, but I'm not sure if anyone's going to grab them. I'm going to pick up top. this ether. Yeah. I, I like picking up the extra ethers. Um, you honestly can never have too many ethers. This is why you end up with 16 in Pandemonium. <laughs> that one run more. where I ended up with 17 <laughs> was something else, though. So I think I got an ether drop from every Mystodon like fight. <laughs> that Lapis Lazuli has some of the most powerful abilities on it, and it's just on a mm -hmm. random gem. And all of the gems have different abilities tied to them, but I, that one's pretty much the only one that gets used. Um, bar diamond for a single ability on, on Steiner only, I believe. No, it's got two. Um, it's got it's got distract. Oh, him, it, help, it helps for it. Mm -hmm. it has distract. Diamond. Yeah, it has distract. That's yeah. fine. That's pretty good then. Yeah. You can also <laughs> use they're it both, later they're both on. Very good. They're they're like you said. They're like the two usable ones. Yeah, you can also them. use it later on for healing, which we may end up doing. You may see me use that strat. We'll see. Yeah. So going back to the card tournament, I'm not sure if anybody in this chat room actually knows how Tetra Master works, but it is <laughs> magnificent. How, how um, does by, this work? And by magnificent, I mean it's completely random. Um, <laughs> not completely. When, when a card is placed, it has a number of arrows among, along its eight, eight sides, um, corners and flat <laughs> sides, that is. 
Um, if an arrow is pointing at an empty side on another card, when it is placed, it will take the card. However, if an arrow targets another arrow, they do battle, you see. And uh, the, ran the winner is um, generated based on a uh, percentage on what the attacker's strength is versus the defender's defense in that specific stat. Um, rather than trying to explain that, just know that it usually won't go the way that you want it to and it will cost you a match. <laughs> <laughs> it's the, the, the optimal strategies are to just don't take fights, um, yeah. which is a lot harder than it sounds because you still need to be able to take more than they're taking from you. And yeah. um, it definitely feels like the AI prefers to take fights, um, which while that can make them give you free cards sometimes, more often than not, you lose way more in the process. Yeah. I have a guide for this game, but I have an even better guide for Tetris Master. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Is it resetting? <laughs> What's that? Is it just resetting? <laughs> Dude, I don't like know if Brutal's knows about the... I don't oh, know I don't he... think he does. Oh, I don't think he knows the meme. Oh. I've seen your guide, if that's what you're talking about, um, with, uh, your edited version of the... Uh... No? Of the of Tetris Master. Yeah, the one that's in your, uh, your speedruns guide. I don't, is that, maybe, I don't and know. And there's a picture of one where you've basically gone out like a madman with a felt tip. Yeah, so yeah. It's all yeah. Wrong. Okay. Okay. It's all yeah. Wrong. okay, yeah, 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 that's the one. It's all the one. I didn't know that that was, I didn't actually didn't know that I put that in the beater. Yeah. It's, the one that, it's the one that looks like an NBA clipboard <laughs> when they're drawing up a play. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you can you can take fights to get yourself back into the game sometimes, but it can just completely backfire. Um, hopefully, Amar won't have to take too many fights and he'll, he'll win nice and clean. What? Obviously, the perfect win, the perfect ratio is 3-0. Um, one, one, one thing I was sorry, go ahead, sorry, I didn't mean you could go. I, I was just gonna, yeah, mention that drawing is a thing, which puts you fortunately back in and there. Slightly less time lost, but it's uh, <laughs> you're still not finishing the fight. Sorry, carry on. I was just going to say that the one thing that is like genuinely flawed with the card game is that it so obviously favors the person who goes last. Like it, it yeah. is a huge yeah. advantage to go second mm. out of the two players. So they do a coin flip at the beginning of the game. Uh, if it lands on blue, then the, the player goes first. If it lands on red, the player goes second. And honestly, going second is the best scenario because there's just you you get to be uh, choose to be offensive or more passive on the final turn depending on what the yeah. score is and so you have a little more control over you yeah. know how the, the final flipping of, of cards goes yeah and that just kind of highlights that the tetra master tournament is i think in a way like the perfect example like the perfect microcosm of what it's like to speed run ff9 in general it is the most concentrated section of the run of randomness over which you have no control and the key to playing it well is not necessarily always just relying on getting good luck but knowing how to react to bad luck um which is just kind of a theme of the speedrun in general, but like in in t the Tetra Master tournament is just especially high because there's so much randomness um, that occurs, you know? It's random whether or not you go first or second. The layout of the board is random. Um, the cards <laughs> that your opponent has is random. Um, the Fortunately, you, you do get to battle, pick your own deck. You do get to pick your own deck, but which ones you, which cards you have available to you, is also determined by so, random drops from enemies you defeat. Just, just want to say really quickly, I'm gonna be saving after the second game, and it's not because I want to get rebirth, rebirth ring. Mm -hmm. It's because there's a section of fights coming up that can just kill you with this route. So we're just gonna save after the second game because it's the best place to save. It's the only but it's place not for it? rebirth ring. It's just for safety for yeah. the fights ahead. I got it killed does by just the throw you headlong. <laughs> like a week ago. This just throw you headlong into a rather large gauntlet where, as they were saying, they can get you instantly with just by putting you to sleep. Also yeah, by yeah, Amaranth. <laughs> just walking Disappears. through the space time ghost. portal. Yeah, ghost Amaranth. Ghost Morant. <laughs> TBD. All right. So uh, we're going to see how the actual card tournament shakes out here. Uh, Amart's going to take control today and run over to the card arena, register for the tournament, and uh, 
We're gonna find out that the champion is, quote, a cutie in a sailor suit. <laughs> I always thought it was One of my Bruce. favorite today in Lawrence. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> it is. <laughs> I, I know, I know, I know exactly one one person in the whole world that, that plays Final Fantasy trading card game, and it's Bruce. So <laughs> it is me. It's a really good game, by the way. I know, I, I love watching you play it. It entertains me Thanks. thoroughly. Thanks, Dad. You always, you always, you always <laughs> definitely stop playing for at least two minutes while your opponent is waiting for you to take a turn just to talk to me, and I really appreciate that. <laughs> you make sure you know they're they're the ones on hold, okay? <laughs> I'll let them know. I'm making a doodle bug card, eh? Yeah, that yeah. antlion card is pretty good. This is definitely a section of the run where it's okay to take your time and not necessarily just go as fast as possible. Sick. Um, uh. Fortunately, he gets oh, the win on the, first, yeah. on the first round. Um, this is definitely one of the parts of the run where it's, I think, a really good idea to like take your time and make sure you're making the best play that you can um, because yeah. you lose way more time by losing matches over and over again than you do by taking an extra few seconds to think about all your moves. Uh, that antlion is looking like a pretty good start. Yeah. Aim up, yeah. run it into a 50 50 yeah. and one clean. <laughs> Again, I, I think that going second is where it's at. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. You definitely get a big advantage when you get to go second, for sure. Well, if I could chime in really quickly uh, and <laughs> say to everyone oh, yeah, that if you missed out on any Sorry. of the GDQ Hot Pick shows, uh, you can make sure to check out our archive of past runs and shows at youtube.com slash games done quick. And uh, again, thank you all so much for being here. It's been uh, fun so far. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So Amart's going to go do this safety save, like you mentioned, uh, for safety with the incoming uh, series of battles against Mestodons. He has two. He has uh, won the first what? two rounds of the card tournament, which is very nice. Um, so regardless of whether or not he wins the next round, we will be moving on with the run after it's over. Um, Unfortunately, winning the first two just means that uh, Sid's going to have the most god tier. Yeah. <laughs> Ogg okay. cards that I'm have ever yeah, just the, on it. with it's, the game. It's a safe bet. <laughs> I believe. I, I uh, yeah. mean, you've, it's, you've been it's fantastic cards to win with, by the way, so. And since I said I'm going to win, I'm actually going to lose. So either way, it works in my favor. <laughs> We're due for a, a rebirth, uh, a, a third round card tournament win in a marathon. Yeah, we, we haven't have. had one in a while. <laughs> <laughs> no, we got to see the draw no, first. No, don't say oh, that. No. Why would you speak Don't such a vile thing into existence? Come on. <laughs> Come on. Uh, let's see. Uh, uh, oh, yes. Zoo with no arrows. Yeah, I know, right? It's so good. Nice. Yeah, sometimes you can get cards that don't have arrows on them, which is kind of funny. Oh, yeah. Um, on the play. The bold strategy, Cotton, see if it pays off. <laughs> <laughs> so far, so good here on the... Thank you for the card. ...on lock challenge. Mudski! Oh no! Come on. What have I done? Oh my god! Mudski spoke it into existence. <laughs> the commentator <laughs> curse. Oh my god! We're in the so loop. To be fair, I don't think I. So the only way that you well. can lose more time on this segment, this part of the uh, tournament in particular, is to draw because you don't win or lose. <laughs> yeah. No. You, you all get you all get one more card game, and I have one less friend in life now. So. No, that's okay. At least we're the, the equivalent uh, exchange. 
At least the card game uh, soundtrack is a banger. Oh, oh my goodness. Oof. All easy. right, so Amar's getting that rebirth ring. That Listen, was a bit of a nail three, biter. Zero, Listen. one. The first one was so. set up to be a loss, and I didn't want him to have to do his lame backup menus, okay? Yeah, yeah the backup same. menus no one practices. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we have moved on from car tournament. We've got the rebirth ring, which will uh, be handy for... Um, not only the auto life ability that we were talking about before, but also um, it stays on Freya for a lot of uh, disc four because it gives her like a holy boost and combined with the uh, final weapon that we end up equipping her with uh, adds a nice little elemental damage boost um, for fighting disc four bosses. Shout, shout uh, out to the reverb. Yeah. Winning the reverb <laughs> ring. The Reverse Ring. <laughs> <laughs> so coming um, up, it, we're going yeah. to see Dagger's first uh, line of duty, giving orders to some... Uh, it is the Knights of Pluto here, isn't it? And um, simply, you get to send the, the team at the top to the third task, and then you can mash through the rest. And fortunately, the rest of them then just line up nicely to give you the uh, best possible item. I don't know um, what, what my boys Blutzen and Kohel need to do, and, and the, rest, <laughs> the rest is history. No, so, so we so really won. two weeks ago. You asked for an obscure callback to uh, part one of the uh, showcase, and here it is. Um, when we were running around as Steiner at the very beginning of the run, we had the option, you know, in casual playthrough, you have the option to go find all of his Pluto Knights and learn something about them. And if you do that, I hope you're paying attention because and taking notes so that you can remember all the way on disc three what uh, each knight's personality is like so that you can assign them their roles during this invasion. <laughs> um, you did splendidly, Amar. That was excellent. Thank you. <laughs> so I am going to kind of showcase off a turbo trick here um, with the with the Mestodon skip, um, particularly the second one. I actually learned this from Mutsky, so thanks, Mutsky. Um, shout outs to Turbo Gang. Rise yeah, up. Shout outs to Kiwami Life. Um, I'm going to do this menu really quick, though. It doesn't work like that. Gotta get out of FF8 I mode. That. I always make that mistake too. <laughs> I love that menu. That's one of my favorite menus All in right, the run. So here this I'm gonna so do a little turbo trick here. I'm gonna turbo down at 15 hertz. I'm just gonna hold uh, walk here. Steiner's gonna kinda stutter on down. We're just gonna skip past the second misted on trigger. Oh, he's grooving. He's grooving. Oh. Groovy boy. And that's actually yeah, so one we, of the bigger skips of the game. Yeah, so FF9 is actually like a notoriously well put together game. If you're familiar with like, probably FF7 is one of the more famous examples of a Final Fantasy speed run that has a lot of glitching and skipping things. FF9 doesn't really have much of anything. We can skip exactly two battles that we just showcased there. Um, the first one uh, was kind of, um, you have to leave the Mystodon field model around the ticket booth and then like run in the opposite direction and make it out of the stream before it catches you. Um, but those are the two biggest skips in the game, so I hope you enjoyed them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so once again, these uh... Mystodons are uh, undead, so you can just life them to death. Life has, I believe, a 10% chance to miss. You can use shock but it's a little bit slower. Most people just tend to just take the risk. It's also worth noting during this section, we take all of Beatrix's um, armor off of her um, so that we can give it to other characters later. And yeah. um, yeah. if, you don't, if you don't remember to back row her, which stops her from taking so much physical damage, um, she can just get absolutely slapped. Um, yeah. <laughs> and uh, when I came back to this game uh, a couple weeks ago for the first time in about a month or so, um, first thing that happened to me was I got absolutely slapped into the ground instantly. Uh -huh. It was brutal. <laughs> brutal. ZTBs are. It was brutal. <laughs> not, not quite the best. Yeah, so this is another series of scripted battles that kind of tests uh, 
your ability to make decisions in the moment. Um, and, you know, uh, time gain and time loss on the split can sometimes be heavily affected by uh, where Steiner's ATB bar is at at the beginning of the fights. Um, we want Steiner to go first because he can he should be able to kill them just with one strike. Yeah. yeah. Um, it usually takes, sometimes it can take the first um, encounter's worth of experience to just push him all the way up and give him yeah. the amount of strength that he needs to kill him one hit consistently. And um, he still has a uh, small chance to miss as well, but ultimately, um, if you can take their turns from them by guaranteeing a nice early life, you'll take it. But you want to see Steiner open each of these fights with a full ATV if possible. Sand Golem card right on time. <laughs> um, there's there's a question in the chat. Are any are speedruns of FF9 played in active or weight ATB? And the answer is that it is always uh, in weight ATB. Yeah, you, we never you switch it. You don't want to play this in active. No. Yeah. Ooh, ooh. Although I, I've been wanting to do it as like a meme run ooh. sometime. FF9 active percent. <laughs> I was actually experimenting with active on um, on one of the boss fights. And on Taharka, right? Yeah, it was Taharka. Yeah. And it just... Uh, it's just scary. <laughs> well, yeah. I feel like the amount of time you actually spend in the menu is so small anyway. That, mm -hmm. like, yeah. You know, you, like, there's really no benefit to lingering in the menu on Taharka. Especially yeah. with the, yeah. the poison ticks. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Also, so we're about to get into the last to of shock here. <laughs> uh, we're we're on to the last of the scripted uh, Mystodon fights. Um, Steiner is going to have uh, we've seen this a few times throughout the run with Zidane and Vivi, and now Steiner gets his turn for a pre-scripted trance. And Steiner's ability uh, in trance is just that he gets very very beefy, um, and he never misses. So something I found out literally yesterday, I believe, is that while you're blinded, you don't get the accuracy plus style effect of trance. You can still miss. Oh, interesting. I thought mm -hmm. if you if you trance, then blindness wouldn't affect you anymore, but it does. Um, against nice. every other situation, though, once you're trancing, uh, your accuracy hits 100%, I believe. And you yeah. shouldn't be able to miss. Interesting. I know with accuracy plus, it doesn't matter if you have blind at that point. That's what confused yeah. me. Yeah, that's that that would be why it's confusing, I guess, yeah. That's why accuracy plus is brutals of, alluded to earlier on the lapis lazuli is so based is that it it legitimately yeah. it, it's called accuracy plus and it's almost like a misnomer of what the ability does. Like it doesn't just yeah. like it doesn't it just undersells increase, it. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't just increase your accuracy, it legitimately makes your physical attackers completely incapable of missing their target despite yeah. the yeah. evasion stats. So it, it's really and like it's, accuracy 100. Yeah, accuracy yeah. plus is, it, it's one of the more important abilities that you teach to uh, the final party for end game uh, because the disc four bosses have fairly high evasion stats and our parties are not very high level um, heading into the end game. The highest level is Zidane usually, who's usually at 34 usually. Um, and you know, uh, Amaranth and Freya are st and are, and Steiner are all still in the twenties on their levels. So, having abilities like Accuracy Plus to mitigate um, missing on Disc Four bosses is really important. Um, a question that kind of keeps getting asked is, um, do people get Excalibur two in the speedruns? And the answer is a resounding yes. We're definitely gonna yes. be, we're definitely gonna be picking up Excalibur two. Um, it's gonna it's gonna be very important for the last three bosses of the game that we have um, Excalibur two. You can do all of the same strategies that we do in a very legitimate sense without it, but they're just far slower. Obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The amount of damage that you do is just almost have done Steiner, so mm -hmm. it just makes everything yeah. way slower. And on Necron. There's a skip that we'll demonstrate that we'll explain when we get there, but you have to do it multiple yeah. times. I'm gonna do the April skip. 1st Necron now. <laughs> yeah, one of the um, important for... things about Excalibur 2 is that it actually provides you with, a, with the ability to deal holy damage. Um, mm -hmm. So, like uh, Cease mentioned earlier, by boosting Freya's holy um, with the Rebirth Ring, we can boost Steiner's holy attack damage with the Mithril Helm. Um, and like MP attack and 
Bird Killer and all those other abilities uh, increase our damage currently by 50%. So the first one is a 50, the second one is then a 75, and so on and so forth. If we yeah. can get another one of those additions on as well, it very easily pushes Steiner into max damage range. Yeah. yeah. If there wasn't, if there wasn't a damage cap in this game, Steiner would be doing like at least 10,000 damage uh, with all of that, um, with all of that uh, modification. Um, for anyone in chat who's not familiar with this game or may not be familiar with the Excalibur 2, what it is is um, it's Steiner's ultimate weapon and the strongest weapon in the entire game. Um, and you're required to reach basically the end of the game. Uh, you, you get it on a screen where uh, that's right before the final like three boss rush. Um, and the requirement to picking it up is that you have to reach that screen in under 12 hours. Uh, which, you know, is kind of, in my opinion, like, the whole reason, like, speedrunning Final Fantasy IX was interesting to me, because I loved this game as a kid, and always thought Excalibur II beat it in 12 hours, looking at my save file that was, like, 65-plus hours, thinking, that's yeah. not possible, I'm never gonna get that. <laughs> there, um, I will say... Heard, yeah, go ahead. Um, if you are ever actually um, interested in doing like an Excalibur 2 run. There are many good uh, guides on speedrun.com that you can just pull from and you can just read the notes. Mutsky actually here has a really well done guide for um, for getting the Excalibur 2, um, well, for the speedrun, but also just if you want to get the Excalibur 2, it's really cool. Um, it's full of like story triggers. So like, even if you've never played this game before, you can, you can still take that guide and just, you know, I, when I started speedrunning this game, I actually just read from the guide and I just got Excalibur 2 in my casual, yeah. like, playthrough with the notes and it was really Literally, fun. It was like really cool to just get well. it the first Probably time because I never did it in my playthroughs, so. You're all my children and I love you all equally. <laughs> <laughs> I've actually, like, recommended that guide to, like, three or four people who just, really? like, played the game casually and just were like, yeah, I got it. And like, I thought that was really cool, so. Yeah, I, I'm currently working on an updated guide for the route that we're currently demonstrating on Amart's run here. That'll be of a similar vein, but mm -hmm. um, I mean, a combination of, of my procrastination and just laziness has prevented <laughs> me from finishing it, but it'll, it, will get, it will get there. But if you do really have an interest in, in getting the Excalibur 2, if it's something you've never done, you can safely, as long as you're not like reading all of the dialogue, you can safely just follow that guide and get there yeah. in ten, ten and a half hours easily yeah. if you've played cool. the game one time in your life. It's pretty, pretty safe. Yeah. Uh, so a little catch up on what's going on in the story here. Um, so after we uh, completely whip Sid at the card tournament and get the rebirth ring, um, we rush back to Alexandria because we learn that it's under attack and uh, it's Kuja attempting to unleash the same kind of destruction on Alexandria that he previously pushed Braun to do to the other kingdoms. Um, except this time there's something going on with Garnet and Iko are able to summon an Eidolon who's locked away inside Alexandria Castle, Alexander, to stave off the attack from Bahamut. It's kind of a really, it's a really cool FMV, one of my favorites in the game, and it's basically like, um, Alexander is like the spirit inside the castle, and because it takes the brunt of the destruction of uh, the attack from Kuja and this bald old man we're meeting, Garland, um, because it takes the brunt of the destruction from them, the castle is destroyed, but it mostly saves the rest of the city. Hey, Cease. Yeah. Are you ready? Oh, I'm ready. Are you ready? Oh, I'm ready. Okay. All right, you're gonna go fight. Go. You're gonna go fight Tantarian. Yeah, right? we're gonna go fight Tant. Yeah. <laughs> I hope everyone's ready. <laughs> Need some change. Get your change uh, ready. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Route change right here. Just kidding. We're gonna go up. Oh. Amar, why do you tease me like this? <laughs> <laughs> I have to do so, it in every, yeah. like, marathon I can. I, I love it. I, um, I, I also appreciate that they have the Eidolon that is basically a castle called Alexander. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Defending the castle that is the castle of Alexandria. It's a nice little, you know, it's pair, pretty cool, nice yeah. pair that they have worked in there. And, you know, obviously Alexander doesn't 
become playable or usable in combat, but it's it's still a cool. But my yeah. some of definitely my favorite couple of FMVs in the entire game. Yeah, it's a really cool. Uh, it's a really cool sequence. Um, you know, uh, we mentioned this in part one, but. Um, this game has a lot of references to old Final Fantasy games in it, especially the first, like, five games in the series. Uh, and in a lot of ways, is like, at the time, a modern adaptation of, like, the themes and images of those first five games, those sort of more medieval-inspired magic yeah, fantasy yeah. setting. And one of the things that uh, carries over is uh, the summons are all recurring... Uh, creatures that come through the summoning magic throughout the entire series and continued to after FF9. Um, unfortunately, you know, Alexander gets kind of deleted here by the big red eye in the sky, but again, because it's there to take the damage, uh, the city is not as wrecked as Clara or Bermesia were. And we're also kind of setting the stage here for there to be like this sort of um, this next antagonist in Garland um, because it's clear through the fact that uh, Kuja's dialogue, he's talking about like recognizing the Garlands there and wondering what he's up to. There's a little bit of a conflict between them. So it's sort of like, even as Bronn uh, is taken out of the story, uh, we are still getting a little bit of that um, enemy of my enemy sort of relationship with Garland. I believe this is the third city to get blown up now. And we've uh, just gone past the halfway point ish. It's actually the fourth. <laughs> yeah, the, because I, missed one? Oh, no. I guess I guess I guess we don't see Bermesia get blown up. It's already destroyed by the time yeah. we get there. But yeah, all four of the major kingdoms in the in the game are uh are significantly damaged or destroyed in some way. Um which as we'll learn as we get deeper into the plot, was sort of the point of uh, Kuja uh, manipulating Braun into doing that. His goal was to have all of the kingdoms of Gaia um, fall. Luckily, we don't know while, why yet, though. Well, the square where the, uh, the children like to play jump rope has unfortunately been destroyed. They are still <laughs> a present <laughs> by the bell tower. So, uh, yes. you know, when we get to this ball, I'm very excited to see Amart go for a thousand jump rope skips. <laughs> In one try. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you bet. We're gonna do it. I think my uh, my own personal best is something like sixty-two. I, I <laughs> really. I, I thought you were I good at this game, rope. Brutals. I, I do everything but jump rope. I, oh you my god, <laughs> dude! Were you watching? Were you watching my casual my casual play the other day? I, I agreed to do it one time, and I let my chat all bet on how many I would get, and all of the guesses were like under 50, and I got like 104. Yeah, and then nice. I let's go. Let's let's go. It up. I watched Mitsuko I did it, get um, a thousand once, and that was just like I <laughs> cannot imagine like you, keeping that yeah. for that long. Yeah, it sounds awful. I did it on the on my DDR run also, and I used the DDR pad. I did one <laughs> round of jump rope. <laughs> Man, the you've answer done more than one run on that jump that, that that pad, haven't you? I'm surprised. It's, it's still I've done going. I've done three of them now. Yeah, you can wow, unfortunately boy. not you cannot turbo the jump rope because if you press the input too soon, you fail. So unfortunately, yeah, yeah. can't it, it doesn't it doesn't actually work to your benefit. You actually have to do it legit, which is a shame because uh, you know I'd rather just cheat and get a thousand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> apparently, on the HD version, I've not ever made this work, but apparently on the HD version, you can use an auto clicker to. Yeah. To cheese yeah. jump rope, yeah, but that's what I've read or heard. Unfortunately, yeah. it does I've actually it. Um, change tempo after, like during it, doesn't it? It does, yeah. It does. So yeah. I'm yeah. really not sure how the audio works. It becomes, <laughs> yeah. it becomes an an uh, like a one two beat after two hundred. So it's a regular, yeah. it's a regular beat with the tempo increasing up through number two hundred, and then starting with two hundred one, it, it it's like a heartbeat. It's like a dun dun. Dun, dun. So it actually becomes like obscured after that. But at, that's then 300 to 1000 is just a regular, like high tempo beat, like regularity. So mm -hmm. if you can get past, yeah. if you can p get past that 200 to, to 299 check, then you can do all 1000. 
I feel like you're someone explaining to me how the TV show gets good after season <laughs> one. <laughs> no, no, I, I know, I know exactly how this works because when they released it on PS4 and I was gonna get the platinum trophy, I sat there on stream and I streamed like several hours of Jumper Up. I had an Excel spreadsheet. And I put how many I got every single time. Wow. I was really committed. I also, for the trophy of oh, uh, getting so. 10,000 kills, I, I read all of The Hobbit out loud on stream while I did that. That is so funny. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, who remembers the calculator, by the way, from two weeks ago? Oh, yeah, Amart's calculator is uh, a beautiful thing. <laughs> can you can you show the people at home your calculator, Amart? Does chat want to see the calculator again? I think chat's gonna Wait, want to so, see the calculator. So if you run this game, <laughs> it's definitely recommended to to um to use a calculator for like tracking boss damage and whatnot. And um since I since I have a since I have a like big turbo break, I'm just gonna show it off again to y'all. Enjoy the Canon MP twenty one B three. I love right that here. calculator so much. Yeah, the first time the I ever saw it was the best on calculator one of right showcase. here. Yeah. <laughs> it's look at it. It does need a little no, cleaning, but beauty. But I hope that you were just so like I hope you were just like, hey Ash, can you pick me up at a calculator on the way home? And she's like, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> There's a yard sale down the street, Ames, I got you. <laughs> I could see no. you following one of those NES restoration videos or something like that, trying to get rid of all the yellow. <laughs> one of my old jobs was being an assistant manager for a family dollar and the store closed that I was working at, so I was like, yo, can I just take this and the manager was like, yeah, you can have it. And I just sat in the back for like five years. And then I was the untold just story running is the manager's actually like, like, no. I don't have a calculator, <laughs> but I have this. And it just <laughs> sits on my desk now. Like, it's probably the best part of my whole stream setup. If I you, absolutely uh, love it. If you get a link cable, can we trade Pokemon on it? Oh, <laughs> yeah. Actually, can I? Actually, you can trade my phone one. Yeah. The most important question is, does it run Doom? I don't think it does, but... Dang. I need to get some receipt paper, yeah. So if you couldn't tell uh, by our uh, very engaging commentary of the past few minutes, um, this is kind of a slow part of the run, a lot of downtime with a lot of uh, cutscenes, and it's actually a really uh, miserable part of the run if you lost a lot of time on card tournament or Mystodons because you're like just sitting there for a yeah. half hour watching cutscenes <laughs> thinking, wow, I really whiffed it on cards today. Like, the ga the mean, game gives you 30 you minutes that. to decide if you want to continue to look at, that. though. Yeah. <laughs> Just gives you thirty minutes to think about what you've done. Yeah, it's just like, well, do you want to do you want to finish this out or not? Here's a right, half right. hour to decide. Because once we get past this kind of a uh, big story dump here, there's like one pretty big story dump later on at, near the end of disc three. But like once we get past this chunk here, we're past a lot of yeah. the um, long expository it, sections of the run that. and into like the deep uh the deep like execution heavy section starting with the next dungeon oil vert um but you know a little bit of what's going on here is uh we're back in lindblum <laughs> which is uh, steadily being rebuilt um you know uh, the alexandrian occupation is over now that daggers uh the queen but in the aftermath of um alexandria being destroyed we find out that uh garnet has become so like despondent that she has completely lost her voice. Um, like she can't talk and that's actually going to end up having uh, gameplay implications heading forward because uh, for the re for most of the rest of disc three, um, Garnet is going to have like, a, a, is it a 50-50 chance of, of, of her commands not taking? I, I forget what the exact percentage is, uh, but there's a chance that like yeah, you can't do something with her. 50-50 feels too I, high, I, but I think it it's I think it's close to a coin flip. I do. I do think it is yeah. about a coin flip of whether or not she will take the action that you've told her to take. At least it yeah. seems like I don't know, just from like having done it a lot in like older routes where we used to use like Berserk and stuff, it just felt yeah. like it was about half of the time that she would respond. Yeah. 
Thankfully, between now and then, uh, this route um, does not use Garnet, really, for anything. Um, so it doesn't have uh, real heavy implications on the speedrun, but it can be kind of annoying, like <laughs> uh, like Mutsky said, on older routes or even in casual play. Okay. So we're going to talk to her here to see what's bugging her. You know, there's still some dialogue here, so Amart's, you know, finishing up his game of Snake 2 on his calculator. <laughs> Well, we're doing I think that. he used to play chess yeah. during this section, which I always enjoyed. <laughs> I've definitely cooked meals. <laughs> it is what it is. I'm playing Mario Kart on my phone right now. Not really. <laughs> <laughs> on that note, uh, I do want to say thank you all so much yeah. for watching. And if you are watching on YouTube, feel free to join us over at twitch.tv slash games done quick to check out all of our live shows starting most nights at 7 p.m. Eastern time. And while you're there, Hotfix is funded in part thanks to your subscriptions and bits. So please consider subscribing to help support future broadcasts. A big shout out to our current support, uh, supporters. We appreciate it very much. Thank you. I guess uh, since we probably have some new uh, folks in the stream since we first started, now might be a good time to reintroduce ourselves. Amart, if you oh, want to. Sure. sure. Yeah, so I'm Amart. I am the one running this game. I run Final Fantasy IX, Final Fantasy VIII, Final Fantasy X. I have run the past X, II, and Kingdom Hearts I. Uh, going into the next year, I'm going to be focusing more on Final Fantasy IX again. Um, kind of trying to lower my turbo time and might also get into some non-turbo runs, but I really enjoy I really enjoy playing this on the turbo category um, Mostly because I just have hand and wrist issues, so um, Yeah, I, I mostly am a turbo runner though uh, I am ceaselessly. I am the uh, lovable rascal of the Final Fantasy IX speedrunning community. I'm Mutsky. Uh, I've learned today that all three of these these goofballs uh, learned this game from my speedrunning guide. And so they're like my children, and, and like an honest father, I, I, I love most of them equally. <laughs> we all know Brutals is your favorite. You can admit no, it. Well, I mean the favorite. <laughs> Br Brutals would be my favorite if it wasn't boxes. if it wasn't I'm the I, one with the turbo. Listen, <laughs> I Brutals has this dog emote that I think is hideous and for some reason I think my girlfriend kind of likes it. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea why you couldn't possibly like it. And on that night, no, I am the Brutals. Um I I run this game a lot. Uh, when I'm not running this game, I'm often streaming Final Fantasy the card game. Uh, live from local game stores and stuff. I recently streamed a major down in Wales for the UK, which was absolutely awesome. Um, so if you guys have never checked out FFTCG, um, you should look, look into it if you like Final Fantasy, because that game is... It's a lot of fun, brilliant. yeah. It's excellent. Yeah, some of the, the cards look really good in that game. I have yeah. a few, and uh, I'm also, also a card gamer, so... Um, so right now we're on, uh, so when we rode into Alexandria in the previous segment, um, the ship that we took in was kind of, uh, janky, to put it lightly. And it was designed by Sid, who, like, uh, all of the other Sids in Final Fantasy, is an airship, uh, engineer. Um, but, you know, as we talked about in the, uh, previous episode of this showcase, he's been turned into an oglop, uh, by his wife Hilda, because she caught him cheating on her. Um... And ever since he's been turned into an Oglop, he really can't think as clearly as he usually does. So uh, his he's trying to design a new airship that doesn't run on mist. Um, and he's just not really succeeding. So we're going to uh, run through Lindblom to collect a couple of different rare potions that Dr. Tot thinks um, might he might be able to use to turn into an antidote to cure Sid of his Oglop uh, form. Uh, we're also going to run into the two Burmesian refugees that Zidane saved back on disc one. Uh, it's a fun little reunion here where we get to meet their kids, and Freya gets to meet a couple of Burmesians as well, um, so, which uh, kind of uh, helps us understand that uh, after Clara was destroyed, um, there are some Burmesians who survived, so the, the, the people have not completely died out. 
So, but yeah, we're going around Limbaland, we're picking up a number of potions for Sid, um, but at the same time, we're also going to do one more pickup in the house on the right here after we've um, spoken to the, the artist gentleman inside. We're going to pick up another lapis because they are absolutely broken. Um, we need to make sure that we've got two so that we can spread the ability up and the accuracy plus during the mid late game so that we can get all those. Uh, abilities learnt nice and quickly. It's very important that we pick it up because if we don't, then we don't get the ability points we need um, as quickly as we do. And I don't actually know what happens if you don't get them. Uh, I, don't know. I, don't know. I have no idea how you begin to fix it's, that. You you would have to route a lot of the AP into disc four. Yeah. I think the and right answer would be to just give Amaranth no no accuracy plus. Yeah, that too. <laughs> yeah, just, pretty much. And just, <laughs> Because, I mean, like, ultimately, he would be the one that takes the fewest attacks in disc four. Yeah. So, yeah, mm -hmm. I would just I would just roll without it and just pray endlessly that he yeah. doesn't doesn't miss, <laughs> you know, on critical moments. Because obviously we Steiner had, um... or, or Freya or Zidane, like, I wouldn't want to. You know, you can't really risk that on Necron or, or whatever. Yeah, you're so Yeah, we can hear you. Uh-oh. Am I still here? Okay, I'm uh, having the, some, like, fluctuation. The glory of doing these things from home. In my stream. Okay, I think we're good. I oh, get some like weird internet fluctuation around this time. So. One of my one of my favorite FF9 moments of all time actually happened on a, on a GDQ for this game involving this part of the the run in which our boy Spike Vegeta forgot to pick up one of the potions. Oh no! <laughs> Went back to yes. the castle oh, and he no. uh, he didn't yeah he didn't get the beautiful potion in the shopping district and oh, then no. uh, he and he and Puexler got the. Do a little bonus trip. Oh, had to, man, had to go all the way back. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. Nice. Big old you, chunky time loss. You lose about uh, about a minute and a half doing that. Speaking from definitely not personal experience <laughs> when I was first starting to run this game. That's definitely one of those those things where I saw another runner make the mistake and never forgot it. So then I've never. Yeah. Made, you know what I mean? I learned yeah. via proxy of someone else's that is, error. <laughs> that is a mistake you either make or witness someone make exactly once. Yeah. <laughs> This is unfortunately a section of the game that's pretty easy to kind of like uh, tune out and start thinking about, you know, other things during because it is just a lot of dialogue. Um, but uh, we're getting we're getting close to getting back to the action. Um, but first, uh, it looks as though Dr. Tot's potion didn't quite work as we intended, did it? First off, it worked better than it intended. <laughs> yeah, say, yeah. If, you don't love, if you don't love adorable little frogs, little him hops, like... <laughs> This big old tash. We all know Queen Gotta love does. Frog Sid. It was amazing. Frog yeah. Sid is literally. If people always talk about best Sid in the series. If your answer is not Frog Sid from FF9, <laughs> what are you thinking? He's so cute, and his stash is amazing. Yeah. And then Quinna considers eating him. It's a. It's all so good. Everything yeah. about Frog Sid is good. The Quinna's noise, little moral dilemma. When you even get to control him for a, a, a short time and yeah. hear, hear his little hops, like, it's so cute and I love it. It's great. <laughs> he should get his own anime. <laughs> uh, I want um, I want a Final Fantasy IX Dirge of Cerberus style game starring Frogs. <laughs> it's just lo loaded up with a gat. Like. Yeah. <laughs> I'm here for it. It's just like, it's like the game begins. It's like, it's it starts with Sid in the desert palace. And he's like, well, everyone's trapped except for me. Good thing I'm strapped. <laughs> <laughs> Who would be the voice actor for it? Frog Sid? Yeah. It's <laughs> mm, a great question. Hmm. Mm. I would I would want someone like I would want a complete wild card. Like I would want someone yeah. that you would wouldn't expect. 
Just get Keanu Reeves, man. It's got to be good. Oh, yeah. Keanu Reeves. <laughs> it's it's got to be good. Be real good. Dude, so you're telling me you want, you want a, dirge of, a dirge of Cerberus Frog Sid game in the vein of John Wick 4? Like, oh, yes, exa that is exactly what I want. Yeah. <laughs> Just color his little cape black and you're good to go. Uh, <laughs> um, so... We now have the entire party for the first time in the game, and we also have a vehicle. Uh, this is the Blue Narcissus. It's uh, the uh, ocean traveling vehicle of this game. Um, we're not gonna have it for too long, but it is uh, an important part of this story beat um, where we are heading over to Black Mage Village because we learned that all of the Black Mages uh, who lived there have been tricked into following Kuja um, this poor Chocobo. I'm working with him. Runs with this poor Chocobo. For two weeks. Run. Run. This poor Chocobo's just been sitting here waiting for us to come back for the past two weeks. I'm cracking up at someone's suggestions for the voice actor. Me Sam too. Jackson? <laughs> Sam <laughs> Jackson? <laughs> yeah, Gilbert Gottfried. <laughs> I really it like, would be good. Um, I really like the one, the person who suggested uh, Nathan Fillion <laughs> from a Firefly fame. And also I'm seeing several suggestions of Danny DeVito. Christopher so. Walken? <laughs> I really hope that this person, oh, the person man. who suggested Chris Pratt is trolling. <laughs> It's like, I'm just oh. imagining walking the walking <laughs> frog suit. The only prescription is this get. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> Man, that's the first time I've ever enjoyed anything about Desert Palace in my entire life. <laughs> yeah. Same. You're telling me you don't enjoy that jam? That's okay, funny. okay, that's well. fine. I don't remember if I got the Geishel Green. Uh, you did in Clara. Okay. I'm pretty sure you did. If I maybe didn't, get, maybe, it's your fault. Maybe, maybe pick this one up nope, just to be safe. Nope. It's your fault if I don't have it. All right. Well, if Amart has to stutter step all the way to oil vert, then I guess uh, I'm fired. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure I did get it. Yeah, me too. Um, so we got this cute little cutscene here where uh, the two chocobos who were earlier, uh, the first time we visited Black Mage Village, are they were raising a chocobo egg. Or I'm sorry, the two black mages. Um, we're raising a chocobo egg, and now the chocobo's born, and they name it Bobby Corwin, which is a reference to Boko, the chocobo from Final Fantasy V. Um, or my chocobo in Final Fantasy XIV. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or my chocobo from Final Fantasy XIII, Lightning Returns. <laughs> <laughs> the hit game. <laughs> And here we're kind of extending uh, Vivi's exploration of mortality and search for purpose because all of the other black mages besides the two who are raising the chocobo and the one who's kind of the village leader, all of them left with Kuja because Kuja promised them a way to extend their limited lifespan. Um, so it's just kind of expanding that like realization on the black mages parts that they have very short lives. It's so, so close to starting the real game. Yeah, yeah. this is what we get excited for. <laughs> yeah, this is usually the part where I start to get uh, start to get hyped back up uh, after leaving Black Mage Village the second time. So we're about to head over to the other side of this continent here to enter the Desert Palace itself. Um, once we do, we're going to get uh, trapped, ambushed, swindled by Kuja, um, and <laughs> imprisoned <laughs> shortly after. Uh, before being asked to go and get a stone or something. <laughs> he asked you to go and get a, a stone. We gotta go to the Triforce for Kuja. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to the whale zombie beach. <laughs> Where uh, I believe that if you pick the wrong party at this part as well, there is no way to rectify it as yeah, well. Yeah, it's done. Which, which You're over. absolutely yeah. wild. Well, I thought I'll just you maybe like... on the fly. It's okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> If, if you pick the wrong, and like knock if on you his door the wrong, and be like, "Hey, can I can I change?" and they're like, "No, no, you gotta go." Just don't take <laughs> Vivi. <laughs> then we might have a problem. <laughs> the the biggest problem you can make, yeah, is just taking someone that would be like 
pivotal to the fights that they're going to engage in. If you'd swap that Meridia yeah. Vivi, you'd have a really, really, really bad time. Yeah. yeah. Actually, if I took the Eevee <laughs> instead of Queen, I would probably get Knight in Desert Palace and just do Stunner yeah. Strats. That oh, makes sense. Man. Not that I want to do that, but it would be a thing I would have to do. Yeah. So, now that we've talked about making that mistake, don't do it. Yeah, <laughs> don't do it. <laughs> I'm not trying to set you up or anything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the stutter stepping limits the random encounters on the world map. It, it essentially by not taking full steps, it doesn't raise your like level of threat to get an encounter. So you can keep it at the, the lowest uh, value the entire time you, you move across the, the world map. So it doesn't guarantee that you won't get one, but it certainly eliminates the possibility by a, an immense amount. With the mm -hmm. exception of like forests with the ragtime mouse where the tri the trivia person then if you want to get the trivia then if you stutter step around there you're you'll get those way more likely than than anything else so. but yeah we're using the speed run to mitigate the amount of world map encounters hopefully to zero but you know occasionally you'll you'll just get the the unlucky one and whatever 250. so uh this part is uh, important for the speedrun specifically because... Three people, right? FS... Oh, no. yeah, yeah. Yes, okay, that's, I that's correct. <laughs> I, 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 like, <laughs> we were like... Remember the names yeah, of yeah, I was, I was taking that. and I was like, I think I took the right yeah, people. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's, yeah, that's yeah, correct. Right, good. Well, it's, it's funny because this is... Uh, so we talked a little bit about it um, last time, uh, but one of the things that's really interesting about this game is that there are a lot of different routes that you can run. Um, and like we talked about, early game different routes isn't really much different. There's not a lot of differences between them, like for most of di for all of disc one and some of disc two. Uh, disc three is uh, like around this section is where some of the routes start to diverge from each other pretty wildly. Like you'll see different party configurations in this section based on which route is being run. So if you're someone who has run multiple routes before, um, which I think all of us have, have run at least two routes at, at yeah, one point or so. another. Mm -hmm. um, it can sometimes, like, that, there could be that moment there of, like, wait, which oilvert party is it? And it's really, like we were saying, pivotal to make sure you pick the correct one. <laughs> so an optimization I like on this route is we used to take VV here and use Quinna. Basically, just the, the routes between this one and the MPU was that Quinna and VV would go in different parties. But I like the optimization here because you use an ability on... Uh, uh, Quinn that you don't normally see called Millionaire, which yes. um, gives you not more money because this is one of the only locations in the game where uh, the random encounters are almost, almost welcome in the sense that uh, we expect that we're going to get at least some and uh, our routing uh, accommodates for that experience in AP game. Yeah. Single ogre, let's go. Nice. Well, it's not that there like is an uh, objective best route like it's it's just it's hard to say like so this route has some things that are like immensely optimized but there's also slightly more time spent in menus overall and so it, some of it comes down to preference um yeah the current world record has this route but then like of the next fastest times in the leaderboard i think the next two don't i want to say yeah and so <laughs> and, and like the time differences is like you know we're talking within a minute and a half of an of an you know almost nine hour run so it, it yeah. some of it comes down to preference also um yeah i think at this juncture i think i've learned like eight different routes for this game yeah. and you know they all have things that are beneficial and faster and they also obviously all have concessions that you must make oh, wow yeah to to make the change to to whatever other ones you want to do so um it's hard to say there are some that are more consistent um, mm -hmm. And then there are some that have a higher potential best time, I'll say. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, one of the benchmarks of like a really top level like time in this game is the sub 850. If you if you are able to finish the run in under eight hours and 50 minutes, um, that's generally agreed upon in the community as being like a benchmark of a really great run. I would, um, I would still say not, sub nine is a really great run, but and sub nine, sub nine is is also really good. Like you know, like those we have different benchmarks like gauging like what makes a run like like in the upper percentile. 
Um, sub 850 and sub 9 are probably the ones you'll hear the most often in this community. Um, you can get a sub 9 or a sub 850 on just about any route. Um, some are better optimized, like Mutsky was saying, and have like a lot of like safeties and backups, but um, that's part of what makes this running this game so exciting is that there are some routes that are safer or more optimized than others, but you, if you're a top level runner of the game, you can get a good time no matter what route you're, you're running. Yeah, yeah, you can absolutely run the PC yeah. version also. But uh, I would yeah, say the Brutals PC. here actually has the world record for it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> I was speaking of Brutals and, and sub 850, I actually like Brutals more when you add an 850-21, but <laughs> there's, there's few people that I'd say that about, but Brutals is, uh, is what I'm saying. Um, but as far as the like route differences, the biggest variation is whether or not you fight the optional boss Tantarian. And what I'll say is like Tantarian, because of the time that you're sinking into the fight, obviously takes quite a hit or some consistency, and you can get consistently really good times and really good disc three times with a Tantarian yeah. route. But uh, I, it, you you could conceivably get a new world record with it, but it would be very difficult. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, because Tantarian um, is I, I run a, a Tant route um, created by Mythic Dawn, who is one of the commentators uh, on Next the last time. installment of this. Um, and the trade-off is like Tantarian is an optional boss that takes like three to four minutes to fight, but it can save you time later down the road with an ability called Auto Haste. Um, and it also helps with routing because it gives you a ton of experience yeah, and ability yeah. points fairly early in the game. So it's really just a matter of like making the judgment call of like yep. what is and isn't worth it. Um, but that's why the, uh, this run is so awesome compared to so many other games is agreed. because it, there, there really isn't like one right agreed upon best way to run the game. And honestly, like the routes that people run, even if you run like the route that's from my mildly outdated guide like it's not a bad route right it's not th like Absolutely i said there, not, there's yeah. there's some concessions that you make either way and so the, the run's really interesting because not everybody plays it the same way and obviously across and, different and versions people, it's different too yeah so. mm. even people who run the same route will do some things slightly differently yeah, from for each sure. other it's it's like it's a game that is really dynamic in that way and you know something that's interesting about it is when you think about it because there's no like major glitches uh in the original psx version of the game you're more or less playing the game as it's intended to be played yeah. you're just doing it in a very hyper optimized way and so yeah and how you mm -hmm. micromanage your abilities and your levels and and ap that you get yeah. for those abilities is is really the difference in routing with for, yeah. the mo for the most part obviously some boss fights change but that's largely the, the difference yeah. You know, it, it's it's funny because, like, I think the biggest barrier to entry in running Final Fantasy IX is how long the run is. But we have plenty of members of the community who don't really do runs very often, but they're really into the routing or, like, the tech of the speedrun and, like, playing around with the game and emulator to, like, figure out, like, optimizations for fights. So it's, like, it's, it's a really welcoming community that has a lot of diversity of things you can do within it. Here's a good question. What is something that you all like about this game that casual players might not know or run into throughout their playthrough? The abilities are broken. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. If you're uh, using a physical DPS, many or third killer and all that, that's just this so much damage. Yeah. Yeah. I think speedrunning this game has helped me like really understand like on a deep level the way ATB works in a way that I yeah, never that really sense. understood when I was just a casual like player of Final yeah, Fantasy yeah. games. Like understanding and managing like basically the game clock in battle is um, is an underrated skill to have in uh, this era of Final Fantasies, I think. What about you, Musky? Um, I kind of agree with Brutal's answer. I like, but my mind is that like, I think that they're, okay, this is what I'll say, casually, their abilities that I thought were dumb, that I think are the most, yes. the best abilities in the game, like accuracy plus and mm -hmm. distract, like the way yeah. they're described, it just, they sound like horrible abilities, but distract yeah. is so, so good. And accuracy plus is so fantastic. And neither of them were abilities yeah. I ever used casually. Oh my god! Because the, their descriptions are just not great. <laughs> yeah. Well, Oh, nice quick flick. Yeah, the, <laughs> solid there. the FF8 player in me just came out. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Have you run away from Lunatic Pandora yet, though? 
<laughs> no, thankfully. That's that's <laughs> the worst. Yeah. Uh, no, that one I don't touch flee like until the last attack is like being performed. <laughs> uh, okay, that's fine. Oh, did you need to kill that encounter? Yeah. Uh, I, well, I missed. I, I didn't missed need whether to, you killed but one. I didn't need to. But... Oh, yeah, okay. and so it's fine. It's not a big deal. It'll be fine. Um, so this area that we're entering now is uh, called Oilvert. Uh, and basically, Kuja has sent us here after taking us prisoner and uh, to force us to retrieve an artifact oh called the gosh. Blood Stone. Um, oh my gosh, so much trouble on the party right yeah, now. Yeah, there's a lot of oh, trouble like going stings. on. Also, I didn't save like I was Ooh. planning on. It's okay. I'll think it's safe. Yeah. Maybe save before arc. Yeah. Well, now I'll be yeah. fine. All right. Um, but Oilvert is uh, the gimmick of this dungeon, and um, is that you can't use magic while you're inside. So Kuja sends us to uh, pick up the Gulag Stone for him. Wow. Because in his words, we're too stupid to use magic. <laughs> um, <laughs> wow. So. Uh, that's kind of um, what this party is up to, and we'll get we'll get into what the other party's up to uh, when we flash oh, back to them. Um, yeah, oh yeah, you don't have the explode anymore. Um, just do two swings with Z. Nah, it's fine. I mean, you can eat it too. Yeah. yeah, I'm about to. I'm just gonna eat it. Maybe I eat get it. That, get that macho magic, baby. <laughs> Uh, yeah, those, so those abilities that we were talking about that, uh, so there's the killer abilities, which are like bird killer, devil killer, man eater. They all increase your physical damage to those types of enemies, which there are enumerated of for bird and, and man by 50%. An MP attack increases your damage to, done to them by phys, with physicals also by 50%. And those are, you know, yeah. pretty easy to fall into. Accuracy plus makes it so you, you literally cannot miss, even if you have darkness inflicted on you. So you have a 100% chance of hitting. And distract makes it so that you're very difficult to be hit by physical attacks. So your characters yeah. get missed wow. constantly. This Oilvert's and... being really mean. Yeah, this is yeah, a lot of so encounters far. for Oilvert so far. And then the third one that I really like, in addition to those two, is Steiner's Charge, which I also yes. never used casually. Charge yeah, basically yeah. makes it so that you can get up to four characters to have a turn just on Steiner's turn, which is also like supremely busted for DPS. And these are just all things that I never used in a casual playthrough that I think a lot of casual players don't really consider like how to use them. But we'll, it's very we'll show... scary to have your characters in critical in the end game, though. Isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but that's where distract comes in as super busted. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You'll get to see a whole lot of all of them and learn to appreciate them if you if you never use them. Yeah. You want to see a uh, pie so chart? We're making our way. Oh yeah. <laughs> Uh, as we're making our way through Oilvert here, um, we start to encounter these like holograms uh, that are activated when we run past them, um, and on them are like these diagrams of like weird, uh, a strange-looking planet and this like strange like rune-like text that, for some reason, Zidane is able to understand. Um, and the entire party's a little confused, but we're like learning about uh, another world, basically called uh, Terra, throughout here. I've always really enjoyed this dungeon. I don't enjoy this dungeon when I get this many encounters. Yeah, this is, this is uh, <laughs> a lot of encounters. Yeah. It just means you're gonna get a nice free zero desert palace. Yeah, you know, yeah, right. I wish I could believe that, but like Bomb Bomb got like listen, seven the other day. Listen, I called a draw. We got a draw. All right. And just let the sage speak. We're getting a zero desert, all right? Okay, fine. I will let you speak. <laughs> if I get any more than zero, though, I'm, oh my word. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <This game. laughs> just stop. They are this out is in full force. Yeah, uh, this, is, this is pretty rough. <laughs> well, I think this is actually like five right now. Yeah. This is the type of encounter lock that can really derail a good run. Um, <laughs> and you're when feelings. you're going for PBs. 
And it also makes you just think, like, why am I still here? Why am I still playing this video game six and it's, a half hours it's in? It's two in the morning. I should definitely go to bed. I, I have work tomorrow. Yeah, I have to like... work is the real one. <laughs> I have a zero I'm encounter gonna quote desert Bomb palace Bomb in my and say I'm going to scream. <laughs> I have a zero encounter desert palace in my PB and I am terrified to run against it. <laughs> but that could be just the way the game goes sometimes. Like you can um like if you get good encounter luck, it can really help you uh it, it can really help you like salvage some time on a run that might be like in the red or something, which is why it, this is a game where like, I think I think this is true of all speed runs, but like this is a game where it's really important to finish your runs, especially when you're first starting out. Um, like re resetting in this game is usually really not worth the cost of time and it doesn't really help you get better at it. And like, you know, the, I've seen runs that are like minutes into the red uh, heading out of disc two that like just completely turn around in disc yeah. three. And I've, ha mm -hmm. I, I've even had it happen to me before in, in my own runs, so. Well, disc three is the longest disc, so, yeah. you know, it, it obviously has, you know, more, you know, if you if you leave disc two behind a, a solid chunk, it's, it's very conceivable depending on how good your disc three is in your PB that you could easily swing yeah. it the other way. Yeah. yeah. So I'm more of a I just I'll do the run and if I'm planning on finishing the run I, I won't re like reset or quit for anything. Or if I'm doing like a serious PB attempt I'll finish disc two and if my disc two time sucks then I'll just like right, I'm gonna go yeah. take a take a nap out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <Exactly. laughs> I'm gonna go get some snacks. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna go play some Pokemon. <laughs> Play with my cat, read a book. <laughs> I always get nervous when my mom comes into my chat because she didn't raise a quitter, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, I, I think you've probably all spoken to my mom at least once. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Shout outs to shout outs to Momski. <laughs> shout outs to my mom too. She she is also watching. That's uh, awesome. Hello, Amart's mom. Hello, Amart's mom. She's not. She probably. Is, doesn't really know. She doesn't really know how to use the chat. I think, but she might know. Okay. But if she's listening, and she, it's my mom. My mom likes Star Wars and birds. If you're interested in either of those two things, it could be a budding friendship right here. <laughs> uh, so we just saw another example of uh, something that we talked about in part one that continues to be relevant um, of splitting a screen. Um, you can, uh, on these screens that have, like, multiple exits on them, you can, um, often dip out into the other screen and then dip back in to reset your danger value to, uh, to minimize the risk of your encounter. But obviously, as you can see, uh, from Amart's screen, you can sometimes still get the encounter after the split anyway. As you can see from my screen, still get yeah. the encounter anyway. Did you want to say before, uh... No. Okay. I believe in myself. I believe in you too. I, I believe, believe in, in you too. too. <laughs> I, I, I just recently had a run die to Ark, so I'm nervous, but <laughs> it's okay. Ark is actually a relatively safe fight. Um, it's, it's. Do you uh, not need that gear? Oh, you're saying yeah, yeah. Split screen. Yeah, so, that's um, screen split there. Ark coming up is one of the first slightly threatening bosses in the run. Um, we are fairly well equipped to deal with the abilities that he's got. He's got a, a first one, I think, is called Propeller Wind, that does AoE confusion. It will try and it will spin all of your characters around and try and inflict um, confusion on all of them. By this point, everyone should be equipped with Clear Headed, uh, which stops them from becoming fused. So that essentially is just a free turn for us. Yeah. Um, Photon will do single target damage that takes them all the way down to one, which can be nice healed up easily with an Elixir. Um, Boomerang is when it starts to get dangerous, though, because it will deal quite a lot of physical damage. And if he uh, whirlwinds and then uh, boomerangs, it can actually deal really, really lethal damage sometimes um, due to the way the levitate works. But the uh, the majority of the damage here is going to be coming from uh, Amart, who's going to be... Amart? Sorry, uh, Amarin. <laughs> TBD, he's going to be throwing uh, Silver Forks, which we picked up for the entrance to the dungeon, um, followed up by Zidane Swings. Wow, I can't believe I got that in. Feeling lucky. It may even be a little Ooh, cheeky the steel. silver fork throw. Nice. We need to also just appreciate how 
Like, listen, if there's one thing I can say about the design of Ark, it's that it freaking rules. Yeah, it does, it's yeah. Sweet. <laughs> it is the most Ark heavy a... metal boss in this game. Ark is a reference to an old mech game that, um, uh, what's his name? I'm blanking on the creator of Final Fantasy. It's, it's based the Sakaguchi. That's right. Thank you. Um, it's it's char it's design is based on um, like an old mech game that Sakaguchi worked on before Final Fantasy. I for I'm blanking on the title of that game, but I remember reading about that once and thinking that was a really fun little Easter egg. Um, yeah, this game has a lot of references to earlier Final Fantasies, but it also just has a lot of mm, references in general to like other video games and like literature and theater and movies and everything it's pretty fun to spot all the easter eggs and here comes up by the way just to make sure that you don't actually get finished off so the only situation that's probably going to be could, could have been bad here is that boomerang would have finished off Amarin, but uh, I tried to go for the kill with Amarin. I like it I <laughs> by, uh, and the steel don't miss Freya what have you do <laughs> So Freya That's is the really only character in this fight that actually can miss the boss, yeah. um, which is pretty scary to try to finish the fight with her. <laughs> yeah. But Amart went for the... Amart did also go to, for a steal there um, because uh, he knew that he would be able to finish... Well, he had a pretty good chance of finishing the fight with, a, with an Amaranth or Freya attack. Um, and Zidane... Uh, got to try to steal for uh, the Holy Lance, which is the uh, last weapon that we equip Freya with in the run. Um, mm -hmm. It's not her ultimate weapon in the game, but it's the strongest one that we get in the uh, speed run. Um, so if you're able to steal the Holy Lance from Ark, it's a very rare steal, but if you're able to do it, um, it saves you a lot of gil later on. Um, and it also gives access, uh, Freya access to a really powerful weapon earlier. We, or we uh, just so I actually have healthy. stolen it. Yeah, I was going to say, I have actually stolen it in a row. Um, I run not too long ago, and I went out of my way to actually like include it in the route. Uh, it's yeah. not actually in the notes, but by, 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 oh, by yeah, default right. at all. There's no, there are no notes for it if you because get it. Because Ferreira doesn't really attack anything between now and absolutely. Menu, you can she, yeah. like <laughs> alter your because Amaran isn't supposed to survive on an upcoming fight anyway, where he is somewhat useful. You can actually substitute him out completely to take him all the way down to Melty Gemini. Um, which she can help out with. She can um, hopefully take it down a turn, um, but getting all of the gear onto the right people at the right times, despite this, is a help, is very, very complicated uh, yeah. in comparison. So it's what we do, like Amart said, is we just we just throw it. We have Amor and um, use it as a, as a throwing weapon against um, the Red Dragons. Boss battle coming up later, and then we'll buy a new one um, with the gill that we're expected to get later on. Uh, so here we've got one of the best tracks of the game. I hope everybody enjoys it. And also, <laughs> one of the greatest mini games ever added in the series. Oh yeah. <laughs> you thought Tetra Master was sick. Hedgehog, <laughs> Hedgehog by Red Light Green Light is where it's at. With you may have, uh, you, this you mini may have game, noticed. if you oh, yeah, go ahead. yeah, failing it five times, I think. Uh, means that he, he no longer does a quick turn maneuver, uh, which can be quite difficult to react to. Uh, granted, it will probably catch you out at pattern. some point, most likely. Um, but if you fail five times on, on the sixth and so uh, uh, each try afterwards, he won't be able to turn around instantly and it can make it a lot easier to manage. I just, I can't believe they poached this mini game versus Squid Game. <laughs> of course. Thanks. Dang, Monsky, you Wonderful. Got me. <laughs> Wonderful. Wonderful. You're welcome. FF Man did it first. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Sid is basically uh, trying to turn this hourglass to reverse the. Um, the floor is opening up underneath everybody in their cells. That will drop them into pits of lava because Kuja is savage. And uh, now that the rest of the party is free, we're going to do a, a nice little meanwhile adventure through the desert palace. Do a um, save here. Yeah. So desert palace is 
another killer of runs. Uh, this place can be incredibly mean. Uh, unfortunately, during this section, we do not have Zidane in the party, which means we do not have access to the flea ability. The only way that we can escape fights in that manner is that we need to hold L1 and R1 and try and uh, get a successful <laughs> flea check, which, which is, is completely random. Um, in this case, um, the, there are ways to generate flea checks by using abilities that take quite a long time. So if you see Amart getting into a battle, he may end up just casting Carbuncle with, uh, with Ico. Uh, this is actually somewhat beneficial to later on as well because once we've seen the animation for summoning Carbuncle once, we can't see it again. Um, so if we summon it once during a random battle, we won't have to go through the entire animation during the boss battle. But this section here with lighting the candle and taking this object opposite it is actually a mechanic for the boss. Um, and I didn't know what each of these did, but if we get this promised ring here, we can actually stop uh, Valley of Pira, the boss of the area, actually casting Holy. I believe. I don't know how much damage that one deals, but I, I've, I've never seen him cast it because I've always get it, but I imagine it, it really hurts. <laughs> I imagine that one just really gets you. I'm sure mutsky has been hit by Holy, though. <laughs> no, no, I've never seen it, actually. It was just the way you oh, said really? it. You're just, it's just the way that you're like, I imagine that would really hurt. Like, Holy <laughs> is this, really like, the, the mecca of white magic or something. I don't know. It just made me laugh. <laughs> Yeah, I've never, I've never actually seen it in a run. So. Oh wow, fair enough. At Do least that. I have no rec, no recollection of. of that. <laughs> um, so I don't know how many pickups there are. I think there's five um, different things that you can pick up. We pick up two. Two, yeah. Is it and two? it's funny. We get the if you were room. like, the thing that's interesting with this when we were talking about different routes, the thing that has changed in like every route is what items you pick up on here because it really depends on what party members you take to which location to know which items you you need because they drop down a different defensive stat for the boss that we're going to fight and so if you're going to be doing a a fight that involves a lot of physical attacks you want to lower you know the physical defense but in this we're going to be using primarily vv's magic so we just we just lower the the magic defense obviously and so this actually changes with basically every route iteration interestingly mm -hmm. There's no reason for the promise ring here either anymore because we don't ever do the backup for the rebirth ring either. I think the reason for the promise ring is just maybe you can't reflect it. I think it's just gill because it sells for like 5,000 gill. Hmm. Um, so we'll be getting the promise ring. In this room, Amart's just walked past uh, one that you can activate for shield armor, um, which would uh, reduce the boss's physical defense quite drastically. Yeah. In the route, like Musky was saying before, previous to this one that was popular, MPU, um, we drop physical uh, defense because so, Steiner is the main source of damage by um, essentially putting the boss to sleep, putting Berserk on Steiner and having him go absolutely just, crazy. Just wail on it, yeah. Just go absolutely crazy for as much as he can. Um, yeah, he does like what, 5,000 damage per swing or so? Remember when you said I was getting zero Desert Palace encounters? That was, that was a good. That was a good moment of. Listen, trunk. you got you got a Drac and it was a quick flee, so I don't even. Yeah, don't these even have been alright. <laughs> the test determined that was a lie. And, hey, yeah, until no, until you get it, any enemy that's not a Drac and I don't care. All right. <laughs> oh, not on Steiner. Not on Steiner. Is that on the boy? Oh, it is. Oh, that's on the boy. Yeah, getting encounters in Desert Palace can be pretty rough. So the uh, heat burst uh, status problem. effect is is really, really problematic. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you, can, oh, no. you can Blizzard Steiner? You can Blizzard Steiner? Are you yeah. kidding me? Oh, no. Are what you am I actually done? kidding me? <laughs> um, so this oh, is... Uh, oh, my goodness. This is why we safety save. <laughs> Wow, we she's not uh, good. Uh, he's oh he's my he's free. goodness, he's please free. stop it, game. I really, please. I really hope, I really, if, if it's gonna happen, I hope it happens to a mind blast. All right? Oh, thank God. <laughs> oh my gosh. I've actually, I've actually lost a run in that exact fashion, Mutsky. Uh, it was a bunch of heaps and breezes <laughs> followed by a mind blast. 
Oof. That was, that was exciting. <laughs> I tail it out of here. Was, uh... See you later, friends. <laughs> yep. Uh, that's, uh, that's Desert Palace for you. He's going to say. Wow, oh, yeah. Wee. You know how we were talking earlier about how different routes all have, like, uh, weaknesses and strengths? Every single route, it's Desert Palace is terrifying. <laughs> yeah. It's interesting because you can actually, so there is, there is a decision that you can make coming here. You can decide to either equip Sino with a different selection of hats, all, all different kinds, all different sizes and shapes. But more importantly, one of them gives an ability called Alert, which stops you from being back attacked. Now, you can imagine an encounter like that where they all guarantee to get their, 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 their turn first and be yes. very scary. Or you can take a different hat, which can stop you from becoming uh, heated or frozen, like we just saw. Um, we take the alert one because you're much more hurts. likely to be back attacked than for uh, you know a freeze or a, or, or a heat to actually target yeah. Steiner. Um, but after that happened to me in a run once, and I wasn't quite so lucky, I actually got taken out. Um, yeah. I was on the fence about whether or not I should use the other ability for this section. Oh yeah. yeah. I think everyone can agree Desert Palace just sucks, though. So, like, yeah. 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 I, when we talked I about, enjoy Desert Palace. When we talked about there not being, like, one objectively, you know, best, you know, route necessarily, there's one thing I think everyone agrees on that runs this game. <laughs> it's that Desert Palace yeah. is yeah. actually the worst. Which is a shame because it's actually one of my favorites casually because I just love the aesthetics of it and the music. But yeah, like, and, and yeah. just, like, the During puzzles and cool. stuff are cool. Yeah, and the puzzles are fun. Um, Absolutely. Even the boss is like a really interesting mechanic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It looks like a rock, but it's a bird. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. What are you talking about? He's not a bird. He can't be. He's a rock. Anything that doesn't touch the ground is a bird. Everyone knows that. That's that's science. Yeah. That is yeah. that is the classification that FF9 rolls with, and that's what I think all of biology should adopt too. <laughs> I'm sitting in a desk chair with my feet up on a footrest. I'm a bird because I'm not touching the ground. Sounds like a bird to it's me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you guys never watched The Notebook? Yeah, she it's she literally about birds. She literally just flaps her arms and she's like, I'm a bird. And he's like, well, if you're a bird, I'm a bird. And FF9 was like, you know what? Let's do that. Let's live by that philosophy on all of our be a bird. Yeah. Uh, Sakaguchi is actually a huge Nicholas Sparks fan. <laughs> I believe it. <laughs> I can't mend you because you all are cracking me up. <laughs> is it too much if I say that Sparks and Sakaguchi are birds of a feather? Huh? Yeah? Oh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> someone sh someone please someone please equip bird killer on me <laughs> uh, but yeah jokes aside uh, uh you you there is an ability called stone killer that i guess you could technically use on this boss fight but is largely a use useless ability it, otherwise it, for is he yeah. actually a stone i you know, I just assumed that he would be affected think, by stone, but I don't I know. I can't confirm that. I actually cannot confirm that he is. Well, actually, no, he can't be because if, it was aerodactyl. If, <laughs> if it was a stone, you would be able to kill it with that's, a saw. That's, so exactly that's exactly why I thought that it might not be. <laughs> God, Which imagine is, if you could just kill this boss with a soft. That'd what be if so it just reflected the soft? Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> um, so... Um, this yeah. boss battle is, is, is pretty cool. I like the way that this one's been adapted for this route. So we don't have night anymore, but instead we have the power of reflect. So ideally, it looks like we're going to get in front yeah. of it here with that with the Ico, which is perfect. Um, now we're going to uh, attack ourselves with water. It's going to reflect off of us thanks to Carbuncle's reflectability. And it's going to hit the boss uh, for, is it? I think it is for four times the amount of damage. Yeah. But it, yeah. it does about 6,000 damage coupled with a reflect it's on itself. It's definitely going to be able to kill it in two turns. Yeah. Um, Another thing Amart's doing here that's really important is he's staying in this sub menu while uh, Vivi and Belly of Pyra's spells go off. Um, that freezes ATB from filling up and uh, thus makes it so that reflect will last on every party member long enough uh, to complete the battle. This was yeah, actually so, uh, the, the strat for this fight when I, when I learned this game in 2013. And then when we went back to it, I was really excited. I was like, yeah, I kind of like Yeah, this. it's a cool strat. It's a really fun strat. It's far better than the other strat. 
I just I like it because you don't have to think yeah. about anything. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I personally love Mythic's route where we just throw forks at it. I mean, that's a, that's actually <laughs> that's actually probably the best thing about the route. It's the yeah, only redeeming that's my quality that was the fight that it. made me wanna. I'm just kidding. That, your, that. Route, your route is great. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> this is an FF8. Full you can't face. say that. Throwing forks, crazy. Just yeah. Dishing out the damage. So now that the two uh, dungeons in this subsection have been finished. Um, we're going to be returning to Desert Palace uh, with Dan's party here. Again, uh, we're going to be trekking backwards and forwards over the screen twice more, and uh, we're going to be looking for hopefully one more encounter. Or no, two more. Two more? Did we kill the other ogre? Uh, no, I got to kill one more. Okay. Uh, just to make up the experience and AP and things like that that we want on our, on our cast here. Nice. Are we taking this trance all the way though? That oh, would man. be swell. Sedane's trance bar is quite high. But right I know now. we're gonna Take... I know we're gonna trance on Grimlock, so Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'll, Zidane's I'll gonna get it. put to sleep because you know that's Are you kidding me? Oh my god. <laughs> oh, yeah, two steps. <laughs> Are you kidding me? So this is a, a, a bit of an example of why trance can be so uh, unreliable because trance is actually in a really good position to actually somewhat potentially be useful for the next mini boss and I mean maybe even potentially the next boss if we get incredibly lucky but yeah. you can use it to just uh, instantly kill both red dragons coming up um, but Absolutely. you need to be in a position to actually have that be useful which can be quite difficult because you need specific characters to be alive and so on and so forth that's so we don't really want yeah that's the worst place to move through by the way in this entire game if you're holding a direction when you come out of an encounter as well the game can get confused Ow. and send you in the wrong direction sometimes <laughs> <laughs> which is fun oh yeah poor quinna poor cease yeah, poor me, getting, getting hit by that ogre's big knife. <laughs> I was holding my breath to see if you got a fourth one. <laughs> I honestly was kind of expecting and not gonna lie to you. Yeah. Uh, so we're heading back to the Desert Palace now as the Dane and company. Uh, we've got the Gulag Stone, and we're gonna bring it to Kuja. Um, and, you know, we've all kind of unanimously agreed in the party that Kuja can't be trusted, but we've got to, you know, do what we can to save our friends. Obviously not knowing that they have already broken out and are escaping from Desert Palace themselves. Um, so Zidane's going to run in and uh, deliver on his half of the deal. And um, Kuja's actually going to have, like, uh, body doubles of our party members in the, in the cage to fool Zidane. <laughs> which is a type of magic that he apparently can do that goes completely unexplained by the game, which I think is really funny. Um, but unfortunately, uh, in a moment here, Kuja's actually going to kidnap Aiko. For the second time in the game, she gets kidnapped. Um, you, you know, that's the risky run when you bring a six-year-old on a world-traveling <laughs> adventure, I guess. <laughs> yeah. All things considered, she does pretty well. Yeah. Um, but basically, Kuja is uh, going to kidnap Aiko here in order to um, extract here? her idolins. Yeah, you're still Am here, Mark. Okay. I'm. Yeah, it's fluctuating again, so. Yeah. Just making sure. Yeah. Please bear with us, folks. Um. So Kuja's gonna want to extract Aiko's Eidolons from her uh, in order to use that power to continue his uh, evil plans. Um, and that uh, spurs the rest of the party into chasing him uh, out of the Desert Palace to get back our favorite purple-haired summoner, K-Rob16. Speak, speak, speak for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> so are we gonna get the naming weight card? I hope so. <laughs> Just for me. For you? 
Just for me. Okay. I'll, I'll get it just for you. <laughs> if you get the naming way card, I hope you also get the Kuja room encounter. <laughs> Not. So littered around this game, I don't know how many of these things there are, maybe two or three naming way cards. Um, I think someone actually plays with them. Yeah. Oh, you didn't get it? Oh. Yeah, <laughs> if you pick it up, you. If you pick it up, you can use it in uh, one of the secret locations to change your character's names uh, later on in the game. I don't know if it consumes it. I think you might just have to have one in your inventory. Can't really remember how it works. Um, but other than that, they're somewhat useless. Except for, of course, the uh, the second card tournament coming out. <laughs> <laughs> Where that uh, oh, sand golem card we got is going to be very useful. <laughs> I, uh, it is. Yeah. <laughs> ah, there's the trance. No. So now, oh, unfortunately, yeah. um, Zidane's going to trance here, so we can't, um, so we can't, um, use his flea ability anymore. So we're gonna either have to kill this ogre or uh, flee naturally, whichever comes first. Looks like we're just gonna take the extra ogre kill. Wow. I'm surprised. Yeah, that was actually a, a very nice Hildegard 3 to make up for. It's like the first thing that's gone right in the last, like, Yeah. Four, like... <laughs> I mean, to be fair, all of your boss fights have been pretty good. Yeah, I mean, I guess, fair. I guess except Ark, but... Uh, Even Ark was quite good, really. Yeah, Ark was, Ark was fine, other than the, the under damage that you said, but, like, it's just been a lot of encounters yeah. so far. <laughs> Um, coming up uh, after this next series of cutscenes is going to be the final stutter step of the run, um, which is always kind of nice because we get the longest stutter step when we're heading to the Chocobo tracks um, to get the Chocobo to oil vert, and then we um, get this nice, like, kind of short one on the way to a town called Estogaza. Lovely village. The beautiful mountains. Agreed. Nice solemn music. It's great. Nothing nothing bad happens there. Yeah. Nothing ever bad happens there. There's just <laughs> like this weird it. volcano that's sealed shut that apparently there's like crazy rituals done in it, but nobody seems yeah. to mind. Like <laughs> Yeah, it's, yeah, nice. it's very quaint. Yeah. Don't feel too compelled to, you know, stop around and have a little look. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, if I lived in a village with like 12 other total people and there was like a sealed door on the side of a volcano I would have, or a mountain, I would have some questions. I'd be like, why don't we ever go in here, guys? No, we don't ask those questions, they say. Don't do that, ask those questions. Just, there's no, what door? <laughs> So Kuja is using the Gulag Stone to open up the aforementioned uh, scary volcano mountain ritual room uh, where he and Zorn and Thorn are going to attempt to extract Iko's Eidolons, and we must stop him. So once we get into Estagaza, there's a little shop on the right where we're going to get a couple of bits and pieces. For the next uh, next boss or so, uh, get geared up, ready for uh, basically the next two major fights, and then half of Ibsen's menu. Yeah. Oh and, gosh, uh, we got the Garuda uh, encounter. Here they come. This is a backup these, fight, by the way. These boys are nasty. They'll get you. Yeah, these guys can Especially. cast stop. Oh, there it goes. <laughs> Just Especially time. when they cast stop on Zidane. Oh, oh my. <laughs> Goodness. <laughs> Leave him alone. <laughs> so obviously if Zidane gets stopped here, uh, if you're familiar with Final Fantasy, you'll probably be familiar with stop. It's a status <laughs> that effectively takes the party member out of battle and unable to do anything. Uh, thankfully it's it's curable with a remedy. So we're gonna be able to um, we're gonna be able to flee from the fight. It is possible to lose your run here if you get really unlucky and yeah. get stopped, and then uh, aerial slash is, so, I believe, the attack that really messes people up. 
This is also um, an example of where like ATV weighting is like very essential yes. to managing fights because if you were trying to do a challenge run on active for example and you got into a situation like this yeah. what Amart was actually <laughs> doing was holding um, one of the birds that had already had their turn um, after they'd had their turn and stopping them from having another turn while he yeah. was simply waiting for um, Steiners to come round and use the remedy um, if you were not able to do that, the other bird would then be able to cast stop again before your remedy, before the sedan would even have a chance to cue an ability. So they yeah. could just loop you um, if they kept targeting the same characters it's and really they could make it even when worse. It does that. Yeah, it's <laughs> real bad. So it's very important to hold ATVs um, during that uh, situation just to manage everyone's yeah. actions and such. If you, if yeah. you or any of you are curious, those things that look like birds are also classified as as birds. Thanks, so like they they, they yeah. got they got a couple of them right, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm pretty sure their tail feathers are actually touching the floor, though. So I'm not really sure uh, how that works. Because you know they could actually be standing on them. I'm actually gonna save outside here. <laughs> I got killed by the ghosties fairly recently inside my. Oh, wait, by, by oh, the ghosts so, in the mountains? Those are things yeah. so annoying too. I got. I, I queued up Flea with Z. With Z uh, wow. And as I queued it up, he got hit with heat. And then oh my God. Steiner got hit with freeze on the same turn. <laughs> and it was just a mess. Wow. Everything. It, it, went, it went from zero to 60 really quickly. <laughs> That's really funny. Speaking of a zero to sixty, my encounter count this disc. <laughs> I know. <laughs> True. This has uh, been a rough whoa. disc three. So once we get into the volcano, there's actually surprisingly mm, not the fewer game. monsters for us to deal with. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> We're actually in like the pedestrian that's area. Fine. We haven't even gotten to the aforementioned stone door yet. We found all the monsters in the world. We're just yeah, gonna right. leave Captain Strong there. <laughs> um, part of the reason why it's pretty rare to get encounters inside uh, Mount Gulag in um, the speedrun is because it's it's actually a, a much bigger dungeon than we ever see in the speedrun because like there's like a non-linear like branching paths you can take to like get extra items and fight extra battles and we just don't bother with any of it and go straight to the kind of like mini boss story trigger um, okay we do, we do go get, uh, there's a big pickup gill here, a uh, gill pickup here of almost 10,000 gill, uh, okay. which is important for uh, later shops. Um, and then there's something swooshes by overhead, but I'm sure it's nothing. It might be the biggest, like, straight gill pickup in the entire run, actually. I think you're right. It's yeah. like nine, yeah, nine, six. Is. I think it's, it might be the biggest one in the whole game. Or uh, it's definitely up there. Because I don't think there's any, not to my memory, it's been a long time since I've played this game casually, but there's no, there, there aren't any that like break into 10,000. That's just like Gil lying on the floor. I'm doing some stuff here with the menu. This is going to prepare us for the ne this next fight, which is one of the sketchiest fights in, in basically every route of this game unfortunately like yeah. there's there's some dealing with with when things go poorly but a lot of it uh ultimately will come down to early on is uh turn priority if both of the red yeah. dragons get the turn priority to act first it can be really detrimental if they use twister um, yeah on your, your party it has a really massive damage range um that it can land on all of your characters yeah. This is definitely a fight that um, is pretty challenging um, and can uh, go poorly pretty easily, but thankfully Amart got some pretty good uh, ATBs and was able to get yeah. a Rising Sun throw with uh, Amaran and a Blizzago with uh, VV to uh, take out one dragon before it gets a chance to attack. That significantly reduces the uh, risk of dying if you're able to get out one of the dragons before mm. they do any attacks. Alright, come up um, with Twister. Oh, and it kills Amaranth for you. Great. Nice. 
Uh, Zidane's ability Soul Blade here um, draws a power from uh, whichever weapon he has equipped. It only works with his Thief Swords, and the power attached to this one uh, is Confusion. Um, so he's able to confuse the Red Dragon, which also significantly reduces its chances of uh, screwing you over, but of course it lands its attack against VV anyway. <laughs> There, um, there is uh, some equipment you can buy to make the fight considerably safe. There's an accessory called the the gold choker that it reduces wind damage. But really, like we used to use it in the run solely for this fight, which is, uh, I, yeah. I mean, it's safer, but it's it's you know wasting the a a AP that you could be applying to another ability or, or something else. Yeah, so yeah. It, it obviously has like that give and take to it that it's a little bit safer, but it's it's you know, far less optimized as far as the practical use for what you gain from the, the fight. Yeah. I think one of the draws for it is that um, you, you... Well, the, the strength they gain that Zidane gets yeah. otherwise. <sighs> the MVP, yeah. The, yeah, the power belt. Um, if When you level up in this game, based on the, the stats that you have, um, they factor into how many points you gain per level yeah. up. Yeah. Simply. Um, so by increasing the stats as much as you can, um, you're going to get more points uh, by the time you get to your highest potential. So, uh, by putting the gold joker on him, you miss out on some points of strength. And I think the only time that would ever possibly, like, really make a difference is for the Kraken fight, where, like, you're really trying to meet a specific damage threshold, and you kind of want to squeeze every little bit of power out of your characters that you can. But other than that, yeah. I can't really see it being very, um, very different. The only thing that you'd, you'd have to manage is if you do buy it, then you have to manage the fact that it's in your inventory. You need to manually equip yeah. it, and then you need to make sure it doesn't get stuck in the wrong place or anything like that. Um, but overall, that was actually a really good Red Dragons fight. Um, one thing you may have noticed uh, was that um, before the fight was over, uh, Amart had Zidane kill Vivi, um, and uh, Amarant was also dead. Um, mm -hmm killed by the red dragon which was actually pretty lucky yeah um, that was but, really lucky <laughs> yeah because you want um you want only at least on this route you only want uh quinna uh, wow quinna sorry i'm thinking of uh, i'm thinking someone's of mythic's route um, <laughs> someone's been running a tantarian night route um but i uh, so in this route you want only zidane and steiner to survive that fight to uh, maximize the amount of experience that they get um, the experience in this game is split between uh, all of the surviving party members of each fight. Um, so by taking VV and Imran out, it gives a nice Thank you boost. for everything. You're so welcome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Crop 16 uh, Twitch page still exists, by the way. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, yeah, I never... I didn't, like, no change way. my username. I just made a different Twitch, yeah. I'm so, going to go follow it now. Right you now. can. It, it says that I'm going to be racing Emma and Link to the Past. And it, uh, Blake has been waiting for this race for, like, four years now. <laughs> the match of the century. <laughs> so this upcoming boss battle... Well, not this one. This one's autopilot. But the one shortly after against Naughty Gemini, uh, we finally get to defeat Zorn and Thorn in this uh, encounter. He has a fairly large health pool, um, but fortunately Steiner has been given everything he needs to deal absolutely ridiculous amounts of damage, considering yeah. where we are. Um, it's almost impossible for Steiner to go down early. I don't. I, in, in the PC runnings I've had, I have had a turn one wing just completely delete him. Um, that has never happened to me in PlayStation. I'm not sure if that's a, a version-specific thing. Um, but in PlayStation, it's pretty much just as long as Steiner is relatively healthy, keep him topped up if anything does go wrong, and just swing because he yeah. will deal crazy amounts of damage. Um, he will also use an ability called Viral Smoke here, uh, which completely stops you from gaining any AP. It, well, it inflicts zombie more specifically, um, and Zombie is a status ailment that stops you from gaining XP and AP at the same time. So oh. during this boss battle, it is not expected for you to gain any ability points for the equipment that you're wearing. Um, because of that, if anything did go wrong in any previous fights, what we can <laughs> do is in the previous shop, we can pick up some magic tags, which we can use to cure the status ailment and, you know, rectify any changes that we may have, uh, yeah. 
messed up one previously. Yeah. Uh, so right here, uh, Zorn and Thorn try to perform the same extraction on Iko that they did to Garnet to get her Eidolons, but it doesn't work because uh, the Moogle that's been um, hanging out with Iko the entire time uh, kind of protects her from the extraction. Um, and it's quickly revealed that Mog uh, is actually an Eidolon uh, herself, um, which Iko summons in that uh, auto-scripted battle against Zorn and Thorn. Uh, it's the Eidolon Medine, um, and she basically deletes them. Uh, it's very satisfying because Zorn and Thorn are a thorn in our side from the beginning of the game. Is Zorn um, and Thorn in our side? A Zorn and Thorn in our side, if you will. And now they morph together into this just lovely looking creature called Melty Gemini. It's not a bird. Um, it's a shame. <laughs> It's not a bird, unfortunately. Yeah. Can I think, what does it have? Like 20, 24, 378 or something? 24, like 348. 348. Yeah. Right. I, I knew it was something. Ah. This boss is also very fast. Uh, its speed value is very high, so this is yeah. a, a fight that's going to be really important to like be on top of getting the inputs in quickly. Um, but the strat itself is fairly simple. It's just uh, attacks with Zidane and uh, Steiner and throwing Rising Suns with Amaranth. Um, and as Brutal's mentioned before, Steiner is quite beefy on this fight um, and does a lot of pretty significant damage. It's worth noting that Amaranth, uh, his throw animation is actually somewhat slow, so if you can avoid using them during the encounter, then you can pretty much just result in fighting with Steiner and Sedan for the most part. Uh, both Sedan and Amaran uh, and, and Steiner are equipped with the antibody ability, which stops us from becoming. Uh, which that sound is it? it? Completely stops mm -hmm. venom. Venom, that's the one. Yeah. Um, and and poison, but venom is kind of the more annoying one on this fight because it takes yeah. you out of commission. Yep, double kill. So, killer. All right. Devil nice killer fight. is is an ability that we we start to use pretty pretty heavily towards the end of the game, especially during Disc 4. Um, I think this is the first time that we use a Devil Killer. Yeah, I think this is the first one that I can think of offhand. Yeah. I think it, I think we'll use, yeah. it, we'll use yeah. it again for Earth Guardian in this disc, and then we'll finally use it again for the, the majority of Disc 4. Yeah, we we'll use it for quite a bit of Disc 4. Yeah, Devil Killer is another ability that's very, very important. Uh, so with Zorn and Thor dispatched of, uh, Kuja flees um, from Mount Gulag, and we're able to reunite with the Black Mages that he uh, took in, who have all become kind of privy to the fact that uh, they're, he was using them uh, to do evil. Um, and we finally reunite with Sid's, uh, Sid's estranged wife, Hilda. Um, and we're able to recover the airship that she... Um, ran away from Lindblum in, um, which was designed by human Sid, so it actually works and runs without mist. Um, and we're gonna go back to Lindblum, and our 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 froggy boy here is gonna be, grow up to be a froggy man um, because so he sad. promises. <laughs> I know it's it really is it really is a dark conclusion for a beloved character. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, my favorite, my favorite thing that happens here is that uh, we basically learn the rest of Kuja's plot um, through Hilda because Kuja basically took her hostage and, uh, to quote her, just like wouldn't shut up about his evil plan. <laughs> <laughs> so he just monologued at her. Um, we're actually about to come up on quite a long stretch of just cutscenes yep. uh, that we can fill in the plot later. So if there are any announcements or anything, that would be a great time for that. For sure. Um, well, I want to let everyone know that uh, there is a GDQ Sum of Best Segments highlight channel on YouTube now. And uh, it's a highlight channel with uh, small highlight reels from all of our main events. And that includes a uh, hotfix. You can use exclamation mark highlights in the Twitch chat to learn more about that. Um, also, AGDQ 2022 online is coming up January 9th through the 16th. 
You can visit gamesdonequake.com for more information and detailed dates on that event, uh, as well as Frost Fatales 2022, which will take place February 27th to March 5th. The schedule is out for that now, and you can go to gamesdonequake.com slash framefatales for more information. I hope everyone's having a, a good time so far. <laughs> yeah, yeah, thank you. It's been great. Other than this three just being really mean, <laughs> I'm having a good time. <laughs> I could I could sit here and talk about this game all day, every day. I love it so much. Mm -hmm. yeah, this three has been a little bit sassy. Yeah, it's, been, it's, it's had some spice to it's it. A, yeah, <laughs> it's had a little flavor to that. Emerald Bam did a little bit. <laughs> These elevator boss. I did not really expect that joke. <laughs> hey, see, someone actually brought up something that you could address if you would like. Someone asked about the yeah. focus ability, and I mentioned that it's used in Tantarian. Oh yeah. If you yeah. So the those. the optional boss that we um, talked about uh, a little while ago, Tantarian, um, is. One of the benefits of fighting it that we talked about before is it gives you an ability called, or it gives you an item that teaches you the ability auto haste, which can save time in some boss fights. And there's actually two different times that you can fight the boss in the game. Once is on disc three uh, during the attack on Alexandria. Um, and the other time is on disc two when you're returning to the castle to save Dagger from being executed. Um, and the strat for the disc two fight is because VV is in your party, you use the focus ability to raise his um, raise his magic stat really, really high uh, to its maximum. You can focus up to five times. Uh, so the strat for the fight is to um, get the book open using a Steiner ability called Minus Strike. Um, and then once the book is open using VV's fire magic, uh, boosted all the way um, to infinity, basically to just uh, make quick work of it. Um, other than that, there uh, we there's no real use for focus uh, in any of the fights, but if you are running a disc two Tantarian route in this game, uh, it is essential. I do I do want to chime in really quick. So one of the big reasons why I love the, to use turbo is because it kind of encourages you to take breaks throughout the run. Um, this section right here, is a huge break. It's like a nine and a yeah. half minute section of just dialogue. So like, usually during this time I go off and like make a like quick snack or like get some water or like go use the restroom and stuff, stretch out all that. So I'm actually gonna do that right now. Um, if y'all want to keep talking, that's perfectly fine. But I'm gonna go and take yeah. a break. Oh, we so. talk about you. Yep, feel free. Right. Yeah, please. <laughs> we talk just talk about. about wait, wait for him to be gone. All right. Uh, it's now. okay. I, I like to know, I like to talk about him behind his back to his face. <laughs> <laughs> uh, isn't Amar great? I love that guy. <laughs> He's certainly better great. than Brutals. <laughs> wow, we, you know I, I could feel that one coming. I don't even know why. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't mean it at all. <laughs> it's okay. I know you do, and that's fine. I, it, I, it will. There, see, Mythic actually started playing Final Fantasy XII, so he kind of fell off my, you know, speedrunners. <laughs> speedrunners are respect list. Is that how I squeezed onto your, uh, your, your, your Twitch channel? Yeah, did you, did you see that? You're on, you're on my, <laughs> yeah. my top five most watched channels this year. Wow. Um, I couldn't believe it. Uh, me neither. Me neither. <laughs> but you know what? It's because I'm in that chat all the time, just making it a good time for everybody else. I'm storing my doglets, you know. Keeping Raising the stream quality tenfold. Yeah, of course, of course. No, you, you, just, tell, you, just, we, uh, you just always stream yeah. at musky friendly times. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, I, I was flattered, but now I'm not. But now you're just sort of there. Yeah. Yeah. Just... <laughs> um, as you can tell, we... Uh, we're a pretty close knit community. I like I like everyone that I've met through FF9. So if you're interested in joining in our shenanigans, you should uh, check out speedrun.com/ff9. There's a lot of resources for learning this game, as well as links to uh, the Discord and servers where you can come and hang out with us and right, talk about so the game. And for every time y'all talked about me over the last like. 
Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Two minutes. <laughs> 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 Dang, we should have talked about you a lot more. Second, <laughs> every time y'all talked about me, I'm actually not. <laughs> oh yeah, hit us with it. <laughs> I could, however. <laughs> no, I can't. I, can't. I could guarantee that pretty much if anyone did join in the community and got involved and started running this game, you would definitely have a number of us lurking in your channel. Quickly. M Mutt and I are gonna start singing eyes on me real quick along with Richard if Richard isn't around. <laughs> His favorite. <laughs> uh so yeah, if anybody has any any questions about the run, um even from like part one, feel free to like feel free to um feel free to ask. Um, yeah, we're definitely glad. To... I know. What's up? Sorry, go ahead. I was gonna say I know a lot of people are confused about like what turbo means. Okay, Maybe you yeah, could just can... kind of re-explain the category. Yeah, for I can explain that. So actually, right now, I'm playing on a on a turbo controller. It's called a it's called a Kiwami. Um, and basically, what it does is you just set it to you basically just use this turbo button that's kind of like in the middle, and you tap like one of the like one of the buttons around on the like the either the square like the square circle triangle x or like the d-pad or like l1 r1 r2 l2 etc you can actually have it auto fire the inputs for you and that's actually what we do that's what turbo is basically is um you could do that or you could just have it like for example here i'll stop turbo really quick so you could also like just set it to like not do auto fire and you can just hold the button down if you want. Um, but typically I'll just I'll just leave it on auto fire when we're when we're looking at um, like long section of the dialogue. So that's that's what the purpose of turbo is and we do have a turbo leaderboard separate from the non turbo leaderboard which I like to run with just because it preserves my hands and um, I run other games that don't have turbo options. So I like to keep fresh for those games. I would love for them to be, for there to be turbo options in those games, but um, until then we just, uh, yeah, just have to play non-turbo, so. Yeah. Oh no. <laughs> I think it sounds like we might have lost Amar. Oh Name no. no. Oh no. <laughs> okay, everybody, we are going to take just a quick little break and we'll be right back. All right, everybody, thank you so much for your patience. Welcome back to Time Capsule. Uh, had a few technical difficulties, but we are back. Amart is back. Hi. And, uh, we <laughs> yeah, hi. and I think we are ready to resume uh, Final Fantasy IX. I think we are, too. All right. So I'm going to start the hey, I'm just, auto fire I'm again. Just yeah, I'm just glad that we we left off on haircut about to get her. Oh haircut. yeah, like the, we just the wanted autonomous haircut. Yeah, we just we just wanted you all to have to earn it. All right. Yeah, you've been waiting for haircuts. Uh, I, haircut. Yeah. I, I love this moment in the game because uh, Dagger gets what I like to call a character development haircut, <laughs> where she she's uh, kind of angsty and upset about Alexandria being destroyed and all the pressure on her for a while, then she just gets the idea to cut her hair real short, and then she's better. I love it. Listen, because, like, after, who, hasn't, who hasn't been there? After <laughs> after all of everyone's, you know, lockdown self haircuts, I think that, like, every, this scene yeah. just really hits home. <laughs> I kind of I need a, a haircut right now, I'm not going to lie. Yeah. 
it's like... Bomb Bomb likes to say that it's tradition uh, if you're running this game and you're on world record pace at this part, you have to cut your hair. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. I saw him do it. <laughs> I wish I could cut check, my hair that bullet. simply, though. That's we like to call we like to call head. this whole scene a metaphor in the in the game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we're definitely getting heat on Taharka, and we're definitely stealing the Ori, so... <laughs> with all the oh, bad yeah, luck with the network and the disc three, we're definitely yeah. getting those two things. Yeah, it's... what we didn't count on was getting real-life bad yeah, RNG, you know. but it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Um, so, now that we are uh, back with the airship, Sid is a human again, uh, and the party is all uh, ready to go fight Kuja, um, and stop him from doing his evil plan that he told Hilda all about, uh, which we'll get into in a bit as it becomes more relevant, uh, but basically he's trying to bridge a connection between Gaia and another planet called Terra, um, and we have to go to, uh, a place called Ipsen's Castle, um, to pick up four elemental mirrors to open up four shrines on Gaia that will help open the portal to Terra for us to follow Kuja in. Um, so first stop is Ibsen's castle to pick up the elemental mirrors. And uh, like some of the other dungeons, this one has a bit of a gimmick to it where uh, the, as you can see, it's like a castle with like, there's a castle on top and then like an upside down castle underneath it. Um, kind of hinting at like the fact that things are a little bit opposite here and uh, Characters with weaker weapons will be doing more physical damage in this yeah. uh, dungeon. This is my favorite now, dungeon the in the game. Yeah, I love it. The funny part about that is that this this uh, convention in the dungeon doesn't actually really mean anything to us in the speedrun because we uh, don't do any physical attacks on the next boss, not ones that are intended to deal um, high amounts of damage anyway. Um, mm -hmm. But we'll get to that in a minute. For now, Amaranth has to be an angsty boy and run off. If you're running this on non-turbo, um, you could choose the second option there. It saves you two seconds, but I just let it auto fire. So. So the the gameplay gimmick with this dungeon in particular, only really relevant for casual playthroughs, is that um, weapons with lower attack powers deal more damage versus um, ones with higher attack powers. So. If, for example, if you've still got access to your basic equipment, so like the dagger, the broadsword, uh, the cat's claws, things like that, you'll actually be able to deal more damage um, with your basic attack. Um, and if you don't have them, this castle gives them all to you as kind of like a nudge that, you know, you yeah, should consider like, hey, equipping them. <laughs> they, they, they throw the base equipment at you for all the characters to kind of hint at and really give the, the player a fair chance of figuring out the game. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Uh, the, the game uses a lot of um, a lot of stuff like that to um, kind of hint at for you what um, what you should be doing for an upcoming boss fight or something, um, like the chest that contains an elixir right before Soul Cage, for example. Um, it really does, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's kind of uh, it's kind of neat to think about when you like analyze it. Um, Hmm? Oh, did we lose Brutals now? <laughs> oh no. Oh no. The curse. <laughs> the curse continues across the Atlantic Ocean. Um, oh no. The boss that's coming up, uh, I'll, t I'll take it from where Brutals left yeah. off, I guess. <laughs> uh, the boss that's coming up is uh, called Taharka, and um, there is... There's a couple of different things that we're going to be doing in this fight. Um, it's a relatively safe fight, but can be kind of hard to get like your turn order correctly when you're first learning it. Um, Steiner is equipped with a weapon called the Flame Saber, and uh, he will also have an ability called Add Status that um, adds the status effect of whichever uh, weapon the character is wielding to, um, to their physical attacks. 
And the Flame Saber has the status of heat attached to it, which means um, it has a chance of inflicting the heat status when Steiner attacks to Harko, uh, which instantly kills the target if they take an action while under the heat status. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what the percentage is of whether or not Steiner gets uh, heat off. It's ten yeah, percent. Yeah. Okay. Um, it's a ten percent chance on each um, on each attack that yeah. heat takes. So we also set up Zidane to have the weapon called the Rune Tooth, which, using the Soul Blade ability, can inflict poison on Taharka. Uh, and finally, we round out the damage with VV casting Fire Aga on Taharka. Also, so it's kind of an interesting, yeah. like, dynamic it's a um, cool fight. boss fight. Yeah, it also it's, has it's, a it's rare a steel that's called the Orichalcron that's uh, Zidane's... The final, really, like, one of the main weapons we'll use for a large chunk of the remainder of the run um, that you can actually steal from them and save it 17,500 gil and also make the next boss fight considerably faster. So these are the four elemental mirrors that we're here to collect. And um, basically Amaranth uh, outside the castle was like, I'll bet I can get them better than you because I know better than you today or faster than you. Uh, and we get there and he's already in the room. Um, and basically says, you can have the mirrors. I don't care. I just wanted to prove a point. And he kind of uh, skips away. <laughs> um, and before we can follow him out of the castle, we're gonna have to fight Taharka real fast and uh, using those strategies that we were talking about before. Um, it would be super hype to see if we get a first turn heat here. Um, let's cross our fingers and hope it happens. It's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. No, let's cross our fingers and wait for it no, to don't happen. Don't worry about crossing definitely your fingers. Does happen. It's gonna happen. <laughs> All right, heat, Ori heat. Let's see it, baby. Ori heat. Let's do go it. For it. <laughs> Just go for it, man. Crossing oh, that's toes. good ATV. All right, well, you know, you win some, you lose some. Yeah, that's all right. <laughs> so it's really important on this fight to wait uh, to get your inputs in to see what happens. Um, because if you inflict heat on Taharka, you don't want to waste time with Zidane casting Soul Blade and Vivi casting Fire Aga because they're long animations, especially Fire Aga. So it just delays the fight uh, ending sooner. Um, and it's just another example of, we were talking about this a, l a little bit in part one of like, it's not necessarily always about, like it's important to get your inputs in fast in this game, you know, to outspeed the boss and make sure that they don't, um, make sure that they don't get an extra turn on you. But it's also important, it's equally important to wait to see what happens as a result of your or the enemy's actions before taking uh, further actions yourself. He's gonna go for a steal attempt here to see if he can get the Orichalcum. He, he is going to get it. All right, yes, well, he's going to get it. Uh, All right, well. <laughs> <laughs> Not even the pity elixir. <laughs> Not even the mithril claws. Uh, <laughs> just nothing. I wish the Harker would have been nice to me tonight. Yeah. But that was a really good example of uh, how to execute that fight without heat taking, so yeah. good job. All right. My knees are going to start getting real good, by the way. Oh yeah, yeah. The menus from this point forward are uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of good ones, a lot of smooth menuing that you'll see. Hopefully smooth. <laughs> <laughs> we'll try we'll try not to make you laugh during any of the big ones. <laughs> we'll we'll workshop our type five another time. <laughs> yeah, I know. I I saw what that did to you on uh, the Valley of Pira menu, which only has like yeah. it only has like three steps to it. So <laughs> we'll have to dial it back. <laughs> uh, so we're just gonna head out of uh, Ibsen's castle here. Might get an encounter or two. Oh, there it is. <laughs> Sorry, Amar, I cursed yeah, you. you did. <laughs> when you do, so you do. I was, I was uh, recollecting with a friend about this this area as well. And uh, in a moment, when we get outside, we're going to do a menu. Before uh, we actually get to leave Ibsen's castle, we have to go back in and look for Amaranth. 
And during this time, for a brief period, and I mean a very brief period, Zidane is completely on his own. Yes. Now, one thing the devs were very kind to do was to stop the veteran enemies, which are the floating eyeballs, from hitting you with Mind Blaster and confusing you off the bat, or is it stunning you, or whatever it's called, stopping you, um, which could completely take you out of combat and essentially just, you know, kill you in one hit, um, which is somewhat blaster. unfair. Yeah, Blaster, that's the one. And, uh, but what can happen in the speed run is that the Cerberus, the, the, the dog enemies, as good boys as they are, they can just crit you. <laughs> and if they crit you, you just die. Yeah. <laughs> you two just go straight down. And uh, this is particularly funny for me because I, I remember when Amar was telling me in one of his streams one day that Cerberus, are, you know, can, they can crit you and they can be lethal in a heartbeat. And I was like, no, 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 don't be silly. Yep. They're just yep. big fluffy yep. woofers. And then the next day, I died to one straight away. Yep. <laughs> I I remember I was watching at both of those moments. I was in a Mark stream when he was saying they could be dangerous, and then in yours when you died to one. And I was like, wow, that was literally FF9 in real life. <laughs> <laughs> or, did you, or like, did you put the, level up on Steiner? No, I didn't. Okay. Steiner's at 27. All uh, right, right, right. I just saw nice. that you looked at his abilities and then moved over. I yeah, I thought about it, and I was like, Steiner's level 27. I'd rather not risk 30. Yeah. I'd rather Steiner be 28. Mm. Or 29. Well, hopefully 29. So the reason why Amart is a uh, slightly higher level than usual here is because of the encounters that he killed so we've, during we've Desert killed Hearts. a million things in this day. <laughs> yeah. We killed a couple things. <laughs> we killed a um, couple things. <laughs> this isn't usually something that you have to consider. Normally, you just have to put level up on Steiner here to make sure that he gets a good amount of experience during the Yanar sequence coming up shortly, um, just to guarantee that he's they've got the highest health pool possible for death guys, really. Um, but if you're really meticulous with your experience, you can count and track everything that they gain and know exactly where they're going to be and whatnot, yeah. but you can uh, keep rough guidelines of where you should be for the most part of the game. Um, I don't have this down as 27. I've got some notes that tell me how much I shouldn't or should kill and things like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's like 4,300 really... in Desert Palace, but yeah. yeah. I don't know why. Actually, it's... you're supposed to skip the Iron Helm. I just did it because of muscle memory. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It shouldn't matter, like, whether or not you wear it. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just like, uh, yeah, it's just on there. Basically serving no purpose is all. That's all. And, and he's not doing anything. Yeah, so Reg is not doing a, bad. A level that is not a multiple of five. Because there yeah. are some bosses later in the run that use. Oh, my word. I was going to wow. get that anyway, but still, we yeah. that movement wasn't great. But. <laughs> uh, oh, my word. Oh, and yeah, it's a back attack. That's good. Oh, oh yeah. good. So, oh, good. yeah, like Amart was saying, some of the later bosses will cast level 5 death, which hits uh, party members of level uh, of, of 10 or 5. So 30, 40, 35, 45, those sorts of numbers. Uh, um, this has been a 5 encounter this instance. Is, yeah, this is five, 5 encounters. This sounds like pretty bad. This is like my average, so. <laughs> <laughs> Every runner's got that one dungeon that just has it out yeah, for them. Let's is, geese a Zipson's yeah, castle. My, <laughs> today, have been so today bad. for me, it's just every dungeon. <laughs> yeah, it's the entirety of disc three for you today. Jeez. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Are you serious? <laughs> on this screen? Wow. Baby, Final get hyped and say Dude. stay Mayo up in here. <laughs> a six it another encounter back attack? It's another back another attack. Another back attack. <laughs> My word. Wow. That's rough. <sighs> oh, jeez. And of course, uh... When you're when you're back attacked, you take more damage. Um, so it's like get, getting back attacks can be really dangerous. And in, in, 
in addition to taking forever. Because basically, like, oh, yeah, when you okay. get an encounter in this game, every time you get an, a random encounter in this game, that's at least 30 seconds, like, that are just gone. Um, and then depending on whether or not the enemy gets an attack in, it's just adding to that 30 seconds. And when you get back attacked, you're guaranteed for the enemy to get at least one attack. Um, and maybe more if, if you know, uh, a back attack kills the day and you can't flee right away or something. It just adds up really fast yeah. and go bad. Just really mean. Game just being mean. <laughs> You know, thankfully we make it out of that one without uh without too much trouble and we're back on the ship about to head uh this is going to be a nice little tribute to the original final fantasy four fiends um as taharka died it gave us a hint that we figured out means we have to go to all four of these elemental shrines and defeat their guardians simultaneously um so we're going to go on a little road trip dropping everybody off at the different shrines um, before we go fight the Earth Guardian with a party of Zidane and Quinna. So I believe the reason why these bosses aren't playable with the rest of the characters is purely because they run out of space on the CDs. Like yeah, I believe so. Yeah. It, it would have like been really interesting, me. like, <laughs> imagine, like, speedrunning this game and having to route around the fact that you have to do a battle that's just Ico and Garnet. Oh that would be God. wild. Dude, it would be... I, it, I it don't would even be... think that would be doable. For a I think, player. well, you would basically, I think we would just do, the, I think we would basically just cast Carbuncle and just let it self and yeah. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. What if it, because it's cracking, right? What if it absorbs? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's a great... Question. Yeah. <laughs> uh, or I imagine, I imagine the other thing that would would be a thing would be just like real, finding one idolin that would be able to hard yeah. carry. <laughs> I think would be the yeah. answer. Yeah. I, there, I, I, I think it would doubtless, doubtlessly be we, an insanely long fight. We would, yeah, we would have to get Ramua from the from uh, Pinnacle. Oh Rose. yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Cast the, thunder damage on Kraken. But just imagine having one of those runs where you get there and you have like level four garnet. <laughs> like, <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Um, so there's a question in chat about what is PSX. Uh, the funny thing about Final Fantasy IX and um, actually all three of the PlayStation 1 era Final Fantasies as speedruns is that although they are PlayStation 1 games, it's the fastest to run them on a PlayStation 2 as far as load times go. Um, so that leaves us in a position where like saying that the platform of the speedrun is PlayStation 1 is not necessarily accurate, but also saying that it's a PS2 is misleading because it's a... Um, a PlayStation 1 game, so we use the phrase PSX just to, as a all-encompassing phrase. Yeah. I'm running this on a PlayStation 2 90,000 model. A slim baby. Yeah. It's got a nice, uh, you know, matte, matte black top, oh, but yeah. then it has a nice little glossy. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, I need sliver plastic thing. I got mine right on the right on the desk next to me. I need to clean mine <laughs> actually. <laughs> I should have done that before this, but that's all right. Someone just said the nicest thing anyone's ever told me. <laughs> yeah. What's that? It says hey, Mutz, at Mutzki, hope you never stop speedrunning and commenting Final Fantasy. That's right, and literally till Aww. to the grave. I also, I mean, Aww. I also feel that way too. But. <laughs> I'll think same But I'd never say it to your face. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I hope Brutal does. I'm just kidding. I, there is, listen, the best day of 2022 is going to be the day that I rebuff Brutals in this game. <laughs> I can't wait. Uh, Bru probably on his birthday or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Brutals versus Mutsky is my favorite rivalry in the FF9 scene right now. <laughs> 
don't even know who my like rival is. Nobody wants to be my rival. No, well, I wouldn't I'll say, be your rival. I wouldn't say I'll, Brutus I'll is worth I'm sure that's not make, true. I'll make Bomb Bomb my <laughs> rival, even though Bomb Bomb retired. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this fight here, we have, like, we have a loving rivalry. Though. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's it's more of a it's more of a frenemies situation, maybe. <laughs> 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 oh, so this boss fight, Earth Guardian, is uh, kind of a kind of a tricky devil, but we're able to. Um, the strat here is basically just to use Zidane to inflict physical damage on Earth Guardian, and then uh, once... We haven't really talked about Quinna's eat ability yet, because it hasn't really been relevant to this route, but uh, Quinna I can eat to... enemies and absorb their like special abilities and learn it as <laughs> blue magic. Um, and the enemy has to be under 25% of their total HP. Uh, in order for it to work. So the fastest way to get through this battle is to inflict that much HP or damage with Zidane's physical attacks and then use Quinta to eat. Um, 15, and it's, uh, it's Quinta's shining moment in the run. <laughs> and that's the one thing, if, if you were like, can, like wondering what Quinta's trance ability is, it allows it to eat enemies under 50% instead of 25%. So it, oh, that's not yeah. Reduces oh. the amount of damage you need uh, to do. Oh, oh no. that is the unfortunate. That is really <laughs> unlucky. So for the majority of this fight, we're tooled up in a way where not really much can actually destroy our party. But this Viraga on anyone is going to be yeah, pretty, pretty bad. bad. Viraga yeah, is pretty much the only spell you never want to see. Yeah. So hopefully um, he uses a Earth uh, Shake soon as he's. So, uh, Earth Guardian doesn't have any AoE abilities other than Earthshake, and both of our party members are told to absorb Earth. So it's actually, in a way, the best thing that he can do. Uh, next to that, obviously, is his double slash, uh, for two reasons. Uh, one, with Quinna being on the back row and defending, he should take minimal damage. Um, Oof. And the double if, slash. If it targets the Dan, he should be equipped with uh, counter at this point in the game. And you have a chance to actually get an entire extra turn. Seriously, yeah. game? Yeah. Please. Oh my gosh. <laughs> this is just this is just marathon oh, no. one right here. The only thing getting, you don't want to get knocked out fight. three turns. Yeah. Is that exactly this that? This is ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. The Earthshake's good. He's back in full HP. Let's go. Yeah. Thankfully, the Earthshake comes through and. Uh, yeah, this is another fight that's really important to count damage on, um, Amar, uh, with his beefy calculator, uh, because you don't want to use Quinnus' eat ability before you know that it's going to work, because that's just a wasted turn. Um, thankfully, that was, a, that was a bit of a scuffed fight, but uh, Amar was able to make it through. <laughs> It's, a, it's usually six attacks from Zidane. Taking this uh, disc out of my console after we're done, I'm <laughs> chucking it in the street. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this has been a pretty rough disc three overall. Oh, but, another yeah. sealed copy. We're starting over. We're starting <laughs> fresh. Oh, man. I've definitely That's retired li copies of this game. <laughs> no, I wouldn't <laughs> chuck it in the street, but I would probably store it somewhere. I, I have I have copies of this game that I have drawn like a an X on the, the front cover and I'm like, I'm not running with this That's one so ever funny. again. <laughs> That's really funny. I, I, I started, what I originally did was after every bad run death, I would put the date, I would write the date on the on the case and then I would put what <laughs> happened and then I would just like, when I would do a run, I would try to pick which one was, oh was behaving gosh. the most I love friendly. that. Yeah. Dang, I should start doing that. <laughs> FF9 runners are a superstitious bunch. How many copies you, does everyone have? Uh, dude, didn't you ever I see have. my... Didn't you ever Five, see I my... Uh, Hold on a second. Let me... Let me grab this really quick. It's right next to me, so... Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, I technically have three three American copies. My Black Label one, when I booted up at the very beginning against Mass Man, um, my party doesn't load in. Uh, yeah, that's so right. I can't play on that copy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't 
don't know, but I have enough that I made that pentagram meme where I was thumbing RNG, yeah. <laughs> where I had a copy of FF9 at every part of the, this, the pentagram. This box is just full of copies of Final Fantasy IX. Oh and some my of they, they, it's one of the. It's it's interestingly one of the few few games that that Square still produces copies of for the PS1 of the Greatest Hits edition. So yeah. they're they're really yeah. easy to get if you live in the states, uh, yeah. and they're not expensive. So. Most runners in North America probably have quite a few because they're not expensive and they're not hard to get. I probably have what, like eight or so, I guess. What I would say is wait till they go on sale because they do go on yeah. sale a bit and like you can get copies for like eight bucks. Yeah, the Square yeah. the Square store will sell them really cheap and you can just get, you know, several but, of them and not worry about it. But wait, but wait for them to be on sale because shipping is quite a bit from Square that's, Enix. Yeah, that's where yeah. They, they get you, so you need to actually buy multiple. Yeah, usually I buy like five to six at a time. Do you collect so many just because of collecting, or is it like in case something goes wrong with the just disc, then you have a backup? The, just yeah. in case they break down. Nine okay, cases yeah. are kind of known to ruin discs. Yeah, so. they don't hold up <laughs> as well as they should honestly yeah okay yeah but yeah there's like so. i don't know i have like a video where i got like a package from amazon and i was complaining about people hoarding all the toilet paper and i the video is just me opening his package and dumping out like four <laughs> copies of ff9 <laughs> <laughs> like hoarders are the worst <laughs> i remember that yeah yeah you can still get brand new copies of this game and yeah, but they're, they're and, not seven or eight, unfortunately. Yeah, it's only nine. <laughs> you can also get the like um, FF1, FF2 combo PS1 version, and the mm -hmm. FF5, FF6 um, anthology combo also. You can still get um, Final Fantasy X. You can still get Final Fantasy X, two, 12. You can get. Yeah. Um, Wait, Final Fantasy X had a sequel. I've never heard of this game. That's yeah, so it did. <laughs> it did. It's your favorite game. I've almost finished a run of it now. I, I can't believe we actually agree about something being bad, Brutals. <laughs> <laughs> we agree on a lot of things, Mutsky, and no, it's I, know. I, I can't wait for you to finally agree, you know, I know. see the light. <laughs> I can't wait for you to finally agree. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a but very agreeable person in general, but Tyrion is is not correct. We the same, you and I. Let's not talk about books. <laughs> Let's not talk about books. Yes. Um. So uh, we made our way to through the portal that we opened up by defeating the four guardians uh, into another planet called Terra, and something interesting happens right away as soon as we uh, find ourselves on the planet, is that we see a young girl who. Uh, has a tail uh, and similar hair to Zidane and we're ch just kind of following her through this like winding path to see like what's going on like because up until this point Zidane has never met another person who looks like him so obviously this is a bit of a shock that he wants to find out what's going on. The other thing that happens when you go through the portal is that the OST queues up Four of the five greatest yes. songs in the entire game, back to yes. back to the back to back. Series, even. oh yeah, so. oh yeah. And that says a lot when you're trying to top over the mills and all the rest of the other amazing tracks this game has. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, it, I, um, genuinely, yeah. this is like my favorite series of songs in probably any one, yeah. like portion yeah, of agreed. any Final Fantasy game. Same. With and this track in particular is my is my favorite. The, the walk to the village, it's so good. With the exception of um, like the entire like Ultimecia, like oh yeah, that entire like song, like the extreme is number one. Yeah. Ag yeah. Agreed. There's just so many good tracks in like yeah. pretty much every Final Fantasy game. Like yeah, and that's but that's something that's fun about speedrunning uh, this game is that you just get to like chill out and enjoy the soundtrack over and over again which is nice you know maybe it's not maybe we don't always love hearing the opening bass line of the random encounter theme <laughs> as much but... it, it has very much <laughs> become <laughs> one of my <laughs> least <laughs> favorite songs <laughs> in the entire <laughs> series <laughs> <laughs> I, I have grown just with how the like abundance of times i've heard it i just don't like the song yeah. anymore like, I, I, uh, <laughs> I I have like a Pavlovian response to that baseline now <laughs> after speedrunning this game. Oh man. 
Um, so we're gonna do a quick menu here. The mo one of the most important things in there is making sure we take the rebirth ring off of a uh, dagger because she, um, there's no good opportunity to get it back from her again uh, for the rest of the, um, the rest of the run, and mm -hmm. it's uh, pretty important. Um, I I have in uh, in the past. Like, the very first run of this game I ever tried to do, I couldn't finish it because I didn't know where my rebirth ring ended up, and I didn't know, like, any of the backups yet. So, um... <laughs> but anyway, we're getting Someone into... Someone off with the rebirth ring, perfect. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's also uh, somewhat important to put the feather boots on Dagger here. Yes. As uh, the feather boots are able to absorb Earth, which will be relevant in a fight uh, which Dagger and Zidane will be taking during the you are, you are Not Alone sequence. Um, so we get into uh, the village of Bran Ball, Bran Bal, um, and Dagger comes face to face with the giant red eye that uh, she saw over Madain Sari when um, it was destroyed, and it's revealed that it's an airship of some type, um, and she passes out. Um, so it's kind of, it's kind of like uh, this moment is like a couple of different plot lines starting to come together, of um, the destruction of Dagger's home, uh, and Zidane, who has no idea like where he came from and has never met yeah, anybody who yeah. looks like him. This is uh, finally meeting a whole village of them. This is really where like Zidane became like a, a great character for me. Yeah, because the whole game, you know, you're you're basically given Vivi as this like you know, individual who's been created as a tool of destruction yeah. who kind of, you know, loses and become like that that purpose that he was created for and kind of finds his own, you know, exigence and, and agency as a character to decide what he wants to be like. Yeah. And then you find out that the whole time that Zidane is this free-spirited person, that he has exactly the same narrative, but on a yeah. much larger scale. Um, and, you know, the whole, his whole, like, you know, silliness and goofiness and all that really takes this turn for this, like, existential identity crisis that he essentially gets thrown at his feet, you know, in essentially, like, an hour. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I could probably sit here and talk for the rest of the night about how much I love Zidane's character arc, but uh, just, if you've never played this game casually and you like story-driven games with, like, really cool character arcs and really good uh, thematic elements. I cannot recommend it enough. So while navigating Brown Bowl, there's a couple little pickups that we're going to grab. Um, there's an elixir there. An elixir in the end we'll grab in a moment. And oh, did we want to grab that one? And no, we get it in a minute. And then also a pair of angel earrings, which we'll also pick up shortly, uh, just so that we can vendor that off because they're worth quite a lot of money. Before we do uh, our second to last shot, for making our way off to You Are Not Alone itself. Yes. Nice. I will be saving theirs. Well, before You're Not Alone. Just to be safe. Yeah, absolutely. After Earth Guardian, I don't trust anything anymore. I, this, after this entire disc three, I don't trust anything anymore. <laughs> Be careful not to talk to Freya here because uh, she is now an innkeeper and she will try and find you a nice bed. <laughs> <laughs> and let you stay the night. Uh, the wing edge that we're grabbing from that chest is going to be... It's actually very important. It's a throwing item yeah. for Hammer and um, we'll be using that to deal with the first... Um, fight during the You Are Not Alone sequence, which is um, uh, and it's called Andusias, who uh, we affectionately call Murder Horse sometimes, because uh, he'll get you. He'll get you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he'll get you. <laughs> we'll talk about him a bit more when he comes up. It's like will. the Cerberus. <laughs> they're, they're the good boys, but they'll get you. <laughs> <laughs> they'll get you. <laughs> You're going for that little cheeky scratch, but oh, they'll get you. <laughs> <laughs> they still got teeth. <laughs> oh, man. Um, 
So coming up, uh, we're gonna uh, come face to face with Garland, the man that we previously met piloting the uh, airship, the Invincible, over uh, Alexandria. And we kind of got a little bit of a taste of who he is and, and uh, what he's doing. He and Kuja have like this sort of adversarial relationship, um, but we don't really know why yet, but we're about to learn a little bit more about how uh, he plays into all of this. And um, we're coming up on what is probably one of the most beloved, like, and uh, well-known sequences in the entirety of Final Fantasy IX, um, that we refer to as the You're Not Alone sequence, based on the name of the uh, track that plays during it. And it's basically Zidane's, like, crisis moment, where he finds out that he, like Mudski was saying, is uh, a weapon created by Garland to sow destruction down on Gaia so that uh, it creates a vulnerability on Gaia that Garland can exploit to um, basically steal its life force to save Terra, which is a dying planet. That's a little bit of the Cliff Notes version of it, but that's um, the general idea of what's happening. The other big reveal is that the same is true for Kuja. If you weren't, yeah. you know, and did not pick it up on that, you know, on your own, like now it is abundantly clear that Kuja is also the same kind of individual, but, you know, obviously didn't lose focus on, on his, his, you know, thing. He just kind of rebelliously chose to do what he wanted to do. Yeah. So I will also add that my favorite reference in this entire game is this song, the Pandemonium song, which is a reference to Final Fantasy II's Pandemonium Castle. If you've never played FF2 and you don't know the song, what you need to do is you need to find it on YouTube, listen to the FF2 version, and then you need to play it on YouTube at times half speed because it is the same exact song as this, but this one is just, uh, the tempo is just cut in half. And the moment I realized that, my head exploded. I was like, oh my God, that's exploded, so cool. Because yeah. I was always like, man, this sounds kind of familiar, but I never realized that it was literally the same melody. Um, and so it's just awesome, and I love that. Even though I don't really like FF2 as a game, I love the song, yeah. so. <laughs> it's great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The soundtrack so much because it's great it's it's so good Y'all it's it's worth noting that, that uh Uibatsu, the um composer of this game and who was the sole composer of uh I, I believe every final fantasy game up to and including this one um he has cited this soundtrack as his personal favorite in the series which is pretty cool um it's and it was also the last one that he did completely on his own because he basically like said in an interview that I read once that he like took so much out of himself to make this soundtrack that he like needed to like semi-retire. <laughs> he didn't do tactics either. Oh, right. I think, well, I, yeah, I think it was just the main series. Yeah, of I think he did all the main second. ones. Hold on a second. Oh, yeah. Is so. <laughs> GDQ, <laughs> let us know. Is this a shark? Or is this a ship? <laughs> <laughs> Looks like Shark Week up in here. I, I think it's I think it's a uh, time on the Discovery Channel with Shark Week. Or is it a Shark NATO? Oh, shoot. <laughs> it really does look like a shark, though. <laughs> <laughs> Can't unsee it. That's why it's called the Invincible, uh. because sharks are the perfect creatures, all right? <laughs> <laughs> and here is uh, here's the track everybody loves a lot. It is true. I've never seen a shark die. I'm not going to lie, though. If I could trade the Invincible for, like, a massive capybara to just ride around... That's <laughs> 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 what really <laughs> So the way that this route differs to what those familiar with MPU will be aware of is that originally we, in the first encounter here with Andusiasis, we, we used to let him take the first turn before having it Zidane actually attack himself and kill himself in order to bring Freya through into the fight. 
Um, we don't do that bit anymore because it no longer has auto life. Instead, he's got level up, which is gonna allow him to get an even larger health pool for uh, death guys later in the game. Uh, so we're actually gonna sit tight for the first two turns of this where he's gonna cast bio and then take off before we start to deal damage and uh, set up exactly who is going to get experience for this combo. Amar participating in the uh, time-honored tradition of FF9 runners of playing the fight music on the command book window. <laughs> <laughs> Tis tradition. When you run a game this long, you like you have, to, you have to spend like half of the time you're playing it entertaining yourself, doing something, yeah. you know, <laughs> doing something other than what is the game. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so this is a, a pretty friendly Amducius here. Uh, we're gonna kill off uh, Zidane here in order to uh, spread the experience more to uh, TBD and Ratchel. Um, this is gonna be the last uh, experience they gain. Yeah, this is awesome. gonna be the last experience they gain for the whole for the whole run. Um, and Steiner is coming up on his last fight where he gains experience as well. Um, so in the next fight, it's going to be Quinna, Steiner, and Zidane at the end, and we want to make sure that Zidane and Steiner both survive, but that Quinna uh, is not alive at the end of the fight. Fortunately, Quinna is pretty weak at this point and uh, gets um, smashed by pretty much every attack that this next fight has. There, there is a cool little piece of tech that you can do in this fight, and that's changing Steiner's row. If yeah. you do that, you actually save a, a line of dialogue <laughs> a when old Zidane text appears. Box. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she says, I didn't realize it did that. Yep. It yeah. It's a yeah. dialogue box. It skips uh, Zidane. It skips Zidane. Um, it, it he comes in and says, Zidane. You guys. Uh, Zidane comes in and says, You guys. And Steiner has a line where he says, uh, You're late, Zidane. But if he's in the back row, for some reason, the, uh, the You're late text box doesn't trigger. Uh. The other cool thing is because we have the Coral Ring and the Coral Sword on, if you want to get Steiner a, a free full heal, you can actually attack yourself and absorb yep. the, the lightning damage. Oh, yeah. You and can't just gonna do that. You can miss. Well, then just don't, just, don't do, just don't do that. Just don't, <laughs> just don't miss. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Um, thanks for showing that off. That, make, that makes me happy. Yeah, I was I was going to. Yeah, yeah. I <laughs> saw, a... You did get hit twice, though. So. Thanks. Yeah. That's one of the more obscure uh, little strats in, the, in this run. You don't see people do that one very often. Yeah, it, it only works with that combination of Coral Sword and yeah. Coral Ring. Because one obviously absorbs oh, so level 30? That's lightning odd. damage, and the other one does, no, it's deals fine. it. I know, it's it's just odd. No, it's even. 30 is an even number. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I had to. I would have done the same thing. I'm proud yeah. of you. <laughs> this totally gives me like all clearance and salvation from my mistake of making the, you know, birds of a feather fun earlier. <laughs> <laughs> I have been absolved of any guilt. Yeah. <laughs> So during this encounter, Amar most likely has a big list of numbers next to him, which he is going to be reading damage values from. And that's really important because we have to manually get Zidane into critical HP in this route. Um, based on using defend and flee in various combinations, we can manage the amount of damage that we're taking against Shell Dragon. Um, and this should do it. This should do it pretty shape. safely. It, yeah. Yeah. That was that was a very that nice setup. Like, there's there's like there's very few damage rolls that would not put us there with 625. Yeah. Yeah. Now the reason why this is slightly more beneficial is because it allows us to come into this actual fight section of the game here with Dan with a full ATB, which is Ooh, where you actually really want the ATB in this encounter, because you uh, for every turn that Shell Dragon has over you, especially uh, getting crits. Yeah, yeah wow. This is this fight's over. Yeah. 
So normally it takes uh, four attacks to kill Shell Dragon, uh, but because Amart got that crit, uh, we're gonna see it in three. Also an Earthshake here, it's um, the least damaging move, so uh, we're pretty safe to uh, wrap up the fight here. It, it was kind of interesting making this shift to this fight because this isn't really a fight that requires much practice. In fact, I think most practice is probably better served on the two fights before it when you're learning the run. Yeah. But with this <laughs> with this strategy, really getting a feel for, you know, uh, the damage ranges of each type of hit you can take from each attack, um, yeah, is really something that probably, uh, although it doesn't take like a ton of practice, it's the thing that I practiced the most when moving to this route, just because it was so considerably yeah, yeah. different from the auto life strat where if you have the yeah. rebirth ring and auto life on, you can just KO yourself and be uh, given the auto life to critical HP and then it just moves you to the next segment. But obviously you don't get turn priority like we do in this round, which is really nice. Uh, so coming up for all you menu lovers is the biggest menu in the run. Uh, I think maybe let's, let's let uh, Amart focus in on it, and then we can talk a little bit about it after he's done. Uh, I kind of prefer Giggly Amart. <laughs> I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding, I'm kidding. I kid, I kid. <laughs> While Amart is going through a few menus, I'm going to tell all of you what's on the menu for January, and that is AGDQ 2022, January 9th through the 16th. You can visit gamesdonequick.com for more information and detailed dates during the event. Cool. Nice. Yep, that looks good. So, it's so yeah, interesting. That is a, yeah, go ahead, Musty. I was gonna say, it's just so interesting how, like, with how long that menu is and, like, where all the item placements are that you get used to and stuff, and just the order of a lot of things not actually mattering. It's so fascinating to just watch other people who do it completely different from you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there were some weird things in the inventory, too. Yeah. I didn't have any Rising yeah. Suns. So like that also kind of threw things off. I, I yeah, that yeah. I, it drives me nuts whenever things are one put thing off in position, oh, so your yeah. columns are wrong. <laughs> I, I, I'm chasing that perfect save state where I like have every possible yeah. configuration of my pandemonium menu to practice, but <laughs> yeah. It's it, there's always a little bit of variable there depending on which consumables you do and don't have. So it's like, it's it, what's interesting about menus in this game is that like it's uh, more than just like rote memorization. You have to actually be like cognizant yeah, of exactly, like yeah. which items you need to buy and which ones you need to sell and all that. Um, because there will be slight variations sometimes. And if you try to go just by muscle memory, sometimes you'll end up selling something that you uh, need to hold on to. There's a speedrunner yeah, speed a little time. <laughs> There's a former speedrunner yeah. called Mafunian who made a Sporko quiz that you could do and you'd have to name all the items that you keep in your oh pandemonium gosh. menu. Yeah. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah, it was really fun. We should make that. an updated one of those. That's amazing. It yeah. was a good time. That one elevator room that, that Amart ran through it, it look it's one of the really interesting rooms in the game because it 
it obviously has a lot of walking involved, but it has an incredibly low encounter rate, surprisingly. Yeah. Thank yeah. goodness. Um, and so so that, that big menu that we saw was uh, basically just us setting up, this is our final party. This is the party we'll be using in every fight from now until the end of the game. Um, setting up Freya, uh, Zidane, Amaranth, and Steiner with like their end of game abilities and equipment. Um, and basically just getting rid of everything else we don't need anymore. Uh, to, f to get as much gill as possible to make some last purchases. You know, we got uh, more powerful weapons for every uh, for everyone, um, some important armor that we'll need, and then uh, buying a bunch of potions and, and phoenix downs. Um, and now we're heading into a gauntlet of three boss fights that are uh, going to bring us to the end of disc three. This is looking good. Yeah. yeah. Silver Dragon can be a little bit of a sketchy fight on some routes, but here on the Petra route, it's usually pretty safe. Um, and it's just uh, basically getting in uh, five attacks from the party um, to slay it. Um, and we'll be coming up on uh, the Garland. Thankfully, we didn't see any of these, but, um, you know, uh, Silver Dragon has a pretty nasty um, attack called uh, Shockwave, which does... Uh, variable damage to the entire party. Um, but thankfully yeah. we didn't see that. Yeah. And we'll show, we'll show it dragon. to you at the beginning of disc four. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe at the end of disc three, we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> next fight, maybe, we'll see. Uh, now here on this fight against Garland, uh, we got a Basically just beat him up, beat up this old man. Um, he has a couple of attacks that can be a little nasty. Uh, he can cast Stop. Um, he can just completely delete Amaranth oh my goodness. Uh, wave Amaranth. there. Buddy, yeah. what happened? <laughs> um, <laughs> and he also has an attack uh, called Psychokinesis, which does a lot of damage. But, um, you know... The main strategy here is just attack with the party, keep people alive, and uh, throw remedies if they get stopped. And again, we're gonna see, uh... We're actually gonna see Amart opt to not unstop uh, Steiner, because he can probably do enough damage on this turn to end the fight. Oh, maybe not. Huh. But... It should've been. So oh, I think it's... Good. Is it because the name was out of MP, maybe? I'm not no, sure. This, this no, attack, this, it, that attack it was... reduces MP. It was, uh, okay. yeah. It just would have cost me more time to do the, than, well, the remedy there. Yeah. That's fair. So, coming up in the next fight. Yes. Coming up in the next fight is a taste of the good stuff to come. Oh, my <laughs> goodness. So, if fortune has it and nobody is deleted on turn zero and we don't get like four preems. It's actually favorable to cast the mighty Luna. The which, mighty uh, Luna. The mighty Luna, which allows us to relinquish control of the game completely and uh, have it do battle for us. Um, it essentially casts Berserk on all um, combatants, yourself and them. Um, usually the only times we ever cast this um, everything involved in it is immune that we can cast it against. So it only ever targets our own party. Um, Berserk increases your damage by a further 50% um, and allows you to only queue basic attacks, which is all we want to do anyway. Um, at this point in the game, these uh, bosses don't give us any ability points. Um, so we don't really stand to gain anything by keeping certain characters alive anymore. So we can afford to have them die afterwards, but only if Freya, if, if everyone lives on turn one. Oh. Uh. Unfortunately, if somebody does go down, um, you could pick them up and cast Luna, but the time it takes to cast it, uh, you won't actually be saving any turns ultimately anymore. Yeah, so we didn't get to see it on this fight, but perhaps on perhaps. the Dragon, we'll, ha <laughs> we'll have to see. <laughs> Dang it. Ah, I was trying to get the Steiner. Uh oh. 
Uh, <laughs> he got stuck. He got stuck in the triangle trying, mash. He was doing the old menu, uh, menu select tango. <laughs> it happens to, all, to the best of us. Uh, like, what are you doing, Amar? <laughs> come up on the end of this fight. Um, these fights are all pretty safe from a speedrunning uh, perspective uh, because we are pretty well prepared for them. Um, the most dangerous one is usually Silver Dragon, yep. but um, you know, once you're through, pretty clean. Uh, and now, upon being defeated, Kuja uh, unlocks the power of Trance, uh, which as you may remember is this game's like uh, equivalent to a limit break system, um, and it's actually used, you know, as, as a story element, um, where, uh, Kuja knows that unlocking Trance is, um, going to be something that really aids him in trying to, uh, destroy Terra and then later destroy Gaia. Um, so he's gonna start we... using his enhanced power to just absolutely wreck Terra. Yeah, could we go into the game files and figure out how we can keep trans from battle to battle? That'd be great. Yeah. <laughs> Kuja's trans bar never, never runs out. <laughs> uh, almost He's about to to Sparta four. kick. Yeah. He's about to Sparta kick uh, Garland off of this ledge. About to recreate 300 right here. Yeah. It's a metaphor for what this game does to you whenever you speed run over too long. <laughs> <laughs> Rock kicks you into an abyss. <laughs> it's like, it's give you a bit of a boot. It's like, hey, why don't you reset? Kick. <laughs> <laughs> hey, maybe you can get a better ice cavern. Kick. <laughs> Kuja's so, uh, not very happy right now, is he? No, so this I, is the uh, moment where Kuja finds out that he also has a finite life and is has yeah. a mortality that he is going to have to deal with. And unlike Vivi, who accepts his oncoming mortality and lives life, you know, in a way that he will enjoy and, and with the company of others, Kuja lashes out very negatively and decides, well, if his life is going to end, then so is everybody's and so he basically so responds all creation <laughs> yeah and so he he kind of you know uh, he and vivi have this dichotomy of how they you know they deal with their mortality and vivi obviously chooses to accept it and to make the most out of the time that he has you know living and kuja decides to take it very bitterly and and respond you know in a way that you know he's kind of like well if i can't then no one can yeah. <laughs> the main difference is that Kuja looks really good while doing it, though. <laughs> right. Kuja does, what Kuja does have a little bit of a flair about him. What do you think? Vivi is a dime. <laughs> <laughs> he is very dapper in that little coat of his. I will give I you that. I love it. He's I do great. love his little striped pants. <laughs> striped pants. <laughs> um, so as Kuja has his little existential uh, hissy, hissy fit, basically, um, the party's like, yeah, we got to get out of here before Kuja blows up the entire planet. Uh, so we're going to be running back to Brand Ball here to uh, help all of the other uh, genomes, as they're called, uh, Zidane's people, uh, escape. And... Um, we're gonna try to flee back to, to back to uh, Gaia to see, um, to see what we can do. A bit of flare star. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, roaming Merc, for picking up on my joke about flare. Also, shout hey, out to Rome. He is a uh, he is a member of the a beloved member of the FF9 community. Um, does a lot of work with uh, figuring out like the small intricacies of how the game 
works and ways to optimize fights and movement and things. So, you know, last time we were here, we um, we did uh, we went around and did a couple shout outs. Uh, so I, I just want to shout out Rome and uh, a segmented runner by the name of Reverve, who are both great resources of knowledge uh, in the speedrunning community for this game. Thank you both for everything that you have taught me. Um, if anybody else wants to do any shout outs, I shouted out Mutsky last time, so I'm not going to do that to his face. Huh? <laughs> shout out Flare Star. <laughs> any, no, are you just shouting out people in the community? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. If you, if you have anybody you wanna, you wanna. I was gonna wait till later, but yeah. That's eh. fine. I don't know. Everybody I like is in this call. Oh. <laughs> oh. Wait, you like me? Well, it's oh. a, like a, it's like a friend love. It's like more than just bum, like bum, on glass. <laughs> I mean, that's kind of what I was hoping for. Yeah. It's something more than I like you only as a friend, and something less than we have we have a you know. Yeah. <laughs> <you think. laughs> okay. <laughs> we can continue this conversation. <laughs> well, else. you know. Should I mean, we all? Should we all? Considering we're both we're both in committed relationships with significant others, I thought that yeah we yes very there was an understanding. So. <laughs> I, I feel the like the rest of us should deafen and give you two some uh, some privacy. <laughs> no, no, I'm good. If if no, everyone no, in GDQ no. chat could just mute the stream while Mutsky and Amar worked this out. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I do I do things for you that I would never do for some other people, right? Like Brutals, I would never watch anyone else stream a trading card game on Twitch. Like it just wouldn't <laughs> happen. But I do it for Brutals because I love them. Oh. <laughs> I wouldn't watch anyone else pull anime waifus in a gacha game like what? you do on Xenoblade, on Xenoblade Chronicles 2. You're as bad as everyone else that talks about that game. <laughs> So, so that's pretty uh, much it for this As we make our way back to Gaia. <laughs> moving swiftly on. <laughs> I, was, I was just kind of letting that one. I was just kind of letting that one pass. No, uh, I think I think we just say just... nothing and just say, "All right, disc change. Let's go." <laughs> 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 so we return to Gaia, and we discover that the mist that we banished before is uh, actually back, and now it's covering the entire planet. Um, so, you know, things are getting bad back on Gaia, and uh, this is kind of um, setting the stage for the final confrontation with Kuja. Um, he's brought the mist back. He's... Uh -oh. Uh, I can still hear you. We can Internet, still hear you please. on the call, yeah. Um, Internet, please. So Kuj has oh brought God. the mist back and has a... Uh, okay, good. <laughs> okay. Basically, he's, he's staging, like, his final, like, uh, attempt to destroy Gaia. Um, and we're gonna go stop him. And from this point forward, after a couple cutscenes here, it's pretty much non-stop action, which yeah. is, makes this, in my opinion, like the most exciting part it's, of the run. It's a great, yes. the, the best disc for sure. It's essentially just a boss rush... Yeah. To the end, you know, for the most part. Yeah. There's, there's a few there's, menus. There's yeah. a couple of menus to set up for different bosses that have different weaknesses, and and you know, not everything is a a bird in this disc. Some things are devils. Yeah. <laughs> One thing is a dragon. Um, a dargan. A dargan. What? <laughs> but um, so there's a little bit of menu, but yeah, it's more or less just like a pretty high paced, high octane, action packed boss rush, and yeah. it's great. And for that reason, I really want to give a big shout out to Disc 4, um, the maker and breaker of runs, because this place can pretty much vary by about 10 minutes, and it's only about a 45 minute uh, section, which is yeah. excellent. Um, it is just non stop carnage, and I love every moment of it. Yeah, it really is kind of the culmination of like every. Um, every skill we've used in the run thus far in terms of like managing uh, battles um, and like you know reacting to things that the bosses do and counting damage and everything it's, it's just really fun um, 
It's a thrill to play. It's a thrill to watch. Yeah. Uh, and Amar's going to do a safety save here because we are about to uh, dive right into a boss fight with one of the potentially more difficult bosses in the run. Um, as yeah. Brutal's alluded to before, there's a possibility we could use uh, the ability Luna on this next fight, but um, Nova Dragon is a pretty... In my opinion, it's the hardest boss in the run. It's the I, one that's I hardest for me to... For, to get around but like even if even for people who like don't say yeah it's the most difficult it's easily like one of the top three so um the, the big problem with nova dragon uh, you're contrary to what cease was saying about uh garland and kuja the reason that garland and kuja are, are so like easy to beat even if you have a troubled time doing it is they don't have any aoe attacks at yeah. all they're all single target nova dragon has has multiple AOE. In fact, a majority of his attacks are AOE. Yeah. And despite yeah. having our character set up to reduce or absorb some of the elemental damage, not, you know, all of the characters are, are will take damage from some of the attacks. And so it can be really, really trolly really, really quickly. In addition to that, uh, whenever he is hit by a basic attack, he has roughly oh, yeah. a 50% chance to count you. Which then, furthermore, has a 50, roughly 50% 50 chance to miss on you. Fortunately, so there's a, a good part of the way it's, it's, it does get hectic really quick. And the, obviously, the main reason, main way that we deal damage is by basically attacking him. Um, Amarant will try and throw a wing edge at the start of the fight because that can't be countered. And it's also worth noting that Amarant doesn't have the distractibility on; he can't actually learn it. Um, which uh, means that he will uh, probably just go down straight away if he is counted, which probably happens later on. Um, but usually if he gets at least one attack off along with the way edge, you don't have to worry about too much. Mm -hmm. The only real opener we're not looking forward for here is uh, a shockwave. Everything else is oh, a, bit, yeah. a bit more manageable. Psychokinesis is, uh, oh, is second best, <laughs> but Tidal Wave and Aerial Slash are the ones that we're after. They're the, the and you may be thinking that that's yeah, a lot of numbers and, and percentages that Brutal's mentioned, and, and you're correct. But fortunately, Amart has Steve Jobs' original calculator, so <laughs> <laughs> nothing can stop He's us. He's done the math. He's <laughs> done the math. <laughs> nothing can stop us. So oh, let's see if we get no. this. Oh, the shockwave opener is rough. So unfortunately, yeah. we will not be seeing Luna today. Uh, because you do not want to cast Luna anytime, um, anytime party members die in the first turn. Um, fortunately, we will get to see another ability called Charge. Um, as we mentioned before, it's the one that takes every party member in crit HP and has them do an attack on, uh, on the enemy. And these also cannot be countered. Um, so it's, it's free attacks without the chance of Nova Dragon countering. Yeah. Um, we mentioned this ability earlier when someone asked about the abilities that we didn't use or whatever things we learned from the speedrun, and this is one of the abilities I mentioned. Um, on Steiner's turn, it'll like like Cease mentioned, like uh, it's it's an ability that's uncounterable. But more importantly, if you're unfamiliar with the ability, it allows every character in critical HP to attack on Steiner's turn. So on Steiner's turn, there uh, you actually saw three characters take a an attack. Uh, just for Steiner's ATB on top of their own turn. So it's super, super useful. And we're going to be yeah. using it a lot for the entire rest of the run. Yeah. And it's uh, it's especially essential on the final boss. Yeah, that fight would be so long without it because you'd have to do yeah. the skip like three times. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine protecting their crown, just a five minute fight. <laughs> oh my gosh, that would be awful. <laughs> so it's also sometimes advantageous to use charge even when you've only got one uh, mm -hmm. party member in crit HP because again, it can't be countered. Um, Are you kidding me? Oh, that's bad luck. Yeah, so you never, oh you my. really never want to see multiple shockwaves in one fight um, on uh, Nova Dragon, uh, especially not back to back. Yes. Um, GG almost at the time. Yeah. 
Thankfully, though, besides Shockwave, um, it's, it's it's relatively safe to keep Steiner in critical HP after a, after a Shockwave because um, he gets healed or absorbs uh, or is resistant to a lot of uh, Nova Dragon's attacks. Should be able to kick your yeah, business be. here. This is the Nova Dragon. Yeah. Yeah, so I mean, like Cease and I were talking about, this fight I I genuinely think is one of the most difficult uh, in the, yeah. the run. Just because there's that was a really bad yeah, fight. It, yeah, that was pretty rough. Muck wise. It has a really wide range of how well and how poor you can go, and a lot of it isn't really at the uh, fault of the runner at all. It's really based on yeah. the attack pattern that the Nova Dragon uses in any given fight. Um, yeah, and so it, it could just vary like really like pretty greatly um yeah has a lot to kind of know you know what elements you absorb what elements you nullify or have um so there's a lot of knowledge that you kind of have to have going that fight to really be able to yeah. be prepared for anything thankfully we're able to make it through and i think that went about as good as any nova dragon fight with two <laughs> shockwaves in it can't yeah. go um so you know, we made it through, and that means we have made it through one of the dead, one of the deadliest um, bosses that are that's left in front of us. So, uh, here we are in Memoria. Uh, this is the final dungeon of the game, and basically, this is like uh, sort of like this metaphysical place that uh, is constructed out of the party's memories. Um, it's kind of a cool, like, visual, like, metaphor for like, you know, time and. Uh, mortality and everything um all of the themes that the game is like exploring and uh it's basically a linear path that you follow through and uh into um this like elongated boss rush um we've got uh seven more bosses to fight before the end of the run it's starting with my favorite oh yeah brutals loves this next one oh, i love it <laughs> I it doesn't love surprise me at all. Why don't you uh, <laughs> Why don't you tell the the lovely people at home about all oh, why you love Malaris? I would love to. So Malaris, uh, devil that she is, loves to <laughs> make sure that when she goes down, she does her absolute darndest to take you with her, and uh, she does what's called raining swords, I believe. Um, when yes. she goes down, um, which is an AoE spell, which does somewhere around 2100 damage to your entire party. Um, there are two ways around this. You can either have Freya equipped with um, auto life and make sure she doesn't die prior to this point, or you can use her jump ability to make sure that she's not in the actual combat when Malaris goes down. Um, you can back Rosadan and make him defend and do other little defensive shenanigans, but it's far more important that Freya survives because she's actually trying to learn her final ability, Devil Killer, during this combat, which she wants um, for an, the, one of the combats straight afterwards. Um, we have kitted out since the, um, right in the beginning, um, part one, viewers may remember Amart trying, talking about uh, Protect Girls as far back as Evil Forest, where we started routing AP for that. Um, hopefully, it's been um, learned. I think it, I saw him equipping it a moment ago. Um, because Freya is the only girl in this party, it essentially says protect Freya. Um, as long as she's in critical HP, uh, Zidane will tank any attack that's targeted directly at Freya, as long as it's not magical. Um, which is excellent because it means that anything that targets her will get rerouted to Zidane and will protect the auto life, keeping that active for as long as possible. Um, Simply put, uh, we will absorb any of the uh, status effects that she puts on us boots? and can only really take damage from physical. Is, I'm pretty sure you're wearing them, aren't you? Must have a mind, <laughs> yeah. Who needs the battle boots, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, and of course, uh, Amart is going to pick up yeah, the tower, of correct? Let the... Oh, yeah. <laughs> So the tower is not Zidane's ultimate weapon, but it is the strongest one that's like readily available to us in the. Um... It's right there. <laughs> what do you mean it's not the <laughs> ultimate weapon? It's the ultimate weapon well, in any it's... game. It's the <laughs> ultimate weapon in my heart. Okay. You're right. Okay. So what you're saying is, <laughs> yeah, okay, so it's not actually. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Throw the tower at Necron. Oh, why did that? Mess? Throw the tower at this iron giant. 
Yeah, for I just got Mr. Mr. Cleaved in my my oh, last run. I don't know if any of you saw that. <laughs> oh yeah, I yeah. Did. Oh, I was there, Muskie. That was <laughs> one of the sketchiest things I've ever seen. <laughs> well, I didn't. I didn't heal before that screen because I was like. You don't get encounters on this screen. No. <laughs> yeah. Oh. How wrong he was. Yeah, well, I was trying to waste as little time as possible because of where I was at in the run. Yeah, exactly. Thinking, cutting some corners that ended up being worse. Yeah, than... you gotta cut corners sometimes in this game if you're, if you're trying to push through for that PB. So because of the raining swords, it's really good. It's really important to count damage on this fight. Almost yeah. more so than pretty much any other fight in yeah. the game. Oh, for sure. Yeah, I, I think this is the most the hard way. <laughs> I, I went through a specific phase in my speedrunning career of this game where I didn't win card tournament for quite a while. And if you don't have the rebirth ring, you have to be more careful with your jump. And I, I think I died on her for like four runs in a row. It was, yeah, it was pretty impressive, honestly. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Uh, so here we see Protect Girls in action. Uh, Zidane um, protects his Freya from that attack. And uh, because he has Distract on, it misses. Um, it's interestingly yeah, so... enough, Freya doesn't need Distract for Zidane's Distract to work. So him yeah. standing in front of her and being a slippery boy is more than enough for it to work, interestingly. Yeah. Getting a Reflect here is good because we're not casting any magic, so it's basically just Malaris wasting a turn. Um, She's just getting ready. Yeah, she's getting ready for when we when we call in VV. We take VV off the bench. <laughs> Another free turn. Mm -hmm. Buster Bomb it tries to inflict heat, but every single one of the party members at this point in the game has body temp. Mm -hmm. uh, the rest of these bosses in this game, it's very important that you have body temp on, as they will try a, a array of heat and freeze abilities. Yeah. That was a really good fight. Yeah, that was, yeah, that was very clean. And she didn't very nice, uh, right for once. <laughs> yeah. Very nice palette cleanser after that Nova Dragon. <laughs> oh my gosh, are you serious? <laughs> Oh my! <laughs> I've never seen this happen before. By the way, that's so clutch. Oh man, that's just that's just big swag right there. It's the oh, dame surviving yeah. the raining swords Please. and trancing. Are you she just didn't want. Me? She just didn't want you to trance on an iron giant. That's all. Uh, that is so. Favor. Hey, that looks nice. like a D trance skip to me. Yeah. Yep. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. This game's amazing. All right. That might be that uh, might be my favorite thing I've ever seen happen in an FF9 speedrun. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen that before. Yeah, I've never seen I've, that. I have definitely not seen anyone trance on that because there's so much involved, right? Like your trance has to be right. ready to trance, and Zidane has to tank the reigning swords, which is pretty low probability. <laughs> yeah, right. The stars truly have to align for what has just wow, happened I feel, in this round. I feel hashtag blessed right now. I don't know about you. <laughs> I feel some kind of way. <laughs> I feel a certain uh, emotion, that's for sure. <laughs> it's so meta. Uh, that's amazing. Uh, so as we make our way through Memoria here, we um, are kind of uh, re-seeing some events through the characters' eyes, like important memories that they have uh, that have led them to where they are now. Um, it's just kind of a cool way of like uh, reaffirming like the convention of the place as well as just like giving a night a little summary of some certain uh, important events throughout the game. Um, meanwhile, Garland is uh, like a, this disembodied voice that is uh, oh, kind of guiding oh. us through, keeping in keeping in tradition. Uh, keeping in form with the game, uh, giving moments of redemption to its villains. Uh, you know, Garland is our enemy throughout Disc 3, but he kind of helps us uh, on our journey to defeat Kuja throughout Disc 4. They never really explained why he's just a disembodied voice in the sky, but you know what? I'm, I'm here for it. <laughs> Sometimes you just have to accept that uh, 
you're playing a, a fantasy video game and not think about it too hard, you know? <laughs> yeah. I think my suspension of disbelief in this, the universe of Final Fantasy IX, is pr goes has pretty large bounds. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, the, I would say that about Final Fantasy in general. They really just absolutely love to. The, the moment <laughs> you stretch things. The moment you gain control of Vivi, and then you you meet your buddy Hippo, I'm like, all right, I'm all in on this game. There's there's <laughs> nothing you can do at this point that I'm not gonna yeah. be there for. I love it. I, I I love that it's a world populated by like animal people like his yeah. Hall and his mom, but it's weird that Zidane has a tail. <laughs> <laughs> you know? <laughs> There's like an entire race of rat people, but Z's is the one that they're like, dude, you have a tail. Yeah, right. <laughs> I never actually thought about that before, that's funny. <laughs> Uh, so this next boss fight is uh, the aforementioned dragon of disc four. Uh, you would think that Nova Dragon would be the one that we equip the ability Dragon Killer for, but it's actually Tiamat. Unfortunately, uh, uh, because... Nova Dragon is also a bird. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because Nova Dragon's, Dragon's a bird. Flying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ooh, a jet fire opener. That's oh, right. Oh no. Um, is, this is the same exact. Am I gonna get twisted in like two turns? Yeah. I'm guessing. That could have been a trance right there. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, yeah, that could have been a trance. A trance. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Malyris just is watching out for you, Amart. <laughs> um, so, Jetfire is a pretty nasty attack. It's pretty a very powerful yep. AoE. Um, absorb Strength is pretty annoying, especially when it's cast on Freya, who's our main damage dealer in this fight. Um, Tiamat can be pretty trolly, uh, but I mean, the one silver lining here is that Absorb Strength came after the Jetfire, uh, because um, if Tiamat had done it the other way around, uh, Jetfire would have ultimately been a stronger attack because of the Absorb Strength. Uh, the other uh, kind of nasty attack that Tiamat can do is called Twister, uh, which hopefully we don't see. Uh, it's another AoE attack that just can do pretty hard damage. Nice miss on the Silent Claw. With the reduced uh, strength on Freya, where it, like as he said, it really, really does hinder the amount of damage that you can output each turn. You're pretty much charging just to get Freya to have another turn, and, and when that's cut in half because of uh, a reduced strength, it really, really hurts. And he's just taken all of your MP. Yeah, you know. Oh, wow. Absorb MP on Steiner is pretty annoying, too. <laughs> yeah, you know. Because now he can't use charge, and also he doesn't get the boost from MP attack. But Thankfully, that's the last matter. turn of the fight. Doesn't Man, matter. Doesn't matter. <laughs> Amart's a champ. <laughs> You're just absolutely rolling with the punches on this one. <laughs> yep. So that is uh, two of the four uh, fiends down. Man. Again, a, re a reference to uh, the original Final Fantasy with the four elemental fiends. I cannot wait until Kraken uses like 17 water guns. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> Don't even say it. Zero uh, pm open water gun. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Don't even say it. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, if there's ever been a run that has been destined for at least one meteor spin life, it is this yes. one it's without this a one. doubt. <laughs> just don't forget to put Steiner in critical crap. Yeah, I just realized it as I was queuing the flea. I forget to do that all the time. It's okay. <laughs> You're going to get another encounter on Longbridge anyway. It's, yeah. It's Longbridge. Um... This is a this is a split in the run where you can really rack up encounters a lot because you go through uh, what is it five uh, hostile screens, um, most of which are pretty long. Yeah, um, there's several. So you you're pretty much guaranteed to get like at least three. Oh no! Yeah, I would I oh, would no. not, I would accept three honestly. Three. Yeah. Oh, no. I, I thought bad. I thought I thought I would take a lot more damage to that. Oh uh, yeah. No, it doesn't really do that much. Yeah, 704, yeah. It, it really doesn't do that much to Z. I should heal, though. You, you should heal. You should. <laughs> don't be like Mutsky. <laughs> yeah, don't be, don't be like... <laughs> yeah, don't be this like was... <laughs> This was the split with Mutsky's uh, fa infamous uh, 
infamous Iron Giant fight, so. Oh, fun. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's it's right spin the wheel. Spin no, the wheel, I'm, baby. I'm taking matters in my own hands. Nope, never mind. <laughs> oh, right, because she doesn't have MP attack. Or she, uh, she doesn't have MP, I mean. It would have been so funny this... if that actually hit the yeah. veteran. Uh, this move here, Roulette, is kind of annoying. Um, one, because it's really long um, and it wastes a lot of time. But two, because um, it has a chance of killing the veteran itself, which gives you a lot of unwanted experience. Um, and that, as we were mentioning before, uh, can push Zidane and Steiner to unfavorable levels where they're susceptible to level five death later. Uh, thankfully, just kills Freya and we're able to flee, get away. This screen's interesting. The guy just called it the fusion world screen, I guess. Um, the fusion planets. The screen is yeah. really confusing looking in its design, but if you have uh, like an analog controller, you can just hold it up on the D-pad and Zidane will do the movement exactly well across all the, what looks like a twisty turny thing. You can do it with the analog stick, but it's honestly like far more difficult and com complicated to get the movement yeah. to be mm -hmm. good. So interestingly, you can just hold up on the D-pad, even though it looks like that would be not at all how you yeah. navigate the screen. Yeah. There's actually three screens in a row here that you just hold up yeah. on. <laughs> I love it. It is great. Those are my favorite movement screens, the ones where you just hold up. Uh, there's a question in chat that says, <laughs> are, gl are glitches allowed? That's the thing that's interesting, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there aren't really any glitches in yeah. this game. Like, no major glitches that can be exploited for uh, the speedrun. Um, Essentially, the glitches it... that are present are allowed, I suppose. I suppose yeah. Step in its own right is technically a our glitch. Big, our biggest glitch is, is skipping, skipping over one a fight. trigger that gives you an yeah. encounter. Yeah. <laughs> we, we literally skip um, one fight. <laughs> yeah. Um, the PC version of... Uh, FF9, the one that you can get on Steam, does have uh, several major skips in it that you can do. Um, and there are separate categories for running that with and without the skips. Um, but on the original PlayStation, there is no, uh, there are no major skips that we can take advantage of and no fake glitches. Um, I guess the cotton robe trick, some people consider that a glitch. It isn't really I think that a that's glitch just, by like technical that's definition. Just, that's just like smart budgeting. <laughs> yeah, that's just, that's just financial, financial literacy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, nothing, there really isn't like any exploits in this game. This game is for, con compared to a lot of the other games of its time, and uh, especially compared to something like FF7, it is shocking how well put together this game really was constructed in such yeah. a way that despite being a very one of the most popularly run speed, uh, Final Fantasy speedruns of the entire series is that there really hasn't been a groundbreaking glitch ever discovered in the run the, yeah. the, they've been very very small like yeah. uh, again the biggest skip we have skips over one flight it's like a 40 to 45 second flight like it's, that's about it yeah. Yeah, puck yeah, skip, I, I guess, would this. be a glitch. Oh, yeah. Are you serious? <laughs> oh, my How gosh. How could Water this go happen to no. me? <laughs> oh, no. You're welcome. RIP to the two turn Kraken. Nah, it's fine. I can still do it. Okay, good. Also, shout outs to everybody that goes for puck skip. There's two types of runners. There's people that go for puck skip, and there's cowards. <laughs> oh, wow, okay. <laughs> this, this is a skip that you can skip, like, two dialogue boxes at the beginning of the run. It saves, like, four seconds, and if you don't get it, you lose, like, 12. 
That's, yeah. that's it. That's it. It's very <laughs> inconsequential, but it's it's yeah. It's... <laughs> So a really interesting thing going on in this fight is that when Freya hits this technical here and kills it, uh, Kraken almost does something similar to what happened with Lani in part one, which is where Kraken has actually already queued their next ability, but having that tentacle die actually moves their um, their attack queue to the back, meaning that if you if when Kraken queues their ability and they're next to go. Um, if you Q Zidane afterwards and Steiner afterwards and Ameren afterwards and then Freya actually kills that um, tentacle, it would actually move Kraken's turn then behind the Zidane, Steiner and Ameren turns that you've queued afterwards and essentially allows uh, Amart here to have an extra turn, um, which is where the two-turn two -turn Kraken strategies can come from. Um, yeah. It's a really, really weird mechanic, but it's, it, I'm, I'm very grateful that it exists because yeah. it allows us to deal with... Uh, Kraken quite a lot quicker. Yeah. One um, benefit of uh, Zidane getting uh, killed there is that he'll be included in the charge on this next round, and also it's safe to leave him in uh, critical HP for the next boss fight, so they're, um, so that he can also be part of the charges on that one. Yeah. So I don't think Kraken goes down this turn, but next turn we'll be able to pick up Zidane again because now Zidane is learning an ability, HP 20, which is going to give him a huge health boost for Death Guys to hopefully survive Meteor, um, yeah. at which point the charge should then be lethal damage for the rest of this fight. So both Steiner and Freya have got the Mithril Gloves on, mm -hmm. which allow them to absorb water damage. Is it Diamond Gloves or Water Gloves? What? Mithril? Diamond, yeah. It's diamond, diamond yeah. my butt. Yeah, yeah, diamond gloves. So <laughs> try as you might to hit us with water, go Kraken. It will do yeah. <laughs> we'll always have at least two party members be able to tank it. <sighs> Amart's doing the math right. and realized that one single basic attack was enough to finish the fight there. Very nice. Yeah. All right. Again, a good a good uh, showcase of why it's important to count damage on boss fights so you know like how many attacks uh, are left so that you can make a decision based on that. Mm -hmm. um, back a couple screens before the Kraken fight, I saw some people shouting out Hades. There's an optional boss uh, on one of the screens right before Kraken that you fight with some really good music, and it was um, originally supposed to be the final boss of this game. Um, Obviously, we don't fight it in any percent, but there is a category of this uh, game called All Bosses, where Hades is included, as well as the Super Balls Ozma. It's a pretty cool category. Unfortunately, for as cool as the Hades fight is casually, in with speedrunning strats, it's actually one of the most uninteresting fights that there is. Yeah. yeah. It is. It's, it's yeah. really unspecial. Uh, like, um, yeah. It can, it could legitimately, fight, but... it can literally start with him charging his sword and uh, just spamming charge with with Steiner and attacks and the other characters, and it ends in two turns, and he will yeah. do nothing, and it's really uninteresting, unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> it is a Ozma's sweet a fight, cool casually though. Yeah, Ozma's, yeah. Ozma's much much cooler in uh, this. Movie. Yeah, in the all bosses category. All right, listen, I need to be wrong about one thing, so I'm gonna try to will a uh, first turn. Earthshake into existence. That's funny. <laughs> I'm praying with you. I'm praying with you. Uh, Earthshake. Earthshake. <laughs> I hope you're wrong. Also. Listen, I've, I've, I've ruined all three things I've thought about in this one so far. Between the, the cards, the desert palace, and Kraken. Amart picking up, Amart picking up VV's ultimate weapon here. <laughs> the Mace of Zeus. Yeah. The there's Mace of Zeus. A, a, lot of, a lot of people's ultimate weapons are, are just on random spots on, on hostile screens in Memoria. Are you going to so, throw the Mace of Zeus at Death Guys? Oh my about goodness. It. <laughs> <laughs> throw it at Necron for it. Is it? <laughs> yeah, okay. <sighs> you just got to wait to down on the blue shockwave. Easy. Let's go! <laughs> Musky! Holla at your boy! <laughs> Okay, here's here's one thing I'll say. Technically, Mutsky said first turn Earth Shake, and that was an oh, earthquake. That's, that's true. So. <laughs> oh, no, I forgot that he 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 evolves his move set like a Pokemon from uh, Earth. <laughs> 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 
So something funny here is that uh, Amar's not even gonna bother getting Amaranth up because you can um, do a, enough damage with um, Freya's attacks and charge uh, to not make it worth the, the Phoenix down animation time. Um, this this fight is it can be a little trolly if it opens with an annoying um, an annoying attack like it did. Um, and Venom Powder can be a little annoying because you have to throw a remedy for it, especially if it's on Steiner or if you already have someone dead. But otherwise, it uh, is probably the simplest. Still there? Oh, yeah, yeah, we hear you. Hi. Am I back? Hmm. Uh, otherwise, it's probably one of the easier fights in Disc 4, and um, Amar able to get through it. Then there it is, the reason we all speed run this game, the Excalibur 2. Busted. If any I, of you are... I, no, sorry, go yeah, ahead. sorry. I was just going to say, I remember the first time that I, I, I was like learning the speed run and picked up Excalibur 2 for the first time, I was like, oh, heck yeah, that was cool. <laughs> <laughs> if any of you, um, you know, have been following the run and, and now see that I am like a literal sage, if you uh, if you donate to the GDQ's <laughs> event coming up at the beginning of January to help charity, and then send me a DM with a, a screenshot of your donation, I'll send you the uh, Powerball numbers for any week of your choosing for 2022. <laughs> <laughs> what what a what a what a bro! <laughs> I know. Are you kidding me? Uh, <laughs> Do we get the space? space the last, <laughs> it's the last screen in the whole run where the you just hold up. I've gotten, yeah. this, I've gotten this four runs in a row, by the way. That's amazing. This is such a funny disc four. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it, it really is just a brilliant showcase of how fickle this game can be. Um, because... Uh, when we were here for part one, we we walked away from it being like, yeah, that run's going pretty good. There's not too many encounters, not nothing really trolly has happened in any of the boss fights. And now throughout the entirety of this second half, it's been pretty trolly. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I've had like, I, I imagine I've had more than 35 encounters in the, these, e yeah. like, <laughs> you've had a lot of them. Today. Because there's this been a, there's been a yeah. couple of areas where you just got peppered like Oilvert was really bad, uh, Ibsen's was miserable. Yeah, yeah. A six encounter Ibsen's castle, like holy cow. Yeah. <laughs> You're on pace for a four on DG at the moment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I I would not be. I haven't been counting uh, this time, but I would not be surprised if you've broken sixty encounters by this point. <laughs> Me not to mention we are, we're gonna have to deal with a reset on the meteor wipe too. So <laughs> I'm not skipping. I said that earlier. I said this is the run. Amar <laughs> even agreed. Come back. I need another. I need. I need you to replace Mutt for me. <laughs> <laughs> Mutt just keeps predicting the worst things, and they keep coming true. Just Mutt, don't talk you, about flash Can you at least tell me that my internet will keep up? <laughs> No, well, after after you beat Death, guys, let me explain how Flare Star works, all right? <laughs> uh, so something that's fun about the, uh, the enemies on this last little stretch here, we're we're on the last three screens where we can. Um, where we can get random encounters and all the enemies uh, from here until the end from random encounters are uh, crystal versions of the four fiends that we just defeated. Yeah, they, um, they fulfilled their focus. Yeah. That's for you, Mythic. Do you see what I did there? Fulfilled their, that was for you. Because you're, 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 you and me are two of the only seven people in the world that like Final Fantasy XIII, so. I gotta make those shout outs when I can. <laughs> We are actually on pace for four. I told. Oh, we might. I, I told. I. Oh man. Seriously, if you want the numbers, mates. <laughs> Could you just send them to me so I can like? <laughs> you deserve them. <laughs> yeah. After the way that this disc three and four have gone. Oh my gosh. Um. 
So you know, we're we're diving in to have our like final confrontation with with Kuja here. Uh, we've we've basically gone through Memoria and uh, entered the Crystal, which is a reference to like the crystals from the original Final Fantasy games, and it's basically like the place where all like creation originates from in this universe. And uh, Kuja is attempting to destroy it by um, by entering it and just you know destroying it from the inside and thereby like getting rid of all existence. Uh, he's gone full nihilist mode on us. Kmart's gonna do a little bit of a setup here for um, this upcoming boss fight, Death Guys, which is kind of an infamous. Uh, infamous boss fight in the FF9 speedrun because it can kill you uh, and it is the third to last boss in the run and it can kill you without you really being able to do anything about it so we're definitely going to do a safety save here uh, I should probably put my memory card in <laughs> wait, wait you <laughs> took your memory card out? <laughs> <laughs> yeah why? <laughs> reasons okay it makes the game run, like, three seconds faster. Wait, does it? Everyone does this. Something about having a memory card that's, like, got a bunch of saves on it, it causes you, for some reason, it's, it's like, a little, like, a second or two slower or something. I'm not I able actually... to see estimate, but are we, are we still within estimate range? Okay, cool. Yeah, you're doing oh. good. That's good. <laughs> uh, That's actually really funny. I never knew that about the memory cards. I think someone yep. just found that out like fairly recently. Wow. Is that three seconds over the course of the entire run? <laughs> so probably something like that, yeah. That's uh, really funny. I don't have an, a real number. I don't know, man. My racing card, my, my, my memory card's got racing cards in it. I think it helps. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fingers crossed for this uh, for this meteor. Um, meteor does a wide range of damage to the party. Uh, it can be as little as fifty, or as much as what four thousand forty five hundred, something like that. Four point nine, I believe. Oh, yeah, 4. four point nine. Yeah, 4. Nine. yeah, I yeah. think you're right. Yeah. Um, so it can it can just wipe the entire party like nothing, or it can do like next to nothing. Um, uh, okay, so this isn't bad. Um, this works. Kind of. Zidane having auto life here means that he'll revive automatically and we can use Steiner to throw this elixir. And really the key to like managing death guys is to make sure that Zidane stays up and uh, by and throwing elixirs. And yeah, this this is actually a pretty decent setup yeah, this here. Is a, um, a really good start. Able to get elixirs on both of them. And this the is... miss with both demon claws is yeah. good. This is like the the dream start now. Yeah. Once you it's get always in a little sketchy. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, sorry. I was just gonna say it's always a little sketchy when Zidane goes down, but uh, thankfully uh, we were able to get him back up without too much issue. Yeah, I was just saying that it, once you get into a position where Zidane has his ATB stored and Steiner's turn is approaching, and you can more yeah. or less do whatever you want with Steiner in this case, obviously attack and have Zidane just on standby to throw an elixir if if he uses spin um, or manages yeah. to land a demon's claw on on Steiner, then, you know, you're really in, in kind of go mode. Yeah. It's also worth noting that uh, Steiner has counterattack here, which uh, can get extra attacks, as well as uh, with the Excalibur 2, he will pretty much always roll quad nine damage. Um, and this is looking like a really solid uh, death guys here, so let's see how it, how it concludes. Uh, if you mean unbuffed as in like, you know, without any abilities or anything. He has wow. M MP attack, he has bird killer, and he has the mithril helm. Um, the Excalibur 2 has a holy elemental attack. So with those two abilities, MP by for 50%, bird killer for 50%, and a bonus 50% because the mithril helm boosts elemental attack, um, you get like those three things stacking onto each other. Thus, yeah. He has he has like one damage roll or something that isn't all nines or something like that. Yeah, it's like nine nine five something. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it is possible was, uh, for not to be all nines, but it's obviously the yeah. least common thing. 
that was a very good death, guys. Um, so thankfully, uh, thankfully, no meteor uh, okay, wipe region up for us. Right? What's that? What's your region on the zone? Yeah, that's a bird. I did. did I not? I didn't think he done the ability thing. Oh, uh, thank you. Do you think Death Guy's being a bird is weird? Wait till you see this next bird. <laughs> <laughs> the next two bosses are birds. <laughs> so Kuja is gonna basically like try to say that he's gonna, you know, he's, MP he's attack, got the, MP he's attack, gonna, MP accuracy. I'm sorry. There you go. <laughs> Sorry, we're a few seconds behind. He's you. also in Sorry. the back row. Oh. I didn't. I didn't. Yeah. He's just like. Okay. He's, yeah, that's okay. Uh, um, <laughs> you can change him in the first turn. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes, sometimes this is a this is a, a nice little microcosm of what it's like to be speedrunning FF9 and have other FF9 runners in your chat. We, we're we like hawks on each other's yeah. menus, man. We're like, hey, 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 back row, back row, front row. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, you know, sometimes it, it's definitely saved me before. From yeah, oh, people, a people have definitely prevented something. me from making like regrettable menu mistakes. Yeah. <laughs> Base 32 from the back row. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this this track slaps so hard. This is one of my favorites in the game. Yeah, Dark Messenger. Can you please, please. All right. So now that Steiner is in critical HP, it's actually kind of handy because he'll be included on charges. Um, Trans Kuja has a nasty attack called Flare Star. Um, that he can counter with once he gets underneath a certain damage threshold. I think it's 50%. Uh-oh. Or... Uh, um, it's even more than that, I think. Yeah, it's, it's pretty it's pretty low. Or, uh, it's pretty high. Yeah, because um, it's... A, well, maybe it's probably close, because it's like three attacks, so it's probably like... It's yeah. Under two-thirds or something. Yeah. But it but does a fix, in the yeah. Sorry, go ahead. It does a fixed amount of damage. Um, it does 35 damage times your each character's party or uh, each character in the party's level. So it takes your level yeah. of Zidane, multiplies that by 35, and that's what it hits Zidane for. It can miss though. It's actually not uncommon for him to use Flare Star and for it to actually miss one character. Um, yeah. But as long as you keep a character at full HP, you can't die to it because it's it obviously does a fraction of, of your right. uh, total. Change row and we're good. Yeah. So that was a that was a fairly solid TK there. Um, and we are moving on to uh, final boss territory. Yeah. Yeah, he's a bird, don't worry. Yeah, this final boss is a bird. <laughs> you can tell he's a bird because the way that he is. What else could it be? That's, that's pretty neat. <laughs> so, so the final boss, uh, Necron, is um, a fairly complex fight in terms of how it's set up. There are basically like multiple different ATBs associated with Necron on like dummy enemies that you can't see or interact with and they uh, dictate different things that Necron can do whether it's um, uh, his spell blue shockwave, black magic or uh, protect and shell etc. He has a lot of different abilities that are dictated by different ATBs and they get deactivated um, one by one when you uh, have party members who are down it's kind of a just a way that they programmed it to balance the fight so we manipulate that by the first thing we're going to do is kill the entire uh, party except Freya um, and then uh, Brutals you want to talk about what we do then I would love blue to blue shockwave so um, once Necron casts blue shockwave the turn immediately after the blue shockwave will be a grand cross um, we do not want to eat Grand Cross at all. Um, so rather than eating the Grand Cross, we're going to wait a bit of time um, uh, after the Blue Shockwave before we jump. Um, this will mean that by the time that we come down, he will have already tried to have Grand Crossed, have no targets there, decide to not Grand Cross anymore, 
and then instead try to blue shockwave us three more times. At which point we can then begin setting up our actual uh, kill of Necron, um, which is going to begin with um, resurrecting Steiner so that we can get ready to charge as soon as possible, followed by picking up Zidane. Um, then we're going to charge, we'll have a turn, we'll have another one of those turns, and then finally, for the extra little squeak at the end, we're going to need to make sure that we also ATV weight Zidane through for the last push. Um, that should be, even with all low rolls, enough damage to kill Necron. Um, a single critical will mean that we don't need to do a weight. Um, Unless it's with Steiner. Is, <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, Steiner, can't, well, Steiner can crit, but Steiner critical yeah, doesn't do it any more damage because nothing, he's already yeah. dealing max. Um, so the only things that we're not looking for is Protect and Meteor, really. Everything else is like kind of okay. So Shell is the magical resistance. Mm -hmm. He can't also cast Protect, which means we're pretty safe here. Yeah. Yeah. By making sure that everyone is in critical or dead, then he can't have access to any of his other black magics. Yeah. Um, so we've queued the jump while our other allies are busy hitting themselves in the face. That is going to give us more than enough time that we need for him to skip the Grand Cross yeah. turn, which is happening around about now. And then but she's you gonna see, come uh, if you look really close and you see the wings, and then you can see the, the, the talons, the large talons. So, like, Bird Killer makes a lot of sense <laughs> on this fight, <button>, yeah. honestly. <laughs> um, I can see it. I see it. <laughs> so the, we're moving on the... to the second phase of the fight, and it's pretty much... Uh, so oh, pretty Stan stable is, from here. Stunner's turn is going to come through first, but we're not going to take it straight away. Instead, we're going to wait for the blue shockwave to go through. We're going to use uh, Freya. Yeah, you're here. here. <laughs> okay. Don't yeah. lose this now. <laughs> <laughs> the, oh, the real final boss is Amart's ISP. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Um, so time is going to be coming up in a moment here. We'll let uh, we'll let Amart call it out. Oh, you got trance, so there's a little bit more time before time. But um, might not even need to hit the. No, I definitely don't yeah. need to hit the wave anyway. Then may as well. Yeah, I mean you should. Oh, he oh, just crit yeah. it also. <laughs> <laughs> wow, we. And time. That's a lot of damage. Uh, GG. GG. Man, GG. and a Amart. trance crit with Ray also. Please. <laughs> so good. Uh, thank you. Yeah, we uh, were really close. We were really close, but I actually think I'm going to blame that on the internet problems in uh, the third disc. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so it's 916.08, but I think that's oh, basically dude. basically on, on uh, time. <laughs> so don't worry about uh, it. Uh, well, Amar, do you want to say anything to our lovely viewers before we wrap up tonight's episode? I, I do. Um, <laughs> I, I just want to thank everyone for... Um, coming out watching Final Fantasy IX. It's been honestly one of the highlights of my year to be on this show. Um, not only to run FF9, but also earlier in the year to run Final Fantasy or to commentate Final Fantasy VIII. Um, just to be like here um, to spend all this time with you sharing the passion of uh, Final Fantasy speedrunning has been it's been a real delight, and um, I just want to thank GQ. I want to thank you, Tippy, for um, bringing us on. Um, oh, of course. I want to thank uh, C, Sprudels, Mutt, Mythic uh, for commentating. It's been real fun. Um, I want to thank the chat for um, being patient with me, especially in the second part with all the internet issues. Um, just really, uh, really appreciate uh, all the support we had, and um, also the Final Fantasy IX speedrunning community. Um, one of the best communities, if not the best community, I've been a part of. We um, we've done a lot in this past year um, with regards to growing the community, and also just doing good for. Um, 
different charities and whatnot. So, um, yeah, we, uh, it's a great community. Um, even if you don't come to my stream, go to any FF9 speedrunner. Um, there's so many great people um, within the community. Uh, my couch, they're all fantastic people on top of being fantastic runners and commentators. Um, but yeah, if, uh, if you want to come watch, I will be shifting my focus to this game in the new year. Um, yeah, feel free to stop by my channel. Uh, I would love to answer any and all questions you have regarding this or any other game I run. So, big thank you. Uh, that's really all I have to say. Awesome. Well, I appreciate you uh, showing off the run, Amart, and uh, everyone on comms. Thank you very much. Uh, if everyone watching, if those you watching enjoyed the run, please make sure you follow Amart on Twitch. That's twitch.tv slash A. Mart, and uh, if you would, if you enjoyed the commentary as well, make sure you follow all of our commentators. That's ceaselessly the Brutals, Mutsky. You can uh, find all of the spelling on the layout right now. But um, that is going to wrap it up for the final time capsule episode of the year. Uh, 2021 has been great, so I appreciate you all watching the show. Uh, I've been your host, Smooth Operative. Tomorrow at 7 p.m. Eastern, make sure to tune in for The Last of Us on The Bargain Bin, followed by Parasite Eve uh, on Speedruns from the Crypt. We'll see you then, and uh, bye, everybody. <laughs> bye. See ya. Bye. Thank you. Nighty-night.